Hi guys. I would like to invite you to the audiobook service where we upload more than 300 hours of different audiobooks a week, link in details in the video description. Chapter, 201. Respected General Xia Lan. Zhuang Qinyan made a soft sound, tightening the joints of his fingers resting on the snake's tail. He dragged the progress bar back, pressed play from the beginning, and so everyone was forced to watch again the three lines of explosive and provocative headlines. This video was probably recorded with a ring-shaped terminal, with a limited field of view and occasional shakes. The person filming probably didn't anticipate the astonishing developments later. Starting with a somewhat insincere posing on the deserted streets of the elderly people's nation, after a short while, the ground suddenly cracked open. The camera violently shook, the perspective seemingly plummeting like a freefall ride, inadvertently focusing on the sea the enormous head of a ferocious beast suddenly appeared. The realism of a disaster movie hit them head on. The opening scene was crafted perfectly, no wonder this video went viral, immediately capturing the audience's attention. In fact, many people on the island were filming videos at that time. Some awakeners even maintained a connection with their clients, making it easy for them to understand the situation on the spot. However, when the elderly people's nation later collapsed, the armored sea turtle went on a rampage, and everyone was embroiled in a fierce battle, too preoccupied to care about recording videos. But this guy not only didn't turn off the camera, he even intentionally switched it to motion capture mode, enhancing the clarity of the footage. On the screen, a line of text slowly appeared, main feature begins. Lin Yu Yu chuckled, oh, there's even post-production. Swoosh two agile figures descended at the center of the frame. Song Ku and Su Cha appeared out of thin air, like twin stars flying together. Snake-like movements, weaving through the barnacles, they headed towards the head of the armored sea turtle. The person filming exclaimed, damn, stumbling behind them, tripping numerous times along the way. When he reached the head, he coincided with the exquisite cooperation of the two. A burst of blue light, Song Ku and Su Cha, one real and one fake attack, both wielding unstoppable spiritual weapons, simultaneously stabbed the two eyeballs of the armored sea turtle. Exciting background music played, followed by the enthusiastic text. First blood. Double kill. Roar, roar, roar. The person filming let out an excited and strange shout, the voice vaguely familiar. Song Ko looked surprised, and after a moment, she dredged it up from the corners of her memory. Wasn't this young Xiaobo with the talkative rainbow-colored hair? Zhuang Qinyan clicked pause, dragged it back to watch again. At this point, Song Ku's jeans hadn't gone awry, and in the footage, her agile figure was exceptionally lively, with clear views of her legs as she ran. The armored sea turtle launched a 360-degree spinning counterattack. Yang Xiaobo splashed into the water with a plop. The camera floated and sank, creating a suffocating feeling of the deep sea, making it hard to breathe. He finally climbed back up, clumsily wiping off the water droplets on the lens, only to find that Song Ku had disappeared from his sight. In the distance, a group of mutated man-eating sharks appeared. Yang Xiaobo gathered his abilities, bravely rushing towards them, constantly muttering to himself, if I die, this will be my farewell video. But it's okay. Twenty years later, your brother Yang will be a hero again. Lin Yuyu supported her chin, looking somewhat worried. If he keeps filming like this, won't he accidentally capture Song Ku's tail? Song Ku was suddenly startled, her snake tail shrinking and sliding back, coiling into a large mosquito coil. Lu Xiaoyu remained calm, shaking his head. If he really captures something, the star network won't be as calm as it is now. The current online discussions covered a wide range of topics, but there were no keywords related to Snake Tail. Let's continue watching, Zhuang Qinyan said in a deep voice. The video continued, and considering the time, Song Ku had already grown her Snake Tail. Everyone in the private room sat upright, fully focused on the screen. Yang Xiaobo was having a particularly unlucky time. Just as he climbed back onto the turtle shell, he turned his head and collided with a level 4 man-eating shark. The shark opened its huge mouth, seemingly about to bite off his head, but its movement suddenly froze. Triple kill. Song Ku emerged from a diagonal thrust, 
hands crossed for a lethal twist. Swish. She slashed the top of the ferocious beast's skull, and thick black blood sprayed onto the lens. The screen instantly darkened, as if splashing the audience's faces, but immediately, a pigeon blood-red crystal attracted everyone's attention. Zhuang Qinyan slowly played back frame by frame. When the man-eating shark was pierced, a faint and elusive dark light flashed. He zoomed in with two fingers, single-handedly grasping the curved fork on Song Ku's tail, pulling it out and comparing it to the projection. Can you see it? Fang Jishu approached and observed for a moment. I would only think it's a knife. Su Cha agreed, it's hard to distinguish. Others also shook their heads. Song Ku's attacks were clean and precise, showing no signs of anomalies in the video. Next was the scene of Song Ku facing the armored sea turtle alone. Yang Xiaobo was somewhat far away, and even at the closest, the lens was still slightly out of focus. This was also the most likely moment to expose the truth. When Song Ku was propelled into the sky, her tail, not completely wrapped, might be captured on camera. However, when the killing scene appeared, everyone in the private room fell silent together. Yang Xiaobo, seemingly lost in thought, manually added special effects. Colorful laser beams lingered around Song Ku, resembling the rotating lights in a low-grade disco, almost blinding everyone's eyes. What was even more outrageous was that he intentionally magnified the trident. As a result, all anyone could see was a flashy, multicolored ball of light and an extremely exaggerated trident descending from the sky, piercing through the armored sea turtle's head. Quadra kill. Aced. In the moment the level 5 crystal appeared, Song Ku bathed in a dazzling golden light added in post-production, resembling the famous Buddha statue in the Rainbow Cloud City. In such a scene, let alone the tail, it would be reasonable even if she grew wings and ascended in place. Song Ku sincerely praised, wow it looks good. Lin Yu Yu was incredulous, you think this looks good? Song Ku blinked uncertainly and whispered, it's, um, pretty good. I shouldn't have asked. Your taste is just like that rainbow-headed guy, Lin Yu Yu sighed while holding her forehead. Yang Xiaobo could be considered a talent inadvertently, he provided cover for Song Ku. Even at this point, Yang Xiaobo didn't stop. He consecutively recorded the scenes of Utopia rising and Lin Yu Yu riding the Kuan, adding the same bling bling effects. However, because the mutated Kuan was too large, he couldn't capture it entirely, so he chose to use voiceover commentary, my savior is the peerless heroine of V587. One day, she came to rescue me riding a giant fish. After the highlight moment of V587, Yang Xiaobo surprisingly continued for another 20 minutes, sharing a long and meaningless personal journey that no one wanted to hear. The video only truly ended when the rescue arrived. Lin Yuyu was speechless, muttering, fine, help the captain attract attention. Anyway, I don't have any dirt they can dig up. Zhuang Qinyan coldly asked, can the video be deleted? Lu Xiaoyu replied, it can't be completely deleted. It spread too quickly, and the download count has already exceeded 2 billion times. Although it ended somewhat abruptly, Dong Xiaobo's first alliance video of killing a level 5 ferocious beast had enough novelty, and the content could reluctantly be considered high quality. In less than 2 hours, it had spread across all of District B. Even if we delete it, if someone shares the local files, it will still pop up, like wild grass that can't be completely burned, Growing again with the spring breeze, Lu Xiaoyu's tone was flat and not optimistic. Zhuang Qinyan closed his eyes for two seconds, then suddenly opened them, then destroyed the source files. The processed video might not show any abnormalities for now, but the original video was a different story. Yang Xiaobo might not notice anything right now, but who knows, if he starts to think carefully, he might realize something is off. Coincidentally, Yang Xiaobo was on the same starship as the Peace Dove Squad, which included V587. Zhuang Qinyan, Lu Xiaoyu, and Su Cha pushed the door and went out. The three stern-faced young men walked through the rear cabin and stopped in front of another compartment. Through a partition, they could hear Yang Xiaobo's chattering noise. Sister Rui, do you think I'm going to become popular? Maybe I should switch to being an internet celebrity. 
Brother Yang still has a promising future, right? Yang Xiaobo, you're so annoying. Can you shut up? Knock, knock. Zhuang Qinyan politely knocked on the compartment door. Without waiting for an answer from inside, he suddenly pulled it open. Su Cha was at the forefront, his six feet three inches height filling the entire space. His gaze was deep, and a dark blue dagger danced in his palm. Chapter 202 Respected General Xie Lan Sure enough, Yang Xiaobo's left middle finger had a ring, a skull-headed gothic design, surprisingly matching his eccentric personality. Zhuang Qinyan pushed his gold-rimmed glasses and looked genteel, like a refined elite lawyer, Captain Gu, I am the special attorney for V587. Your team member, without the consent of our captain, secretly filmed and disseminated videos, seriously infringing upon our image and reputation rights. Of course, Captain Song is generous, and we have no intention of claiming the originally planned compensation of 40 million alliance coins from you. We just demand the destruction of the evidence of infringement. Image reputation what? Yang Xiaobo was frightened by the combination of soft and hard threats, stammering, DD don't bully me just because I don't understand the law. 40 million. That's robbery. I don't have that much even if you sell me. We just wanted to make a fortune in silence. You've made it difficult for us by doing this, Zhuang Qinyan said with a casual smile, his eyes carrying a cold edge. Sorry for causing trouble, Gu Rui was a reasonable person, Yang Xiaobo, delete the video. Su Cha's dagger pointed at Yang Xiaobo's nose. Trembling, Yang Xiaobo took off the ring and handed it over. Su Cha tossed it behind him, and Lu Xiaoyu's rhenium arm closely followed, copying the source files and completely destroying Yang Xiaobo's copy. Even an S-level hacker couldn't recover it. Sorry for the disturbance. Have a pleasant journey back, Zhuang Qinyan smiled, and the compartment door closed with a thud. Yang Xiaobo looked dejected, his messy rainbow hair completely drooping, Sister Rui, I've thought about it. Being an internet celebrity is too dangerous, even more dangerous than being an awakener. It's better for Brother Yang to be more grounded. After dealing with Yang Xiaobo, the three returned to the compartment. Lu Xiaoyu sent the copied source files to Song Ku's terminal, and Zhuang Qinyan lowered his eyes to carefully review. With the major issue resolved, only minor matters remained. Su Cha finally found an opportunity to ask Lin Yuyu for the third time, you and that fish. Fang Jishu was also quite curious, right, how can you communicate with ferocious beasts? Song Ku and Su Xing turned their heads, their eyes sparkling as they looked at Lin Yuyu. Lin Yuyu flipped her hair and smiled alluringly, thought you guys weren't interested. Well then, let me tell you my legendary story. Before the collapse of the elderly people's nation, Lin Yuyu had sung a song on the ribbon bridge, incorporating a faint awakened energy. She hoped to communicate with marine creatures. However, whether it was due to the wrong frequency or the fact that ferocious beasts, despite their intelligence, lacked spiritual intelligence, there was no response at the time. She assumed that her attempt had failed. It was at the moment when Lin Yuyu, with her life jacket torn, was about to sink and suffocate that she was saved by that mutated Kuan. At that time, she was in a daze, thinking she was experiencing a hallucination until she surfaced, coughing violently, confirming that she had indeed encountered a miracle. Through the low hum of the mutated Kuan, Lin Yuyu learned that it wasn't a native creature of the Endless Sea. Due to its unique sound frequency, it couldn't communicate with other members of its kind and could only wander alone in the eastern and northern seas of the Alliance. Today was the first time it heard and understood the song of its kind. Lin Yuyu still found it unbelievable, I can't explain why, but I can indeed communicate with it using my ability. I feel like it's not a ferocious beast. After listening to Lin Yuyu's description, something flashed quickly in Song Ku's mind, I've also encountered a strange ferocious beast. She had encountered a peculiar large bird in the Yu Mountain Martial Arts School after the apocalypse. At that time, she was covered in blood, emitting a fierce aura, but the creature, perched on the window sill, observed her quietly for a long time without any intention of attacking. Zhuang Qinyan spoke slowly, humans can differentiate into zombies and awakeners. Animals, influenced by radiation, can also undergo different mutations. 
what you encountered can't be truly considered as ferocious beasts. Perhaps they can be called animal awakeners. Song Ku had a sudden insight, a beast that is not ferocious. Zhuang Qinyan hesitated, well, something like that. Just understand the meaning the name is not important. All right, you can rest now. Any other questions? Zhuang Qinyan said. Yes. Lu Xiaoyu silently raised a mechanical arm, the starship borrowed from the northern base is lost. The Trojan horse I implanted is about to expire. Have you thought about what will happen then? I know, will be wanted. Su Xing eagerly answered. Everyone. What's going on? From the Sin City to Mu City and then to Northern Base, they were clearly law-abiding citizens, so why are they on the blacklist everywhere they go? Zhuang Qinyan helplessly rubbed his forehead, I'll contact Yi Zimei. In District B6, Beijun. In a spacious office, a woman's figure blended into the darkness, like a silent statue, silently gazing at the suspended screen in front of her. On the desk behind her, there was a golden invitation card, and at the bottom was the signature from Utopia. This was a pass, or a boarding pass, a ticket to board Utopia. Although a notification could easily be sent through the terminal, for some unknown reason, the person sending the invitation chose the oldest form of paper invitation. It seemed like they wanted to leave the last trace of their existence in the abandoned world. Few people knew about the existence of Utopia, and even fewer would refuse the precious boarding pass. If everything went as planned, the woman in front of the screen should have already been enjoying a new life in Utopia. However, from start to finish, she never cast a glance at the desk, keeping her eyes fixed on the recording, repeatedly pressing the pause button at the same moment. It was when the armored sea turtle self-destructed, and the massive body generated a very subtle pause. If one didn't observe carefully, it could easily be overlooked, but the woman was absolutely certain that it was the work of a mental awakener. A blurry silhouette flashed at the edge of the frame, and no matter how many times she pressed pause, the specific appearance could not be clearly seen. Even when enlarged to the maximum, the frozen image only revealed modeled pixels. The focus of the video was on Song Ku, who single-handedly killed the level 5 ferocious beast. No one would pay attention to the inconspicuous bystander, especially when the person's face was unclear. The woman dragged the video back repeatedly, playing those brief two seconds over and over. The room's lights turned on, gradually illuminating the woman's exquisite face. Even though her youth had faded, traces of her once stunning beauty could still be glimpsed. Aside from her appearance, due to years of holding a high position, she exuded a kind of chilling, captivating, and indomitable aura that made it impossible to look directly at her. The woman slowly spoke, her slightly hoarse voice echoing in the room, can this video be deleted? The holographic projection on the other end answered respectfully, I'm sorry, General. I'm afraid it can't be completely deleted. Then suppress the visibility, lower it to the minimum. Yes. Have Lieutenant and from the 11th unit come over. Before long, a neatly dressed young man in military uniform appeared. Lieutenant Han, removing his military cap, held it in his arm and respectfully lowered his head, General. It was none other than Anchiwen, a former member of the Azure Phoenix 11th unit. The woman nodded slightly and asked calmly, I've read the report you submitted, which mentioned the V587 team. Anchiwen was slightly surprised. V587 didn't have a direct connection with their mission at that time, so he had only briefly mentioned it. After more than half a year, he hadn't expected to hear that name again from the person across from him. The general's memory was perhaps too remarkable. Yes, Captain Wu had dealings with them. Once again, bringing up the name of Wu Juamin, the grief and anger in Anchiwen's heart erupted like a dormant volcano. His voice trembled a bit. The woman pressed the play button from across the holographic display, and the looped video restarted once more. Do you know these people? And Chiwen focused, carefully identifying each figure. Song Ku, Su Xing, and two others I've seen at ULab, named Lin Yu Yu and Su Cha. As for Fang Jishu, whom he hadn't met, and the one not appearing in the frame, Lu Xiaoyu, and Chiwen naturally couldn't recognize them. He suddenly thought of something but wasn't sure if that person could be considered a member of V587. After all, at the end of the day, 
it was challenging for Awakeners and ordinary people to form a team based on mutual trust. They might have gone their separate ways a long time ago. At that time, there was another person with Song Ku, a wheelchair-bound individual who claimed to be a senior maintenance engineer for the weather mimicry system. His name is Zhuang Qinyan, and Qiwen answered truthfully. What did you say? Zhuang Qinyan. Did he say that's his name? Yes. And Chiwen was somewhat puzzled by the woman's reaction but answered decisively, we verified his credentials, and he indeed came from the Qinglan Research Institute. His work ID bears the name Zhuang Qinyan. The office fell into a dead silence. After a while, a soft sigh echoed in the room. Dim moonlight outside shone onto the desk, accidentally illuminating the heading of the boarding pass. Respected General Xielan, we sincerely invite you to Utopia. Chapter, 203. Reward in advance. It's ridiculous. The roar of Yi Zimei echoed through the communication, shaking the eardrums of those in the compartment. Song Ku quickly adjusted the volume down. This upright third-generation official was obviously shocked by their audacious operation, and her voice trembled as she spoke, dot. You the dignified S7 level, an all-A awakener team, how could you, how could you do something like stealing a starship? It was Zhuang Qinyan who said that borrowing and returning doesn't count as stealing Su Xing muttered softly, betraying his teammate without loyalty. Yi Zimei heard it and immediately retorted, that's still committing a crime and getting away with it. At most, it's considered voluntary surrender. Besides, did you return it? Last time, we did return it. Captain Song, with a sense of responsibility, stepped forward and sincerely admitted, this time, there was a small accident. The energy source of that starship had been absorbed by the ascending Utopia, and its main body had long been reduced to debris in the underwater vortex. What? There was a last time. Yi Zimei was almost out of breath. Song Ku sighed, guiltily covering his mouth. Yi Zimei earnestly advised, if you need a starship, you can tell me. I can help you apply. Lin Yu Yu sarcastically commented, by the time the approval process of your Awakener department is completed, the dishes would have been cold. Yi Zimei choked up. The Starship was the most advanced flying terminal in the Alliance, with all public routes fully automated. However, for private travel with an undetermined route, it required a specially trained pilot, and the application process was very lengthy. Sometimes, waiting for a schedule could take half a month. You can't steal either Yi Zimei side weekly. Forget it, forget it. I'll handle the damaged starship for you. I'll also apply for another private one for you. Without a pilot, the approval process can be much faster. With my grandfather supporting you, you can take the backdoor route. Miss Yi, how is the progress of the laboratory you mentioned earlier? Zhuang Qinyan suddenly spoke up. Oh, I've already arranged it. Once you land, Bai Qi will take you there. Don't worry, this time, no one dares to kidnap you. Yi Zimei vaguely knew that Song Ku had some health issues, and the conflict with Yi Chiohong was also related to this. When Zhuang Qinyan proposed having a separate laboratory, she didn't ask much and readily agreed, efficiently arranging the location in less than a day. Song Ku made a magnanimous old man gesture on the opposite side. Zhuang Qinyan understood and said, Thank you then. After we handle our current affairs, we will go to see General Yi at the earliest opportunity. After ending the communication, his gaze dropped. It had been over 24 hours since Song Ku grew a snake tail. During this time, they tried various methods, intentionally frightening, stimulating with awakened energy, and even having Su Cha cut Song Ku's tail with a knife, but it still wouldn't revert. Afterward, they were sternly educated by Fang Zhishu who criticized them for acting recklessly just because they had a healer and Song Ku could self-heal her wounds. However, for Song Ku, these signs of transformation were very dangerous. Genes also had their own awareness. If they considered the existence of a snake tail as normal and solidified it, the consequences would be unimaginable. Zhuang Qinyan urgently wanted to take her for a recovery experiment. Although, Theoretically, he could handle this matter independently, he didn't dare to take the risk with Song Ku. After pondering for a moment, he tapped out another communication. 
The next morning, the groggy-eyed group heard good news. Zhuang Qingyan's submitted explanatory report smoothly passed the supplier audit, and the rewards for the S-level commission came belatedly. Whether it was shutting down the weather simulation system, killing the armored sea turtle, or investigating the truth behind the disappearance of the elderly people's nation, V587 played a crucial role. They became the biggest winners of this mission, receiving a substantial amount of points, totaling several million. As for the ranking that Song Ku was most concerned about, V587 finally made a breakthrough. From the awkward position of neither high nor low, they leaped to the 52nd place in the Northern Base and the 1314th place in the New Asia Alliance. Five days later. Outside the perimeter of the Northern Base, at the starship port of Qianzhan City. No matter when, this place was always bustling with people. Those who wanted to join District B hurriedly moved about, and the enthusiastic shouts of intermediaries echoed continuously. Seven people, including Song Ku, descended from the starship and quickly blended into the crowd in the dim night. They purposely chose to disembark at the previous station to avoid coinciding with Tustin. In case the enthusiastic father-daughter duo, Yin Xiao and Jennifer, had any sudden suggestions for extending their involvement, it would be troublesome. Upon leaving the station, Lin Yuyu turned around, the lower half of her face securely hidden behind a mask, let's head back to the apartment first. After Yang Xiaobo's video spread, V587 was well known throughout the northern base. It was better for them to keep a low profile. Lu Xiaoyu waved his mechanical arm and joked, I hope the captain comes back with more legs than now. Song Ku had developed a resistance to his sarcastic remarks, I'll try my best, try my best. Zhuang Qinyan pushed Song Ku towards Bai Qi and walked towards him. Seeing the change in the person sitting in the wheelchair, Bai Qi seemed unfazed. The two got into a floating car. With V587's newfound fame, if they were ordinary people, there would surely be some gossip and inquiries about inside information. However, Bai Qi remained silent throughout the journey to the destination. It wasn't until the two got off the car that he finally spoke, surprisingly, do you need me to wait for you? No need, thank you, Song Ku politely replied. Bai Qi hesitated for a moment, breaking his usual silence, Miss Yi has bought this place, and I have already removed the surveillance inside. In other words, whatever they did in the laboratory would not be discovered. Song Ku gave a mental thumbs up to Yi Zimei, appreciating her generosity. She had only mentioned connecting them with the laboratory, but unexpectedly, she went ahead and directly bought it. After bidding farewell to Bai Qi, Zhuang Qinyan entered the password provided by Yi Zimei, and the main door opened slowly. The two took the elevator down to the basement. With no one else around, Song Ku let loose completely. Sliding down from the wheelchair, her long tail covered the corridor as she moved forward silently. Clattering sounds echoed in the spacious corridor, only the sound of Zhuang Qinyan's footsteps, slowly following behind Song Ku, trying not to step on her. However, Song Ku was used to walking on two legs. During the days on the starship, she had been curled up in the compartment without a chance to practice the S-shaped balance of a crawling creature. Without taking a few steps, she fell face down on the ground. Ouch! Tears welled up in Song Ku's eyes as she hummed while covering her nose. Suddenly, a pair of long legs appeared in front of her. Zhuang Qinyan half squatted down, his hands around her back, attempting to lift her up. Song Ku felt embarrassed, I can get up by myself. Her fingertips touched the ground, trying to stand up on her own, but the floor was too slippery, and her snake tail kept slithering, and she twisted and fluttered from side to side as soon as she stood up. Snap! A crisp slap sounded, and Zhuang Qingyan's gold-rimmed glasses fell to the ground. Song Ku looked at the clear red mark on his face, uh. The laboratory was silent, and the polished floor reflected the glaring light overhead. Zhuang Qinyan, with lowered eyes, couldn't see his expression clearly, but anyone could guess that this young master had never been slapped across the face. Feeling guilty, Song Ku wished she could hide in the floor, sorry. It's okay, Zhuang Qinyan sighed and simply sat down on the floor, Song Ku, let's talk. Song Ku sat up straight, okay. Epigenetics, do you know about it? Song Ku looked puzzled, using her eyes to convey, do I look like I know? 
Zhuang Qinyan helped her adjust her hair and naturally switched to a more straightforward explanation, in simple terms, there are significant differences in chromosome number and genome sequence between different species. Even for the same DNA sequence, tiny changes in regulatory mechanisms can have a significant impact on gene expression. Song Kun nodded and shifted forward, hands on the ground, attentively listening. Without a change in expression, Zhuang Qinyan subtly moved his knee, conveniently encircling her. After entering the new era, the human genome sequencing progress has reached 100%. This also means that, compared to other organisms, our DNA chain is more transparent and complete. However, you are different. About 16% of your genes are unknown. Song Ku hesitated and nodded. Although the homology between humans and snakes is 85%, a normal person won't suddenly turn into a snake without artificial intervention not even half a snake. Do you understand? Song Ku closed her mouth in frustration and continued nodding. So, I suspect that Yu Zhuang Qinyan didn't finish his sentence. He stared at the girl in front of him, falling into an unusual silence. You suspect that I am an experimental subject, Song Ku raised her head, calmly completing his sentence for him. Zhuang Qinyan was momentarily stunned, not expecting Song Ku to voice this conclusion herself. Song Ku wasn't naive. Ever since Zhuang Qinyan saw the complete report on her awakened energy, he had worn a heavy expression. After experiencing so much post-apocalypse, being exposed to so much, could he truly be unaware of her abnormality? No, in fact, she had a faint premonition. This premonition received irrefutable confirmation when she inexplicably grew a snake tail. Zhuang Qinyan nodded slightly, I suspect you were once involved in a genetic fusion experiment, but you have no related memories. So, we cannot determine the specific location, time, operator, and how to decode it. We need to decode those unknown genes. Decoding? Do you know how? Song Ku blinked. Yes, Zhuang Qinyan held her hand and slowly brought it close to his forehead, here, it contains all the data about genetic experiments, precise to every log, every sequence, every experience of success or failure. As long as we can detect those unknown sequences, I can figure out your origin and find a more stable way for you. Actually, Zhuang Qinyan had deeper concerns in his heart, but before confirming, he decided not to tell Song Ku. What exactly do I need to do for the experiment? Song Ku extended her fingertip and lightly poked his forehead. You need to attach sensors, inject drugs, undergo instrument checks, and there might be slight radiation, Zhuang Qinyan explained. Song Ku impatiently flicked her tail tip, I don't like being locked up. The previous experience of excessive radiation was too terrible. She deeply disliked the confined and narrow capsule chamber. Zhuang Qinyan pinched her cheeks and shook them, I won't lock you up, absolutely not. He suddenly smiled, and ripples appeared in his profound eyes, to be honest, even though I have abundant theoretical knowledge, this will be my first time conducting a real experiment. In order to ensure a smooth process, can you? Can I what? Song Ku asked unclearly. Can you give me a reward in advance? Zhuang Qinyan murmured almost inaudibly, his light-colored eyes filled with a teasing smile, and his handsome face seemed to sparkle. Huh. Song Ku's heart skipped a beat, not fully understanding, but somehow, her blood circulation suddenly accelerated, rushing to the top of her head. Their posture was already somewhat ambiguous, with Song Ku nestled between Zhuang Qingyan's parted legs. So when he slowly lowered his head, and his slightly cool lips covered hers, Song Ku had nowhere to escape. The snake tail instinctively moved and subconsciously wrapped around Zhuang Qingyan's waist. It was a light touch with a hint of Zhuang Qingyan's aura, like delicate butterfly wings. At first, it was a shallow exploration, drifting and meandering on her lips. Gradually, the mild coolness turned into warmth, and the demanding force became stronger. Then, a faint and teasing laughter echoed, silly open your mouth. The thumping heartbeat was deafening, Goosebumps erupted on Song Ku's back, and she was stunned in place, not knowing how to resist. Her fingers curled, and the long snake tail tightened involuntarily, even the scales couldn't help but stretch. Zhuang Qingyan's palm slid from her cheek to the back of her head, about to deepen the moment. 
The instrument is calibrated. What are you two doing, still not coming in? A sudden voice echoed at the end of the corridor. The enchanting atmosphere between the two abruptly came to a halt. Zhuang Qinyan closed his eyes, and his forehead throbbed heavily. Seeing the newcomer clearly, Song Ku widened her eyes, pushed Zhuang Qinyan away in an instant, and swung her tail, wrapping it around the person's neck. Ning Rong's face turned as red as a pig liver, his feet off the ground, choking out a thunderous cough, 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 cough. Zhuang Qinyan, with his back to the two, pulled his hair back and let out a deep sigh, Song Ku, I asked him to come. Song Ku loosened her grip on Ning Rong slightly, keeping a vigilant gaze on him. If Ning Rong made any inappropriate moves, she was ready to take action. Zhuang Qinyan awkwardly moved his knee, and in a low, throaty voice, he said with a hint of gritted teeth, Dr. Ning, my mood is exceptionally bad right now. Explain yourself. Chapter 204 Wildcat Ning Rong still had that serious appearance of sleep deprivation, with white streaks in his temples, looking tired. His drooping eyes fixed on the snake tail on Song Ku. I know you harbor hatred towards me, but today cough, I am not your enemy. He covered his bruised neck, his voice hoarse and dry, cough this kid and I made a deal, he asked me to come here tonight as his experimental assistant. For someone like Ning Rong, a giant in his field, serving as an assistant to a nobody like Zhuang Qinyan? Saying it out loud would probably drop the jaws of everyone who heard it. Aren't you from He Hong? Song Kun narrowed her eyes, expressing doubt about his words. Just as Ning Rong was about to speak, a sudden chill ran down his back, a cold sensation as if he were being stared at by a crawling creature. He raised his head slightly, and vertical pupils appeared in Song Ku's eyes, indicating that her transformation was deepening. I belong to no one, Ning Rong sighed, he chill home wanted my research results, so she provided money and equipment. I need a team and space for independent experiments, so I temporarily accepted her protection. In the end, we're just in a mutually beneficial relationship. That time before, I suggested her to bring you here, but I didn't expect her to use such an aggressive approach. He Chilhong is skilled in political tactics but knows nothing about academics. She thought I wanted to use you for human experiments, like those mutated zombies, but she was wrong. There was a certain fanaticism in Ning Rong's eyes as he took a step forward involuntarily. Since I saw your Awakener report, I had a premonition. Your ability to withstand strong radiation will be the key to my breakthrough in research. People involved in research are not quite normal to begin with, and Ning Rong's persistence and madness surpassed that of ordinary people. Suddenly, Song Ku raised her hand and threw a blue flying knife, nailing Ning Rong's shoe tip, causing him to stumble and fall to the ground with a plop. Ning Rong, she is not your experimental subject, Zhuang Qinyan slowly stood up, picked up his glasses and put them on, giving a cold warning. I understand. I promised you I wouldn't have any ideas about her again, but you better keep your word too, Ning Rong seemed quite wary of him. Why did you look for him? Song Ku, displeased, bumped her head against Zhuang Qinyan. Sorry, I Zhuang Qinyan straightforwardly admitted his mistake, but his tone was somewhat hesitant. Ning Rong, leaning against the wall, awkwardly spoke, anti-genetic experiments are extremely dangerous. If any step goes wrong, it could spiral out of control. This kid doesn't have full confidence, and he was afraid you might get hurt, so he had to find someone to assist. Song Ku was momentarily stunned, recalling Zhuang Qinyan's mention of the first time. Just as she was feeling disoriented, she almost overlooked this statement. Does Zhuang Qinyan also have times when he's uncertain? He always seemed indifferent, as if he had everything under control. Could it be that because she was the subject of the experiment, he dared not take any risks? Ning Rong exerted force with both hands, finally pulling out the flying knife that had pierced through the tip of his shoe, and handed it back to Song Ku, saying, And I, I have participated in the Fire Seed and Eternal Life projects before. The current research topic is also closely related to genetic engineering. Among the living geneticists in the entire alliance, you won't find anyone with more experience and suitability than me. Furthermore, I am still a member of the Qinglan Research Institute. When he was a child, I even 
Dr. Ning, there's no need for some of this nonsense, Chuang Qinyan interrupted. Ning Rong waved his hand, okay, your situation can't be delayed. Come in quickly. Song Ku stared at him warily without moving. Ning Rong sighed again, even if you don't believe me, shouldn't you trust this kid beside you? I promise, whatever happens here tonight, no fourth person will know. Zhuang Qinyan quickly wrote an S in Song Ku's palm. Song Ku instantly understood and nodded silently. Even though Ning Rong was just an ordinary person, he dared to come here alone, facing two S-level awakeners. The risks he had to bear were much greater, considering that they could easily kill him with their abilities. Song Ku swayed her tail, not very proficiently maneuvering through the corridor. The three entered the interior of the laboratory. Without paying attention to the sealed capsule compartments, Zhuang Qinyan chose the most spacious examination room and brought over the necessary instruments. The room had a constant, slightly cool temperature. Zhuang Qinyan deliberately dimmed the light, making it bright but not glaring. Then, he brought out a soft leather reclining chair, removed the restraints on it, and with a single push from Song Ku's hand, she jumped onto it. Her tail coiled up halfway, with the remaining sharp end hanging down to the floor. On the spacious and messy experimental table, various instruments were arranged. Ning Rong was about to operate the equipment when Zhuang Qinyan stopped him, saying, I'll do it. He lowered his gaze, quickly recalling relevant information in his mind. Frowning slightly at the center of his eyebrows, he seemed unsure of where to start. Ning Rong pursed his lips and couldn't help but remind him, start by operating the blood centrifuge, draw serum, take 400 cubic centimeters from each hand. Zhuang Qinyan retorted coldly, why do you need so much? It doesn't hurt if I don't take yours, does it? Running a lap with 400 cubic centimeters is enough. Ning Rong's lips twitched. He thought, you're not like your genius father. Can you ensure there's no loss when dealing with such a delicate matter? After all, he still needed replenishment. But, Zhuang Qinyan indeed made no mistakes. He was more precise and skilled than the assistant who had been with him for four or five years. Ning Rong had nothing to say. Sensors covered Song Ku's tail, and she curiously poked at them. Zhuang Qinyan came over with a syringe, saying, Are you afraid of drawing blood? Song Ku shook her head, rolled up her sleeve, and confidently extended her arm. Zhuang Qinyan carefully drew exactly 400 cubic centimeters, his movements delicate and gentle. As soon as he pulled out the needle and was about to apply the hemostatic cotton, the wound had already healed. His fingers holding the cotton froze. Song Ku chuckled. His actions were too slow her second ability had already taken effect. Zhuang Qinyan's expression remained unchanged. He casually handed over the cotton, press it yourself, don't bleed back. Song Ku suppressed her laughter and cooperatively said, sure. The results of the blood routine came out quickly, showing that Song Ku's life indicators were basically normal. Zhuang Qinyan lowered his head to control the gene spectrometer, entered the decryption program, and patiently waited for the results by comparing them in the vast database. Ning Rong, who was observing on the side, sighed silently. This guy had a vacant expression, hands in his pockets. Did he not know he should be recording the critical waveband data? Opening a holographic screen, Ning Rong diligently started assisting, all the while bringing up another topic, last time you asked me whether my research is about the fire seed, or the eternal life plan. Zhuang Qinyan glanced at him, I told you I'm not interested. Neither. Ning Rong answered on his own, neither of them I'm researching a third kind. Song Ku, with a silver helmet-like device on her head, looked like she was getting her hair done, what's the difference between fire seed and eternal life? She never quite understood the relationship between the two. Whenever Zhuang Qinyan and Lin Xiu talked about the fire seed, they seemed fine, but there was never a good expression when the eternal life plan was mentioned. Ning Rong explained, fire seed is a gene project independently developed by Qinglan, with Vincent as its core. The initial purpose was to make human genes stabilize through selective fusion, thereby reducing the occurrence of diseases and extending the average lifespan. Less sickness, longer life, right? Song Ku nodded, somewhat understanding. It sounded good, 
and her body was particularly strong, never falling ill. When I joined, a year late and still not part of the core team, the Loke accident erupted. The Fire Seed project went bankrupt, and the Alliance reclaimed all related research permissions. And the Eternal Life Plan is a gene project too. Zero launched by the Alliance later, Ning Rong's mouth drooped, their ambitions were too great. They not only wanted eternal life but also to awaken powerful abilities in humans. However, the condition was that all results would only serve a specific elite group. The original intention of Fire Seed was completely distorted, and since the eternal life plan involved biological experiments, I withdrew. And my research is 3. 0. As the apocalypse approaches, the first batch of selections is completed, and the evolution of awakeners has become a certainty. As long as I find the optimal gene ratio and radiation threshold on this basis, I can make everyone, no, all awakeners Ning Rong became more and more excited as he spoke. What, is he Chilhong complaining that her life is not long enough? Zhuang Qinyan sneered coldly. He Chilhong appeared fair and just on the surface, but deep down, she considered herself superior and was an extremely selfish utilitarian. To consolidate her position, she secretly supported Ning Rong's research, which seemed reasonable. Ning Rong shook his head, I'm not speaking for He Chiohong, but what she does might not necessarily be for herself. As you know, that person's health isn't very good, especially this year relying entirely on an S-level constitution. My research has been stagnant, and she can't sit still. That person's song could blinked. Ning Rong was probably talking about General Yi Zheng, right? General Ye's health had deteriorated to this extent. Beep, beep. During the conversation, the spectrometer displayed the results. Zhuang Qinyan focused his gaze, it's similar to what I thought. This is not an ordinary snake gene, it's the hook snake. The hook snake, a mythical creature in ancient texts of the old civilization, with a length of over 20 meters, amphibious, and possessing a forked and highly poisonous tail, used to capture and prey on humans and livestock. Why would it be a hook snake? Ning Rong was surprised. This is a replicated gene. Replicated genes refer to those extinct creatures in the natural world, resurrected through artificial recombination. The original samples of these genes are extremely precious and are kept by specialized organizations. Ning Rong vaguely remembered it was called Tiani or Zhenyi. I'm not sure about other organizations, but Qinglan has bulk purchased replicated genes. At least 47 branches, including Ulab, have preserved copies of the samples, Zhuang Qinyan accurately reported the number. Ning Rong glanced at him, your brain works well. After thinking for a moment, Ning Rong said, replicated genes are not easy to eliminate. Restoring them to normal requires using reverse radiation stimulation, which can temporarily make them recede. What are the values? Zhuang Qinyan asked. 15 to 20 percent, I guess. Snake gene activity is very low. Oh, by the way, adjust the radiation intensity next door, Ning Rong said. Zhuang Qinyan stood up. Just before leaving, he coldly warned, don't touch the instruments. Once Zhuang Qinyan walked away, Ning Rong lowered his voice and complained, his face does look like old Zhuang, and his temper is exactly like his mother's. Song Ku moved her ears, mother. She had never heard Zhuang Qinyan mention his parents. Ning Rong flipped through the holographic screen without much attention, a group of bandits stormed into the laboratory back then, wanting to take him away. That's when we found out that this kid had actually skipped school in Luponi, ran over to help old Zhuang, and even lied to him, saying it was a holiday. It infuriated old Zhuang. Zhuang Qinyan had such a black history. Song Ku listened with relish, but she suddenly realized something, bandits. Under his mother's command, a group of tall soldiers in military uniforms, all of them awakeners. Back then, awakeners were highly valued. Using them to catch truant children was simply a waste of resources, Ning Rong lamented. Awakeners tall soldiers military. Song Ku looked at Ning Rong in silence. This person hadn't even realized how shocking his words were. Slap. Song Ku's snake tail once again tightened around his neck, exerting a bit more force. Stop talking. 
You're not allowed to talk about him, anything at all. Not a word. When Zhuang Qinyan returned, the examination room fell silent. Ning Rong stayed far away, and the bruise on his neck seemed to have deepened in color. He didn't pay it much attention. After adjusting the values, Zhuang Qinyan pulled down the partition board, blocking Ning Rong outside, and went inside to accompany Song Ku while observing her condition. Even with 15% excess radiation, ordinary people couldn't endure it, but an S level could persist for a while. Leaning against the countertop, Zhuang Qinyan looked down at Song Ku, the reverse radiation test will emit different wavelengths. We need to find the segment that can stimulate you to revert. Song Ku nodded, okay. Faint radiation surrounded the two, and each time the wavelength changed, Zhuang Qinyan would remind her. Twenty minutes later, Song Ku's snake tail twitched, and the scales began to fade. Zhuang Qinyan's eyes curved slightly, but he suddenly thought of something, and his smile disappeared abruptly. Swiftly, he pulled out a blanket from space and covered Song Ku entirely. After a while, two little feet appeared at the edge of the blanket. It turned back. Song Ku's muffled voice came out, and her toes moved flexibly. Zhuang Qinyan turned his back, looking somewhat unnatural. Song Ku, put on your pants first. Rustling sounds followed, and Song Ku urged, Okay, okay, look at it quickly. Zhuang Qinyan slowly turned around, and Song Ku was joyfully examining her legs, happily touching them. He raised a faint smile. She had finally returned to normal. Ning Rong, who didn't know what was happening inside, knocked on the protective glass from outside. Hey, come out and take a look. The radiation was turned off, the partition board raised, and Zhuang Qinyan returned to the instrument. What's wrong? Ning Rong's expression was very serious as he pointed to the instrument screen, look, this is the hook snake's wavelength. It has weakened, but there are new curves here. Roughly estimating, there are a total of four segments. Zhuang Qinyan's eyelids twitched. New wavelengths meant new unknown genes. Inside the room, Song Ku's nose suddenly itched, and she sneezed, ah chu. Then she saw the sensors on the hair steaming machine. They shone, swaying on top of her head. Song Ku's gaze gradually fixed, and an inexplicable longing surged within her. It was as if she was deeply drawn to something. Her hands curved delicately, pressing lightly on the ground, her body's center of gravity lowered, but her waist and hips raised high. The muscles in her calves were tense, resembling an agile feline, with faint brown spots appearing on her skin. Then, her two ears moved gently. As Zhuang Qinyan raised his head, he noticed her abnormality and had a bad premonition, Song Ku. Startled, Song Ku's pointed ears stood up instantly. With a thud, she leaped, jumping a full six meters high, reaching out to grab the swaying sensor while simultaneously smashing through the ceiling. Lime and debris fell down, dust filled the examination room, and Zhuang Qinyan weakly covered his face. On the spectrometer, the analysis of the second unknown gene coincidentally appeared a wildcat. This was the highest jumping and most ferocious wildcat in the natural world. Song Ku cautiously peeked half of her head through the hole she had created. She had completely lost control of her physiological reactions, just wanting to grab the shiny thing. Crack several more pieces of rubble fell, hitting the ground near Zhuang Qinyan's feet. He looked up and locked eyes with Song Ku. Song Ku's eyes were innocent, and reflexively, she meowed. Chapter, 205 I couldn't become a saint and a fire sea dark. Come down, he said. The room was filled with smoke, making it difficult for Zhuang Qinyan to breathe. He raised his hand and loosened the collar around his throat. Knowing she had caused trouble, Song Ku shrank into the hole, revealing only half of her furry head. Zhuang Qinyan realized his tone was too harsh and quickly lowered his voice, coaxing, Be good, I won't be mad at you. Come down quickly. Who could bear to scold a little cat, even if it was a stray cat? Song Ku cautiously peeked out half of her body, scrutinizing Zhuang Qinyan with suspicion. Then, her spine flexed softly, and she landed silently on the ground, as if she had plushy paw pads. She still held a shiny sensor in her hand. Luckily, the laboratory was underground, 
and Song Ku only broke through one layer of the ceiling. Otherwise, if people passing by outside saw it, it would be in the news. However, the newly purchased lab was now in a mess due to this incident, and it was inevitable that there would be a scolding from Yi Zimei. Zhuang Qinyan lowered his gaze to inspect Song Ku. The spots on Song Ku's body had mostly faded away. Although her limbs were thin, they were covered with a thin layer of muscle, making her look no different from before. The performance of the wildcat gene this time was significantly different from the hook snake gene, only inheriting biological characteristics with no external alien changes. Because Song Ku broke the power lines, some equipment had stopped running, including the gene spectrum analyzer. Zhuang Qinyan used the remaining instruments to conduct a rough examination and found that her vital signs had returned to the normal level of a typical awakener. From the results, the performance of the wildcat gene is more stable. Ning Rong's throat was hoarse. He glanced at the spectrum analyzer because of the power interruption, and the decoding of the two genes behind was not successful. I suggest maintaining the current situation, waiting for the hook snake gene to become recessive, and then switching to other frequency bands. If you want to clarify the DNA structure in her body, you must consider the issues of solidification and radiation. It's best to have intervals of more than a week between each experiment. The unknown genes in Song Ku's body were like opening a blind box you never knew what would come out next. If something stable, like the wildcat, was revealed, it was okay. However, if something as highly transformed as the hook snake emerged, it could potentially affect their actions for some time. After all, reverse radiation would cause irreversible damage to the human magnetic field, which even awakeners couldn't endure continuously they had to take it slow. Here, this is the data from the just now frequency. I've organized it for you. Ning Rong handed over the light screen. No need, Zhuang Qinyan glanced at it and casually refused, I've memorized it. Ning Rong frowned, showing clear disagreement. Don't joke around. The matter of the experiment cannot be taken lightly. A small mistake. Zhuang Qinyan smoothly reported a string of data, and Ning Rong immediately realized that it was the log of the crucial decoding points. He flipped to the corresponding lines on the screen, finding that they were accurate down to the last detail. Though he had heard about it earlier, witnessing it with his own eyes was still unbelievable. This guy's memory was simply extraordinary. Ning Rong looked at him with an increasingly eager expression. My work is done. Will you keep your promise? Is the current challenge for you the uncontrollability of excessive radiation? Chuang Qinyan asked. In high-dose radiation, after the double-strand DNA breaks and reconnects, there's a phenomenon of single-base permutation, Ning Rong quickly explained. I remember that old Zhuang led a specialized study in this area, in the 27th year. Or was it the 28th year? Zhuang Qinyan only took a few seconds to think. In the new calendar year 28, the second stage of the prospective experiment on fire seed, focusing on genetic mutation inheritance caused by radiation. I'll send you the relevant data. During their conversation, Song Ku ran around cleaning up the scene, setting the overturned equipment back in place, pushing the leather recliner back, and diligently mopping the floor. Zhuang Qinyan helped with a few things, and after a simple cleanup, they were ready to leave. Ning Rong stopped him and, with a dry tone from his gritted teeth, said, You've memorized all the content of that central hub, right? Even though I don't know how you did it, what about the rest of the fire seed data? Are you going to let it gather dust forever? The air froze for a moment. The fire seed has already failed, Zhuang Qingyan's tone remained steady. Those data have no significance. As if a drop of water fell into hot oil, Ning Rong's eyes turned red, and his emotions erupted completely. How can it be meaningless? You don't understand the importance of the fire seed at all. Even if it failed, which step failed and why it failed, all of that is valuable experience and accumulation. As long as it can be made public, why should so many of us, for so many years, blindly stumble forward? It's clearly something beneficial to all of humanity. If old Zhuang were still here, he would definitely do it. Zhuang Qinyan suddenly clenched his fists, his straight back becoming tense. He turned around, his expression on his face reaching the utmost indifference. 
something beneficial to all of humanity, what does it have to do with me? Ning Rong froze. I'm not him. I have low morals, am despicably selfish I couldn't become a saint. Zhuang Qinyan lazily pocketed his hands, looking down at Ning Rong from his taller position. The light-colored eyes behind the lenses showed no warmth. Dr. Ning, the Fire Seed Project has no meaning in replication. Whether you want to do version 3. Zero or benefit all of humanity, I sincerely advise you to ask your former colleagues for the Eternal Life Project data. From a common sense perspective, that direction might yield some results, unlike banging on a bamboo basket and fetching nothing. Ning Ron was speechless for a moment, unable to find words. We're leaving, no need to send us off. When Zhuang Qinyan turned around, he had already resumed his usual indifferent expression. On the way out of the laboratory, Song Ku silently gazed at the sharp jawline of the person next to her. Zhuang Qinyan lowered his head and met her gaze that she hadn't managed to divert in time. A hint of mockery flashed in his eyes. Did I startle you? Song Ku shook her head. What you said, is it true? Zhuang Qinyan, a person who lied as naturally as he breathed, made it impossible for Song Ku to be certain about his true thoughts. But since he said he wouldn't lie to her, she might as well ask. Which sentence? Zhuang Qinyan asked with interest. The one about all of humanity, not concerning you, Song Ku replied honestly. Of course it's true. Whoever wants to be a savior can be one. I, on the other hand, cannot. Zhuang Qinyan smiled brightly. I can't manage everyone, but just you alone is enough to make me worry. He took Song Ku's hand, and their slender fingertips interlocked, turning into a gesture of intertwined fingers. A wildcat is something that can't settle down. I must keep an eye on you, he said. Song Ku grimaced at him but didn't pull her hand away. In Qianzhan City, the two wore masks as they strolled through the bustling streets and alleys. Song Ku wore a hooded ensemble, a style that neither of them particularly liked. The night market was lively and bustling, with colorful flying cars soaring across the sky. The crowd enthusiastically discussed the rankings of awakeners in the northern base. They boarded a floating bus headed for the inner city, which had no driver inside, and even the passengers were sparse. After the bus departed, the cool night breeze blew in from the windows. The figures below gradually shrank, becoming tiny like ants. Let's visit Professor Ming and his wife tomorrow, Zhuang Qinyan suddenly spoke. Song Ku calculated the date, realizing that tomorrow was Ming Gang and Lucia's wedding anniversary. Sure. Remember to bring a bouquet of flowers, Zhuang Qinyan patted her head. Ming Ji's flowers had withered someone should replace them. A dedicated starship glided through the night sky and smoothly landed at the platform. Wearing a dark gray suit, he Chiu Hong quickly walked out, her expression dignified, and a chilly wind followed her movements. The newly appointed administrative secretary followed closely behind. Director He, welcome back. During the two weeks of her suspension, He Chiu Hong went on a business trip, and no one knew exactly what she did. For S level awakeners will arrive tomorrow. Arrange their citizenship matters as soon as possible, He Chiu Hong said as she walked. Understood. The secretary responded, feeling amazed. Since Seigler was severely injured and Shize dropped to A level, the number of top tier awakeners in the northern base had decreased drastically. Unexpectedly, after He Chiu Hong's recent trip, she personally recruited for S level awakeners. Her actions were quite significant. While walking briskly, He Chiu Hong inquired about other matters what's the recent situation in the base? Their um, V-587 has returned, the secretary reported nervously. They just killed a level, five ferocious beast in the endless sea. I already know about that, so what? He Chiu Hong interrupted. So from now on, their direct contact person is Senior Yi Zime, the secretary hesitated for a moment, then, with determination in her eyes, she said, it's a direct order from General Yi. He Chiu Hong paused for a moment, then continued forward as if nothing had happened. Whatever the general's order is, I will follow. The secretary breathed a sigh of relief. How is the general's health recently? The secretary scratched her head. 
How could she, a small administrative secretary, know about General Ye's health? He Chilholm glanced at her. The new secretary wasn't handy, not sharp enough. She would have to be cultivated slowly. Taking a step forward, He Chilholm looked down at the brightly lit city from a high vantage point. The northern base housed millions of high-level awakeners and countless civilians. It was the largest human settlement in the entire alliance, also the safest fortress. Just like countless peaceful nights in the past. However, He Chilholm knew that with the rise of Utopia, the tranquility after the apocalypse was being shattered. A storm was coming. Garden apartments. The sound of the door opening caught the attention of the five people in the living room watching the news. Sister Su Xing, who was quietly plucking black hair from Fang Zhishu's head, quickly stood up and hugged Song Ku's thigh. You're okay. Any lingering effects? Lin Yuyu, with a face mask on, asked while taking the opportunity to touch Song Ku's waist. I don't think so, Song Ku felt itchy and smiled as she dodged. Xuan Qinyan followed behind. The situation has temporarily stabilized. Don't worry I'll take her for regular checkups. What are you guys watching? Song Ku asked curiously. Su Cha made room for her, and Song Ku tiptoed lightly to sit down. The news about Utopia has spread, Lu Xiaoyu enlarged one of the screens. After a few days of fermenting, the Utopia incident had completely heated up. Over a dozen magistrates issued a joint statement, demanding an explanation from the central court. Various protest marches continued in different districts, and even violent incidents breaking through blockades occurred. Unfortunately, the flying terminals were ruthlessly shot down before approaching the floating city. Videos about Utopia spread like wildfire on the Star Network, overshadowing the popularity of V-587 killing the armored sea turtle. On the other hand, the existence of the floating city disrupted the ecological balance, leading to abrupt global climate changes, with coastal areas being the most affected. In Takushima District B-16, three massive tsunamis occurred, and in Baishan District B-13, tornadoes ravaged, turning the city into ruins. On the ultra-clear projection, severe natural disasters engulfed several cities, and Song Ku's expression turned solemn. There's another bad news, but it seems like no one cares. Lu Xiaoyu brought up a screen from District C's terminal. The aggression of zombies and ferocious beasts in the lower-level districts has increased. The tide of zombies became more frequent, and the ferocious beasts became more ferocious. The combat power of these post-apocalyptic creatures seem to have invisibly strengthened. We're not sure if these effects are caused by utopia, but the situation is very grim. After discussing for a while, the seven people felt powerless against the current development trend of the Alliance. They could only take it step by step. Rest early, we'll go see General Yi tomorrow, Song Ku decided. Yawning, she stood up and, passing by a row of lush potted plants, sneezed twice. What's this? Oh, it's a new variety brought by the AI property management. They say it's a feature of the garden apartments, Lin Yuyu casually replied. Song Ku's nose twitched, she sniffed lightly, and then felt the urge to sneeze again. She quickly moved away. A small fluorescent sign fell from the flower pot, showing a warm reminder from the AI property management. Silver Vine, a family of the ancient plant kiwifruit. Be cautious if you have a cat at home. In a half dreamy state, Zhuang Qinyan felt something on his face, a small tongue, wet and filled with a lingering sense of attachment. His sleep was usually light, and he suddenly opened his eyes, reaching back to grab the person by the neck. Song Ku Song Ku's eyes were moist, with a few freckles appearing on the sides of her nose. Her two ears, for some reason, were swollen and red, possibly due to an allergy. She was lying on the bed, slowly lowering her head, licking Zhuang Qinyan's knuckles. Zhuang Qinyan's pupils contracted, as if pricked by a needle, and he abruptly withdrew his hand. The door opened slightly, and Song Ku clearly sneaked in. Her habit of not knocking on the door couldn't be changed, but how did she end up on the bed this time? Zhuang Qinyan half sat up, the sheet slipping down to his waist. He then realized something, quickly putting on a t-shirt, and looked down. Song Ku's condition was clearly not right. 
could it be that the invisible Jean had problems again? He reached out to feel the temperature on her forehead and cheeks. Where do you feel uncomfortable? Tell me. Song Ku looked quietly at him, not saying a word. Suddenly, she burrowed into the duvet, rolled around intoxicatedly, and her small dimples on the cheek were filled with water, resembling ripples. Zhuang Qin Yan, this didn't seem like discomfort it seemed extremely comfortable. Carefully, he pulled up his legs, moved back, leaned against the bedhead, and realized something. He hurriedly put on a t-shirt, lowered his gaze, and looked at Song Ku's somewhat abnormal state. His hands went to touch her forehead and face his temperature. What's bothering you? Hmm. Tell me. Song Ku rolled for a while, then on her own accord, snuggled up to him. Her eyelids were thin and reddened, and her lashes were filled with teary glimmers. She tightly hugged Zhuang Qinyan's narrow waist, rubbing back and forth on his faint abdominal muscles. Seemingly dissatisfied, she wriggled into his arms, sneezed lightly twice. Zhuang Qinyan felt like he was struck by lightning, and the joints of his fingers pressing on the bedsheet suddenly tightened. His hoarse voice changed, Song Ku. Ignoring her, Song Ku, holding him tightly, mumbled indistinctly, then grabbed his hand and put it on her ear. Zhuang Qinyan frowned in silence, his eyes deep like a cold pond. Song Ku, urging him, touched his wrist again. Zhuang Qinyan clenched his fists, and the veins bulged out, joints making a crack, crack sound. He tried to break free, but the strength of an S7 level awakener was no joke. Even if she was unconscious at the moment, he found it difficult to escape. After a while, Zhuang Qinyan stiffly moved his fingers, pinched the pair of reddened ears, and Song Ku made a comfortable purring sound in her throat, happily spreading her belly, finally quieting down. On the messy bed, the sheets were half-slipped, and Zhuang Qinyan sat motionless, mechanically rubbing the ears of the wildcat in his hands, one after another, with varying degrees of force. Let's go. Get ready to depart. In the early morning, Song Ku stretched lazily, full of energy. Hey, Captain, you slept well yesterday. Lin Yu Yu came out with a yawn, still half asleep, completely lacking the self-awareness of a female celebrity. Yeah. Extremely well. Song Ku's cheeks revealed a small dimple. It was the most sound sleep she had had in half a month. However, when she woke up, the corners of the quilt were tightly secured, and she struggled for a while before finally getting out. Shortly after, the members of V587 gathered one by one. Fang Jishu looked around and muttered softly, Where's our Princess Zhuang? Zhuang Qinyan, with his strong obsession for cleanliness and various picky living requirements, earned himself the nickname Princess. Of course, people only dared to call him that in private. Click. The bedroom door opened. Zhuang Qinyan, with a low mood and a dark face, came out. When he saw Song Ku, who had a pure and puzzled expression, his steps halted. His eyes were bloodshot, dark circles hung on his handsome face, destroying the elegance that was always on display. Did you not sleep well? Song Ku showed concern. Hmm. Zhuang Qinyan was full of mixed emotions. Passing by the balcony, Zhuang Qinyan accurately picked up one of the potted plants, glanced at the nameplate, and coldly threw it into the trash bin. Silver vine has long been known to elicit euphoric response in cats. The reaction to silver vine is similar to the response to catnip but appears to be more intense. Silver vine is an alternative to catnip, and many cats that do not react to catnip will respond positively to silver vine powder made from dried fruit galls. Typical behaviors include rolling, chin and cheek rubbing, drooling, and licking. The effect usually lasts between 5 and 30 minutes, but afterwards cats exhibit a refractory period lasting roughly an hour during which they are unresponsive to further dosage. Wiki Chapter 206 Crime Record Plus Northern Base, General's Mansion First time clueless, second time familiar. This time, they didn't need Bai Chi to pick them up Song Ku and the other six went on their own. After passing the security check in the villa area, Yi Zimei stood at the door from afar to welcome them oh no, to question them with righteous anger. She had a day off today and wasn't wearing the Awakener Department uniform. 
Instead, she casually put on a summer outfit with her hands in her pockets. Seeing Song Ku, she scolded with a stern face, Captain Song, first stealing a starship, then blowing up the laboratory. What kind of demolition team is your V-587? Song Ku rubbed her hands nervously, mistake, it was a mistake. Yi Zimei roared in frustration, completely ignoring that she was facing an S-7, level capable of single-handedly killing a level 5 beast, I stayed up for three nights. Looked through thousands of documents. Selected laboratories carefully. Right after passing the household registration, you ruined it for me. Does that make any sense? And no sense, Song Ku's tone weakened, and after a few seconds of silence, she uncertainly asked, Do you want me to compensate? As soon as the words were out, she immediately painfully covered her money bag. Her watery eyes looked at Yi Zime, calculating how much it would cost. They had just become a bit prosperous, and now they had to go back to pre-liberation times. Seeing her acting stingy, Yi Zime chuckled, No need for compensation. I still have some damage budget left. Can you please be more careful next time? Got it, I understand. Song Ku heard that she didn't have to pay, and her eyes curved into crescents. The group walked inside and met Bai Qi on the way, who nodded at them tersely. In the artificial garden, Yi Zheng set up a glass water tank in front of him. The old man was in high spirits, playing with a turtle. The turtle was upside down, stretching its neck out from the shell, trying hard to reach the ground. Slowly and leisurely, it turned over with Yi Zheng's slow and leisurely help. Turtle. Su Xing, being a child at heart, couldn't help but snicker first. Pfft. Yi Zheng seemed to have eyes on the back of his head, knowing it was them. You're here. Song Ku subconsciously stood at attention, greeted with proper etiquette, General Yi. The others also followed suit in greeting. Yi Zheng waved his hand, indicating they didn't need to be so formal. I watched the naval battle video of the elderly people's nation. Not bad, calm under pressure, brave and strategic. You are all promising fighters, especially Xiao Song. He pointed at Song Ku, a born war god, even my best adjutants back then couldn't compare to you. Who was Yi Zheng? He was a seasoned general forged in the battles of half a century, and the number of people in the entire alliance who could earn his praise was few. Song Ku blushed slightly, scratching her head in embarrassment. Bai Qi, you also watched the video. As a practitioner of ancient martial arts, what do you think of Xiao Song? Very strong, Bai Qi straightforwardly replied. Song Ku's combat style was clean and efficient, without any fancy or cumbersome moves. Coupled with her exceptional physical fitness, even Bai Qi admitted that he might not be able to match some of Song Ku's combat skills. Your techniques, are they from the orthodox school? Bai Qi rarely spoke more than a sentence. Song Ku honestly shook her head, No, my master is named Zhang Ting, and we belong to the Yu Mountain sect. Zhang Ting was once a renowned martial arts master in the alliance, but he retired too early, and Bai Qi, being under thirty, was unfamiliar with the name. Bai Qi nodded slightly, not pressing for more information. Yi Zheng casually rolled up his sleeves and beckoned to Song Ku, Xiao Song, since you're here, how about a little sparring? Both being S-level, Song Ku didn't think much and readily agreed, sure. Yi Zimei, standing beside them, exclaimed in shock, Grandpa. Bai Qi's expression changed slightly as he stepped forward, General, it's not advisable. Yi Zheng glanced at them lightly, and his imposing aura forced the two to retreat, what's the fuss? It's just a friendly match. I'm not allowed to do this and that all day long. If I don't move my old bones a bit, they'll rust sooner or later. The old man was determined to have a little bout with the only S7 in the alliance, and no one could dissuade him. Yi Zimei huffed to the side. Yi Zheng then winked mischievously at Song Ku, Xiao Song, I'm old, and my martial arts skills are not as good as yours. Can I use some abilities? Lin Yu Yu used her ability to secretly transmit her voice to her, Song Ku, Princess Zhuang advises you to be careful. He says General Yi is an early awakener. Early awakeners referred to those who awakened their abilities before the apocalypse. 
Usually, such awakeners would experience a significant improvement in their strength due to the secondary stimulation of the apocalypse radiation, easily overpowering others of the same level. Yi Zheng, having awakened his abilities after the apocalypse, was now over 90 years old, and even if he was S level, his level wouldn't be too high. Song Ku belatedly realized that she had agreed too casually but now was in a dilemma, oh. Yi Zheng lowered his center of gravity, suddenly lifted his knee and sent a straight punch towards her throat. A domineering surge of awakened energy gushed out, causing Song Ku's legs to feel like a thousand pounds, freezing her in place. She was slightly surprised was it a gravity-based ability? The glass water tank next to them shook, and the turtle, which was struggling to flip over, was impacted, spinning rapidly like a top. Turtle As the fierce punch wind approached, Song Ku gritted her teeth, lifting one leg with difficulty in delivering a mid-air side kick. Yi Zheng, with excellent awareness, immediately shifted from offense to defense, blocking with both arms after Song Ku completed her move, the gravitational ability erupted again, sweeping her lower body. The tilted glass tank spun, and the confused turtle fell to the ground. Bai Chi picked it up and casually placed it aside. This time, Song Ku was prepared. With a sly smile, she treated it like lifting a few hundred kilograms of sandbags, agilely jumped up, entered Yi Zheng's proximity. Elbowing him in the solar plexus, and subconsciously attempted a shoulder throw only to notice Lin Yuyu shaking her head nearby. Song Ku suddenly realized and changed her approach, disarming Yi Zheng's force and gently pushing him away. Yi Zheng took a few steps back, steadying himself, and Song Ku also stopped in time. In just a few moves, she was drenched in sweat, and her limbs felt as heavy as if they were filled with cement. Gravity type awakeners were indeed formidable. Yi Zheng, rubbing his sore right arm, laughed heartily, how fun. You went easy on me, right? Song Ku modestly replied, you also went easy. An S-level gravity type awakener undoubtedly possessed far more energy than a mere few hundred kilograms. Yi Zheng wiped his sweat with a hot towel, casually saying, I remember you are of the metal element. The Tang sword you brought in last time was an ability manifestation, right? A light bulb lit up in Song Ku's mind, instantly understanding the social subtleties behind his words. She enthusiastically approached, Do you like it? I can give it to you. Sweeping her eyes around, she reached for the tilted glass tank with her magic, a blue light flashed, and a sharp Tang sword with a biting chill appeared in her palm. The turtle, slowly crawling to the edge of the tank, was utterly confused. Yi Zheng, not expecting her to change things so easily, fell silent for a second, did this not pass the security check. The next moment, a deafening alarm sounded throughout the entire mansion, high-risk weapon detected, initiating level 1 alert. Followed by a flurry of footsteps, intruders. Assassins. Quickly, protect the general. Song Ku unsheathed her sword, looking around in confusion. Assassins? It wasn't her fault. Didn't she bring it in last time without any issues? Oh, she remembered Bai Chi had informed them last time. Song Ku silently sought help from Bai Chi. Bai Chi silently went to deal with it. Yi Zheng, not wanting to see her embarrassed, took the sword with a smile, you're thoughtful. I'll accept the sword. Zhuang Qin Yen coughed lightly, reminding from the side, Captain, don't forget about the main business. Grandpa, you've had your fun. You need to rest now, Yi Zimei scolded. Several people returned from the garden to the study, and Zhuang Qin Yen spoke frankly, General, we would like to seek your advice on the matter of utopia. Yi Xing didn't answer directly but opened a drawer and took out an exquisite letter, resembling an invitation. Song Ku opened it and found it was a pass from Utopia, delivered two days before the appearance of the floating city. Innocently, Su Xing asked, Huh? Grandpa, don't you qualify? Why aren't you going up? They've all gone. They naturally referred to the privileged class in the elderly people's nation. Yi Zheng, highly esteemed and respected, had once made immortal contributions to the New Asia Alliance. It was not surprising that he could obtain a ticket to Utopia. Yi Zheng shook his head slowly, even the magistrates in District B don't all receive this pass. The slots for magistrates are so limited, let alone ordinary people. In the end, we all go through selection. 
Now, most voices on the Star Network believe that the residents of Utopia have abandoned the world, seeking their own pleasures. But if you think about it carefully, if a person loses the foundation of survival and can only rely on the breath of others to live, is it a blessing or a disaster? Yi Zheng sighed deeply, I won't live much longer. If I go up, what about the tens of millions left in the northern base? This old man can't let go. I have guarded this piece of land all my life. So I'd better stand my ground and finish my last duty. Yi Zheng, like the anchor of the northern base, even if he didn't show up often, as long as he was alive, District B-10 would remain stable. Chapter 207 Crime Record Plus Xiao Song, in the recent period, it's better not to go too far. Song Ku was slightly stunned, feeling that there was another layer of meaning in Yi Zheng's words. Yi Zheng's old eyes fell on the pass, with a faint gleam of sharpness, no matter what those above decide, I can see that there are already people below who can't sit still. Cough, cough. Yi Zheng suddenly started coughing violently while speaking. Yi Zimei hurriedly went over to gently pat his back. Apparently, the recent sparring had placed a considerable burden on him. Suddenly, Song Ku remembered what Ning Rong had said last night, it's all thanks to S-level physique holding up. Worriedly, she asked, General, we have an A5-level healer. Would you like him to have a look? In fact, her suggestion was somewhat impolite. As the highest authority figure in the northern base, Yi Zheng undoubtedly had a well-equipped medical team by his side, and there was no need for their unconventional team to be concerned. However, Yi Zheng didn't mind and sighed slowly, Xiao Fang, right? The doctor from Tongwan in District C60. I visited there when I was young. Zhuang Qinyan raised his eyebrows in surprise. Yi Zheng was a rare magistrate who could remember the names of lower level districts. Fang Zhishu, aged 38, was called Xiao Fang, blushed with embarrassment amidst the teasing of his teammates. He put on the stethoscope, focused all his attention, and released his awakened energy. His expression became increasingly serious, and he didn't immediately propose a treatment plan. Yi Zheng understood and smiled, as one gets older, the organs inside the body start to malfunction. I apologize for the embarrassment. Song Ku's heart sank involuntarily. Feng Zhishu pondered silently for a while, carefully choosing his words, General, why don't you consider replacing with bionic organs? For ordinary organ transplants, one would have to consider issues like compatibility and rejection. However, with the advanced technology today, high-quality bionic mechanical organs were already widespread. As long as it wasn't a brain turned into mush, nearly every part of the body could be replaced, similar to what they encountered with the Anna Knights during the throne race in Ferrara, even Punk's eyeballs were mechanical. Yi Zheng remained indifferent, since you are a doctor, you must know what bionic organs entail, right? It's not worth it to gain a few more years at the cost. Fang Jishu fell silent for a moment. Lin Yuyu and Su Xing exchanged puzzled glances. Similarly confused, Song Ku tugged at Zhuang Qinyan's sleeve, signaling the all-knowing one to take action. Zhuang Qinyan explained in a soft voice, if an awakener replaces their organs with bionic or mechanical ones, it will disrupt the original awakened energy magnetic field, leading to the solidification of their level. This means giving up the possibility of a second promotion. Song Ku slightly widened her eyes, reflexively looking towards Lu Xiaoyu. No wonder no wonder he would rather have two empty legs than stand up again. The more proud a person, the less they can accept solidification. If one can instantly see their limits, every day they live will be painful. Yi Zheng was like that, and Lu Xiaoyu was no exception. After leaving the villa area, Lu Xiaoyu revealed the information he had previously cracked using the B-level terminal, dot. General Yi is currently S1, but judging by the trend, he is about to break through to S2 soon. Bai Qi, S5 level mysticism, specific ability unknown, he has never used it in public. The crowd sighed for a moment, then discussed where to go next. Anyway, they planned to take on some missions in the vicinity, so they had plenty of time to spare. Let's go shopping. Lin Yuyu said with her hands on her hips. I've been in District B for so long, and I haven't had a proper shopping spree. I want to go too, Su Xing shouted along. 
You guys go, we have some things to attend to, Song Ku thought for a moment and said, Do you all have money? I have money. Su Xing happily raised his terminal. I don't, Lu Xiaoyu openly reached out for some pocket money. Xuan Qinyan glanced at him, just give him some casually. Lu Xiaoyu? Was he being treated as a beggar? Fortunately, Captain Song was still generous. She allocated 100,000 alliance coins to him, and Lu Xiaoyu walked away contentedly. When the teammates left, Song Ku faced Chuang Qinyan, tiptoed, and walked up and down in a cat-like manner. Since she manifested the genes of a wildcat, she unconsciously brought some habits of feline animals with her. You seem not in a good mood today. Anyone tormented by a clingy cat for a whole night wouldn't be in a good mood. Zhuang Qinyan rubbed his forehead and didn't want to say much, let's go buy some flowers first. Song Ku, displeased, extended her claws, about to speak. However, her footsteps abruptly stopped, and she turned her head to look around. Silence surrounded them. There's Anna Wagner. She formed the words with her lips, one by one. Less than two kilometers from the governor mansion, under the bright sunshine, a faint and fleeting awakened energy was detected. If their senses weren't as level sharp, and if they hadn't coincidentally passed by this area, it could easily be overlooked. The awakener hidden in the shadows remained still, but the residual awakened energy in the air told the two of them the person was nearby. Zhuang Qinyan closed his eyes and opened them again. His awakened energy swept out, but he found nothing unusual. There must be surveillance in the villa area. If there was a strange awakener, the security here wouldn't be silent. Unless the other party's ability was invisibility. He took Song Ku's terminal and calmly sent a message, within two kilometers, an unidentified awakener has intruded, estimated level between B and A. Song Ku's face turned cold. She slowly released her pressure in place. The two sides didn't know how long they were in a stalemate, and the invisible awakener couldn't bear the burden any longer. Their awakened energy suddenly fluctuated, darting in a certain direction. Song Ku, following the direction, sprinted, and the opponent bypassed the high wall of the garden, disappearing in a flash. Song Ku supported herself with one hand, brown spots appearing on her skin. The leaping ability of the wildcat was brought to the extreme, and she leaped five or six meters high, flipping over the wall. The two were within arm's reach. At that moment, pale zombie faces appeared out of thin air, countless and creepy. Each face was filled with more than a dozen eyes of varying sizes, fierce and terrifying. They reached out, grabbing Song Ku's neck, arms, thighs, attempting to hold her back. For someone with slightly weaker mental endurance, they would be frightened on the spot. Song Ku immediately realized that there were illusion-type awakeners around. Her palm swept over the wall, and a phantom blue Yenling knife flew through the air, carrying the momentum of thunder, fiercely slashing forward. It shattered all illusions in an instant. The other party's level was obviously not high, estimated to be only B level. Emerging from the zombie heap, she stumbled into view. Song Ku made a backhand slash, piercing through his chest. The man's heart shattered, and large amounts of blood overflowed from his mouth. He fell to the ground, lifeless. However, due to his intervention, the trace of the invisible awakener disappeared again. Song Kook carefully sensed with her awakened energy, confirming that the person hadn't left and was hiding within a hundred meters. Zhuang Qinyan's voice came through the earpiece, Song Ku, leave one alive and hand him over to Bai Qi. Song Ku thought for a moment and suddenly had an idea. She pulled out a portable speaker from her space and placed it on the ground neatly. Then, she took out a pair of special earplugs, inserted them into her ears, and thought twice before adding another pair. Afterward, she approached stealthily and pressed play. A strange particle waveform was triggered. Everyone who heard it experienced nerve disorder, a sense of disintegration, as if the world had plunged into nothingness, and their internal organs had completely decayed. If this awakener had been fortunate enough to visit the Alliance's F-180 district, Sin City, he would know that there was something in this world that could lead to irreparable destruction, called the crime record. The speaker now in Song Ku's possession was a modified version by Lu Xiaoyu, equivalent to the Crime Record Plus. 
it indiscriminately swept through, more powerful, stronger, and fiercer. Thirty seconds later, a slender figure clutched his head, wailing incessantly as he tumbled out of the shadow. Song Kook grabbed him and slammed him to the ground. The man still wanted to resist, but Song Kook dislocated his wrist joints. She remembered to capture him alive and deliberately left some strength. The awakener on the ground convulsed incessantly. His pupils dilated rapidly, and he was on the verge of turning into a walking corpse. Suddenly, a bizarre expression appeared on his face, and he shouted towards the sky, I'll kill you. In his struggles, the collar of his clothes loosened slightly, revealing a crimson glow around his neck. It was a miniature bomb implanted in the subcutaneous tissue. Song Ku's pupils contracted abruptly. She leaped onto a nearby tall tree like a cat with an exploding tail, swiftly hiding in the highest branches. Boom! A mist of blood exploded, like cherry blossoms in full bloom, fluttering down. The man's head was shattered on the ground. Luckily, she moved quickly, or else it would have splattered on her. Song Ku silently jumped down and gently kicked the corpse. The awakener died gruesomely, and the only living captive was gone. She puzzledly turned off the speaker and looked at it. Was this thing so powerful? What kind of death song was it playing that made people commit suicide? Also Song Ku scratched her head. Although her foreign language skills weren't great, wasn't that person shouting in the Tokushima dialect just before he died? Chapter, 208 No one can put up a fight. Bai Chi led a few awakeners to the scene. Because one of the corpses had a shattered head and the fingerprints were deliberately worn off, it took some time for them to collect biological information. The other B-level illusionist, however, quickly produced results. The person reporting had a solemn expression, brother by, no identity information, and the entry record is from two days ago. No identity information meant that they were not legal residents of the northern base. Bai Chi glanced at the suspect's face reconstructed through data, ordinary features with no memorable points, easily forgotten in the crowd. Zhuang Qinyan snapped a tree branch, frowned, and disdainfully opened the collar of the illusionist awakener. Sure enough, he had a miniaturized bomb implanted, but Song Ku's one fatal blow killed him before it could be triggered. Did he say anything else? Zhuang Qinyan threw away the tree branch and wiped his hands with disinfectant tissues. No, just that sentence in Takushima. Song Ku held the megaphone with one hand, swinging her legs on the tree trunk. The ground was covered with blood and minced meat, sticky. She was quite a clean person. After confirming that the other party had breathed their last, she climbed up again. Do you remember how he said it? Zhuang Qinyan didn't hold much hope. I remember. Song Ku tilted her head, thought for a second, cleared her throat, imitated the person's tone, and shouted with vigor, Kurazuso. I'll kill you. Her voice was loud, her momentum was strong, but her pronunciation was broken. Pfft. Awakeners on the scene covered their mouths, not daring to make fun of the mighty S7, but they couldn't hold back their laughter, making muffled sounds. Each person in District B must be proficient in at least three foreign languages before graduation. Due to years of resentment and the need for mutual insults, most people in the northern base chose to study Tokushima. It was the first time they heard such a strange colonial accent. Song Ku. What are you laughing at? She clearly imitated it well. Zhuang Qinyan's fingertips itched, wanting to pinch her face, but he resisted. He turned to Bai Qi, these two are assassins. They shouldn't have come for us. If it's not for V587, then it must be for Yizheng. They came all the way, confirming they were not being followed. These two individuals acted suspiciously outside the general's mansion, concealing their whereabouts and not daring to approach. With A and B level abilities, they didn't pose an assassination threat. They were probably here to gather information, but unfortunately, they ran into Song Ku. Bai Qi understood his implication and had the bodies removed. Thanks for taking action. You don't seem surprised, Zhuang Qinyan looked at him. Lately, there are many sparrows, Bai Qi's eyes showed a hint of killing intent. Those sparrows couldn't cause substantial harm, they were disturbing and irritating. Because summer has come, Zhuang Qinyan hinted that when the weather gets hot, 
some people can't sit still. The scorching sun shamelessly poured down blinding sunlight, making people sweat profusely. One year ago, the apocalypse caused by radiation came without warning at the end of summer. One year later, in the distant north, the S-level floating city, Utopia, rose like the sword of Damocles, hanging high above everyone's heads. Yi Zheng was right some people couldn't sit still anymore. Before leaving, Bai Qi looked up at the tree. This megaphone. Song Ku swiftly tucked it back into her space, feigning innocence. What megaphone? Bai Qi paused for two seconds. Don't use it here next time. Fortunately, the villa area was equipped with a high-quality soundproof system otherwise, the general's desk would have been piled with neighbor complaints. Song Ku grinned and gave him a thumbs up, implying that it was quite righteous. After the others left, Song Ku landed lightly. Those two, are they Takushima people? Not necessarily, Zhuang Qinyan said, the grudges between the northern base and Takushima are not a secret. The phrase he shouted was too deliberate. The person in charge of the northern base was He Chilhong if they wanted information, they should go to the Awakener department. Why come to the general's mansion? Moreover, Yi Zheng himself was S-level it would be difficult to assassinate him. The timing and motive of these two's appearance seemed suspicious no matter how you looked at it. It was like two seemingly irrelevant pawns on the chessboard, or maybe not pawns at all, but were just coincidentally disrupted by Song Ku. Zhuang Qinyan believed that the person who made this move must have their own intentions, but further speculation would have to wait for the opponent's next move. Just now, Song Ku cleared her throat, her gaze wandering, did I not imitate well? Zhuang Qinyan's train of thought was interrupted, and he chuckled, certainly well. He finally fulfilled his desire and pinched Song Ku's cheek, putting aside his perfect score in sixteen foreign languages and shamelessly saying, your Takushima is better than mine. At the same time, on the high-altitude commercial street. Holographic billboards flickered and changed, showcasing futuristic floating supercars everywhere. Fashionably dressed men and women occasionally descended from them. The glass doors automatically opened, and AI shopping assistants smiled charmingly, providing attentive and companionable services. Open-air ice cream shops, immersive cinemas, and a myriad of entertainment venues. This was one of the most popular places in the northern base, consistently topping the charts as the customer satisfaction top one consumer location. In a high-end store, Su Cha, dressed in all black with a mask and a baseball cap, stood like a wooden stake at the entrance. Lin Yu Yu selected clothes at the virtual counter, lightly tapping her fingertips, and physical dresses were delivered to the side, quickly forming a small mountain. Her long curly hair was casually tied up with a hairpin that was entirely dark blue, with a green tint at the tip, resembling a rare jade from an ancient civilization. On closer inspection, it was revealed to be a concealed weapon, a plum blossom needle. Curious glances from passing awakeners turned into astonishment. Rarely did they see such exquisite weapons. Two girls approached politely and inquired, Miss, can we have a link to your hairpin? Oh, this? It's a creation from my friend Lin Yu Yu paused for a moment before smiling sweetly, my friend's original design brand, handmade and custom-made. Limited production. If you want one, you can contact me, but it might be a bit pricey. Which girl could resist the temptation of limited edition? The girls expressed that price is not a problem and happily added her contact information. I'm truly a walking billboard Lin Yu Yu mumbled a couple of sentences, typing in the group chat to share the money-making information with Song Ku. After sending the message, she looked up and saw Su Cha standing coolly at the door. His aura clearly marked him as a high-level awakener, and both men and women around were sneakily glancing at him. Lin Yu Yu's beautiful eyes flickered. She casually picked up two dresses with similar styles but different colors. Which one looks better? Su Cha pointed to the green one. Lin Yu Yu raised an eyebrow, he hesitated and pointed to the red one. Are you sure? Mm. The green one is five times the price of the red one, Lin Yu Yu smiled, teasing him, in your eyes, can I only wear cheap clothes? Su Cha, who was content as long as there were clothes to wear, completely didn't understand the existence of brand premium. Thinking he made a mistake, he stood up stiffly, feeling constrained, no, I. 
Lin Yuyu snapped some photos in front of the mirror, sending them to Jennifer and asking, which one looks better. Jennifer instantly replied in a voice message, background noise suggesting a brawl, darling, this emerald green matches your cold white skin perfectly. It's noble and stunning, with a tasteful slit at the back, and the skirt sways elegantly. But I think the burgundy wine red one is also good. My darling looks good in anything. Are you shopping? I'll come over after I finish my job. Why don't you ask yourself? Jennifer suddenly scolded someone beside her, Yin Xiao asked me to find out if your captain is there with you. Lin Yuyu couldn't help but chuckle, focus on your task first. Let's shop together next time. Also, our captain is not here. After ending the call, she hooked her finger under Su Cha's chin, understand now. Sometimes when girls ask questions, it's not about giving you multiple choice. Su Cha remained stiff. A lovey-dovey couple entered, the girl affectionately saying, Baby, just buy whatever you like today. I'll pay. Thank you, baby. But do you know? The two most handsome moments for a man are when he swipes his card and when he wins a duel. Su Cha was staring at Lin Yuyu's terminal, enchanted. Upon hearing these words, he came back to his senses, took out his terminal, and silently prepared to pay. Because Song Ku occasionally sent him money, he now had a few million, no longer as financially constrained as before. Before Su Cha could reach the cashier, Su Xing bounced past in a duck pattern small yellow sunglasses, wearing a floral shirt and flower shorts. A long string of AI shopping assistants followed behind, carrying full shopping bags. Dear customer, is there anything else we can assist you with? Yes, I want to buy a bag for my sister. Captain of V587, Song Ku, who possessed tens of millions in assets, yet still carried a worn-out ADL hiking bag. Su Xing walked confidently past the display cabinets, pointing here and there, this one, this one, not these, but the rest, I'll take them all. Charge it to my card. Despite his young age, Su Xing's bold spending startled the entire high-end boutique. Su Xing turned back to look at Lin Yuyu, reluctantly pouting, pay for hers too. Lin Yuyu wasn't short of that bit of money, but the flattery made her blossom with joy. Su Xiao Xing, you're really handsome. Right now, in my heart, you're two meters and eight centimeters tall. Su Xing gave a haughty hum. Su Cha. Feeling somewhat at a loss, he pinched his terminal, suddenly thinking that the training in the rainforest might be more suitable for him. In the lounge, Fang Jishu and Lu Xiaoyu were communicating with the black market, handling the tasks assigned by the captain. Song Ku decided to sell a batch of crystals and spiritual weapons. Most crystals were below level 3 because V587 had a relatively high average level and rarely relied on power banks during battles. They had accumulated quite a few through missions, and as a hard currency, crystals were very popular in the black market, with no worry about sales. As for spiritual weapons, Zhuang Qinyan suggested going for the high-quality route. So, this time, only a small quantity of 500 were sent to the market. Lu Xiaoyu skillfully wiped off the seller's information, adding this batch to the auction list. The two spent half an hour sorting it out. When they went out to join the others, a message suddenly popped up on the terminal, surprisingly a private mission. Sea level mission region limited, defeat Fujita hero within three hours at the Silver Ring Arena. The issuer's words were intense, and even through the screen, one could feel his overflowing anger, I can't stand it anymore. Whoever can kill this scumbag, I'm willing to transfer 400,000 points to him. Silver Ring Arena. What place was that? Clearly, the Awakeners on the commercial street had also received the same mission. They hastily headed outside. Lin Yuyu put down the clothes she was trying on and turned to her companions, shall we go and take a look? With nothing else to do, her proposal received unanimous approval. Following the crowd, the five purchased tickets to the Silver Ring Arena station. The unique three-dimensional subway in District B descended rapidly from the high sky. The surroundings transitioned from bright to dim, with the light panels on both sides rapidly changing. The magical spatial tunnel made people dizzy. Fortunately, V587 was accustomed to Lu Xiaoyu's black car. Otherwise, experiencing it for the first time might make one vomit. 
Ten minutes later, the subway doors opened, and a deafening roar and a chaotic surge of awakened energy hit everyone's senses. A prompt lit up before their eyes. You have entered an unrestricted area for awakeners. Simultaneously, a mechanical and monotonous voice echoed in their ears, a friendly reminder from the awakener department, Northern Base does not advocate any dueling activities. Please remember, do not strive for short-term gains, but strive for long-term success. The lighting on this level was generally dim, giving off an atmosphere reminiscent of Sin City. However, compared to the chaotic District F-180, the crowd here seemed more restrained. Due to the presence of millions of civilians, the northern base had strict regulations on the use of abilities. Each entrant would receive a code of conduct that they were required to read, including rules such as no indiscriminate brawling and no harming others. However, conflicts and clashes between awakeners were common, and physical confrontations were inevitable. How could such a large number of dangerous individuals be regulated and managed? Until now, they were either staying at home or busy with scoring points, the realization struck V587 Northern Base had another world entirely for awakeners. The five were pushed forward by the crowd, left the platform, and took several turns. Soon, a massive sunken arena appeared in their line of sight, surrounded by colorful holographic projections. Thousands of awakeners were seated or standing in the spectator stands. Unlike the irrational revelry of Ferrara's citizens, most of them had a serious expression. Wow! So many people! Su Xing exclaimed with the innocence of someone unfamiliar with the world. In the center of the Silver Ring Arena, a figure with a black-clothed head and a face covered by a black scarf stepped onto the throne of the arena. Arrogantly surveying the surroundings, he raised his middle finger provocatively. According to the information displayed on the screen, he was the target of the previous sea level mission Fujita Hero. What's this? Is this all the northern base can do? We came all the way here for this. Not a single person who can put up a fight. Facing the audience, Fujita Hero taunted in a sarcastic tone, a bunch of trash, you know that? Wastes, got it? Idiots. Chapter 209 Hello, let's settle the points first. Fujita Hiro was provocative, provoking the anger of the entire audience in just a few words. A vigorous figure sprinted past V587, stepping on the railing and about to jump down. Bang! Numerous faint lights appeared, and he was bounced out by the isolation barrier. The cold prompt sounded, Non-challengers, please do not disturb the order of the arena. Dog! Tokushima, you daredevil, today, I'll make you search the ground for your teeth. It was a young awakener, wearing torn jeans, a diamond lip stud at the corner of his mouth, and boldly dyed pink hair. He looked like a typical well-off, impulsive, and righteous local resident of District B, scolding Fujita Hiro. Awakener had a special way of communication. As long as a bit of awakened energy was added, the voice could travel far. This young man was probably so angry that his awakened energy was scattered everywhere. The large silver ring arena echoed with his loud curses. Unsatisfied after scolding, he repeated it in fluent Tokushima dialect. Fujita Hiro's face was tightly covered, revealing only a pair of sinister eyes. He gestured towards him with a hooked little finger, Don't bark down there, come up if you have the guts. Sure, I'll come up. Grandpa is not afraid of you. The cursing young man's face turned red with excitement. He rolled up his sleeves and was about to brush the terminal to enter, but his companion beside him quickly held him back, are you crazy? Fujita Hiro is a nine level. This is a damn life and death situation you can bet on any damn stakes. Are you going to offer your damn head? I can't stand it anymore. One can be killed but not humiliated. Even if you can't stand it, you have to endure it. Otherwise, being humiliated as a little B7 will be your fate. By then, that bastard will mock our northern base for having no one. The young man was awakened by a cold splash of water on his head. The punching and kicking gradually stopped, but he was unwilling. In a fit of rage, he kept tapping on the terminal. If he couldn't beat him, then maybe he could manipulate others. He was willing to use all his points. That bastard must roll off the arena. 
A few seconds later, everyone in the area received an update on the C-Rank Commission, the reward was increased to 800,000 points, quickly approaching the reward for an A-Rank mission distributed by the system. V-587's five members found seats and gradually pieced together the situation from the surrounding discussions, dot. Do you not know Fujita Hiro? He's quite famous, the captain of the Kiragikura Hidden Mist team, ranking in the top 10 in Tokushima. Why would someone from Tokushima come to our territory? Revenge, I heard that our newcomer S7 had messed up Lei Zhao and Nagima Yuko before, intentionally coming here to stir things up. Su Xing perked up his ears to eavesdrop and nodded with satisfaction, that's right, it was my sister who did it. He has won four consecutive matches, why not find an S-level to take him on? Someone enthusiastically shouted. Bullying our S-levels, is that it? Another awakener said dejectedly. With Zeigler and Shize heavily injured, the number of top-level awakeners in the northern base had sharply declined, making them the bottom feeders in District B. At this moment, Tokushima sending an A9 level here was clearly an intentional attempt to step on them. Using an S level against A9. Even if we win, it's just level suppression. How embarrassing would it be if word got out? The first speaker looked serious, besides, Fujita Hiro's awakener ability is too dominant on the arena you'll see when you watch. The boos from all directions grew louder, with a faint trend of overturning the roof. Fujita Hiro remained unfazed, sitting arrogantly on the throne with crossed legs. Although most of the awakeners in the northern base were sheltered or joined after the apocalypse, they considered this place as their second home. What is a hometown? It's a place where we can criticize it ourselves, but outsiders have no right to insult. I'll go meet him. A man wearing glasses, with a refined appearance, walked down from the audience. His appearance seemed freshly arrived, dust still clinging to him. It's Zhao Zhe. Great, he's also a nine. Some spectators recognized him from a distance and cheered. Zhao Zhe took off his coat, swiped the terminal, and stepped into the arena with a steady pace. The screen displayed the information of the current challenger, Zhao Zhe, a 9 level light type awakener, affiliated with the Team Blue Flame. The teams of awakeners between the two districts had clashed before. Fujita Hiro squinted his eyes, quickly recognizing him, and sneered disdainfully, Oh, isn't this the blue snail that can't catch up even if it eats shit? The elderly people's nation incident stirred up a lot of commotion in District B. All teams accepting commissions were exposed. However, Blue Flame, due to transportation issues, took a full seven days for the outbound journey and had yet to reach the endless sea. Everything had settled, and they ended up making the trip in vain. Their rankings also dropped, falling out of the top ten in the northern base. Zhao Zhe, stop the nonsense, sign the wager. If I win, you better get lost. One of the features of the Silver Ring Arena was the ability to legally bet anything, including the participants' lives, through duels. Fujita Hiro's eyes rolled around as he stated his wager, If I win, you guys have to change your name to Blue Snail. Unexpectedly, he didn't bet his life it seemed like he was just trying to provoke Xiao Zhe. Under the witness of the AI referee, the two signed the contract. With a ding of the whistle, the fifth round challenge officially began. Zhao Zhe looked stern, sending countless light balls with a swift motion, leaping forward across the half field. Along the way, he snapped his fingers, and the high altitude spotlights flashed rapidly. Hundreds of spotlights neatly shone on Fujita Hiro. Once locked on, the scorching heat would roast him. Fujita Hiro smirked, smashing down a smoke bomb with a bang, covering half the arena. After the choking smoke cleared, Large patches of grass and uneven wooden stakes appeared in the arena, and his figure quietly disappeared. Mu Dun Jutsu. Wood release technique. The audience exclaimed from the stands, he's a ninja. Fujita Hiro's awakened ability turned out to be enhanced ninja techniques from the mystic category. Zhao Zhe found himself waist deep in tall grass, cautiously maneuvering through it. The light balls in his hands kept shining, illuminating the nearby shadows. With one in the light and the other in the shadows, the two remained in a deadlock for about five minutes. Zhao Zhe's expression gradually became serious. As a long-range awakener, 
he was more suited to open spaces. Facing an elusive ninja, he had to be extremely vigilant to avoid being ambushed. Swoosh! A dark figure flashed behind, and Zhao Zhe quickly turned around, making a decisive decision. Since he couldn't find him, he decided to dismantle everything. Bang! Bang! The light balls smashed into the wooden stakes, instantly disappearing without a trace. Those were not real stakes at all they were just illusions. Whoosh! Whoosh! The sound of rustling through the air came, and Fujita Hiro's shadow swiftly moved through the grass, throwing several shurikens. Boom! Boom! Zhao Zhe's light balls were pierced, and the spotlights chasing Fujita Hiro were all cut off by hidden weapons. The arena's visibility suddenly darkened, and the sudden change in brightness and darkness made everyone momentarily dazed. Zhao Zhe didn't dare to stop for a moment, continuously launching attacks toward suspicious positions around him. Where was he? Where exactly was he hiding? Suddenly, his footsteps came to a halt. Fujita Hiro, clinging to a thin wooden pole, emerged from the grass between his legs with a sinister smile. He held a bamboo flute, gently blew a dart, and tiny poison needles penetrated Zhao Zhe's mouth. Zhao Zhe fell straight down. The audience erupted in a collective gasp, and the cursing guy angrily shook the railing, damn, this dog is really cunning. Fujita Hiro revealed a sinister smile and was about to finish off Zhao Zhe when a sharp alarm suddenly rang out on the Silver Ring Arena. Bright red lights flashed, illuminating everyone's faces. It was both a warning and a deterrent. Once a dual death event occurred, the safety level of this area would drop, and the Awakener Department would invite relevant personnel for a chat. Fujita Hiro seemed to have some reservations, casting a discreet glance in a certain direction. Then, he kicked Zhao Zhe out of the arena. The Blue Flame team members rushed over to carry him away for medical treatment. District B10 Fujita Hiro opened his palm, counting with each finger, Beijun, Kong Sang, Urjia, Asker, Northern Base. TSK TSK, is this the strength of District B's fifth place? Let me win five in a row. As long as he won seven consecutive matches, he could win the title of challenger in the Silver Ring Arena, gaining both fame and fortune. Before this, such an honor had never fallen to other districts. Blue Flame, oh no now called Blue Snail, can this kind of trash still rank in the top 10? Also, there's Tustin, and that team with numbers, V587. Taking a trip to the sea, finding a group of turtles to perform with, and thinking you're someone? Fujita Hiro exaggeratedly laughed, holding his stomach, all these bragging lies. Who can't set up a scene for a photo shoot? Ha ha ha. Boos echoed throughout the venue, and Fujita Hiro raised his middle finger, turning 360 degrees, provoking everyone. The cursing young man was so enraged that he attempted to climb over the railing again. With numerous talented awakeners in the northern base, was it truly difficult to take down even one A9 level opponent? Of course not. Due to the last place elimination system, most teams were away on missions, and there weren't many top awakeners in the city area. This gave Fujita Hiro the opportunity to act arrogantly. In the back rows of the audience, Lu Xiaoyu exclaimed in surprise, Is he mocking us? Clearly, yes, Lin Yu Yu sneered. Although Yang Xiaobo's video was indeed flashy, did they really need to rely on staged scenes to promote their reputation? Specifically inviting a level 5 ferocious beast as an extra. Fujita Hiro clearly had impure motives, intentionally distorting facts and humiliating the awakeners of the northern base. I don't think he's that impressive, Su Xing said innocently, supporting his chin with both hands. He couldn't last three minutes against my sister, could he? How many in the entire alliance can solo the team captain? Fang Jishu smiled knowingly. Too bad my sister isn't here, or she would have flattened him, Su Xing lamented. Even if she were here, it wouldn't work. Didn't you hear them say he's a nine? If we go for S level and win, it won't be honorable, Fang Jishu sighed. Su Xing, displeased, pinched his rubber duck sunglasses. I know, I know, can't always rely on my sister to support me we have to stand on our own feet. He repeated verbatim the words Shuang Qinyan had taught him half a year ago. 
but it's still frustrating. With a snap, the sunglasses were flattened. Lin Yuyu, with a hint of teasing in her eyes, said, Oh, RA1 baby is angry. What's wrong, do you want to go up? As soon as the words fell, someone next to them stood up. Lin Yuyu looked up in surprise, Are you going to the bathroom? The two most handsome moments for a man are when he swipes his card to pay the bill and when he wins a duel. Su Cha's mind suddenly recalled the words he heard in a high-end store. There's no chance to pay the bill now, but the latter could be tried. After all he didn't like that Fujita hero. I'm going to earn some points. Su Cha lowered his baseball cap, walked down with a gust of wind, quickly swiped the terminal, and entered the arena. The remaining people stared at each other, their expressions as if something supernatural had happened. What's going on? This guy isn't usually the type to seek attention, right? Lin Yuyu suddenly stood up, reached out but couldn't stop him, so she could only remind anxiously, Hey! Be careful! Fang Jishu silently took out a first aid kit. It's fine. If he wants to go, let him. I'm prepared. Chapter 210 Hello, let's settle the points first. Oh, damn. Someone went in, who is it? The cursing teenager, with half of his leg over the railing, curiously leaned forward, I don't know him. In the midst of everyone's gaze, a tall and slender man in black pants and a black shirt flipped over the railing. There was a cold and fierce aura in his eyes, and his movements subtly revealed well-defined muscles, resembling a wild leopard brimming with strength. The information on the screen slowly appeared, Su Cha, A8, Level Poison Type Awakener. The on-site audience discussed with concern, their tone filled with worry, who is this? He looks quite powerful. Can an A8 level handle it? Don't get injured again. Why do I feel this name sounds familiar? Muttered an awakener from a lower level district. In the midst of the noisy background, the last line of information appeared, affiliated with the team V587. Like a drop of hot oil falling into a cold pan, the audience erupted in an instant. V587. The recently unrivaled V587. The one with an S7 level captain. The V587 who had just been mocked by Fujita Hiro a minute ago, and now he's confronting him face to face. Wow, this team style so appealing. Thunderous cheers echoed through the arena, and all the awakeners from the northern base spontaneously cheered for V587. Fujita Hiro sneered, his attitude still arrogant, how do you want to play this? If I win, your points belong to us, Su Cha stated concisely. Fine, but if you lose, let Fujita Hiro's eyes reveal the malicious intent, let your S7 come to our Takushima. I can't make decisions for the captain. I'll bet my life against yours, Su Cha casually dropped a bombshell, causing a stir in the audience. Even Fujita Hiro showed a slight change in expression. Challenge accepted. Lin Yuyu in the audience stood up abruptly, lips pressed into a straight line, this is outrageous. Who allows him to joke about his own life? Fang Jishu consoled, Su Cha is not confused if he dares to step on the stage, he must be confident. Besides, there's still me. Lin Yuyu paced anxiously, nibbling on her nails, no, in case something happens I have to find Song Ku. She lowered her head to send a message, typing just a few words repeatedly, her fingertips couldn't help but tremble. Inside the arena, the AI referee signaled that the contract was complete, and the two sides could begin the duel. This time, Fujita Hiro seized the initiative, initiating ninjutsu. A chilling wind surrounded him, and countless ropes with blade attachments appeared out of thin air. Fujita Hiro merged his palms, forming a mysterious seal, leaving behind a stone on the spot, blending into the shadows. Su Cha had just taken a step when all the blades made a crisp sound, like the ominous bell of death. Fujita Hiro had set up a trap, secretly observing and planning to torment his trapped prey before delivering the fatal blow. Su Cha remained unfazed, secretly thinking, is this the extent of his ninja skills? He was underestimating him someone who came from the rainforest could blend seamlessly with the surroundings at any time. He moved continuously through the rope array, stealthily maneuvering around all obstacles, his towering figure turning into a fleeting mist, slowly vanishing without a trace. 
both of them disappeared at the same time. The onlookers stared at the stage in astonishment, but the arena was empty, only vaguely sensing the flow of awakened energy. Bang! The shockwave of the collision of two awakened energies swept through the entire stage. Both of them simultaneously reappeared from the shadows. Fujita Hiro threw a black shuriken toward Su Cha's eyes, an unavoidable attack at a distance of less than 10 meters. Unexpectedly, Su Cha threw a blue shuriken in return, with a chilly and resolute aura. The two projectiles clashed in midair, and ding! Fujita Hiro's black shuriken split in half. The blue shuriken bravely continued, cutting through the ropes with blades attached, heading straight for Fujita Hiro's heart. In haste, he dropped a smoke bomb, and the ground instantly caved in. He narrowly escaped the fatal blow. What is that? The audience exclaimed in shock. Su Cha held the blue shuriken between his fingers, standing in the arena like a lone wolf. He calmly assessed the obstructive technique constructed with earth manipulation, showing no signs of panic. Lu Xiaoyu raised his head, surveying the floating screens with interest. His tea-colored eyes sparkled with a glint of ice. The screen, which was originally displaying Sponsor S, suddenly inserted a distinctive commercial. Various ethereal blue spiritual weapons rotated slowly against a deep background color. The down-to-earth mechanical voice interjected at the right moment, which family is the best at monster slaying after the apocalypse. The Song clan spiritual weapons are truly enticing. Your boyfriend or girlfriend can't provide you with 100% security, but Song-style spiritual weapons have it all. If you want to buy, bring them with you. Hurry up and call the order hotline XX. The audience, what kind of nonsense is this? Are you here to duel or advertise? However, the commercial was too persuasive, and inexplicably, many people noted down that mysterious contact information. The surroundings became eerie, and Su Cha concealed his figure, holding a tri-edged military dagger in one hand, systematically inspecting every blind spot. With each obstructive technique destroyed, Fujita Hiro suffered a backlash, but after lurking for so long, he failed to find any flaws in Su Cha. The air seemed to solidify, and a drop of cold sweat rolled down Fujita Hiro's forehead. This kid's mental fortitude was just too strong. Since it was like this don't blame him for being ruthless. Die! A dark figure slid along the ground, and Fujita Hiro chose to confront it head-on. Su Cha seemed prepared, gripping the tri-edged military dagger, his waist and abdomen tense. With a swift movement, he slashed diagonally forward. Fujita Hiro couldn't evade in time, and his face mask was torn apart, revealing a face with acne scars, pockmarks, and uneven terrain. Wow, how ugly can someone be? The foul-mouthed guy joyfully slammed the railing. No wonder you have to cover it up. Ha ha ha. Fujita Hiro, infuriated and embarrassed, leaped like a frog. Sleeves flew out, releasing numerous hidden weapons and poison needles. Su Cha's baseball cap was knocked off, but he advanced instead of retreating, lightning-fast arms piercing through the blade ropes. He grabbed Fujita Hiro's neck and slammed him forcefully to the ground. Bang! Fujita Hiro's pupils contracted, rapidly retreating, leaving a dummy behind. Su Cha's black t-shirt was torn and ragged. Lifting the hem, he casually wiped off the blood. With a backward pull, the fabric shattered to the ground. He happened to stand at the intersection of light and shadow, revealing his face and upper body. It was undoubtedly a robust physique that had rolled on the edge of life and death countless times, broad shoulders, narrow waist. Smooth muscle contours, prominent veins in his arms even with bloodstains, it didn't diminish his vigorous explosiveness. Especially the black snake tattoo on his nape, exuding a savage ferocity. You're poisoned. Fujita Hiro slowly emerged from the shadows, a cold smile on his ugly face. Struck by his specially crafted hidden weapon, the skin would gradually decay, inch by inch, falling away, turning into a pool of corpse water in endless agony. Su Cha tilted his neck, and the joints made a crisp, crunching sound. He stared at Fujita Hiro as if looking at a dead man. The big taboo for an assassin is to expose their true trump card to the opponent before delivering a fatal blow. 
Suddenly, Su Cha pounced like a wolf, spinning to kick Fujita Hiro, flipping him over, pressing his knee against his mouth, and ruthlessly cutting with the triaged military dagger. A severed hand flew into the air. Ah! Fujita Hiro screamed in agony, his eyes filled with disbelief. How is it possible how could you not be poisoned? Idiot, Su Cha taunted unusually. When he entered the arena, it seemed like this person hadn't bothered to check his ability information. A8, Level Poison Type Awakener. Those who could use poison as an ability were naturally resistant to various toxins. Su Cha's mental power had always been on high alert, protecting himself from Fujita Hiro's invasion while quietly releasing poison mist. At the same time, he enjoyed observing the clownish antics of this self-proclaimed master of poison. It's you who's poisoned. From the severed hand to the contorted face, Fujita Hiro suddenly turned entirely green. Before he could wail, the potent neurotoxin damaged his brain. His neck tilted, breath extinguished, and all the obstructive techniques in the surroundings vanished. Is he dead? An A9 level awakener, Fujita Hiro, had died on the Silver Ring Arena like this? The awakeners from the northern base were silent for a moment, followed by an explosive roar of cheers. Strangely, this time, the safety alarm did not sound, as if even the surveillance had developed a biased sentiment. With the death of the title holder, the current challenge was considered over, and the barrier surrounding the arena automatically retracted. While the crowd was still cheering, whoosh! Nearly a hundred awakeners descended from all directions, ranging from A to B levels, surrounding Su Cha. Hey, what are you guys doing? Some people sensed that something was wrong. These were not from the northern base, so why did so many unfamiliar awakeners suddenly infiltrate? Moreover, it was too deliberate to act right after Fujita Hiro died. It looked like it was all arranged in advance. A man with a mask walked down from the spectator seats, half of his face charmingly beautiful, and the other half covered by a fierce evil-looking mask. His tone was fluctuating, a strange mix of both masculine and feminine, it seems like you violated the rules. Fujita didn't bet his life against you, but you killed him. Su Cha slowly stood up, his face as calm as water. He couldn't sense the speaker's awakened energy, which meant there were two possibilities, either the person had no ability and was just an ordinary individual. Or they were an S-level awakener, at least S3 or higher, capable of completely concealing their presence. The awakeners from the northern base were no longer calm. They jumped onto the arena, and some couldn't hold back, releasing their abilities mid-air. A piercing alarm echoed throughout the entire area. As the two groups were about to engage in a brawl, the situation was on the brink of losing control. A subtle smile appeared on the lips of the masked man. He aimed his pale palm at Su Cha, and his five fingers twitched and trembled. Wow! So many people! A sincere exclamation sounded above the heads of the crowd. On a high-altitude camera circling the arena, a girl with shoulder-length hair appeared, squatting there unnoticed. She looked down at the chaos below, tilting her head slightly. Before you start fighting, can we settle the points you owe us first? Chapter 211 Sister Song is right, everyone listen to Sister Song. Dazzling red lights flickered in the air, and the buzzing alarms annoyed people, creating a chaotic and discordant atmosphere. In this incongruous environment, Song Ku held on to the hanging rod with one hand. Her round almond eyes, like those of a cat, looked down on everyone in the field from above. After a moment of silence, sporadic curses erupted from all directions. Who the hell are you? What's it to you? Mind your own business. Song Ku casually glanced at those who were deliberately causing trouble none of them were from the northern base. She didn't release her awakened energy, her face backlit, her figure slender. She looked like an ordinary passerby, completely lacking any intimidating presence. However, strangely, from the moment she appeared, the awakeners from the northern base seemed to collectively become mute. The guy who had just been cursing the most was dumbfounded. He couldn't believe his eyes, rubbed them in disbelief, and others pushed and shoved each other, some sneakily opened their terminals, searching for the cherished video of you're not an alliance person if you don't watch. The boy who was cursing stared wide-eyed, pupils trembling. Isn't she their S7 level? 
The reverence and awe of awakeners towards S-level individuals are innate, especially those with strong attack abilities. It is a submission based on absolute strength. The renowned and mysterious S-7 level made her first public appearance, and it seemed like she was here to support them. The feeling of having someone from their own side take charge, if you haven't experienced it firsthand, you wouldn't understand. The guy's throat felt sour, and hot tears welled up. Several disrespectful awakeners noticed that the northern base, like a witch casting a spell, had suddenly fallen silent. They inwardly cursed, realizing that if this continued, they wouldn't be able to start a fight, and their mission would fail. Someone lurking in the shadows had their fingers quietly turned into claws, awakened energy gathering. They raised their hand to initiate an attack. What, cramping up? Song Ku asked casually. Clang. The chilling blade of a willow leaf knife swept past in front of his nose. The man's body hair stood on end, a gleam of light reflected in his eyes. He staggered backward, falling on his back. However, the willow leaf knife wasn't aimed at him. It took a turn just before reaching him, swift, accurate, and fierce, stabbing towards a masked man in the shadows. The man's trembling fingers abruptly clenched into a fist, and if he had been a second slower, he would have been severed. The willow leaf knife thudded into the ground, stopping right in front of Fujita Hiro's head, as if offering incense. The man's spellcasting was interrupted, and he looked up coldly. Song Ku answered the previous question calmly. My team won the duel, willing to bet on losing. Let's settle the points. She casually lifted the lamp stand, brought it to eye level, and slowly drew out a nearly four meter long Fong Tian halberd. With a backward flip, the icy tip pointed downwards, and on both sides, the crescent moon-shaped peaks faintly emanated a powerful awakened energy. Until the points are credited, no one is allowed to move. The entire arena fell into silence. The suspended light screen high above continued tirelessly broadcasting, which is the strongest in the end of days monster hunting. The song-style spiritual weapons are truly amazing. Now, even the slowest-witted person knew who she was. Song Ku, the highest-ranked S7 level in the entire alliance, a metal type and strong attack type awakener. Not long ago, she single-handedly defeated a level 5 ferocious beast, the armored sea turtle. She is also the current captain of V587. Most importantly, at this moment, she was affiliated with the northern base. Su Cha quickly took Fujita Hiro's terminal, walked to the referee platform, and refreshed it. No one dared to intervene at this moment. According to the terms of the contract, all of Kirigakure's points were transferred to V587. Clap, clap, the masked man clapped his hands with a smile, his gaze fixed on Song Ku. In a tone that was neither friendly nor hostile, he sent shivers down the spine, majestic. Now that the bed is settled, who will take responsibility for Fujita's death? Song Ku looked at him with clear eyes, puzzled, who are you? The masked man's mouth twitched, and a trace of displeasure emerged from his otherwise indifferent tone, I'm called Qing. Qing, from District B14, Miao Ing, S4 level, curse type awakener. In the audience, Lu Xiaoyu pulled up information on the delicate looking man. Lin Yu Yu slightly furrowed her brows, he's not from Takushima, why is he standing up for Fujita? Because Fujita Hiro is just a pawn. Tap, tap, calm footsteps approached from behind. Zhuan Qinyan inserted his hands into his pockets, a light colored shirt tucked into khaki colored trousers, sleeves rolled up to his forearms, and the deep peach blossom eyes slightly lifted behind silver rimmed glasses. The real meaning of having pawns on the stage is not to win but to humiliate, until the people from the northern base can't bear it anymore. Fujita Hiro deliberately provoked several times, aiming to enrage the awakeners in the audience, accumulating resentment to the breaking point. His death was unexpected, but it happened at the right time. The opponent had played along, finding the best trigger and successfully igniting the conflict between the two sides. But what's the benefit of taking action against them? Lin Yu Yu still couldn't understand. Of course, there is, Zhuang Qinyan nodded towards the stage, lifting his chin, do you think there are only people from Tokushima down there? Lu Xiaoyu timely zoomed in on the camera, scanning their faces one by one, and sighed with a flat tone, Tokushima, 
Baishan, Miaoing at least seven or more individuals from other District B. It's quite lively. Is today the team building party? Zhuang Qinyan sat down leisurely, propping up one long leg, the death of an A9 level resulted in a brawl among District B awakeners. If it's still initiated by the traditionally neutral northern base, it's not just a fight, but a diplomatic incident. His expression gradually cooled down. When did these people, or rather, the District B they represented, reach a consensus? In the arena, Qing took a step back, half of his face hidden in the darkness. His lips moved, and immediately an indignant troublemaker rushed out. You killed Fujita Hiro. Dare to admit it, you cowards. Cowardly turtles, a bunch of turtle bastards. Obscene language and curses filled the air, as if today would be meaningless for the northern base if there wasn't a fight. Most of the awakeners were not in a good state of mind. On the northern base side, some were stimulated, their eyes reddening as they took a step forward. A Fangtian halberd descended from above, accurately and unmistakably inserted into the midst of the two groups, drawing a clear boundary. Song Ku landed lightly, like a security guard maintaining order. She advised earnestly, don't fight. I say, do you guys have a problem? It's normal for someone to die in a duel. This is the rule of the Silver Ring Arena. Why make a fuss? Fujita didn't bet his life. You can't kill him. No matter how much this side presented facts and reasoned, the other side remained adamant. The cursing boy had trembling diamond lip piercings. He was about to charge forward recklessly when Song Ku gave him a light glance. The cursing boy shivered, his pink hair standing on end. He immediately flattered, no fighting Sister Song is right, everyone listen to Sister Song. Song Ku looked across, tilted her head in apparent distress, seemingly pondering how to peacefully resolve the situation. Killing is wrong, she sighed in a feigned manner. Yes, Su Cha obediently lowered his head. Song Ku patted his shoulder with emphasis, turn yourself in and go to jail. Let Yi Zimei fish him out later. Anyway, whether it was being in jail or escaping from it, V587 was highly skilled in both. Su Cha, okay. The soon-to-be inmate nodded silently. Not only the opposing side but even the people from the northern base were dumbfounded. What's going on? Is this S7 level really going to uphold justice and send her own team member to jail? Is it okay now? Song Ku looked towards the other side, her gaze piercing through the crowd, locking onto Qing at the back. No, we have to get justice for Fujita. Is little idiot your father? So filial. The cursing boy made a cheeky face towards the opposite side. Seeing that the commotion was dying down, several awakeners, panting heavily, suddenly rushed forward with menacing faces. The earth cracked open, and arm-sized spikes burst out, crossing the boundary set by Song Ku and expanding towards the other side. Song Ku drew the Fangtian halberd and turned around, shouting, Don't move. The cursing boy retracted his outstretched foot with a whoosh, standing upright as if on punishment. He didn't forget to supervise others, Sister Song said it, no one is allowed to move. Song Ku moved forward, chaotic awakened abilities attacking her from all sides. Suddenly, she pivoted on her right foot, turning fiercely in a circle. The halberd's tip swung, and the frontline melee attackers were sent flying. Song Ku continued to charge forward, long-range attacks targeting her head. She dodged by tilting her head, her shoulder-length hair swaying in the wind. She avoided when she could, and when she couldn't, she faced it head-on. Gripping the middle of the halberd, she slanted it upward. The crescent blade cut through the enemy's collar, nailing over a dozen people in succession. She swung it around, knocking down a large group with a series of crashes. Facing hundreds alone, she entered the enemy ranks like a breeze, and in less than a minute, chaos ensued. Yet, she remained as steady as a mountain. Qing's eyebrows and eyes turned cold. Just as he was about to add fuel to the fire, a cold mental force lashed out like a whip, delivering a harsh strike to his mind. His consciousness suddenly became muddled. Curse-type abilities required a cooldown time, and this unexpected attack caught him off guard. Qing raised his head abruptly, looking towards the spectator seats. V587, five people, 
sitting or standing, with calm expressions. Three A levels, two ordinary people. Qin's gaze lingered on Zhuang Qinyan and Lu Xiaoyu. As an S4 level, he surprisingly couldn't judge the depth of their awakened energies. But only fools would think they were ordinary people. A ludicrous, unbelievable thought slowly rose in Qing's mind, could it be that the northern base still harbors unrevealed S-levels? He stepped back slowly, lowered his gaze, and merged into the crowd without a word. Toward Song Ku, he silently conveyed, until we meet again. His elusive figure transformed into a moth and disappeared in the blink of an eye. Nearly a hundred awakeners wailed in pain, rolling on the ground. Song Ku poked one, kicked another, nodding with satisfaction. Not a single one died. Awakener department is performing official duties, please cooperate. A stern voice echoed through the loudspeaker. Zhao Yuqing and another S-level, leading dozens of uniformed personnel, arrived. Zhao Yuqing's eyes were cold, and her water-type ability manifested, binding the necks and limbs of the fallen awakeners in water circles, preventing them from moving freely. The northern base's awakeners scattered in panic, attempting to escape. All relevant personnel, please voluntarily proceed to the awakener department for investigation. Ah! The cursing boy wore a miserable expression, passing by Song Ku with a dejected look, it's over, it's over. I'm going to drink tea again. The group of people reluctantly followed the officials, and the Silver Ring Arena was temporarily closed. Zhao Yuqing walked over solemnly and stopped in front of Song Ku, Captain Song, please come with me. Song Ku blinked. Zhao Yuqing couldn't hold back and smiled faintly, I'm really unlucky, being drafted to handle this matter. I was even worried about fights on the way. Thanks for your help. Song Ku waved at her, no problem. Zhao Yuqing spoke gently, this matter needs to be thoroughly investigated. Please come and follow the procedure. Song Ku glanced at the exit, where it was packed with either escorted or voluntarily cooperating awakeners, making it impassable. We'll go over by ourselves. All right. Zhao Yuqing didn't insist. No need for tea, Song Ku thought for a moment and said. She had just consumed a lot of tea at Professor Ming's place and couldn't handle more. Zhao Yuqing chuckled, finding her somewhat cute, not that kind of tea. You'll know when you come. Song Ku returned to the spectator seats, receiving a kiss from Lin Yuyu, a leg hug from Su Xing, a thumbs up from Fang Jishu, and numerous orders from the top-notch salesperson Lu Xiaoyu. Casually sitting down, she leaned back, and Zhuang Qingyan's knee naturally caught her. Song Ku happily counted the points. It was indeed worthy of being a top 10 team in Takushima. After adding the points from Kirigakure, V587 soared to the third place in the northern base and the 23rd place in the entire alliance. Song Ku was elated. In her excitement, she transferred another million to Su Cha. Su Cha, shirtless, sat obediently in his original spot. When Fang Jishu came over to treat his wounds, he remained silent for a while. Eventually, he hesitated, looking up at Lin Yuyu like a puppy longing for praise. Slap. Lin Yuyu slapped Su Cha's bald head without holding back at all, leaving him stunned as he silently licked his wounded spot. Lin Yuyu's eyebrows furrowed in anger as she scolded, got arrogant, huh? Like to show off, right? Gambling with your life? I picked you up, and your life belongs to me. Who allowed you to squander it? Su Cha. Why did she say something different to that person? After counting the points, Song Ku waved grandly, let's go, send Su Cha away, to jail. Su Cha. Sister. I need to go to the bathroom. Wait for me. Su Xing, legs crossed, twisted uncomfortably. He had been engrossed in watching the arena, drinking a lot of beverages, and now he couldn't hold it in. Who will accompany you Song Ku pointed around and found that none of the men present seemed to have the time. No need for company. After shouting, Su Xing rushed to the bathroom. He ran too fast, collided with a man at the entrance, and the man's round belly bounced him away. He tumbled and rolled, and the man, absent-mindedly, lowered his head, muttering a vague sorry, and hastily walked past him. The rat is lost, the crocodile is not very happy, 
quickly grab another batch of cats to replenish the grain bin. Su Xing sat dazed in his original spot, recalling the time before the apocalypse when Su Weigua used to boast while picking his teeth, the most profitable business. It's smuggling, just casually put in a few mice and cats, and you can make a fortune from those crocodiles. Uncle, your terminal fell. A voice of innocence sounded, and a boy timidly pulled at the man's sleeve. The man impatiently looked down, only to find his terminal perfectly on his wrist. Not mine, you've got the wrong person. Uncle, this terminal has no password. There's a lot of money inside, you're too careless. The man abruptly stopped talking, snatched the terminal from Su Xing's hand, ah yes yes, it's mine, thank you, little friend. You're welcome, uncle. It's what I should do. Su Xing smiled innocently, and with a small shake of his hand, a mini ladybug crawled into the man's pocket. Chapter 212 After I die, I won't care about the raging flood. Two hours before the riot at the Silver Ring Arena. In the ancient street villa area. Lucia and Ming Gang, who worked in the living room, exchanged a few words. Lucia picked up the flower spray pot and walked towards the courtyard. Just as she descended the steps, the access control system reminded her of a visitor. Lucia felt a bit surprised. They had refused visitors for many years, and their friends were aware of their habits and wouldn't disturb them casually. On this special day, who could be coming? Lucia opened the terminal, and real-time images came in. A charming young girl's face was looking at the camera, with round eyes like a certain small animal, curiously looking around. Behind her was a tall young man. Lucia sighed silently, signaled the access control to allow entry, put the flower spray pot aside, and adjusted her bun and outfit. Not long after, Song Ku came over with a large bouquet of fragrant and vibrant lilies. Due to radiation, most plants had mutated after doomsday. She intentionally bought the restored version, several times more expensive than the ordinary ones. Zhuang Qinyan gently pushed her back, and Song Ku awkwardly spoke, Hello, Professor. Wishing you both a happy pearl wedding anniversary. Extending her hand, Lucia took the bouquet and handed it to the robot butler for trimming and arranging. She then turned around and picked up the flower spray pot. Come in first I'll go water the flowers. Song Ku, with a smiling face, eagerly approached, let me help you. Before Lucia could react, the pot was taken away, and Song Ku happily ran away. Her enthusiastic attitude made it impossible for people to refuse. Lucia could only lead Zhuang Qinyan inside first. When Ming Gang saw the newcomers, his face instantly turned serious, if you want to inquire about Ming Ji's news, I have nothing to say. Zhuang Qinyan nodded slightly, with a polite attitude, Professor Ming, rest assured, I won't do anything to upset you. I'm just here as Ming Ji's colleague and friend to visit you on his behalf. Ming Gang snorted coldly but didn't say anything to drive him away. Zhuang Qinyan turned gently to Lucia, Professor, I have a somewhat unpleasant request. May I see Ming Ji's childhood photos? Lucia was somewhat surprised but agreed. She opened a dynamic photo album on the projection, apparently flipping through it regularly. She cherished every page and couldn't help sharing because of her longing as a mother, this is when Xiao Ji was just born, thin as a monkey after much effort to fatten him up, you can see how cute he was at five, all chubby. This one is Asker's graduation photo he was the youngest student in that year. Lucia's eyes gradually moistened, I'm sorry this album only goes up to the age of twenty. I didn't have the chance to see what he looked like afterward. It's not like there's no chance, Zhuang Qinyan pondered slightly, looking calmly at Lucia. I'm quite good at drawing. If you don't mind, I can try to draw Ming Ji's later appearance. He carefully observed the photos and videos in the album, from the innocent childhood to the teenage years, flipping through until Ming Ji was twenty and entered the Qinglan Research Institute. His life record stopped here. After a moment of contemplation, Zhuang Qinyan took out a light screen and began to sketch. He first copied the appearance of Ming Ji at 20, as it was the most accurate with visual references. Then, based on bone structure and muscle development, he drew Ming Ji at 30, with a mature and stable face. The last sketch depicted Ming Ji at around 70, 
with gentle eyebrows and eyes drooping slightly, wrinkles covering his face, lips slightly pursed, surrounded by a faint academic aura. Lucia stared at the portrait of 70-year-old Ming Ji in a trance, Ming Gang, this one looks a bit like you. Ming Gang glanced at it proudly, raising his chin, of course, my son looks like me. He pointed his finger, hovering over the sketch of 30-year-old Ming Ji, also like you, similar eyebrows, similar personality, the same soft heart. A tinge of melancholy and sadness surged in Ming Gang's heart. He couldn't bear it, turning his head away, eyebrows furrowing. Then, he covered his mouth, almost gasping for breath, stop cough. Is this your way of watering them? Are you trying to drown them? In the courtyard, several carefully cultivated biotic camellia plants by Lucia were soaked from roots to leaves. Song Ku, who was happily watering the flowers, looked up in confusion, startled by Ming Gang's loud voice. She shivered, and the flower spray pot accidentally released a stream of water. Ming Gang was so angry that he couldn't speak, and Song Ku, summoned by Lucia, nervously entered the house. The couple stared at her in silence for a while, but in the end, they couldn't bear to scold her. After all, this child meant well and didn't intentionally cause trouble. Lucia pushed the tea set toward them, have some tea. Song Ku, with her head shrunk, dared not touch anything. Lucia spoke softly, it's okay the flowers I raise never bloom. Song Ku was surprised, huh? Lucia, seemingly recalling something, smiled lightly, at that time, Xiao Ji was just like you, always insisting on helping but unable to control the water properly. He often ended up drowning the flowers. I got used to it a long time ago. At her words, Zhuang Qinyan lowered his gaze, subtly moving his fingertips, Song Ku, can I borrow the light screen? Song Ku retrieved the old light screen left by her grandfather and handed it to him. Zhuang Qinyan stood up and gestured, sorry for the interruption I'll be back in a moment. After leaving the living room, Zhuang Qinyan glanced at those drooping and seemingly lifeless camellia plants, shaking his head with a smile. Then, he put away his smile and brought up the portrait of Song Ziyuan, drawn according to Song Ku's description, placing it next to Ming Ji's portrait. Clearly, Song Ziyuan appeared even older, with numerous wrinkles and lines, a grey and lifeless complexion. To anyone looking at it, he seemed to be a pitiable old man tormented by illness. However, when Zhuang Qinyan overlaid the two images, the features of Song Ziyuan and Ming Ji mysteriously aligned. Zhuang Qinyan hesitated for a moment, then placed the portrait of 20-year-old Ming Ji on top. His gaze gradually fixed. Despite the noticeable differences in facial conditions, the alignment of bone structure and muscle development was consistent. Zhuang Qinyan switched to another system on the old light screen, which contained a vast amount of cutting-edge research papers and data on genetics. If Song Ziyuan was from District F, could he have obtained this knowledge and understanding of the content? Unless he didn't belong there at all, but instead came from District B, where knowledge access was easily available. Moreover, he might have been the once acclaimed genius young doctor in genetics. Ming Ji, Ziyuan. Is it not true that without a tranquil heart, one cannot have a clear aspiration? Without peace, one cannot achieve far-reaching goals, right? But why would a promising researcher turn into an elderly man plagued by incurable illness within a few years? Zhuang Qinyan fell into silence for a moment, the clear answer forming in his mind. Radiation Excessive exposure to radiation in a short period can lead to organ failure, causing rapid aging in the human body. So, Ming Ji became Song Ziyuan. There is only one possibility, after the Lok accident, Ming Ji must have returned to the research institute or approached the nuclear explosion site, facing excessive radiation exposure, resulting in severe damage to his bodily functions. But why did he go back? He clearly escaped with an experimental subject privately. Knowing the accident had occurred, why return to such a dangerous place? What about LAK-0017, taken away by him? With the initial cells dead, the experimental subject should not have survived. How did Ming Ji handle it? Zhuang Qinyan closed his eyes and then pulled up Song Ku's genetic report. Among the hundreds of unknown DNA sequences, only two were clear, hook snake and wildcat. This did not prove anything, 
as he could list over a thousand cases of experimental subjects with a fusion of these two genes, including LAK0017. In the prolonged silence, Chuang Qinyan sighed deeply, his voice barely audible. You succeeded, Prometheus. You found the true fire. In ancient myths, Prometheus stole the fire to rekindle the light for humanity, angering the chief god Zeus. As punishment, Prometheus was bound to a rock on Mount Caucasus, where an eagle would daily feast on his regenerating liver. Prometheus became a tormented martyr. But in this world, there has never been a Hercules. Zhuang Qingyan's next sigh came instantly. The myth ends happily, with Zeus's son, the brave and strong Hercules, shooting the eagle with a bow and freeing Prometheus from his chains. However, reality took an unexpected turn. Prometheus faced punishment for stealing the fire, and the greedy humanity transformed into the eagle, seeking his last moments of life. Zhuang Qinyan lowered his brows, a hint of resentment emerging in his eyes. He systematically deleted all the portraits, like an indifferent deity indifferent to the suffering of all living beings. In the laboratory of Qianzhan City, Ning Rong questioned him about why he refused to hand over the fire seed data. At that time, Zhuang Qingyan's response was, he couldn't become a saint. In fact, he lied. Not only did he not want to become a saint, but he also desired to be the tyrannical Zeus who actively extinguishes the flames. Apres moi, le deluge. After me, the deluge. Chapter, 213. After I die, I won't care about the raging flood. Song Ku, who had unintentionally caused trouble, immersed herself in drinking tea to disguise her embarrassment. Lucia covered Ming Gang's hand, feeling it a bit cool, and tugged at the blanket, let's work on the paper tomorrow. Did you take your medicine? The irritable Ming Gang, in front of Lucia, seemed as docile as a lamb, took half. Lucia disapproved as she looked at him. Ming Gang forced a smile and grasped her hand back without letting go, it's not a big deal why bother taking medicine all the time. The warm atmosphere between the two was indescribable, leaving no room for a third person to intervene. Song Ku stared blankly at them, and the question Zhuang Qinyan had asked her during their time in Haiman inexplicably popped into her head, do you know what liking means? The couple, Ming Gang and Lucia, turned towards her simultaneously. Song Ku belatedly realized that she had inadvertently spoken aloud. Lucia pondered slightly, liking is the prelude to love. It's a superficial expression of love, encompassing attachment, altruism, and intimacy. Holding the tea cup, Song Ku's eyes reflected a clear but confused expression. Professor Lucia, forgive me if I can't agree with that, Ming Gang coughed lightly and said solemnly, I believe liking and love are two completely different emotions. Oh. What is Professor Ming's insight? Lucia turned to him with a smile. When it came to professional matters, the two renowned cognitive psychologists engaged in a calm and amicable discussion. Ming Gang, never one for humor, stated firmly, liking is an unrestrained infatuation, while love is an exclusive loyalty. Liking a flower, you might pick it, but loving a flower, you'll only nurture it. Song Ku's head followed the two as they conversed, nodding and shaking her head in apparent understanding, oh. Lucia gently touched the coiled hair at her temple, her eyes reflecting a wise and bright light, who says love must be exclusive. Commonly recognized love can be divided into passionate love and companionate love. Passionate love is emotional, intense, stimulated by dopamine and adrenaline, longing to be with the other person. At this stage, perhaps there is what you call exclusivity, and the narrow swinging suspension bridge effect, making one unconsciously yearn. Lucia subtly needled, even changing her address to a polite form of you. Song Ku blinked in confusion, dopamine. Suspension bridge. Once again, she couldn't comprehend. Ming Gang opened his mouth to retort, but Lucia forcefully interrupted, however, the peak period cannot be sustained indefinitely. When the passion subsides, life becomes increasingly ordinary, ultimately returning to companionate love, the three elements I mentioned earlier deeper attachment and longer-lasting intimacy, mutual respect, mutual support. So, I believe that liking and love are connected, Lucia smiled, Professor Ming, do you agree with my perspective? You're right. Ming Gang cleverly stepped back, 
avoiding the discussion of liking and love, emphasizing the importance of family harmony. Lucia handed a glass of water to him, so, respect each other and take your medicine. Ming Gang choked up, silently taking the glass and swallowing. Song Ko followed suit, lowering her head to sip her tea. Lucia looked at her with maternal affection, like a patient teacher explaining patiently, Did you understand? Song Ko mumbled in response, I understood the earlier part. She grasped the idea up to the point of picking flowers, but the rest became hazy. Ming Gang and Lucia exchanged a glance, facing the first student who was so challenging to teach. Lucia rephrased it, liking is when you see someone for the first time and know it's him. Ming Gang held Lucia's hand, and the two reached a silent consensus at that moment, love is when one day, you look back at her and tell yourself, thank goodness it's her. After leaving Ming Gang's home, Zhuang Qinyan remained silent throughout the journey. Song Ku approached him, tilting her head, what are you thinking about? Nothing, just feeling fortunate. Zhuang Qinyan held her hand, forcefully entwining his fingers with hers, lowering his head slightly, fortunate that I found you so early. Zhuang Qinyan's face, though exceptionally handsome, seemed to carry an air of heavy color, forming a unique charm, especially when he spoke in a low voice. It felt like an irresistible vortex. Song Ko corrected his statement, it's not you who found me it's I who saved you. Zhuang Qinyan smiled slowly, gazing down at Song Ku, yes, you saved me. Liking is when you see someone for the first time and know it's him. Suddenly, Song Ku plunged into his gaze, momentarily stunned. It was strange looking back now she wasn't someone who meddled in others' affairs. Why, when they first met in Hua City, did she impulsively rescue him from the pool of blood? Ah Chu. Without warning, Song Ku sneezed. She rubbed her nose and, when she looked up, noticed that Zhuang Qinyan had closed his eyes, lenses speckled with suspicious droplets. Ah! I'm sorry. Song Ku hurriedly wiped them with her sleeve. It's okay. Zhuang Qinyan held her hand, kneading it in his palm, does something feel uncomfortable? Did she smell something strange again, or was there an issue with her recessive gene? Song Ku honestly replied, feels like my eyes are a bit dry. Zhuang Qinyan examined her carefully but found no abnormalities. He looked up at the sky the northern base also had a weather simulation system, labeled T-005. The terminal displayed normal temperature and radiation. Maybe it's some allergies. Let's go indoors. Song Ku nodded, and at that moment, the terminal beeped. Lin Yuyu had sent a distress message. Three hours later, at the Awakener Department. The investigating officer in charge sat upright, looking serious and hesitant, um, would you would you like some water? Song Ko frowned slightly, having consumed tea throughout the day already. Thinking she might be dissatisfied, the officer suddenly stood up, what would you like to drink? I'll have someone prepare it. Obediently, he promptly left the room. He had been unlucky enough to visit Dr. Ning's research institute and witnessed the formidable S7 subdue Ziegler and Shizai. In case he angered her, he didn't want to risk losing his head. Yi Zimei knocked on the door and entered. The investigating officer, as if granted a reprieve, said, Xiao Yi, I'll leave it to you. I have some other work to attend to. Without waiting for a response, he hastily left the room, looking as if he were being chased by a ghost. With only two people left in the room, Yi Zimei deliberately drew out her words, Captain Song. Song Ku raised her voice, I didn't steal anything. Nor did I break anything. Unable to contain her amusement, Yi Zimei chuckled, don't be nervous. This time, considering your act of bravery, you actually have some credit. Song Ku's eyes lit up, so, Su Cha won't have to go to jail. Yi Zimei adopted a serious tone, in the northern base, Unless an awakener results in a fatal outcome during wartime, the consequences are severe. Luckily, he killed someone from the Takushima faction, and they signed a life or death agreement before the duel. Otherwise, this would have been quite troublesome. Go and get him, and remember, there won't be a next time. Song Ku went to the detention room to retrieve Su Cha. On the way, they encountered the rich cursing boy who had been beaten by his parents. Seeing her approach, the boy, with a bruised and swollen face, 
rushed over excitedly and rubbed his hands together, Sister Song, can you give me an autograph? Sign it on my shirt. He quickly took off his t-shirt, revealing his bare upper body, then suddenly realized, oh. And the commission reward, I'll send it to you. After confirming completion on the terminal, another 800,000 points were credited to V587's account, and their overall ranking moved up one place. Song Kook casually signed her name, patting the young man's shoulder as she did. With such potential, he had a promising future, and she enjoyed helping out newcomers. The young man touched his shoulder, looking happy and somewhat dreamy, then walked away. V587 left, chatting and laughing. On the first floor, they unexpectedly bumped into He Chiohong. The second in command of the northern base had a serious expression, and behind her were six top tier awakeners, forming an imposing lineup that had never been seen before. This group included the Ling siblings, the recently injured but now recovering Zeigler, Zhao Yuching, and three new S level combatants. As the two groups met in a narrow passage, both sides stopped, and the atmosphere instantly became tense. After a moment, He Chiohong, with a cold expression, walked past Song Ku without a sideways glance. Zhao Yuching discreetly turned around and nodded to her. He Chiohong had always valued awakeners. With so many unknown individuals infiltrating her jurisdiction, it could have led to significant security incidents. It was not surprising that she took action, mobilizing all S-level members. Excluding Song Ku was also not surprising, considering their conflict stemming from the kidnapping incident. Since then, the authority over V587 was no longer in her hands. Song Ku nonchalantly turned her head, let's go, to catch the smugglers that Xiao Xing found. Ah Chu. Just as they walked out of the Awakener Department building, Song Ku couldn't control another sneeze. What's wrong, Captain? Catching a cold? Lin Yu Yu asked with concern. Song Ku waved her hand to indicate it was nothing. Her eyes were dry, her throat was dry, and although there were no obvious discomforts, it seemed like her allergic symptoms had worsened. Song Ku looked into the distance, where the scorching sun hung high, starships shuttled back and forth, and the transparent barrier seemed to appear and disappear. The northern base remained calm as usual. Her jet black hair gently fluttered in the wind. The wind was picking up. Chapter 214 Don't look, there's dirty stuff. Wulong Wulong The three-dimensional subway descended vertically, slowly stopping at the platform, and passengers of all shapes and colors came down from the carriage. A round-bellied man hummed an out-of-tune tune and casually tossed the terminal that had been emptied into the recycling bin. Unexpectedly, by delivering a package, he could also receive a windfall of 500,000 alliance coins for free. The man proudly patted his belly, crossed the transparent sky bridge, turned into the lower level street, and left the bright sunlight behind. Business has been good lately, coupled with unexpected income, enough for him to splurge for several years to come. A mini ladybug peeked out of his pocket, its compound eyes gleaming, transmitting data along the way. When the man was about to reach his doorstep, his footsteps halted. Uncle. At the end of the road, a well-dressed Su Xing raised a small hand, enthusiastically greeting him, Do you remember me? The man stared at him suspiciously. Even though it hadn't been half a day, of course, he remembered. This kid was the silly-looking wealth-bringing boy at the bathroom door. Sorry, uncle, I made a mistake. Actually, that terminal is mine. Su Xing pouted slightly, with an innocent and cute expression. Please, can you give it back to me? Don't be ridiculous. How could you have so much money? And why would you be silly enough to give me the terminal? The man instinctively retorted, regretting it now. It really is mine. Su Xing's watery eyes blinked, and a small ice cone slowly formed in his palm. Smiling like a cunning demon, he said, if I didn't fish like this, how would I have hooked you? Fooled. This kid is definitely a person with abilities. An alarm bell rang in the man's mind, and just as he was about to speak, a few clear coughs sounded behind him, causing him to turn abruptly. In the lingering twilight, a group of six people blocked his retreat. In the middle was an 18 or 19 year old girl, her leaf shaped knife flipping up and down at her fingertips. Behind her, 
tall men and women lined up, glaring at him. The man thought it was bad, turned his head, and rushed forward, trying to break through from Su Xing. Su Xing eagerly waited with excitement in his eyes, and the ice cone in his hand instantly transformed into a solid ice wall, blocking his way. The man slammed on the brakes, regretting in his heart, I said, how can good things fall from the sky for nothing? This isn't a wealth-bringing boy he's clearly a plague. His eyes turned, and suddenly, gray hair grew on exposed skin, clothes fell off, and in the blink of an eye, he turned into a huge rat, scurrying into the sewer. This unremarkable-looking man turned out to be a shapeshifter. The Awakener mouse squeaked and dashed forward, seemingly about to escape. Ding! A dark blue leaf-shaped knife flew accurately, piercing its tail. The mouse had just leaped out a bit when it was thump bounced back, rolling on the ground, stars swirling in its eyes. Su Xing was startled by the ugly large mouse and hid behind Song Ku, peeking with one eye. The rhythmic footsteps stopped in front, and Fang Jishu, with a playful twist to his hair, squatted down kindly. His hands moved, and two shiny dissecting knives appeared out of thin air. A smile resembling that of a twisted doctor appeared on his face. It's been many years since I last dissected a mouse, huh? Where should I start? Open the abdominal cavity first, then pull out the intestines. The cold surgical knife pressed against the thick fur, and the next second was about to cut through the flesh. Don't, don't kill me. What do you guys want? I'll give you the money, isn't that enough? The Awakener mouse struggled desperately, and begged. Song Ku comfortingly patted Su Xing's head. You go first, turn back into a human. I'll ask you a few questions. Bang! The man obediently turned back, completely naked, blood flowing from his right ankle, shivering on the ground. Zhuang Qingyan immediately covered Song Ku's eyes. Song Ku's vision fell into darkness, her fan-like eyelashes blinked. A low reminder sounded in her ears, don't look, there's dirty stuff. Lin Yuyu was a half second slow, suddenly turned her head, her expression was indescribable. Help, I faint at the sight of needles. Su Cha, with a dark face, stepped forward, firmly blocking her. When the man clumsily put on his clothes, Song Ku finally lowered Zhuang Qingyan's hand. Are you a smuggler? Injustice, sister. I'm just an honest scalper, selling tickets and collecting some service fees. The man insisted, biting down on his story. Song Ku naturally didn't believe him and went straight to the point. I ask you, what are mice, crocodiles, and a chew? What are cats? The man didn't expect Song Ku to speak in code right away, and his expression momentarily became uncertain. Feng Jishu smiled, raising the dissecting knife as if ready to cut into his mouth. I'll talk. I'll talk. The man, terrified, trembled uncontrollably. I really didn't smuggle. I just followed the big brother to do some smuggling business, find some channels, help people get short-term access, and send them into the base. The mouse is an awakener from another district, all with legal identities. We don't dare deal with illegal immigrants. As a popular immigrant city in District B, the northern base had strict immigration procedures. And there was even a proactive city specifically handling related matters, receiving guests from all walks of life daily, making the city bustling with people. V587 exchanged a silent glance, and it seemed Su Xing had indeed guessed right this man was indeed involved in smuggling. How many mice have you brought in? Altogether, about 5,000 people. Song Ku's eyes turned cold. The awakeners causing trouble on the Silver Ring Arena were only around a hundred. This meant that there were still many rats hiding in other corners of the northern base. Lin Yuyu looked down at the curled up man on the ground with disdain and mocked, 5,000 people. Are you a local? You have quite the guts, bringing in so many dangerous individuals. Aren't you afraid of trouble in the northern base? With Director He and the Awakener Department here, what trouble can arise? The man grumbled indifferently. Go to Qinjiang City and see how many people want to come in every day. Besides, it's not immigration it's just short-term entry. We're just helping out and earning a meal on the side. The brawl on the Silver Ring Arena had caused quite a stir, but it was suppressed. 
The order in the northern base had always been good, and with the wise management, even if something happened, there were big shots to solve it. They didn't need to worry. Don't embellish yourself. You're just a traitor. Lin Yu Yu scolded. If they were bringing in exiled awakeners, that would be one thing, but it turned out to be people with sinister motives from District B. While the northern base had a good reputation, were the other areas in District B so disgraceful? 5,000 illegally infiltrated awakeners at the same time clearly indicated a conspiracy. These short sighted fools only cared about their own interests, completely disregarding the consequences. Lin Yu Yu kicked the man's chin with anger, causing him to scream in pain. Song Ku pretended not to see and didn't stop her rude behavior, continuing to ask, Who is the crocodile? The beaten man, now nodding obediently, answered, The crocodile is our boss. He pays to bring in rats. No one knows his real identity, but he is generous with his money every time. Song Ku understood it seemed that the crocodile was the mastermind behind the entire conspiracy. What about the cats? How many are there? The smuggler hesitated for a moment, his tone becoming uncertain. Cats there seem to be six or seven. Or maybe seven or eight. They are very expensive, not under my control. I only handle communication, but I've seen two of them. They don't have awakened energy they are just ordinary people. Sister, you can rest assured nothing troublesome will happen. The man ingratiatingly grinned, as if saying, I still love my homeland. After the man finished speaking, the seven people on the opposite side fell silent. He shivered, a sense of unease gradually rising in his heart. Did I say something wrong? Lu Xiaoyu's wheelchair elevated, and his hazel eyes coldly looked down at him. Hey, rat, do you think we are ordinary people? One woman and two men suddenly erupted with powerful awakened energy. The overwhelming pressure, like a tsunami, penetrated the man's entire body with a pane of countless steel nails. His internal magnetic field went haywire, and gray fur uncontrollably appeared, his legs trembling, almost unable to maintain human form. The man's teeth chattered, and the only thought left in his extremely fearful mind was, S-level. As long as there was an intention to conceal, low-level awakeners couldn't feel the awakened energy of an S-level. This was why they mistakenly took them for ordinary people. Lin Yu Yu completely disregarded her image, angrily kicking the man again. That's not a cat at all it's a jackal. Fools, you've invited a wolf into the house. Song Ku thrust a knife between the man's legs. Give up all the information about the cats. The current situation is that at least six S levels have infiltrated, Zhuang Qinyan calmly stated. V587 was holding a meeting at the top level of the starship port, offering an excellent view of the entire city. Despite the bustling crowds below, no abnormalities could be discerned for the time being. During the Silver Ring Arena incident, S4 level Awakener Qian suddenly appeared, wanting to stand up for Fujita Hero. They had sensed that something was wrong at that time. Since when did the relationship between District BS become so friendly and cooperative? Now it seemed like a cat crying for mice. Benevolence was false, intentionally provoking a war was true. Lu Xiaoyu tapped his fingers, infiltrating the surveillance system, and within seconds, situations of awakeners making trouble were happening everywhere. The S levels in the northern base were suppressing them separately, overwhelmed with tasks. In the confinement room of the awakener department, it was probably already overcrowded. Song Ku said, I've sent the information to Yi Zimei and Bai Qi. The quicker the intelligence was transmitted, the better. This way, both the Awakener Department and Yi Zheng's side could respond promptly. A Chu. She sneezed again, this time with a muffled sound. Chuang Qinyan frowned. Song Ku's condition could no longer be described as an allergy. There must be something wrong somewhere. I feel the air is so dirty, Song Ku rubbed her nose and muttered. Hoo hoo. A strong wind suddenly rose, and the biomimetic plants around them rustled, their roots skewed. Bang! A giant billboard from a lower building fell from the sky, making a deafening sound. Where did this storm come from? The group looked surprised T005 was operating normally, and there was a weather simulation system in place. 
how could such extreme weather, out of season, suddenly occur? One strong gust of wind followed another, and in just a few seconds, a sudden change occurred. The sunlight rapidly dimmed, the sky was completely blocked, and at the distant horizon, a colossal sandstorm, carrying thousands of tons of dust, formed a massive wall of sand that engulfed the entire northern base. Get down! Song Ku managed to shout, and the seven people tightly gripped the railing. The powerful storm shook their bodies, and Su Xing's feet left the ground, but he was pulled back by Fang Jishu and Lu Xiaoyu. From a high vantage point, the scene before them was extremely shocking. The vast city was instantly covered by yellow smoke. The fine dust fiercely struck buildings, emitting a muffled roar. Glass shattered, billboards and lampposts tore apart, and countless people, unable to escape in time, were swept into the vast sea of sand. Five minutes later, Song Ku struggled to stand up, her nose, ears, and mouth filled with sand particles. Her senses were irritated, and she coughed incessantly. All seven of them were covered in dust and dirt. Looking around, the visibility was less than five meters, the sky was dimly yellow, and everything was chaotic. Song Ku barely opened her mouth, and sand fell out. How could this happen? Zhuang Qinyan coughed twice. It's the side effect of utopia. The rise of utopia led to frequent occurrences of extreme weather. The periphery of the northern base was an endless desert plain, already dry and rainless throughout the year, relying on T005 for regulation. Now, with the sudden global climate change, the air conditions became extremely unstable. Strong winds easily caused sandstorms when the weather was unfavorable. The weather simulation system had limited tolerance, and this level of disaster had exceeded its threshold. The broadcast immediately sounded, the Meteorological Monitoring Center issues a special red alert for an extremely strong sandstorm. Residents are advised to cease outdoor activities, close doors and windows, and refrain from going outside. Outside the transparent barrier, a layer of anti-sand net slowly lit up, enclosing the entire base, blocking most of the dust. Song Ku spat out the sand and said, as expected of District B they had a response plan so quickly. After the anti-sand net was raised, the choking storm was blocked, though the environment remained harsh, at least making it possible to stand. At that moment, the terminals of the group suddenly displayed an urgent mission, B-level mission limited to the region, extreme sandstorm weather in the northern base. All awakeners are requested to join forces to eliminate it. The complete content had not yet emerged the next moment, this mission quickly flickered, the previous text was wiped away, replaced by new information. When looked at again, its meaning became unclear, A-level mission limited to the region, protect the northern base. The new Asia Alliance's mission platform was automatically monitored, assessed, published, and adjusted by AI groups above B District. It had never made a mistake before, whether before or after Doomsday. The fact that it had escalated from B to A indicated that the mission's difficulty had increased in just a few seconds. However, this became even more peculiar. The sandstorm in the northern base had clearly been controlled. Could there be other severe weather conditions behind it? Moreover, the meaning of protect the northern base seemed a bit vague. Amidst the confusion, a slight sound came from above. Song Ku's ears moved slightly she suddenly looked up through layers of smoke and dust, only to see a strange bird with an entirely black body on the high-altitude anti-sand net. Its two wings shimmered with a metallic blue-purple luster, its feathers were messy and shaped like needles, and its irises displayed the gray-white characteristic of zombie creatures. A crow, Zhuang Qingyan's cold voice sounded. Due to the large size of the brain area, it is recognized as a bird species with high intelligence. Don't be afraid, it's just a ferocious beast. Captain Song, a responsible captain, transformed a spiritual weapon rapid-fire crossbow and aimed it at the zombie crow. Bang! The crow's body fell to the ground, caught on the edge of the anti-sand net. However, Zhuang Qingyan's next words chilled people's hearts, crows are strongly social and skilled in forming nests. In special situations such as foraging and mating, they often roam in mixed groups. Next to the first crow's corpse, the second one quickly fell, followed by the third, the fourth densely covering the ground. 
In the midst of the yellow sand, they were like incarnations of death, pecking at carrion. Opening their wings, they emitted sharp cawing sounds, gurgling, and quacking. Song Ku, uh. She looked at the crow flock, then down at the lone rapid-fire crossbow. For the first time, she hesitated about what kind of spiritual weapon she should transform. In Qianzhan city, sandstorms and ferocious beasts wreaked havoc everywhere. Ruthless crow talons pierced human shoulder bones, pulling them into the air to tear and devour. The sky no longer showed its original colors the black and yellow symbols of death covered everyone's retinas. Ah! One after another, screams rang out, and both awakeners and ordinary people fled in panic. Quick, seek help from the northern base. Apply for urgent refuge let us in. Awakener department building, second top floor. He Chilhong placed both hands on her abdomen, looking at the real-time images being transmitted. Her expression was serious. How many people are in Qianzhan city now? Six. Five million, the administrative secretary reported quickly, including four. Three million awakeners. He Chilhong stood up with a slender figure, her silhouette against the floor-to-ceiling window. Outside, everything was cast in a yellowish hue, and the outlines of buildings were vaguely visible. 6. 5 million population, more than two-thirds are awakeners, precisely at this critical juncture. Conspiracy. Or coincidence. She repeated in a low voice, 4. 3 million awakeners, what a waste. A group of those who did not pass or did not have time for the review process inside, she did not know how many spies with ulterior motives were mixed in. If there was time, she wouldn't mind carefully screening and selecting talents to fill the ranks of the northern base. Unfortunately, the current timing was too critical. He Chilhong did not consider herself a cruel person, but regardless of the timing, the interests of the northern base always took precedence. With the ongoing violent incidents in the city, as the person in power, she had to make some sacrifices and concessions. After all, better to mistakenly kill 3,000 than to let one person go. Director He, Qianzhan City has suffered heavy casualties. The Ministry of Transportation has arranged several evacuation routes. The expected open points are. The secretary flipped through the light screen data in distress, requesting instructions from the higher-ups as soon as possible. No need, He Chilhong's voice rang out coldly. Ah! The secretary was stunned, unconsciously making a small exclamation. Close all connecting channels with Qianzhan City, only accept flying terminals with the base's identification. The secretary was dumbfounded for a while, and after realizing her intentions, a chill ran down her spine. Chapter, 215 Until the last person. Xiao Yi, wait, don't be impulsive, let's talk things out. Director He is in a meeting, you can't just barge in like this. Zime, let's wait for approval. Maybe there's still a chance. Yi Zime's face was as calm as water. Striding through the corridor, she, an A3 level gravity type awakener, raised her hand, and with a swift motion, her colleagues' limbs felt as heavy as sandbags. Their knees gave way, and they knelt on the ground, unable to block her path any longer. In the past, Yi Zime, who always followed rules and regulations, would never have dared to use her awakened abilities so audaciously in the workplace. However, under the influence of the lawless Song Ku, after cleaning up messes several times, she gradually realized that sometimes solving problems with force could save a lot of unnecessary time. Yi Zimei stopped in front of the meeting room, took a deep breath, and knocked on the door. Without waiting for a response from inside, she confidently walked in. Director He, this is the evacuation proposal I drafted. It outlines 13 retreat routes for the residents of Qianzhan City. Please review and approve it. The room fell silent, and the virtual projections of the participants all turned their surprised gazes towards this unexpected visitor. He Chilhong sat at the main seat, her expression unchanged. Regarding Qianzhan City, I have already issued the order. You should proceed with normal execution. Yi Zimei gradually clenched her hands into fists and said, word by word, no, we cannot execute it. What you represent is only your personal will, not the will of the northern base. This statement shocked everyone present. 
who was he Chiohong? The highest ranking official in the Awakener Department, the second in command in District B10. Many people on the scene were unclear about Yi Zime's true identity. Her open defiance sent a chill down their spines. Was this young person so bold because she had lost her mind? Director He, you have always been my respected senior, and once, my goal to look up to. Yi Zime stood tall, her voice slightly trembling, but her expression exceptionally firm. But it seems you do not understand the significance of the northern base. The purpose of establishing this city by Yi Zheng is to provide a refuge for all those who have suffered through wars. Whether in peace or turmoil, at any time, no matter what happens, as long as the northern base stands, its gates will open selflessly to fellow countrymen. That's why it's called the last hope of humanity. After the devastating nuclear war, countless people were displaced, homeless, drifting with despair. Yi Jing built a new city with his own hands in the wastelands, telling all survivors that this is your home. Half a century later, numerous prosperous cities had risen, but for the Alliance people, the northern base held a different meaning. It not only represented hope but also served as the final retreat. Yi Zimei's eyes were slightly red as she raised her voice, the six. Five million people outside are our compatriots they shouldn't be abandoned. You are still young and haven't considered the whole picture, He Chiohong, uncommonly not angered, sighed and opened real-time monitoring. Now, within the city, there are hidden awakeners in various areas, and even infiltrators of S-level. They harbor ill intentions, attempting to provoke conflicts. What's the use of bringing the people from Xinjiang City in? The wisest course of action now is to prioritize dealing with internal crises and minimize the risks. Yi Zimei questioned with difficulty, Director He, in your eyes, is a person's life only measured by its usefulness? He Chilhong gently raised her hand, in my position, I must consider the interests of the northern base. Pale-faced Chi Zhe emerged from the shadows. The entire meeting room instantly became an awakened energy forbidden zone, impervious to the use of awakened abilities. Chi Zhe, having been knocked back from S3 level to A9 level by Song Ku, had disappeared from the public eye since then. Unexpectedly, he had surreptitiously surrendered to He Chiohong. Several security personnel entered and detained Yi Zimei. He Chiohong gazed at her calmly, after this crisis passes, I will personally apologize to the teacher. Yi Zimei struggled, unable to move. She closed her eyes, connecting her consciousness to the terminal. A faint light flashed quickly through her pearl earring. After the appearance of sandstorms and a flock of crows, the awakeners of the northern base swiftly counterattacked. Various armed aircraft flew through the high sky, and colorful awakened abilities pierced through the murky sky filled with yellow sand. Due to the double barriers of the sand-resistant net and shields, the crow army couldn't break through, temporarily securing the base. However, they densely occupied the sky, with their numbers causing great anxiety. The only way to deal with them was to slowly wear them down using long-range awakened abilities. Lin Yuyu's long hair moved slightly as she sang an ethereal tune. The crow group within her range was afflicted with debuffs, drastically reducing their aggressiveness. Su Xing became the top damage dealer for V587, unleashing a storm of ice needles. Lu Xiaoyu set up heavy machine guns, but due to the upward angle, their effective range was shortened, limiting the damage they could inflict. Song Ku shook off the ankle-deep sand, raised her leg, and coincidentally met eyes with a slightly larger crow. You, come down. Song Ku defiantly raised her arm, pointing at it and shouting. Ka. A hint of disdain flashed in the crow's grey-white eyes, as if saying, you come up if you dare. Captain Song was incredulous, opened her mouth, and accidentally swallowed some dust. PFF, no, was she being mocked by a bird? She wished she could have those weapons from TV dramas like Peacock Feather or Pear Blossom Needle, capable of releasing thousands of dark needles instantly. But aside from not knowing if those existed in the history of the old civilization, she had never seen them and had no idea of their specific structures. She was helpless relying solely on imagination. Annoyed, Song Ku gritted her teeth, pressed one hand to the ground, suddenly leaped up, and, unleashing the full potential of her feline genes, jumped more than eight meters high. 
she climbed to the highest point closest to the sky along a lightning rod, throwing out a swallowtail dart. The arrogant crow was instantly cut down in large numbers. However, as the first batch of beasts fell, more continuously replaced them. The number of crows seemed endless, clang clang striking the barrier. Cracks quickly appeared in the outer sandproof net. Song Ku jumped back to a slightly lower platform, her expression troubled. No, the clearance efficiency was too slow, unable to keep up with their rate of reinforcement. How many beasts were there? Had all the crows in the entire alliance come? Boom boom. A sleek hover car raced in, dangerously close to the sandproof net, and narrowly grazed it. Crimson explosive shells were fired at close range, passing through the net openings and accurately hitting the densest area of crows. The explosions resounded, feathers scattered, and blood splattered, revealing the previously obscured sky. The roof of the car opened, and a silver sniper scope was pushed onto the forehead, revealing a sharp-jawed face with cold gray eyes. He stared intently at the crow swarm, exuding a sense of oppression. When he looked down at Song Ku, his expression turned into a brilliant smile. Perched on the car roof, Yin Xiao tilted his head slightly, covering his face with one hand, and asked in a low voice, Daughter, do you think I have a chance if I confess again? Before Jennifer could reply, Yin Xiao convinced himself, Never mind, how will I know if I don't try? Like a soaring hawk, he leaped down, squeezed into the narrow platform, almost face to face with Song Ku, causing her to sneeze twice. Yin Xiao was covered in sand shaking himself, several pounds of sand fell off. It was evident that he had just rushed back from outside. Song Ku rubbed her nose, slightly surprised, you advanced. In just a few days, Yin Xiao's awakened energy had unexpectedly reached S level. Croak. Caw. Crows gathered again overhead, but Yin Xiao didn't look up. Instead, he shot backward, dispersing the flock with a single shot. Just broke through S1, Captain Song. I've been trying to catch up with you. A double entendre, but unfortunately, it was lost on Song Ku, who sincerely congratulated him, congratulations. Yin Xiao looked straight at her, I'm S level now too. Do you want to consider leaving that man and be with me? Song Ku, come down, Zhuang Qingyan's deep voice interrupted. Dad, save me, it's on fire. At the same time, Jennifer wailed. The downside of AoE Awakeners, they were prone to causing collateral damage. Jennifer's flames, while incinerating crows, unintentionally damaged the sandproof net. Song Ku turned her head and shouted below, Xiao Xing, lend a hand. The feline genes kicked in again as the obedient little cat jumped several times, returning to the side of the summon Zhuang Qinyan. Yin Xiao met the annoying man's eyes from below, the latter smirking with icy eyes. Yin Xiao rolled his eyes at the sky and jumped down following Song Ku. Su Xing hopped around doing calisthenics, changing the ice needles to a larger area of ice and snow to stop the spread of the fire. However, the area still turned dark, the sandproof net teetered, and crow corpses piled up like mountains. Members of the Tustin team landed on the rooftop one after another. Jennifer, with her wavy long hair, threw herself forward with a coquettish gesture. Oh my dear I haven't seen you in half a day I miss you so much. Thud. She unexpectedly collided with a hard chest, Su Cha's face darkened like the bottom of a pot. With two fingers supporting her forehead, he pushed her backward several meters. Jennifer stumbled back to Yin Zhao's side, and the father-daughter duo pursed their lips, silently reaching a consensus. Why is there always an annoying guy next to the cute crush? Zhuang Qinyan glanced at the increasing crow swarm, his expression serious, this is not good. At this rate. The number of these beasts was even greater than originally estimated. Although the awakeners at the northern base killed some of them, they also damaged the sandproof net extensively. The sand and dust were raging again, the yellow wind howling, and the dirty dust desperately infiltrating the respiratory tract. In the current situation, it was difficult to salvage it manually. The only effective solution was to activate the city defense mechanism. Zhuang Qinyan spoke in a deep voice, District B has a well-established city defense system. I need to see the engineering design drawings and come up with another plan. 
Song Ku opened her terminal, about to contact Yi Zimei when she unexpectedly received a message from her, but the content was blank. Song Ku called back, but there was no answer on the other end. Lu Xiaoyu took the terminal and operated a few times, Yi Zimei's signal has been blocked. Zhuang Qingyan's eyes flashed slightly. Before they left, the sudden loss of contact with Yi Zimei could only mean one thing she was under the control of Yi Chiohong. Contact by Qi, we're going to find General Yi. Hey, Captain Song, let's go together. The two teams hurriedly rushed to the official residence of the general. Endless crows raged and roamed wildly, occasionally diving down from the sky. After seizing their prey with their claws, they cruelly tore open the entrails. Panic-stricken people scattered and fled, seeking refuge in sealed buildings, hiding in basements, and taking cover in various modes of transportation. However, gates were shattered, windows were smashed, and even monsters emerged from the sewers, relentlessly attacking them from every possible angle. Individuals with awakened abilities rose to resist, but their limbs were quickly grabbed, howling as they were dragged into the sky, torn apart in different directions. Black ferocious beasts were everywhere, too numerous to count, leaving the residents of the once prosperous city helpless in the face of their inevitable demise. Mom Saab, Mom and Dad, where are you a four or five year old girl stumbled through the streets, crying loudly. Surrounding her were dismembered bodies, the pavement slippery with piled up flesh, and her white shoes stained with deep red blood. Jie Jie. Strange cries echoed from above. The girl looked up in fear, her pupils reflecting the terrifying double wings of a crow, resembling the grim reaper wielding a scythe. In the nick of time, a young awakener swiftly pounced, embracing the girl and rolling away. Vines flew out from his palms, one end wrapping around the crow's neck and the other tightly coiled around a lamppost, narrowly intercepting its attack. However, he inadvertently twisted his ankle and fell awkwardly in front of another group of crows. With his last bit of strength, he pushed the little girl away, yelling hoarsely, Don't look back. Run. Big brother no, no. The helpless girl cried. The streets and alleys were in ruins, a blood-soaked hand pressed against a tightly sealed passage, emitting a desperate cry, dot. Open the door to the north base open. Why? They set out from the low-level district, traversed mountains and rivers across the majority of the Alliance, all for the sake of finding a new refuge. Why did it end up like this? Were they wrong? The eyes of the applicant gradually dimmed. Oh heavens, he was willing to give everything, just hoping for a miracle. In the hazy moment of consciousness, the passage in front slowly opened, pouring down a dazzling light. A majestic figure walked out from inside. The applicant's eyes widened slightly. Could it be a miracle? Boom! The newcomer's fists hit the ground, and a terrifying pressure spread for miles. The crows in the sky lost control and fell uncontrollably, as if glued to the ground by strong adhesive, struggling ceaselessly. Boom! The sound of fists echoed once again, and the bodies of ferocious beasts that roamed on the surface and underground stiffened. Under the force of gravity, their internal organs were compressed, twisting and bursting on the spot. Fleeing civilians stopped in their tracks, and the little girl ceased her sobbing, staring blankly at the newcomer. He was a weathered old man with a head full of silver hair, his face covered in wrinkles and furrows, appearing very, very old. However, he stood tall with a straight spine, his eyes sharp and bright. Dressed in a simple military uniform, he stood there like an unmovable anchor. From both sides behind the old man, thousands of fully armed soldiers rushed out, including those with awakened abilities and ordinary people. Though no longer young, their gaze was resolute, and they were well trained, all descendants of survivors who had experienced brutal wars. They silently crossed the streets, swiftly eliminating the crows controlled by gravity in organizing the orderly retreat of the citizens. A deep and resounding voice penetrated the entire Qianzhan city and echoed through the ears of everyone at the northern base via the regional broadcast. I am Yi Zheng, the magistrate of the northern base. According to Article 10, Section 13 of the Alliance Emergency Regulations during wartime, the Department of Transportation is ordered to immediately open ground entrances numbered 5, 8, 13, 17, and 21, and open the aerial connection channel. 
we unconditionally accept all residents of Qinjan City. All officials of the Awakener Department assist in organizing evacuation routes, ensure the safety of people along the way. And the Logistics Department is to designate temporary shelter areas within an hour for the treatment of the wounded and provide necessary supplies. I'll repeat once again, we unconditionally accept all residents of Qianzhan City, whether Awakeners or ordinary people. I, in the name of the Magistrate, swear that Yi Zheng will protect everyone's retreat here until the last person safely enters the city. All the noise and clamor seem to vanish at once, leaving only Yi Zheng's concise and powerful commands. Until the last person evacuates. He was General Yi Zheng, the founder of the northern base, personally coming to Qianzhan City to protect their retreat. General Yi General Yi. Someone couldn't hold back anymore, bursting into tears, and the sorrowful emotions seemed to be infectious, spreading for kilometers in an instant, forming a deafening wave of sound. With six. Five million residents on the brink of life and death, struggling through ups and downs, experiencing a post-apocalyptic world with zombies and ferocious beasts, at this moment, they finally felt genuine gratitude. Grateful that amidst the apocalypse, in the dangerous wasteland of zombies and beasts, they had found the correct path. The Last Hope of Humanity As long as Yi Zheng was there, the significance of the northern base's existence would not change, even across half a century. Chapter 216 Determined Resolve Under Yi Zheng's layered commands, the northern base entered a state of combat readiness, and the entire city operated in an orderly manner. First, it was the annihilation of crows. Due to their large number, they couldn't be killed in a short time. Fortunately, District B-10 had a well-equipped arsenal of thermal weapons. Battle-hardened soldiers suppressed them with heavy machine guns and rocket launchers, clearing escape routes in the dusky sand. Star ships and armored vehicles loaded with civilians left through the ground-to-air passages. Yi Zheng fulfilled his promise, standing like a towering mountain until the last civilian was safely evacuated. The yellow sand world, and the pitch-black clouds pressed heavily on the sky, spreading from Qianzhan city to the northern base. The once bustling streets were now in ruins, and the city's facilities were destroyed, but at least, most of the people survived. As long as there are people, there is hope. Even on the ruins, a homeland can be rebuilt. General, please retreat as well, a nearby officer reminded in a hushed tone. Yi Jing nodded, turned around slowly, and Bai Qi silently handed him a cane. Yi Jing took it, leaning on the ground, covering his mouth with one hand. The magnetic field inside him was in turmoil, and his vision was constantly darkening. He swallowed the bloody smell in his throat, maintaining a calm expression. Go to the city defense department. The barrier won't last long against a swarm of this scale. Yi Zheng, an experienced battlefield commander, accurately predicted the situation. In the current circumstances, only he could personally command. Bai Qi nodded and, commandeering a temporarily requisitioned hover car, followed the last group of evacuees. They entered the 13th passage, the city gate slowly closed, the hover car changed direction, detached from the main force, and headed towards the city defense department. Faint energy fluctuations were sensed in the air. The officer in front, realizing something was wrong, suddenly turned back, but there was no trace of Yi Zheng behind. Not good. Quickly contact the Awakener Department. General Yi is missing. Swish. Bai Qi's face was stern, realizing the urgency. He switched to manual mode, slammed on the brakes, and the hover car emitted a piercing noise, abruptly stopping. Bang! The body leaned forward due to inertia, then was forcefully pulled back by the seatbelt, crashing into the seat. Through the swirling yellow sand, at the end of the road, a dozen figures were waiting indifferently. Intense mental powers mixed together, with most of them being S-class, and the terrifying pressure made the air tremble. Bai Chi decisively pressed the warning button, but the signal failed, communication was cut off, and the outside sounds were completely sealed off. The entire road was covered by an invisible ability barrier. Yi Zheng, who had been resting with closed eyes, slowly opened his eyes. His gaze was calm like a deep pool. What is meant to come will always come. As more and more sparrows appeared, no, since the moment of the apocalypse, this man, 
who saw through the world and experienced the vicissitudes of life, had a premonition of today's encounter. The car door opened, and Yi Zheng, leaning on the cane, calmly got out, as if he were not facing a group of fierce S-class interceptors, but simply reaching his destination as usual. If awakened energy had a tangible scent, the man in his forties at the forefront exuded a pungent diesel smell. He crossed his arms, his physique robust and muscular, the bulging muscles resembling hills grown in a savage manner. Next to him, a seductive woman with purple eyeshadow, holding a lit thin cigarette between her fingertips, emitted the toxic scent of poppies. Despite the sandstorm weather, she opened her mouth, pursed her red lips, and blew out elegant smoke rings. These two individuals had the highest awakened energy levels, conservatively estimated to be S5 or above. The rest were unfamiliar faces. Yi Jing scrutinized each one and then spotted Lei Zhao, a former S4 level lightning awakener who had belonged to the northern base but later defected to Tokushima. Catching his steady gaze, Lei Zhao's eyes flickered, quickly turning his head away, revealing a hint of embarrassment. Lu Tao, the bulky S6 level diesel scented awakener, raised his arm, offering a half smile. Dot. General Yi Zheng, long time no see. I've been hiding these days just to have a chance to meet you. Finally, the day has come. Yi Zheng's scrutinizing gaze fell on the group of awakeners at a safe distance. He pointed out bluntly, I didn't know that S-level individuals from different regions would form alliances. Several people's expressions changed slightly, not expecting Yi Zheng to see through their origins at a glance. The seductive female awakener, Yaina, chuckled lightly and flicked off some ash from her cigarette, if it weren't for the circumstances, those of us who have no connection would never unite against an external threat, right? General Yi, you are great and selfless. I grew up listening to your glorious deeds, and of course, I highly respect you, she continued. Unfortunately, times have changed young people need to take over. As an elder, you should gracefully step down and exit the stage of history. She looked around the surroundings, her eyes radiating intense enthusiasm. Not all B districts have such excellent living conditions as the northern base. Why should we suffer in dire straits while you enjoy comfort? The Feng Shui paradise of District B10 is enough to make people salivate. Miaoing District B14 is mountainous, Tokushima District B15 is small in size, and Baishan District B13 has harsh weather. The emergence of utopia in the midst of these challenges forced them into a corner. So, these districts secretly united, directing their focus towards the northern base. This fortress city, built before the new era, occupied vast lands, had extensive territories, and boasted advanced and superior facilities. It was the perfect haven for human survival after the apocalypse. The only obstacle was Yi Zheng as long as he raised the banner of war, the entire populace of the northern base became an army, making it nearly impossible to conquer. Although Yi Zheng had not appeared for many years, reportedly suffering from poor health, as long as he was alive, he remained the greatest threat. Once Yi Zheng was eliminated, the spiritual pillar of the northern base would collapse, and the other management layers would not be formidable at all. They would then have the freedom to invade, occupy, and subsequently partition this fertile land. However, killing an S-class awakener is not that easy. They could only send people in first to gather information, provoke conflicts, and secretly look for opportunities. Unexpectedly, with the outbreak of the sandstorm and the invasion of crows, Yi Zheng appeared voluntarily, directing the military to assist in the evacuation of civilians. Meanwhile, he became a commander without a visible force, and even the heavens seemed to be on their side. Attack, Lu Tao didn't waste any words and made an attacking gesture with a gloomy expression. Bai Qi remained silent but stepped forward firmly, standing in front of Yi Zheng. He didn't say anything, but his intention was clear if they wanted to kill Yi Zheng, they had to step over his dead body first. Bai Qi possessed a rare all-encompassing aura-type ability called Determined Resolve. This ability appeared ordinary below the S-Class, with no special characteristics. Only when it broke through the S-Class could it undergo a qualitative change. After activation, it could forcibly pull a person into the aura, significantly enhancing the owner's various qualities and causing overwhelming damage to the enemy. The effect of the ability would only be broken if one of the parties died. However, this death was not equal. 
The enemy experienced genuine death, while the owner of the aura would only suffer severe injuries in reality in drop 1 level. Bai Qi was currently S5, meaning that after activating Determined Resolve, he could endure a maximum of 5 instances of death. Once he dropped to A9, the ability would become unusable. Before the opponents could react, Bai Qi unhesitatingly pulled Yi Zheng and one of the closest S class individuals into the aura. The three of them disappeared on the spot. Within the determined resolve aura, Yi Zheng swung his fists, forcefully controlling the gravity to subdue the isolated enemy. Bai Qi, as swift as lightning, grabbed the opponent's throat, producing a teeth grinding crackling sound of bones. The opponent had yet to use their ability, but both arms and legs were already unable to lift. Snap! The neck was twisted by a terrifying force, and blood sprayed several meters high. As the aura disappeared, a bloody corpse appeared on the ground. Bai Qi's cold face was splattered with blood, and Yi Zheng's breathing was slightly rapid. Together, they had successfully killed an S-level Awakener. The on-site Awakeners looked determined, moving in unison, ready to disperse and surround. Bai Qi took the initiative, swiftly dragging in another S-class. If surrounded, both he and the general would undoubtedly be no match for a dozen or so S-class individuals. The only way was to break them down one by one. Regardless, he had to persist until when. A vague thought crossed Bai Qi's consciousness. When the aura dissipated once again, Bai Qi and Yi Zheng were still standing in place. However, the second opponent seemed to be much more formidable, with several rugged wounds appearing on Bai Qi's body. In the moment before numerous awakeners approached, he activated his ability again. Bang! Lu Tao pushed away the unfortunate soul about to be pulled in, willingly entering the aura himself. Clasping his fists, roaring towards the sky, Lu Tao's muscles surged, and a ferocious tiger phantom appeared behind him. The tiger's roar swept across the entire scene as Lu Tao punched continuously, like a predatory tiger. Even under the pressure of gravity, it did not affect his attacks. Lu Tao was a domineering, power-type awakener. When he mobilized his awakened energy to the extreme, Bai Qi, both in level and physique, was not advantageous. Hiss. The rolling speed slowed by half a beat. He was caught by the fierce tiger on the neck and separated from his body on the spot. As the aura disappeared, Bai Qi staggered backward, leaving behind several jagged wounds. The remaining pain radiated from his neck to the nerve endings. Dropping to S4 level. All the S-class awakeners charged towards Yi Zheng, disregarding everything. Bai Qi struggled to his feet and once again activated determined resolve. Lu Tao was closest to him. Before he could pull someone away, Lu Tao accelerated and charged in. Boom! Bai Qi was thrown out. S3. Seeing this, the remaining awakeners calmly stopped, showing great interest in Lu Tao's massacre. Although Bai Qi stood in front, Yi Zheng suffered considerable injuries. The aura was an exclusive skill, restricting him at every turn. Coupled with Lu Tao's continuous tiger roars bombarding him, Blood slowly dripped from the corners of Yi Zheng's mouth. Lu Tao stepped on Bai Qi's head, a mocking curve appearing on the corner of his mouth. A loyal dog indeed. Guess what? Will your master shed precious crocodile tears for you? Bai Qi thrust his elbow toward him. Lu Tao sneered, and the tiger's claw crushed his skull. As the aura disappeared, Bai Qi's eyes tightly closed as he collapsed on the ground, covered in blood. His head was severely dented. S2. Yi Zheng's cane shattered, and he fell to one knee, spitting out blood with internal injuries. Lu Tao smirked as he walked towards him, but his ankle was suddenly grabbed. Bai Qi, unable to speak, still held on tightly, refusing to let go. Seeking death. I'll grant your wish. Lu Tao raised his fist. A cold and gentle hand rested on his shoulder, forcefully stopping Lu Tao's movement. An extremely suppressed voice spoke, who's seeking death? People around were astonished, their eyelids twitching. How did she enter without a sound? The next second, the barrier was torn open. Flames and frost rained down, and a crimson shell exploded with various AoE abilities pouring down, instantly disrupting the formation. 
The person who had been lurking at the back, the dream weaver who constructed the barrier was about to raise her hand to mend it when, snap! Six mechanical arms swung through the air, entwining around her limbs like coiling ropes, suspending her entire body upside down. Poor trick! Lu Xiaoyu's luminous prosthetic arm flashed with a dazzling light. The overwhelming flow of data scattered, completely dissolving the barrier. Bang! A warning flare shot up into the sky, bursting into a bloom, startling crows into flight high above. Awakeners across northern base were shocked, looking up. Ina and others attempted to go for reinforcements but ran into Su Cha, Lin Yuyu, Jennifer, and Yin Xiao head on. The four stood like a wall, facing the overwhelming S level pressure, gritting their teeth and refusing to back down. Feng Jishu rushed into the battlefield under the protection of Su Xing. Just as he was about to support Yi Zheng, he was pushed back by Yi Zheng. Turning his head, he, at the risk of his own life, transferred healing energy into Bai Qi, pulling him back from the brink. The petite girl's eyes were determined. Standing in front of the tiger-like Lu Tao, her slender fingers clenched into a fist, stopping his actions. Whom do you want to kill? Did I give you permission? Lu Tao's expression became solemn, evidently recognizing the person in front of him Song Ku, an S7, level strong attack type awakener. A tough nut. TSK, it seems the intel about her and the northern base management being at odds was incorrect. The tiger's head in the void emitted a fierce roar, and Lu Tao's awakened energy surged. Strange patterns appeared on his skin. Song Ku squinted slightly as her cells felt an unknown stimulation, growing hotter and hotter. Something seemed about to burst out of her body. Suddenly, she opened her mouth wide, emitting a deep roar from the depths of her throat. A massive shadow faintly appeared behind her. It was a bear, resembling a mountain peak. Its fur was deep red, thick, coarse, and twice as big as the tiger form of Lu Tao. The formidable tiger, which had just been fierce, whimpered in fear and retreated its head. Crafty Zhuang Qinyan massaged his forehead and sighed, realizing that it was another gene. Two top-level powerhouse awakeners, one in the form of a bear and the other a tiger, faced off. The surrounding environment trembled violently. The already shaky sand defense net shattered into pieces, leaving only a thin barrier. Countless crows dove down, approaching closer to the heads of everyone. In the midst of the chaos, Yi Zheng breathed heavily and urgently called out to Zhuang Qinyan. Xiao Zhuang, come here. Zhuang Qinyan walked forward in large strides, reaching out to support Yi Zheng's arm. Yi Zheng's fingers trembled as he took out an old and worn pocket watch, his terminal and a symbol of the highest authority of District B10. Do you know how to operate the city defense system? Zhuang Qinyan was stunned. The city defense system was the highest military secret of each district. Due to its complex structure and precise design, only those who had received professional training could operate it. This level of authorization was always held by the ruling magistrate unless delegated to their designated successor. Unless the magistrate or their appointed heir were present, no one else would have the chance to access such core information. Yi Sheng's breathing was strained as he spoke, I know this is quite demanding, but two days ago, General Xie from Beijun and I had a conversation. She entrusted me to take care of the son of an old friend. The content of that secret conversation was evidently more than just this, but Yi Jing didn't have time to explain everything in detail. The little information he revealed was enough. Zhuang Qingyan's fingertips tightened gradually, and deep waves surged in his profound eyes. He looked toward Song Kun not far away, the members of V587, and the overwhelming flock of crows. Finally, his gaze met the weathered eyes of Yi Zheng. In the end, what did the survival or demise of the northern base have to do with him? Zhuang Qinyan sighed silently, quite a coincidence. I can do it. Chapter, 217 Unprecedented S9 The barrier constructed by the Dreamweaver has been broken, the warning signal has been successfully transmitted, and if everything goes as planned, reinforcements from the northern base will soon arrive. However, the situation remains dire, with over a dozen S-level threats on the scene, revealing themselves and charging towards Yi Zheng without hesitation. Only two chances left. Bai Qi's fists trembled as he struggled to get up. 
warm, sticky blood dripped down from the sun, and he wanted to invoke the determined resolve. He had already dropped to S2. If he activated the light circle again, regardless of who won or lost, his own life might not be guaranteed. Song Ko stared at the approaching enemies, picked up by Qi with one hand, and gently placed him next to Yi Zheng. Stay put. Bai Qi wanted to move again, but his shoulder was held down by a huge bear paw. Song Ku turned around, her expression incredibly serious. I'll handle this. She turned her neck, the bones cracking, and the shadow of a brown bear behind her followed suit, as if warming up before a hunt. Just S level, I can handle it. Even though they were both S level, there was a vast difference in strength. The people in front of her were just numerous individually, not even one could surpass the bloody hunter, Punk. If she could overpower Punk, she could naturally kill them too. Song Ko firmly positioned Yi Zheng and Bai Qi behind her and walked forward. There were only six S level opponents on their side, and Yi Zheng and Bai Qi had lost their combat capabilities. Facing more enemies with fewer forces, she couldn't afford to be careless. Fang Zhishu bent over to traverse the battlefield, taking the opportunity to run back and treat Yi Zheng. Yi Zheng gasped and asked, Xiao Fang, I heard you have a potion that can restore combat capability. Give me one. No. You can't use it. Fang Zhishu categorically refused. With Yi Zheng's current physical condition, severe injuries combined with organ aging, sealing it off with an injection, even if effective, would bring along side effects that could cost him his life. Zhuang Qinyan said in a deep voice, General, the northern base still needs you. Please trust Song Ku and trust us. Yi Zheng looked at his determined eyes, remained silent for a moment, and finally nodded, no longer insisting. Bang! Song Ku and Lu Tao met at a narrow passage. The brown bear's body stood upright, and with a mighty swipe of its front paw, it slapped the fierce tiger, causing it to stagger. Lu Tao's sharp claws dug into the ground, barely stopping the retreat. He wiped away the blood from the corner of his mouth and raised his chin to Song Ku. There's something I can't figure out. You, an S7, can be treated well wherever you go. Why are you tied to this withered tree named Ji Zheng? Abandoning the dark and turning to the light, isn't it better to enjoy the good life with us? After we divide the territory, endless benefits await you. Song Ku felt a bit absurdly amused, coldly uttered, Are you here to teach me how to do things? Lu Tao, seeing that she wouldn't listen to advice, roared, tilting his head upward like a crazed tiger tearing into its prey. He swung a fist toward Song Ku's face. Song Ku, with strength gathered in her waist and abdomen, transformed her fingertips into phantom blue claws. The bare paw acted like a layer of metallic armor, and with a loud bang, she countered his powerful punch with one of her own. The phantom tiger's front claws shattered, and Lu Tao was knocked off balance his mouth letting out a puff as he spat out blood on the spot. Song Ku landed safely, stepping on Lu Tao's mouth with one foot and raising her fist high. Indeed, she had conflicts with He Chiu Hong, and she had considered leaving the northern base. However, during this time, she had seen more, Tustin, Zhao Yuqing, Yi Zimei, the Ming couple, the thousands of ordinary people striving to live in the central ancient street. The united and passionate awakeners in the Silver Ring Arena, and even the hopeful applicants in Qianzhan City who hadn't received admission yet but already had a glimmer of light in their eyes. The northern base was a city with a soul. In the cruel background of the apocalypse, where human morality had plummeted, cities with a soul were few. Having traveled through much of the alliance, from Tongwan to Haimen, and now to the northern base, cities like this, and the people living here, deserved to live well and should not become sacrifices in the power struggle. Boom. Boom! Metal burst, and shards of rock scattered as Song Ku punched Lu Tao's mouth, causing it to cave in. The terrifying pressure that could force internal organs to shift descended, and the massive phantom bear bit onto the phantom tiger's neck, snapping it off with a crunch. The animal forms disappeared, and Lu Tao's body collapsed to the ground. Kill! Kill Yi Zheng! Don't let him stand alone, attack together! After Lu Tao fell, the remaining S-level team formed a tighter formation, encircling in a half-moon shape. 
At the forefront, Ina raised her hand and snapped her fingers. Her ability blossom activated, and a giant man-eating flower burst from the ground, resembling fresh red meat. The central part opened with jagged teeth, contracting and wriggling. Five colorful petals opened and closed, emitting a foul stench that rivaled the rotting zombies. A Tustin team member was accidentally bitten on the calf, and the flesh and blood instantly rotted into corpse water. He reacted quickly, heroically severed the part below his knee, and Fang Jishu, carrying a medical kit, carefully maneuvered through various attacks, running to the injured person to treat and bandage him. Yi Na sneered, another snap of her fingers, and one by one, man-eating flowers surrounded Fang Jishu. The thick fissures suddenly widened. Bang! A grenade fell from the sky, cutting through the yellow sand and various obstacles with pinpoint accuracy. It exploded towards the crimson gap, foul blood sprayed, and petals scattered. Yi Na staggered, no longer looking composed. Yin Xiao was wearing a sniper scope, his expression couldn't be seen clearly, only catching a glimpse of his stern lower face. After successfully exploiting his weakness detection ability, he quickly adjusted his aim and shot at the next one, tirelessly removing the blossoming man-eating flowers. Lin Yu Yu ran quickly, chanting lyrics in her mouth and a thin mist of knives descended, while Su Cha's poisonous gas came out and melted into her ranged attack. The two of them cooperated seamlessly Lin Yu Yu became the lurking assassin, and the sandstorm concealed the mist. Many awakeners, unaware, were cut with small wounds. Powerful neurotoxins invaded their brains, causing limbs to convulse, and they fell to the ground. Tustin and V587, a group of advanced awakeners, unexpectedly managed to block over a dozen S-level opponents. A.O. A terrifying bear roar echoed, freezing all S1 and S2 opponents in place. Fearlessly, Song Kut charged into the enemy ranks. The blue phantom claw slashed horizontally, piercing the throat of the first S1. Blood spouted like a fountain as Song Kut slid on the slippery blood, akin to a wolf entering a flock of sheep. She swiftly pounced on the second S2, reversed her grip, and slashed from top to bottom, splitting the person in half, organs and intestines cascading down. Blood blurred the vision of those around, and their pupils continuously contracted in fear. Ah! The imposing brown bear bit off the head of the third S2, brain matter splattering. Then, with two claws, it grabbed two S1 awakeners, slamming them fiercely onto the ground. Snap! A leg was thrown away, and then, with a head-on collision, limbs shattered and fell apart, accompanied by the thunderous sound of bones breaking. In the blink of an eye, five S-levels perished. Song Ku's blood-stained phantom bear raised its head, and the brown bear's hind legs stood upright. Its rigid fur bristled, and it roared towards the sky, the roar echoing through half of the northern base. Song Ku's lips curled up, and the chilling curvature of a dimple appeared on her cheek. Either leave, or die. Who dares to step forward? On the opposite side, they hesitated, stopping in their tracks. Even though only S1 and S2 had died, Song Ku's combat power was too terrifying. Some people shivered all over, and strange thoughts gradually emerged. Could this person really be just S7? Silence enveloped the surroundings. At this moment, a violent energy fluctuation came from above them. A deep spatial crack slowly opened, and a tremendous force emanated from the black hole. A figure, with a half-male half-female mask, sinister and evil, leisurely stepped out. Smiling, he applauded, as expected of an S7. Not bad, but unfortunately, your heroic moment ends here. Behind the person, over a thousand advanced awakeners followed suit, their eyes revealing a fierce and cruel glint. Lu Tao and Ina seemed to receive some instruction. Suddenly, they pulled out a crimson level 4 crystal, shattered it without hesitation, and the rich energy replenished their bodies. The two, whose awakened energy had been depleted, recovered, standing up simultaneously. Zhuang Qinyan abruptly looked up, and the streets in all directions were eerily silent, devoid of any presence. How could this be? According to the time of the warning flare launch, the supporters from the northern base should have arrived by now. Sensing his gaze, the masked figure sneered, waiting for reinforcements. I'm afraid you'll be disappointed. Chapter 218 
unprecedented S9. Half an hour ago, at the awakened department. In the administrative office, the administrative secretary cautiously spoke, inquiring about the stiff figure in the shadows, Director He, all departments have taken action, the relocation of Qianzhan city residents is completed. Do you have any further instructions? After a while, He Chiohong's hoarse voice sounded, follow general's command in everything. The secretary breathed a sigh of relief, not daring to glance at her expression, and hurriedly said, then I'll go help too. Almost impatiently, she turned around and left the oppressive atmosphere of the office. He Chilhong looked through the floor-to-ceiling window, overlooking the entire city at her feet. For twenty years, she had poured all her efforts into governing the northern base. Why couldn't it develop as she had envisioned? Shu! A spatial tunnel suddenly opened, and two elusive figures appeared out of thin air. One person was entirely covered in a black robe, with unclear features. The other was a man wearing a half-sinister-looking mask. At this moment, the Awakener Department's defense was at its weakest, with 90% of the officials running around outside. Unexpectedly, S-level Spatial Awakeners had entered. Who are you? Shize shouted, raising his hand to activate the vacuum domain. Just an A9, overestimating your abilities. Qing uttered a cryptic incantation, and Shize's entire body twisted in pain. In just a few seconds, he transformed into a wriggling pupa. He Chilhong turned her head to press the alarm, but Qing, with a gesture, drew symbols in the empty air. She was uncontrollably drawn towards him, and with a thud, she collided with the floor-to-ceiling window. Blood trickled down her forehead. With B3 level strength, she was extremely vulnerable in the face of an S4. Qing seemed somewhat surprised, it's quite amusing. Hasn't the northern base always valued strength? He Chilhong, right? How did someone like you, AB3 level, manage to attain your current position? He Chilhong struggled desperately, who are you? Why do you want to kill me? Qing smirked and skipped the first question, I won't kill you. You're just an ant, not worth my effort. We want to kill Yi Zheng. He Chilhong's face turned purple, but she remained resolute, delusional. You won't be able to kill the teacher. Qing dismissed it, I heard you were Yi Zhang's student. You must have worked hard to take over the leadership from him. Now that he's on the verge of death, why not lend us a hand? He Chilhong gritted her teeth, no way. He is my mentor. I won't betray the northern base. Ha ha ha. Qing burst into laughter, a laughter that was coarse and yet melodious, carrying a discordant and piercing sensation. Do you really think you're someone important? Qing's chilly lips approached Yi Chilhong's ear, whispering like a devil, now I understand why Yi Jing didn't completely delegate authority to you. In the end, it's because you're incompetent. Yi Chilhong's pupils contracted. Qing slowly smiled, his tone seemingly regretful, you, someone with cunning schemes and a dirty heart, might be passable in peacetime. But in times of war, look at yourself, easily controlled. Therefore, you're destined to be an inadequate leader. I heard you value Awakeners highly. Controlling them in your hands, is it because of fear? You're constantly afraid, afraid of being replaced, afraid of being killed, afraid of losing power. You have nothing at all. TSK TSK, being incompetent is the original sin, after all. Qing recited a chilling incantation, and before He Chiohong's eyes, a black sphere with insects fluttering appeared. This is called a silverfish. It amplifies the evil in a person's heart. Let's see if Director He is as selfless as you claim. The insect ball entered He Chiohong's mouth, and she writhed in pain, memories flashing before her eyes. When He Chiohong was born, the nuclear war had already ended, and the northern base was becoming stable. She received an elite education from a young age and learned about genetic selection and early awakeners from various sources. She firmly believed in the inequality between people. After the apocalypse, she finally awakened but only achieved a mediocre B3 level due to inherent limitations in her aptitude, making her promotion prospects almost non-existent. Becoming the successor of the northern base was a difficult task. Initially, Yi Zheng favored another student named Chen Shuero, who was optimistic, 
positive, and an A8 level early awakener with better social connections and assessment scores than he Chiohong. During a peacekeeping mission, they encountered a powerful earthquake. Chen Shuero, attempting to save a group of students, got trapped under collapsed debris and remained buried in a deep hole for two whole weeks. Yi Xing never gave up on the rescue efforts. He Chiohong volunteered and accompanied the rescue team to find Chen Shuero. Fortunately, she was the first to discover Chen Shuero, who was on the brink of death with her lower body in a gruesome state. With timely treatment and the installation of biomechanical prosthetics, Chen Shuero could still survive. Looking at her, He Chiohong muttered, Senior Chen, they are just ordinary people. Why bother saving them? Chen Shuero, struggling to speak, asked, Chiohong, are they okay now? I don't know, He Chiohong answered indifferently. She had no interest in those students her sole focus was finding Chen Shuero. Once she found her, she became less anxious. Her tone carried a slight reproach, you see, you saved them but sacrificed yourself. People like you are simply not suitable to lead the northern base. Rest assured, I will do better than you. Chen Shuero couldn't speak anymore she could only stare at He Chiohong with wide eyes. He Chiohong waited silently in place until, a day later, Chen Shuero breathed her last breath. He Chiohong stood up, patted her stiff knees, and stumbled out, shouting, Senior Seniors here. I found Senior. Ah. He Chiohong let out a heart-wrenching scream. Her consciousness gradually blurred, and tears streamed down her cheeks. For the northern base, she had burned twenty years of her youth. She only wanted to build an ideal city according to her own will. She searched everywhere for scientists involved in the Eternal Life Plan. Publicly, she claimed to want to cure Yi Zheng and secretly supported research on excessive radiation. Only she knew that deep within her heart, a hidden voice kept calling out, Do I still have a chance to advance? He Chiohong's pitch black eyes, immersed in endless agony, recalled Yi Zheng's reprimand. Dot. Chiohong, treat awakeners the same as ordinary people. You can't discriminate. Remember, the foundation of the entire city is the tens of millions of residents in the northern base. Some things should not be inverted. He Chiohong gripped her own neck and screamed, No. That's not true. Teacher. It's different. Awakeners are born noble. We are meant to have more status and power than ordinary people Chen Shuero is wrong, and so are you. You're all wrong. In this world, we, the Awakeners, should rightfully hold it in our hands. The silverfish fully invaded He Chiohong's brain, and her intense anger turned into tranquility. Her eyes became completely black. Mechanically, He Chiohong stood up, like a puppet, and pressed the terminal. A district-wide announcement is now being issued. Everyone is to stand by immediately. No matter what happens, you are not allowed to leave your posts. Otherwise, residents of District B-10 will have their identities revoked and be treated as rioters, and they will be killed without mercy. I repeat, no matter what happens, everyone is to stand by in place. Beside her, Qing laughed, his smile becoming increasingly radiant. The term silverfish refers to villains who harm collective interests. He Chilhon was indeed a hypocritical pretender. The spatial rift reappeared, and the two S-level awakeners disappeared on the spot. He Chilhong's inexplicable command carried a strong sense of oppression. People dared not resist and stood bewildered in place. Murmurs spread, and just a few seconds later, the terminal beeped again. Near the 13th channel, with Song Ku's position as the center, a straight line formed. Behind her was Yi Zheng, whom she vowed to protect to the death, and in front were thousands of advanced awakeners. Qing exaggeratedly applauded, a cold smile playing on his lips, I can't deny it, you're formidable. You can handle one against ten, but what about one against a hundred, or a thousand? You can try, Song Ku replied coldly. The phantom bear paw lifted, and a massive, cold jagged blade slowly drew out. Qing withdrew his smile, gazing deeply at her, then I'll kill you first, and then Yi Zheng. Boom! Flames, wind blades, Thunder, ice and snow, Thorn's countless awakeners attacked Song Ku, swallowing her slender figure. 
Bloody ghost hands grabbed her calves, vicious man-eating flowers crawled towards her, opening their blood-filled mouths. Song Cook cut through with her sword, leaped out of the landing point, lifted the cold jagged blade, and fiercely slapped back. Bang! There was no escape from the dense attacks, and she was harshly hit from behind. Seizing the opportunity, Lu Tao swung his tiger claw forward, slashing open a wound on Song Ku's abdomen. She rolled and fell into a trap, where a radiation-type awakener had long been waiting for ambush. A powerful electric current erupted, convulsing her entire body, even the phantom bear curled up. Song Ku. Zhuang Qingyan's expression changed suddenly, and Lin Yu Yu and others were all anxious to rush over but were unable to break free. Seeing the situation on the brink, in the nick of time, chaotic footsteps echoed from all directions on the street. As if sensing something, Yi Zheng suddenly looked up. Who dares to kill General Yi? I'll Fing fight you all. To hell with being on standby. Even if I'm not from District B, I'm coming. General Yi, you saved us, and we won't abandon you. A sea of people rushed towards the battlefield, each face either familiar or unfamiliar, fearlessly approaching through the swirling yellow sand. Leading the charge were the Ling siblings, Zeigler, Zhao Yuching, and other S-level Awakeners. Behind them trailed a diverse army of Awakeners labeled ABCDE, consisting of people of all ages and genders. Their expressions were uniformly resolute, with even ordinary citizens raising weapons. The moment Qing appeared, Lu Xiaoyu, under the name of V587, posted a private commission on the platform. There was only one location and a brief message, no rewards, no points, and the danger level was marked as the highest, the red level. Yi Zheng is under attack, urgent rescue needed. Such a commission, especially under the threat of expulsion and killed without mercy, logically should have received no takers. However, without a second thought, residents of the northern base spontaneously accepted it. The number even exceeded the A-level tasks the system had issued. The buzzing of voices filled every corner. Outside the encirclement of Qing and others, the arriving reinforcements turned the tables on them. Amidst the sizzling and dazzling electric currents, Song Ku slowly stood up, clutching her abdomen. She opened her eyes, revealing deep blue pupils. A radiant and dazzling light erupted in a circular pattern beneath her feet. The phantom of a brown bear rose to the sky, doubling in size, bringing a devastating sense of oppression. Her other hand lifted slightly, and the cold jagged blade quietly disintegrated, fragments falling in all directions. The surrounding ruins trembled violently, as an unprecedented powerful awakened energy surged out from every limb and bone, like a storm. Without relying on any external objects, large and small blue light orbs rose from the ground, instantly transforming into thousands of sharp swords. Song Ko raised her hand gently, and the tips immediately aimed at Qing and other awakeners, like a spectacular and eerie will-o'-the-wisp. The flow of yellow sand seemed to freeze, the restless flock of crows collectively fell silent, and the dazzling blue light illuminated half the sky. Everyone on the scene stared in shock. This was completely different from summoning through spells or relying on external forces to condense a sword array. Each one was a genuine and pure metal spiritual weapon the ultimate manifestation of the explosion of metal type ability. All things in heaven and earth are my weapons. Song Ku stood in the center of the storm, with a brutal beastly shadow behind her and a myriad of sword lights swirling around her. If an R-type testing device were used at this moment, it would reveal a stunning fact. Song Ku's awakened energy intensity had reached an astonishing value. An unprecedented S9. Chapter, 219. Kinf was key LD by me. I will one come back by mice percent LF. Sword light spiraled, and thousands of spiritual weapons emitted a buzzing resonance. Song Ku and the brown bear stood up simultaneously. The pursuers in the inner circle and the reinforcements in the outer circle fell into silence together. Everyone involuntarily looked towards the war godlike figure. The emotions on both sides were completely different one side filled with joy, the other with fear. A reinforcement from the northern base squeezed to the front, lowered their head, and looked at their spiritual weapon, a wolf teeth club, purchased at a high price in their arms their eyes sparkled, wow, I'm using the same model as the S7. 
Song Ku looked indifferent. She pulled out a roll of bandages from the pocket connected to the space, bit the end, and wounded around the back of her hand, which was bleeding incessantly. It wasn't because of the injury but because two finger joints had just been swallowed by the man-eating flower. The area became incomplete, and now it was both painful and itchy. In case her self-healing ability took effect and fingers grew out of thin air in front of everyone, it wouldn't be good. Song Ku casually bandaged herself, glanced at the opposite side with a slight lift of her eyes, and said nonchalantly. Since you're here, might as well stay. The words were light, but they spread to everyone's ears with the wind. No fool would mistake her for a hospitable host. This S7 clearly meant only one thing leave the corpses behind. Thousands of swords hummed together as Song Ku, like a drawn blade, led the charge into the enemy camp, enveloped in the overwhelming awakened energy like thunder. With an S7 leading the charge, the reinforcements, filled with fervor, followed suit, shouting, Dot. I'll go first. You guys protect General Yi. I'll fight with you guys. Outsiders, go back to your territory. Qin sneered, and coldly uttered three words without caring, a motley crew. His ten fingers intertwined, suddenly spasmed and trembled. With the appearance of a strange seal, countless soul phantom figures emerged from the ground. The northern base had once been a fierce battlefield, burying countless lives. Although the souls summoned by Qin had no physical form, they were full of gloomy evil, and upon emerging, they crazily pounced on the living. The possessed awakeners became mentally confused, attacking indiscriminately. Lu Tao and Ina, along with other S-levels, jumped into the battlefield, taking the opportunity to slaughter at will. The scene descended into chaos, and the lower-level awakeners from the northern base fell one after another. Yijing suddenly threw a punch, and the attacks in the sky were affected by gravity, stagnating in mid-air, saving a large number of awakeners who couldn't escape in time. All good soldiers, but still need a commander. He struggled to stand up, the coughing sound resembling a dilapidated bellows. On the battlefield, having fearless soldiers alone was not enough a well-organized commander was also needed. Zhuang Qinyan lowered his eyes to the pocket watch in his hand, sighed slightly, and then intercepted him, General, let me do it. Yi Zheng, with eyes that had seen many vicissitudes, showed a hint of surprise, you can command. Zhuang Qinyan modestly replied, not quite, just a little understanding. Yi Zheng pondered for a moment, silently smiled. Yes, that General Xie from Beijun was also an excellent battlefield commander. All right, very well he patted Zhuang Qinyan's shoulder heavily, it's up to you. Zhuang Qinyan turned his head and shouted at a figure waving six arms, hey, five. Zero, come and help. Lu Xiaoyu's movement stopped, rolled his eyes at the sky, and muttered discontentedly, arrogant four. Two. Complaints aside, he still came over. Lu Xiaoyu's alloy arm connected to the pocket watch terminal. With Yi Zhang's highest authority, he instantly decrypted all databases. Zhuang Qinyan, with extraordinary memory beyond ordinary people, swiftly copied and imprinted the information of all awakeners in the northern base. Then, his light-colored eyes shimmered as he scanned the reinforcements on the scene, quickly memorizing each face and matching them with the information in his mind. An excellent commander must learn to understand and use people. Know the people, then use them well. Among these reinforcements, some were brave and skilled in combat, while others rarely took on combat missions and were flustered in the face of a large-scale battle. Zhuang Qinyan's commanding style was straightforward. He directly gave commands to people in their consciousness. Because of the lesson from Song Ku's previous experience, he dared not use professional terms and chose plain language. Li Chang, turn around immediately and run in the opposite direction. This individual, with an extremely poor sense of direction in the group attack category, rushed into a deserted corner. His ability struck down, not hitting any enemies, but frightening away two crows that were cawing loudly. Oh, oh. Li Chang stepped on the brakes, obediently turned around, and ran in the opposite direction, coincidentally joining the large forces of Tustin. Lin Yu Yu sensed the opportunity for a counterattack, sang an ethereal song, maxing out the buff, and Li Chang, along with Jennifer and others, bombarded wildly. 
The brilliant light of their abilities erupted, the range doubled, and it fell into the most densely populated area of the opposing crowd, harvesting lives in swathes. Zhang Wei, focus your attention, listen to my prompts and release your ability. Zhang Wei's ability is called Demoralizing Roar. Continuous use of this ability lowers the enemy's desire to attack, putting them in a state of despondency. It is an advantageous support ability in group battles, but he obviously struggles with the intervals. Every time he is disrupted, he unconsciously exposes vulnerabilities. With Xuan Qinyan as a guide in his mind, constantly reminding him, Zhang Wei displayed his skills, timing his roars perfectly. Wang Qianqian, come back, you are a long-range type. Wang Qianqian, holding a large spiritual weapon, looked like she was about to charge into the enemy's face. Ha! Huh. Who should I attack? She looked puzzled, scanning around, wondering who was speaking. At six o'clock, see that one. Three meter tall kid? Wang Qianqian nodded, got it. Follow him, attack whoever he attacks. Su Xing was hiding in a corner, sneakily launching ice spikes, when a girl approached from behind. He shot ice spikes, and the girl dispersed them with a wind circle, instantly freezing a large area on the opposite side, displaying astonishing power. Wow! Su Xing marveled, so awesome. Cool, little brother. Sister will team up with you, Wang Qianqian applauded. Zhuang Qinyan named a few more people, you guys, go protect General Yi. The named awakeners ran to Yi Zheng's side, surrounding him like mother hens protecting their chicks. They were all in the defense category. Although their levels were not high, their abilities were extremely rare and difficult to break through easily. Zhuang Qinyan quickly surveyed the battlefield and suddenly noticed a figure in the midst of a killing spree. In his cold gaze, there was a gaze that stared at dead things. Lao Mu, go pull out Lu Tao. Lao Mu was an A4 level, with the ability of Force Taunt. After releasing it, the opponent would involuntarily attack him. Lu Hao, Zhao Xiufen, Qian Miao grouped together at 7 o'clock, prepare for a surprise attack. Cough, cough don't look towards Lu Tao's direction, pretend to do something else. Lu Hao whistled while looking at the sky, Qian Miao lowered her head to sweep the ground, and Zhao Xiufen pulled out a cross stitch and started sewing their acting skills were extremely stiff. Zhuang Qinyan couldn't help but hold his forehead. Fortunately, the chaos on the battlefield made it difficult to observe carefully, so their deception went unnoticed. Lu Tao's direction was twisted by Lao Mu's taunt, and uncontrollably, he took two steps forward, falling into the center of a trap. An awakener threw a club at him, forcing him to be motionless. Everyone rushed forward, mercilessly beating the old master, ruthlessly using hands and feet. The tiger's fur was completely plucked, and he fell to the ground completely bald. Lu Tao bled profusely and took out a crystal from his pocket, preparing to crush it with gritted teeth. Give it to me. A young man lurking in the shadows activated his ability, fetching objects from the air and stole Lu Tao's supplies. Zhuang Qinyan retracted the command on the tip of his tongue, staring at the face of that young man for a second, his eyes understanding. This person used to be a professional pickpocket before coming to the northern base. Lu Tao. The tiger fell down and was bullied by the dog. He was already seriously injured by Song Ku and was now being beaten by a ragtag army. He was at the end of his strength. An elusive figure appeared behind him, and a triple-edged military dagger brutally stabbed into his throat. The exhausted tiger completely lowered his head, unable to lift it again. Lu Tao was killed. Although the process was full of comedic effects, the miraculously organized reinforcements from the northern base gained the upper hand. Some assassins keenly noticed that the opposing cannon fodder army seemed to have suddenly become organized, acting swiftly and cooperatively. They became more troublesome and difficult to deal with. To make matters worse, new reinforcements were constantly joining from the ends of the roads in all directions. Zhuang Qinyan pushed his glasses with one hand, looked towards Qing from a distance, and smiled faintly, the real motley crew is you. A group of greedy rats colluding for their own interests, like the ubiquitous yellow sand, dispersed with just a casual strike. Endless lost souls attached themselves to the awakeners. Zhao Yuqing's eyes were cold, 
and her water-based abilities were unleashed, purifying. A torrential rain poured from the sky, and the purifying water droplets dampened the possessed bodies, instantly generating white steam. The painful howl spread as the possessed individuals felt a lightness throughout their entire bodies, breaking free from control. Ling Yen and Ling Yu cooperated seamlessly, almost synchronizing their moves. With S6 level strong attack abilities, they teamed up to crush two S levels on the opposite side. Compared to the uneven mix of the miscellaneous army, the top power of the northern base erupted with astonishing suppression at this moment. Song Ku confronted the bright red man eating flower head on. Her heart moved casually, and a sword light around her spun, cutting the colorful petals into pieces. The squirming fat mouth fell in front of Song Ku. She pointed, and the phantom claws erupted with crackling and dazzling blue light, transforming into boxing gloves that wrapped around her hands. She then grabbed the crown, filled with sharp teeth, one on each side, and with a great force, she tore it apart. The shadow of the brown bear roared like an earthquake, and the fierce man-eating flower was torn in two. Ina's face turned deathly pale, and she suddenly spewed a mouthful of blood, her magnetic field shattered. Song Ko indifferently stood up, shook off the flesh on her boxing gloves, crushed the two broken pieces under her foot, and approached Ina's direction. Ina stumbled backward, panicked, and threw the man-eating flower, covering the path ahead of Song Ku. The brown bear began to run. Despite its massive size, its movements were exceptionally agile. Its hard paws stepped on the flesh, and the terrifying force, weighing a thousand tons, ruthlessly crushed these demonic flowers, as well as Ina. She bled from seven orifices, blood vessels burst, and her skin looked like a rotten tomato, with juice flowing, spitting out fragmented black and red organs from her mouth. The summoned objects suffered destruction, and the summoner's body bore an equal amount of damage. By the time Song Ku reached her, Na was already lying in a sorry state on the ground. Song Ku stepped on her mouth, applying a slight force. No, you can't kill me. Ina's mouth emitted a large number of blood bubbles, speaking unclearly, I am S4 level, I am Kof the daughter of Baishan's magistrate's wife's uncle. Countless swords were simultaneously released, piercing Ina into a hedgehog. Before she could finish her self-introduction, her eyes widened in anger and she lost her breath. Song Ku showed no expression. Sorry, too complicated interpersonal relationships, I can't understand. After killing Ina, Song Ku raised her head, her gaze piercing through the chaotic crowd, fixing on to Qin. It's your turn, she said each word heavily. The smile disappeared from Qin's face, and his two completely different faces seemingly merged into one, becoming equally cold. Countless wailing souls rushed toward Song Ku, and she controlled floating swords to counterattack. Qin took a step back, his sleeve covering his fingers, nervously twitching in the shadows. You're using sealing spells. Song Ku tilted her head, expressing a knowing look. Just a step behind, a slanting street lamp suddenly transformed into a long spear, thrusting out of the void and nailing Qin's palm. Qin couldn't care about his injuries, raising his head in surprise. How could this be possible? How did she discover it? Was it just a coincidence? With a feigned move, Qin cast a spell, his lips moving slightly, silently reciting an incantation. The air became hazy, and a plague spread. Without looking at his hands, Song Ku launched a lightning-fast attack, a bare paw cleanly slashing diagonally. Smack! She slapped Qin across the face. Several teeth, accompanied by bits of flesh, fell out, and half of Qin's face swelled up like a steamed bun. The curse was interrupted. Song Ku landed gracefully and raised an eyebrow, too slow. Qin suddenly raised his gaze, as if a cold poisonous snake was staring fixedly at Song Ku, and attempted to use his ability again. Interrupt, interrupt, and interrupt again. Regardless of his mouth or hand movements, no matter how many feints he made, Song Ku could accurately predict his true attack intent. He couldn't release a complete spell, and he was helpless against Song Ku's relentless attacks. Qing's shoulder was pierced through, half of his face was severely swollen, and his finger joints were completely severed. The blood accumulated into a crimson lake. Song Ku clapped her hands lightly and said casually, 
I've seen more powerful enchantment awakeners than you. You are far behind. Her senior brother, Zhang Xiai, was even more talented than Zhang Ting in both the true skills and enchantment. He could be called a genius. Song Ku had sparred with him countless times since childhood. She was familiar with the prelude to every spell and every seal, as if etched into her bones. She could instantly think of ways to break them. Even so, unless she held back, Zhang Xiai never won against her. Compared to Zhang Xiai, Qing seemed like someone who had just started. He was a flashy counterfeit, and his crude tricks could be seen through at a glance. Qing's chest heaved up and down, and the half of his face behind the mask was clouded with gloom. The over a thousand advanced awakeners he brought with him were defeated, and the outcome was clear. People from the northern base were cleaning up the final battlefield. Ultimately, it was all because of the S7 level awakener in front of him. Qing looked at Song Ku, his voice fluctuating between light and heavy, piercing to the ears. Congratulations, you saved Yi Zheng. But hell will come, looking forward to meeting you again next time. A faint sense of unease rose in Song Ku's heart. Qing's face, with a sinister looking half mask, seemed to split in half, half smiling and half crying, half happy and half sad, appearing extremely bizarre. Swish. Behind him, a narrow space crack appeared, and a thin, bony hand reached out, grabbing Qing's shoulder, about to take him away. Not good, it's that S-level spatial awakener. They're trying to escape. Song Ku rushed forward regardless of everything. All the floating swords merged into a massive pair of scissors. Clang! The blade fell, freezing the expression of the black-robed spatial awakener. His neck was twisted, and the head rolled off. Ah! Flesh and blood sprayed as Qing's arm was severed, and a wailing scream echoed. However, it was too late. More than half of his body had already entered the spatial crack. As the caster died, the crack showed violent fluctuations. Song Ku's pupils contracted, her awakened energy surged, the phantom bear behind her disappeared suddenly. Her entire body shrank quickly, and she uncontrollably spat out a long, thin tongue. Before the crack completely disappeared, she was forcefully sucked in by the powerful force. The battlefield fell into dead silence. Only V-587 exclaimed in shock, Sister. Captain. Song Kur. Zhuang Qinyan furrowed his eyebrows deeply, his face as calm as water. Everyone had witnessed the scene just now, where Song Ku transformed from a brown bear into something else. Zhuang Qinyan sighed deeply and turned to Lu Xiaoyu, erase all videos and surveillance, leave no traces. Mistakes like Yang Xiaobo's should not be repeated. Today's events must not have any visual evidence leaked. Fortunately, communication devices were still functional. Zhuang Qinyan quietly called through his earpiece, Song Ku. Can you hear me? Respond if you can. After more than ten minutes, a message suddenly appeared in V587's group chat, Qing was K% 1 LD by AG% dot. Song Ku's profile picture flickered, displaying for a long time, the other party is typing. The other party is typing. Kinf was key LD by me. I will one come back by mice percent LF. Zhuang Qinyan. Hundreds of corresponding gene sequences flashed through his mind, but the features were too vague to make a judgment. What has she turned into this time? How come she can't even type properly now? Chapter, 220. Where did this ugly creature come from? Swoosh. The spatial rift violently fluctuated, dispersing and disappearing in an instant. Qing, dragging a severed arm, fell out of thin air, stumbled two steps, lost balance, and fell to the ground. Where he passed, a shocking bloodstain was left behind, nerves cut, awakened energy stagnant, difficult to mobilize. The destructive power of the metal-type ability was formidable, causing the magnetic field within his body to completely lose balance. Qing's face, like golden paper, leaned against a tree trunk and slowly sat down, supporting himself to observe the surroundings. Sand and dust raged in the air, a dense flock of crows squatted overhead, peering, with grey-white pupils silently watching, as if patiently waiting for his death, ready to feast on his flesh. 
The barrier of the northern base had anti-space ability devices, and Qin couldn't escape directly. His original plan was to retreat to a safe house first and then figure out a way to leave the area. However, his spatial-type companion was killed instantly, the teleportation path went wrong, leading him to a desolate forest somewhere. Faint rustling sounds came. Qin raised his head alertly, branches swayed with the wind, and a light green leaf gently floated down. The surroundings were eerily quiet, only the coarse and rapid panting of Qin could be heard. Qin's eyes were sinister, and after a while, a smile of relief and self-mockery appeared. That S7 didn't chase after him. He lifted his left hand, which had only two remaining fingers, took off the blood-stained mask, revealing a half-female face. This S4 level sorcerer turned out to be a hermaphrodite with both male and female characteristics. Qing muttered obscure and difficult to understand spells, switching the mask to the other side as he put it on. With his movements, those fatal injuries were magically transferred away. Although the severed arm and fingers couldn't regenerate, the pain lessened, and Qing's complexion improved slightly. Unfortunately, the other half of his face, his male face, was completely ruined. At this moment, Qing had completely transformed into a woman with delicate eyebrows and eyes. A very light breathing sound echoed in his ears, as if someone gasped. Who's there? Qing suddenly stood up. Come out. Several nesting sparrows were startled and flapped their wings, flying to higher ground. Qing coldly raised his hand, two fingers trembling, and the sparrows fell, instantly stiffening and turning into corpses, not one left. Qing's gloomy gaze swept around, finding no anomalies. She returned to the shade of the tree, activated the terminal, and a deliberately lowered voice faintly came through, it's me. Yi Zheng isn't dead. The operation failed. On the other end, who knows what was said, Qing's hoarse voice suddenly rose, why not kill him? Temporary change of plans, no time to notify us. Heh. The dust invaded, the lush trees were covered in murky yellow soil, and one green leaf suddenly shook, with sand falling rustlingly. Utopia. What new policy? Forget it let's talk when I get back. Send someone to the safe house to pick me up. Chi is dead. Chi was the name of that spatial type awakener. Qing hung up the terminal, exhausted, leaned back against the tree trunk, and closed her eyes to rest temporarily. Whoosh! Whoosh whoosh! Without warning, the nearby forest suddenly shook violently, and a deep blue light crackled. Countless leaves turned into sky-covering flying knives, all shooting towards Qing. She abruptly opened her eyes, but it was too late. Her body was pierced like a hedgehog, breathless, falling to the ground. How is this possible? Clearly, there were no anomalies. When did she catch up? The shocked and angry expression froze on her face. Until death arrived, Qing still couldn't figure out the answer. Plop. A small thing fell down. Triangular head, two bulbous protruding eyeballs resembling light bulbs, a plump body, a tail rolled into a ball like a bubblegum, and nanocrystals on the surface of the skin constantly changing colors with the environment. This was a chameleon from the lizard suborder. It was also due to the radiation impact that an unknown gene broke out and Song Ku was transformed again. Song Ku quickly climbed onto Qing's corpse, stomped back and forth, confirming that she was dead beyond revival. Then she exposed her claw tips, tried to pry Qing's terminal, cleverly stored it in her own space, and turned to let Lu Xiaoyu crack it. With the mission accomplished, Song Ku's cone-shaped eyeballs rotated 360 degrees, attempting to speak through her main body. Swoosh! A long and thin tongue stretched out, and in a fleeting moment, it quickly swept away a jumping cricket. Song Ku. She spat out, and the unlucky cricket limped away. Oops, it seems the tongue is a bit unruly. Song Ku stood still for a moment, seemingly lost. She struggled to retrieve her small terminal, and the messages from her teammates calling out to her had already flooded the screen. Awkwardly, she opened the group chat, attempting to type a message to report her safety. However, chameleons have fused toes, and what does fused mean? It means the first three fingers are a group, and the fourth and fifth fingers are another group, very uncoordinated. 
she often accidentally touched the wrong keys, producing a string of strange characters for no apparent reason. Song Ku became increasingly frustrated, her tail straightening into a line, but the more anxious she got, the worse she typed. In the end, giving up, she reluctantly managed to type the message I'll come back by myself, closed her eyes, and pressed the send button with determination. The small chameleon confirmed the direction, changed its skin to a deep brown color, perfectly blending into the dusty ground, and swiftly crawled away, shaking its head and tail. Bang! Bang! The ferocious flock of crows crazily collided, like an endless black cloud covering the city. The fragile barrier finally couldn't bear the weight, flickering in and out of existence. In that moment of disappearance, tens of thousands of ferocious beasts rushed in, and cries of alarm echoed incessantly. The awakeners on the scene grumbled while clearing them out. Fortunately, in the next moment, the barrier reappeared, keeping the majority of the forces outside. Zhuang Qinyan looked at the Martian language message sent by Song Ku, with mixed feelings in his heart. The assassination attempt on Yi Zheng had been resolved, and the scattered remnants had also been controlled. However, the crisis at the northern base had not been lifted. Due to wasting too much time at the 13th channel, the city defense line was on the verge of collapse. Two fully armed bulletproof vehicles rushed in, and before coming to a stop, elite guards and medical teams jumped out. General. Healers nervously surrounded Yi Zheng, setting up a ventilator and a mobile nutrition chamber for on-the-spot first aid. Bai Qi was also carried away on a stretcher. Yi Zheng was on the verge of collapse. He looked up at the sky, as if about to move forward. General, please don't move. You must receive treatment immediately. You can no longer use your awakened abilities, and you must avoid mental and physical exertion, or your body won't be able to take it. City Defense Department. Yi Zheng murmured a sentence. If they couldn't stop the flock of crows in time, the tragedy at Qianzhan City would repeat. Through the crowd, Yi Zheng and Zhuang Qinyan locked eyes, the handsome young man gripping the pocket watch in his hand, nodding solemnly towards him. Zhuang Qinyan's clothing fluttered in the wind as he, led by the elite guards, smoothly entered the city defense department. The harried staff, noticing an unfamiliar face intruding, hastily interrogated, Who are you? How did you get in? Hurry and leave. Without a second word, Zhuang Qinyan shoved his terminal onto his face, and the highest command authority representing Yi Zheng conspicuously appeared. Two nearby elite guards quickly explained, From now on, Mr. Zhuang will fully represent the general, and all commands will be under his authority. Bring up the entire city map, Zhuang Qinyan said coldly. His deep and mysterious eyes seemed to contain endless pressure, making people involuntarily submit. The broadcast across the entire northern base echoed again, Attention, one minute from now, the city defense department will launch a counterattack against the ferocious beast tide. Everyone pay attention to terminal messages and follow the commands. Ancient Street, Tanning Road, Inner Ring Commercial District residents in the following areas must evacuate immediately. Evacuation routes have been sent to your terminals. Second and sixth squads, provide cover. Disciplined soldiers executed their tasks with precision and determination. Orders were issued steadily by Zhuang Qinyan. His mind calculated rapidly, fingers inputting commands skillfully. Schools, hospitals, stations, and other public places were quickly cleared, and residents entered underground shelters as instructed. Suppress. The transparent skywalks that traversed the entire city dissipated into thin air, replaced by the rising barrels of pitch-black cannons. This batch of munitions, named Hell Fireworks, originated from Mu City and represented the highest lethality of the Alliance's weaponry. Boom! Boom boom! Dazzling fireworks bloomed, painting half the sky in burning red. The stench of charred flesh wafted through the air. Countless crows fell like hail, and hundreds of wind-type awakeners arrived at designated positions, activating their abilities simultaneously. Fire took advantage of the wind, and the wind fueled the flames. The roaring fire spread like wild grass. The eyes of every defender reflected a resolute determination. The patrolling teams hovering between ground and sky were responsible for the finishing touches. Logistic cleanup vehicles shuttled back and forth, 
sweeping away the piled-up crow corpses. Sector clear. In the west of the city, where lush woods were ill-suited for artillery attacks, Zhuang Qinyan entered commands into the console. Within seconds, the barrier switched through hundreds of forms suddenly, a mistake a Karita gap appeared. The crows, possessing rudimentary intelligence, seized the opportunity and swarmed in through the opening. Zhuang Qinyan smiled coldly, easily deceived. Flash. The newly replaced barrier suddenly emitted a glaring white light, illuminating the group attack type awakeners lying in ambush below, as well as the ultra-low voltage electric grid. The densely packed crows were caught in a trap, their small grayish-white eyeballs faintly showing fear. Simultaneously, various awakeners and electric lights lit up the sky, accompanied by excited cheers. The awakeners at the northern base were ecstatic. Darn, I killed over 300 of them. So satisfying. This wave is a bloody profit. I'm getting rich. Points little money here I come. These were not ferocious crows they were clearly angels sent to the northern base to deliver money and points, improving the quality of life for the awakeners. Under Zhuang Qingyan's command, the entire city operated in an orderly manner, resembling a massive machine. At the city defense department, numerous eyes from all directions secretly assessed the calm and composed young man in front of the console. One official muttered sarcastically, what's so remarkable? This kind of aggressive approach is bound to destroy a large amount of infrastructure. When it's time to rebuild, you'll be the one to suffer. Let's see how you restore it. Zhuang Qinyan, holding a transparent screen, continued to work diligently. Amidst the busy atmosphere, he spared a glance at him, lightly smiling, send the design sketches to Oda Ken. The northern base doesn't keep idle people let him do some work. Oda Ken, an S2-level engineering awakener, arrived at the northern base on the same day as V587, even taking the VIP route in front of Song Ku. Zhuang Qinyan didn't think of himself as someone who held grudges he simply believed in making the best use of resources. Official, with an S-level engineering awakener around, what's so difficult about rebuilding? He could even construct an entirely new city. At the bustling entrance of the command room, Yi Zheng, draped in a coat, silently observed the figure inside through the glass door. Having just received emergency treatment, he had his injuries under control. Due to concerns, he insisted on coming to take a look. However, the situation was somewhat unexpected. It was even better than he had anticipated. Zhuang Qinyan knew everything about the facilities, city defense passwords, and personnel information, and he operated flawlessly, achieving victory in the counterattack with minimal casualties. It was as if he were a born commander. General, where did you find the nearby official was dumbfounded. Yi Jing smiled faintly, covering his mouth as he left, just an old friend my body can't take it. Standing for a while tires me out. I'll go back to continue treatment. Oh, by the way, call Xiao Fang. In the moment he turned around, Yi Zheng's smile disappeared, and his expression gradually turned cold. While he could still stand, it was time to settle scores. The Awakener Department Building, second to top floor. After Qing's death, the parasite lost control. He Chilhong regained consciousness from the manipulated state, her hair disheveled. She crawled to the floor-to-ceiling window, staring blankly outside. T-005 was operating again, and the raging sandstorm was rapidly receding. With the concerted effort of the northern base, the crow population decreased rapidly, and the night sky returned to its initial tranquility. This round, the northern base had overcome the challenge. The office door suddenly swung open, and several military personnel wearing supervisory uniforms entered with solemn expressions. Director He He Chiohong, you are arrested for treason. Come with us. Cold iron shackles locked her hands, eliminating any use of abilities. He Chilhong became what she feared most an ordinary person. She was numbly dragged away. What awaited her would be the most severe trial. The chaotic day finally came to an end. When Zhuang Qinyan left the city defense department, it was nearing midnight. The other members of V587 were waiting outside. Fang Jishu threw a bottle of water towards him, and Zhuang Qinyan caught it without drinking. Feeling mentally exhausted, 
he took off his glasses, rubbed his temples, and let a few strands of bangs fall on his forehead. Where's Song Ku? Any news? Lin Yu Yu opened her terminal, and ten minutes ago, Song Ku sent a message in Martian script, on. I know, I know. Su Xing eagerly answered, Sister must be saying, soon. Wow, our Xiao Xing is so clever. Lin Yu Yu covered her red lips and exaggeratedly praised. Su Xing pursed his lips, unsure if she was sincerely complimenting him or teasing him. Just as Zhuang Qinyan was about to speak, his expression suddenly froze, and a chill ran down his spine. A cold creature jumped onto his foot. Swish, it slipped into his pants, crawled over his thigh, narrow waist, chest finally, it nestled in the hollow of his clavicle. It poked its head out from the open neckline, breathing in the fresh air. Zhuang Qingyan's eyes turned dangerously cold. He pinched the troublesome creature and slowly raised it to eye level. The camouflage faded away, revealing a clueless chameleon. Its flat head turned left and right as it was being held. Zhuang Qingyan's eyes showed disgust, feeling an itch all over his body. He wished to immediately return to his apartment for a hot shower. Clenching his teeth, he asked slowly. Where did this ugly creature come from? The chameleon's tail stood upright with a bulging belly, angered. Its long tongue darted out and bit Zhuang Qingyan's slender finger. The saliva of reptilian creatures was sticky and viscous. It slid down the finger, and Zhuang Qingyan's forehead veins throbbed. He shook his hand forcefully but couldn't get rid of it. Ting! A familiar small terminal fell with a clang, rolling to his feet. Zhuang Qinyan froze for three full seconds, his actions stiff. Song Ku Chapter 221 Strange Rumors Ting! A familiar little terminal fell to the ground. Fang Zhishu's eyes were blank, and a mouthful of water sprayed out, puff. Su Xing couldn't hide his thoughts either. Juice flowed down as his mouth opened wide. He was so shocked that his expression went blank, sister. Lin Yuyu picked up the little terminal, shocked as if struck by lightning, Song Kur. How did you become like this? Song Chameleon Ku, recognized by her companions, happily nodded and shook her head, as if saying, Yes, it's me. Unsatisfied? V587, it's hard to imagine a chameleon having such rich expressions. They knew there were some issues with Song Ku's DNA sequence, and they had witnessed her incredible combat power after gene fusion, like the hook snake before and the brown bear just now. But to turn from a pure human into a pure animal, far beyond the normal scientific understanding of humans. Even the usually silent Su Cha couldn't help but comment, not as good as the snake, at least the hook snake is fierce in a fight and communication is not a problem. Hey, Princess Zhuang, am I not dreaming Lin Yu Yu rambled, supporting her head and blurting out Zhuang Qingyan's nickname, she won't be like this forever, right? You should have a way to change her back, right? Zhuang Qingyan's face was cold, his eyes like dark stars. Upon closer inspection, his body was slightly stiff as he silently stared at the transformed Song Ku hanging from his finger. The results of this genetic transformation were truly unexpected. Let's pause for a moment. Are you sure you want to discuss this here? Only Lu Xiaoyu among them remained calm. Although it was midnight, the busy cleanup vehicles were still collecting crow corpses in the streets and alleys. Occasionally, awakeners passed by, casting suspicious glances at them lingering at the entrance of the city defense department. Let's go back to the apartment, Zhuang Qinyan said in a low voice. Song Ku crawled 200 kilometers, already exhausted. Upon hearing this, she climbed into the pocket of Zhuang Qinyan's shirt and lay down comfortably. Zhuang Qinyan's pupils slightly widened, staring at the conspicuous mud spots. Thinking of how Song Ku had climbed up his pants leg just now, not only his body but even his expression stiffened. Lu Xiaoyu glanced at him, suddenly recalling that during their time in Loponi, this princess's cleanliness reached an unbearable level he brought his own mattress to sleep. Covered the swimming pool while swimming, and strictly prohibited the presence of any crawling animals within his field of vision. Lu Xiaoyu's lips curled slightly, and with a strange tone, he said, Oh, my friend, why don't you like lizards, they're so cute. Shut up. 
Zhuang Qingyan's expression was cold, glancing quickly at the sleeping Song Ku in his pocket, and squeezed out a voice from between his teeth, don't make baseless speculations about my preferences. At two in the morning, garden apartments. The sound of water splashing in the bathroom. The mirror, steamed up by the hot vapor, reflected the blurry light on the upper body. The muscles were thin and tight, the shoulder and neck lines were smooth, and water droplets splashed along the graceful curve of the chin, quickly forming a small pool. Suddenly, the lights dimmed, and the shower had abruptly stopped. Zhuang Qingyan wiped his face and looked up. The temperature control panel showed off, and the tranquil moonlight shone through the window. This style of not knocking, who else could it be? He spoke to the empty outer room, helplessly saying, Song Kiki, don't play around, let me take a bath first. Moist fingertips groped for a moment, and Zhuang Qingyan pressed the on button on the panel, and the sound of flowing water slowly began. Two seconds later, click, like a circuit breaker tripping, the bathroom equipment was once again shut down. Zhuang Qingyan's wet and messy hair accentuated his handsome profile, and he sighed deeply. It seemed like this bath wouldn't be a peaceful one. He casually took off the towel, draped it loosely around his waist, and came out of the partition space, leaning against the sink at the back. Come out, let's talk. As soon as the words fell, a greenish chameleon appeared out of nowhere. Its fleshy claws pressed on the temperature control panel, its belly bulging, looking quite angry. Zhuang Qingyan couldn't help but laugh. Hook snake, wildcat, brown bear, chameleon the first batch of four unknown genes fully manifested. Overall, the performance of the wildcat and brown bear was more stable, while the hook snake and chameleon showed a high degree of transformation, low activity, and the risk of solidification. It would be best to replace them as soon as possible. There were four days until the next wave experiment. During this period, Song Ku could only temporarily maintain her current state. Seeing him lost in thought, Song Ku knocked on the sink discontentedly. She clumsily operated the terminal, projecting a page that displayed the world's cutest species ranking, with the chameleon prominently placed at 17th. Song Ku shook her tail, pointed heavily at the cutest category, then at the 17th place. The meaning was obvious she came to demand an explanation. Why did he call her an ugly creature? Zhuang Qingyan awkwardly averted his gaze and quickly apologized, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said you were ugly. Actually, looking at you closely. Confidently, Song Ku raised her spine, lifted her head, and her copper bell-like eyes rolled. Zhuang Qingyan chuckled softly, insincerely praising, you're quite cute. He reached out with two long and beautiful fingers, gently rubbing Song Ku's flat head. As he rubbed, the motion suddenly stopped without warning. Blame it on his excellent memory. He suddenly remembered a similar situation a long time ago in the research institute in Lok. Zhuang Qingyan discreetly glanced at Song Ku, luckily she didn't recall it. When the laboratory in Qianzhan City is restored, we'll conduct reverse radiation tests to try to change back as soon as possible. For these days, can you stay in the apartment? Song Ku laboriously clawed out, okay. Under the warm light, Zhuang Qingyan's peach blossom eyes looked affectionately at the lizard. He naturally picked up Song Ku, placed her in the sink, squeezed some foam, washed her toes, and then massaged the soft belly along the spine. He washed without distraction, without any whims or ulterior thoughts while facing a chameleon, purely focused on getting rid of the dirt. Song Ku Grandpa had said that no matter what happens, she should never let others help her bathe. Even if she turned into a lizard, probably, maybe, she still shouldn't allow it, right? A surge of heat instantly rushed to her head, and Song Ku blushed all over. Due to the intense shame, she struggled vigorously. Her tail flailed, splashing water, and Zhuang Qingyan subconsciously closed his eyes. He dared not increase the pressure in his hands and could only grope by feeling. Inadvertently, she managed to break free. Song Ku, dizzy and disoriented, flew up and thudded. She hit Zhuang Qingyan's abdominal muscles and slid down, panic in her eyes. She stumbled on top, leaving a few red marks, suddenly hooked onto something, and pulled downward. The towel loosely fell to the ground, covering the small chameleon. Zhuang Qingyan Song Ku, 
who finally emerged from under the towel. She froze for a second, her skin changing colors in red, orange, yellow, and green, and suddenly disappeared in place in a panic. Under the confusion, she dragged the towel along, creating a tent-like structure. In the following three days, the Alliance's situation was tumultuous, experiencing severe upheavals. Due to the attack on Yizheng, the northern base showed a tough diplomatic stance. They launched a series of inquiries against the hidden manipulators such as Miao Ying, Baishan, and Takushima. At one point, they even had a standoff, breaking the surface peace between the various districts and completely tearing apart the facade. Representatives of Miao Ying and Baishan readily admitted their wrongdoing at the negotiating table, but refused to apologize. Only Takushima played dumb, stubbornly refusing to admit being the crocodile and denying sending out the rat and the cat. Miao Ying's representative shouted hoarsely, We won't survive, and no one else will either. Let's all perish together. Baishan's representative tearfully accused, Look at this tornado, two thirds of the city is destroyed. What choice do we have? Takushima's representative, it's their doing, and nothing to do with us. The diplomats of Miao Ying and Baishan next to Takushima looked at him disdainfully, well, traitor. Takushima could be so arrogant because their name wasn't on the list of captives released. However, two days later, with the arrest of the smugglers and a confession letter from Lei Zhao breaking the deadlock, evidence of their heinous acts was clear. Takushima was shocked and denounced Lei Zhao as a three-time traitor. Playing both sides, the negotiation table turned chaotic. Chaos erupted between the B districts, with awakeners frequently engaged in battles. Zhuang Qinyan had to get up early every day, and with Yi Zheng still not recovered and He Chiohong's trial approaching, the awakener department was leaderless. Entrusted by Yi Zheng, Zhuang Qinyan dealt with tasks such as eliminating the remaining crows, overseeing city construction, and diplomatic negotiations. After three days of non stop work, in the quiet early morning, Zhuang Qinyan pushed open the apartment door wearily, saying, I'm back. The living room was brightly lit, with a warm and harmonious atmosphere. Fang Zhishu was still not back from Yi Zheng's place, while Su Cha silently lifted dumbbells for exercise. Su Xing held a pile of snacks, a small chameleon perched on his head, and the two were fully focused on watching Lu Xiaoyu's technologically restored ancient civilization family ethics drama XX Temptation. Why are you wearing Pinru's clothes? And using her things? Since you want to pursue excitement, you must follow through to the end. You're quite naughty. On the screen, a man and a woman rolled into a ball, and robes scattered all over the floor. Lin Yu Yu cleared her throat and, as the lively ending song started playing, sang out loud, for all the pain of love. Su Xing hummed along, and Song Ku's tail swayed, clearly immersed in the scene. Zhuang Qinyan looked at the scattered bathrobes on the screen, his eyelids twitching. Song Ku turned her head and noticed him. Startled, she jumped in place, then hurriedly leaped onto the mechanical arm of Lu Xiaoyu beside them. Taking advantage of the situation, Lu Xiaoyu tried to get some pocket money, generous captain, respected captain, I want to buy this, this, and also this. Song Ku's paws stomped randomly, M% buy. And promptly disappeared from everyone's view. Zhuang Qinyan sighed, feeling mentally exhausted. Since the bathroom incident, Song Ku had been avoiding him for three days straight. He sat down on the sofa, took off his glasses, and rubbed his temples. Has any video leaked out recently? Lu Xiaoyu, in a good mood now, replied, No, but there are strange rumors. The A level mission guarding District B 10, after the system's judgment, credited V 587 with a significant portion. The point successfully propelled them to the first place in the northern base and sixth in the entire alliance. This mysterious team, rising out of nowhere, sparked a lot of speculation in the Star Network discussions due to their rare appearances. Everyone should check this out. Lu Xiaoyu pulled up an image, covering the paused XX temptation. A brown bear, a steel six-armed giant, a poisonous snake, and a three-meter-tall ice and snow mage corresponded to Song Ku, Lu Xiaoyu, Su Cha, and Su Xing, respectively. Even Lin Yuyu was depicted as an eight-foot-tall man shrouded in mist with an unclear face. It's a new manga called Anecdotes of Awakeners. 
it's said to faithfully recreate the scene of the assassination. The Awakeners present at the scene were placed under a gag order that day, not allowed to reveal V-587's true identity. However, unable to resist the desire to share gossip, they invented various stories. Since there were no visual materials, they relied on storytelling, and each informant provided vastly different descriptions of V-587. Rumors even included absurd claims like all members of V-587 are steel macho men who refuse interviews due to their ugly appearance. This led to the creation of this ridiculous manga. However, no one took it seriously, and Su Xing was particularly pleased with his own image. Oh, by the way, Captain, I checked the terminal you picked up, and I found something interesting. Lu Xiaoyu, without any disguise at home, his ice-blue eyes gleaming brightly, infiltrated the terminal of Qin, bypassing ubiquitous surveillance in the data stream. And reconstructed the last communication before Qin's death, the information is currently in the hands of the District B Magistrate and has not been made public yet. Everyone's spirits lifted, and they looked up at the screen. Utopia, the former central court, is about to announce a new policy. A year from now, they will open a challenge to Awakeners worldwide. Those selected will receive a pass and become legal residents of Utopia. Qualifying for residency through a challenge. What kind of approach is this? Lin Yuyu was puzzled, what does this mean? They conspired against the world back then, and now they remember us. Slap us in the face and give us candy afterward. Su Cha coldly commented, it's insidious. Agreed, Lu Xiaoyu nodded. I also find it strange, especially after the recent assassination attempt on Yi Zheng. Zhuang Qinyan lightly tapped his fingertips and smiled coldly, it's just a delaying tactic. Utopia has just risen, and many things need to be done. Now, the survival environment on the ground is harsh. If all districts unite to attack, this S-level city may not survive long enough for development and might face destruction. Taking advantage of the chaos in District B, they throw out the bait of boarding passes. It serves to sow discord and pacify. At such a time, Utopia releasing a new policy is like a blatant insinuation of hypocrisy, look, we haven't abandoned you. As long as you pass the selection, you can live happily in Utopia. In the harsh background of the apocalypse, most people couldn't resist such insinuations. Should we participate? Lin Yuyu asked for everyone's opinion. In such matters, the captain should make the decision, Zhuang Qinyan said casually. Investigate again, and report. The little terminal moved, and a line of text appeared. Zhuang Qinyan, with quick eyes and deft hands, pulled out a shy and timid chameleon from a nearby pillow. Song Ku started changing colors again. You guys chat first. I'll have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with the captain. Zhuang Qinyan, carrying Song Ku, walked quickly into the bathroom and gently closed the door. He lifted Song Ku in front of him, leisurely unbuttoning with one hand, slightly pulling down the neckline, revealing a large expanse of skin. Song Ku's eyes widened in surprise, wondering, What are you doing? What are you doing? Zhuang Qinyan lowered his voice, sounding aggrieved, don't hide, just look, I don't mind. His tired peach blossom eyes drooped slightly, appearing pitiful. I'm showing you. Just remember to take responsibility. In the future, whether it's Yin Xiao or Hei Xiao, don't get involved with any of them. Tian. Yin Xiao or Hei Xiao Silver Owl or Black Owl. XX Temptation Temptation of Wife a South Korean drama 2008. Chinese adaptation is called Home Temptation 2011. Plot Lin Pinru is married to Hong Shixian. Hong Shixian later betrays her and has an affair with A.I. Li, Lin Pinru's best friend. The scene Married Hong Shixian is sleeping with his wife's, Lin Pinru's, best friend A.I. Li. A. I. Li took advantage of Hong Shixian's family going out to do shameful things with Hong Shixian at home. After finishing, she took a shower and then put on the clothes of Hong Shixian's wife, Lin Pinru. When Hong Shixian saw A. I. Li, he asked, Why are you wearing Pinru's clothes? A. I. Li stood up slowly, walked to Hong Shixian and replied, Since you want to pursue excitement, then follow through to the end. So Hong Shixian said his classic quote, You are so naughty. 
From then on, if netizens wanted to complain about someone being sexy, they would say why are you wearing Pinra's clothes. Even if the clothes the other party wears are not SLTTY, as long as there is a sense of being SLTTY in words and actions, they will say why are you wearing Pinra's clothes. Chapter 222 The gene is not recorded in the database. Click. Tonight, the apartment's main door was exceptionally busy, Fang Zhishu and Zhuang Qinyan returned almost simultaneously. How is it, old Fang? Is General Yi feeling better? Lin Yuyu sat up, or rather, twisted into a challenging Pilates pose on the sofa. Her yoga skirt slipped, revealing a dazzling glimpse of her slender waist. On the opposite side, Su Cha paused in lifting dumbbells, silently turning his gaze away and grabbing a blanket to cover her. Fang Zhishu's throat was almost smoking dry, wait a moment, let me have a sip of water first. He took two quick steps, unceremoniously twisted open Su Xing's specially made children's drink, apple flavored with probiotics, and gulped it down without leaving a drop. Su Xing was stunned for two seconds, ah! You nasty old man! Damn it, he deliberately saved the good stuff to drink last. Fang Zhishu put down the medicine box and looked at everyone with a serious expression, General Yi fainted twice suddenly today and has been taken to the specialized hospital for awakeners for treatment. He just woke up before I came back. What? It's that serious? Lin Yuyu instantly sat up straight. Zhuang Qinyan and Song Ku, who came out of the bathroom, also heard Fang Zhishu's words. Ha, huh, then why did you come back? Su Xing sneakily pulled Fang Zhishu's braid, is it because the doctor is better than you, so you got kicked out? It's useless for me to stay. The injuries from the assassination have healed. General Yi fainted due to organ aging, causing compromised compensatory function. Although it hasn't reached the point of failure, it has severely affected various vital signs. Fang Zhishu skillfully held down Su Xing, giving two slaps on the buttocks. And Su Xing, who was used to being pampered by him, had no psychological preparation for being hit and widened his eyes in surprise. General Yi and the others are persuading him to switch to bionic organs, which is the only solution at the moment. Fang Zhishu casually rubbed Su Xing's head, muttering to himself, if only we could reverse no, just delay organ aging. Lin Yuyu raised a question, so switching to bionic organs will solidify the awakener level. But it's okay for S level to solidify, right? Annoyed and embarrassed, Su Xing struggled, used both hands and feet, biting Fang Zhishu's arm fiercely. His Fang Zhishu let go in pain, and Su Xing covered his buttocks, taking the opportunity to run out with a clatter. Fang Zhishu shook his head helplessly, a bright white healing light flashed, and the teeth marks disappeared, leaving a sticky circle of saliva. Zhuang Qinyan happened to block Su Xing's escape route and conveniently lifted him by the back of his collar, throwing him back to Fang Zhishu. Su Xing. With General Ye's current condition, 90% of his organs must be replaced. It's not as simple as level solidification, Zhuang Qinyan calmly explained. It's equivalent to completely dismantling and destroying the magnetic field within the body. In other words, he will go from an S-level awakener to an ordinary person. The spacious living room fell into silence, even the playful antics of Fang Zhishu and Su Xing quieted down. For someone who has never awakened, it might be fine, but for an awakener to return to an ordinary person, it is too cruel for anyone. Before going to sleep, Song Ku sneaked into Zhuang Qinyan's bedroom and poked him on the quilt. Zhuang Qinyan seemed to have anticipated her arrival, not surprised at all as he put down the light screen in his hand, you want to ask if I can help Yi Zheng, right? Song Ku turned green with certainty. Zhuang Qinyan sighed, Old Fang is a doctor, and even he is helpless. What can I do? The triangular head of the chameleon drooped down, instantly turning into a sorrowful blue, exuding a somewhat dejected atmosphere. The room fell into silence, Zhuang Qinyan used two fingers to massage Song Ku's back, his eyelashes drooping, his eyes like an abyss that couldn't see the light. It's not entirely impossible he slowly elongated his voice, there is a possibility, although it's slim, it's worth a try. Song Ku's chubby claws held onto his pajamas, gently pulling, urging him not to beat around the bush and quickly reveal the method. 
Zhuang Qinyan didn't rush to answer, holding her two front limbs, leaning forward a bit, his captivating peach blossom eyes curved charmingly, I'll think of the method. As an exchange, what do you promise me? In the posture of a graceful poplar, I wholeheartedly seek your favor. If I had the honor of being the sole favorite in the harem, that would be even better. Song Ku's two eyeballs went blank. How can someone be shameless enough to flirt with a lizard ug, how outrageous. She released a bit of awakened energy, slap, and the fragile silk pajamas instantly burst open, leaving the neckline wide open. Zhuang Qinyan lowered his head to glance, raising an eyebrow slightly, can't believe you're in such a hurry. Song Ku Song Ku disappeared on the spot. Zhuang Qinyan's eyebrows and eyes relaxed, his expression eased, and he laughed out loud, glimpses of the proud and spirited youth could be vaguely seen through layers of time. Give me the terminal. A small bee terminal flew out into the air, and after a moment, Zhuang Qinyan connected to the video call. The projection flickered twice, revealing a person in a white lab coat who looked hurried it was Dr. Ning Rong. Dr. Ning, how's your recent research going? Zhuang Qinyan casually greeted. It's you. How come you have time Dr. Ning mumbled vaguely, not stopping his footsteps. The background seemed to be a laboratory corridor. Suddenly, he remembered something and excitedly said, I found the critical value. Mutations caused by DNA breakage under high-dose radiation are not inevitable, as long as. Dr. Ning eloquently introduced his preliminary results, and Zhuang Qinyan occasionally responded with a few words. I have a new research topic here. Are you interested? What topic? Cell division lineage research, mainly focused on organ regeneration. I can provide you with relevant research materials, on the condition that I must personally participate and lead the project. The list with the highest confidentiality clearance can only include you and me. Dr. Ning Rong's footsteps halted, his gaze blank. Say that again, are you sure it's cell division lineage research for organ regeneration? Sure. Zhuang Qingyan's expression remained unchanged. Come to Qianzhan City Laboratory tomorrow, and we can discuss it in person. On the other side of the communication, Dr. Ning Rong was shot to the point of being speechless, only the surging flames burned fiercely in his heart. Cell division and organ regeneration are both secrets related to the fire seed. Has this guy been possessed? Just a few days ago, he was shouting, what does benefiting all mankind have to do with me? And now he suddenly changed his mind. Early the next day. Qianzhan City. The hole in the ceiling was patched up, and the refurbished lab was lined with a variety of sophisticated and complex instruments. Zhuang Qinyan lowered his head to adjust the data, Song Ku's tail wrapped around the horizontal bar of the ecological cultivation box, hanging upside down, swaying leisurely. Ning Rong, who came in wearing a hat and mask, was startled, then surprised, lizard jeans. He stared at Song Ku for two seconds, his eyes getting brighter and bursting into enthusiastic research questions, how much is the emotional value after fusion? Have you measured the awakened energy? Can the abilities be used normally? He even approached and reached out to pinch Song Ku for observation, I suggest doing a spectroscopic analysis first. Song Ku's slender tongue flickered and a dark blue sword stopped at Ning Rong's nose. Ning Rong's footsteps halted, realizing that this experimental subject was not someone he could provoke, and he dryly said, Well kid, you do it. Zhuang Qinyan calmly pressed the hovering spiritual weapon, lightly smiling, Dr. Ning, don't be handsy, my partner has a temper. Song Ku cooperatively raised her back, turning her entire body into a bright red, emitting a threatening aura. Ning Rong, strange taste. No need to draw blood, Zhuang Qinyan didn't waste words, time is limited, these are the gene results from last time, let's reverse the radiation directly. Ning Rong changed his clothes for disinfection, took a glance at the running screen, and the spectrometer showed four genes, hook snake, wildcat, brown bear, and chameleon. The complex DNA chains interwove, with chameleon clearly dominating, crazily devouring nearby cells, posing extremely high risks. The chameleon activity is too high. For safety, adjust the radiation values to 22. 0.25% 26. 
745%, Zhuang Qinyan said without a sound, giving him a glance. It seems Ning Rong's research has indeed progressed, now precise to three decimal places. The two entered the partitioned room, attached the censers, and Song Ku flicked his tail towards Zhuang Qinyan's lower leg, meaning clearly, get out. The reverse radiation is not a good thing. Now it's set to over 20%. Although her unique physique is not significantly affected, it would be challenging for an ordinary S-level to endure. Zhuang Qinyan himself had a feeble body, and excessive radiation would undoubtedly be harmful to him. There was no need to accompany her. Seeing her firm attitude, Zhuang Qinyan removed the communicator and placed it around the neck of the small chameleon. All right, I'll wait outside. Call me if there's any issue. If you can't speak, knock three times, and I'll come in. Before leaving, Zhuang Qinyan paused for a moment, adjusted the protective glass, and switched to an invisible mode. After turning back, remember to wear clothes. Song Ku. Of course, she would wear clothes. Low-intensity reverse radiation filled the entire isolation room, and each time the wavelength changed, Zhuang Qinyan would remind Song Ku. Excluding the four known wavelengths, nearly 5% fluctuation range, I don't know what will come out this time, Ning Rong remarked while staring at the instrument. It's better to have a stable outcome. Opening the blind box was a matter of luck. Zhuang Qinyan didn't speak. Genetic engineering, especially genetic fusion, was impossible without using animals for experimentation. The DNA composition inside Song Ku was complex, and perhaps none of them were a good match. After another change in the wavelength, Song Ku's clear voice sounded from the communicator, Zhuang Qinyan. Zhuang Qinyan quickly pressed pause, I'm here. Song Ku chuckled, I've turned back. Ignoring the instrument results, Zhuang Qinyan took big steps forward, his voice laced with a smile, I'm coming in. Are you dressed? I, am, dressed. The door was pushed open, and Song Ku, wearing a white t-shirt and shorts, swung her legs while sitting on the experimental table, looking displeased at him, I'm not you. I would definitely wear. Zhuang Qinyan strode over and tightly hugged her. Song Ku instantly fell silent, pressed against his chest, listening to his thumping heartbeat. Her ears turned redder and redder. The two hugged for a while, and Zhuang Qinyan checked her limbs, is there any discomfort? Or do you feel anything unusual? Song Ku thought for a moment and shook her head seriously, no. Hand in hand, the two came out, and Ning Rong stared at the instrument with a solemn expression, come over and take a look. Following his gaze, Zhuang Qinyan lowered his head. Curious, Song Ku squeezed her head in, although she couldn't understand it, she wanted to feel involved. The data analysis is almost complete. This time, there is probably only one manifesting gene, and its stability is very good. It should be fine for one or two months, Zhuang Qinyan reported as detailed information gradually emerged. Ning Rong stared at a few lines of data, unable to hide his surprise, what? Second activation. Second activation refers to the reappearance of genes with dominant traits, such as the hook snake or wild cat. However, they had already eliminated the first batch of four, so such a mistake was impossible. Even Zhuang Qinyan couldn't help but be astonished. Could it be that, apart from those four, Song Ku had previously shown symptoms of gene fusion? No, Song Ku honestly replied. She had been perfectly normal from childhood to now. Ding! The spectrometer stopped running, displaying the result, this gene is not recorded in the database. Ning Rong was dumbfounded. This gene spectrometer covered the entire alliance's biological lineage. What did it mean not being in the database? Zhuang Qinyan couldn't help but frown. All successfully fused genes would be recorded unless it was the failed part, which could be anything and more difficult to judge. Song Ku, are you sure you're not feeling any discomfort? Zhuang Qinyan's brow furrowed. I'm fine, Song Ku nodded. Still worried, Zhuang Qinyan conducted various physical examinations, and this time, there was a new discovery. Ning Rong pointed at the resonance meter in shock, awakened energy stable at 14,000. Seeing Song Ku's confusion, Ning Rong sighed deeply, 
congratulations, second awakening no, according to your awakener circle's terms, you've upgraded to S8. S8's awakened energy ranged from 13,000 to 15,000. Song Ku's previous level was 12,000, and now it was stable at 14,000, a clear improvement in strength. S7 was already explosive. Once the news of Song Ku's promotion to S8 was announced, it would undoubtedly stir up a storm in the alliance. When would the research you mentioned start? Ning Rong asked in a low voice after leaving the laboratory. The sooner, the better, Zhuang Qinyan replied in a hushed tone. The situation with Yi Zheng was urgent. Before coming here, Zhuang Qinyan had asked Yi Zimei about his situation. As long as Yi Zheng agreed, the surgery could take place as early as a week later. Song Ku and I will go to the trial court first, and then we'll find you later. Ning Rong acknowledged with a sound, keeping up with the two awakened individuals, panting as he spoke, I've arranged the confidentiality permissions you mentioned. I've screened all the assistants. When the research process is dismantled, no one will notice. The three figures gradually moved away. A miniature drone hovered in the sky and then returned to a skywalk several kilometers away, where two figures stood. One of them glanced at the real-time surveillance and looked puzzled. Who is this person? Why is Ning Rong getting so close to him? The two central court agents had been tracking Ning Rong for a long time, monitoring him closely since he arrived at the northern base. Ning Rong, a former core member of the Eternal Life Project and from the Qinglan Research Institute, was suspected by the Central Court of concealing important research data. Deliberately leaving the project, and wanting to establish his own foothold to take over the experimental results. However, Ning Rong was a thorough scientific researcher who usually kept a low profile. He rarely interacted with people, and with awakener guards around the laboratory perimeter, it was challenging to infiltrate. They had followed him for several months, but they were at an impasse until recently when Ning Rong came to Qianzhan City twice, raising suspicions. The other person skillfully exported the recent photos and videos, organizing them into periodic reporting documents. Do your job it's not our business to use our brains. Send these to surveillance, the agent said. Among the countless images, there was an inconspicuous side profile photo of a young man. Young Zhuang Qinyan was wearing a white robe, donning gold-rimmed glasses, and had an elegant and handsome face. Despite being dressed as a researcher like Ning Rong, his temperament was completely different from Ning Rong, who had heavy dark circles under his eyes. Chapter 223 S7 attended the trial with two family members. Northern Base, 10 AM A highly anticipated trial is about to begin. As the person involved was formerly the highest-ranking official in the Awakener Department and the crimes committed involved national secrets, only a very small number of people were allowed to participate. The media and reporters who entered went through layers of screening. In the spectator seats, officials dressed in suits sat upright, Awakeners suppressing their awakened energy, and silent witnesses. Before the formal start of the trial, two figures entered against the light. Zhuang Qinyan wore an impeccably crafted light gray suit, his side profile tall and lean, outlining broad shoulders and long legs as he walked. Song Ku, on the other hand, had a much simpler attire, white t-shirt and shorts, with short hair neat and refreshing. The two uninvited guests walked in as if they owned the place. Is that Song Ku? A special reporter in the media area covered his mouth and whispered to his colleague, she looks quite approachable. Don't judge a book by its cover, the colleague, a local, shook his head in disagreement, whispering with a hushed tone, you know nothing about her brutality. How brutal is she? I don't believe it unless I see it myself. Do you have the video of the armored sea turtle? No, but I've heard of it. Isn't it too exaggerated? How could a level 5 ferocious beast be killed single-handedly? I'll send it to you. The colleague sighed deeply. The video was once so popular, but its popularity inexplicably plummeted after a couple of days, with no one interested anymore. Fortunately, he wisely saved the copy. Wow! Oh my god! I can't believe it! The reporter watched in awe, his words stumbling, I was blind, she's so amazing. Why is she here today? Does she have any friendship with Hong? 
Quite the opposite, the colleague wore a mysterious expression, it's more like having a grudge. I heard not sure if it's true, he Chil Hong kidnapped this person. The journalist gasped, his expression puzzled and blank. Kidnapping S7. This would be an explosive piece of news throughout the entire alliance. Is he Chil Hong out of her mind? As soon as the colleague's words fell, the tall man with his hands in his pockets walked past them, casting a cool glance. The journalist shivered and instinctively turned off the terminal playing the colorful video. Members of V587 sitting in the front row turned their heads in pleasant surprise, their eyes assessing, as if saying, Captain, back to your usual self. Song Ku made a shush gesture, playfully blinked, spun around to signify that she was unharmed, and sat next to Lu Xiaoyu. Lu Xiaoyu casually extended his hand, and Song Ku touched her pocket, handing him the terminal for the routine anti-intrusion check. Then, she leaned in and spoke softly to Lu Xiaoyu, their heads close together. From certain angles, their faces were very close, almost as if they were kissing. Zhuang Qinyan stretched his arm lazily, resting it on the back of Song Ku's chair, displaying both intimacy and possessiveness. Sharing a terminal among the three had become a habit, and they didn't think much of it. However, to others, it seemed somewhat scandalous. The eyes of two journalists next door widened. If they were from the crooked anecdotes of Awakeners, they would have already imagined a passionate and scandalous love affair based on S7's gimmicks, ensuring tomorrow's best-selling headline. However, they were from the northern base Legal Daily, an official and serious media outlet. The two exchanged glances and finally wrote down in a proper manner, on date, S7, Level Awakener Song Ku attended the trial with two family members. Clang. The passage door opened, and six solemn-faced judges were escorted in by the Awakener guards. The chief judge in the center was a woman around forty, with a straight posture and deep eyes containing a glint of intelligence. As she scanned the spectator seats, people avoided her gaze, as if once seen by her, all secrets would be exposed. Song Ku's spirits lifted, sensing that this was a high-level awakener. Tian Wenli, a seven-level mental type, ability, truth reconstruction, can make time and space flow backward, replay scenes that have happened before. And reveal the true psychological activities of the individuals involved, Zhuang Qinyan explained in a low voice, pinching Song Ku's ear. He was now a mobile central hub of resident information, knowing the background of every resident in the northern base. Tian Wenli's ability was somewhat similar to Bai Ruodong's lie detection, but unlike Song Ku's young senior sister, Tian Wenli, an experienced early awakener, had been working as a judge for over 17 years, a bona fide expert in interrogation. Back then, A-level Bai Ruodong couldn't extract much information from S-level Zhuang Qingyan's mouth, but today, A-7-level Tian Wenli against B-3-level He Chiohong was almost a crushing blow. Now, the trial begins. Bring the defendant, He Chiohong, into the courtroom, Tian Wenli spoke in a deep voice after taking her seat. The law enforcement officers brought He Chiohong, whose hands and feet were bound by ability restraints, to the courtroom. After removing her high-ranking official uniform, she appeared frail, moving slowly. The deep lines on the sides of her cheeks had intensified, but her expression remained as calm as ever. Director He on the spectator seats, he Chiu Hong's administrative secretary couldn't help muttering, quickly bowing her head amidst the surrounding glares. She was just a newly appointed insignificant figure, with little understanding of the crimes committed by her former superior. Her sigh at the imprisonment of her boss unexpectedly caused an uproar, and the secretary regretfully patted her mouth, not daring to speak further. In the front row, Yi Zimei sat upright, her expression cold and concentrated. Today, she represented Yi Zheng and Bai Qi, witnessing He Chiohong's fate. He Chiohong, Tian Wenli, sitting in the center of the judge's bench, used her awakened energy and her voice resonated throughout the venue. You are accused of betrayal, treason, endangering national security, abuse of power, intentional murder, and a total of thirteen charges. Do you have any objections? I have objections, He Chiohong's expression was surprisingly calm. I deny the unfounded accusations. I did not betray the northern base. Issuing the order for the residents of Qianzhan City to stay put was due to being controlled by an S-level parasite, not of my own volition. There was an uproar in the spectator seats, 
angrily cursing He Chilhong for being defiant and refusing to confess even at the brink of death. Spectators, please maintain silence, Tian Wenli knocked the gavel. You deny intentionally plotting against General Yi Zheng, but the order to prevent the entry of Qianzhan city residents was issued when you were conscious. He Chilhong hesitated for a moment and answered calmly, I did it for the benefit of the northern base. Tian Wenli's eyes were sharp, and she suddenly raised her voice, liar. I request the use of truth reconstruction. Approved, the decision was made after consultation among the five judges. Dong, dong. Like the striking of a grand bell, He Chilhong's face showed pain, completely defenseless, her consciousness thoroughly swept away, and scenes from the past unfolded. First was a cold voice, close all connection channels with Qianzhan City. Then came a mixture of contemptuous psychological activities, those ordinary people. Useless waste, not worth mourning. It's their own bad luck. Awakeners forget it, a group of eliminated people with no strength. Just clean them up, and issue a recruitment notice after the crisis is over. The scene fell into complete silence everyone was shocked by her disregard for life. Murderer. Despicable woman. Suddenly, from the direction of the witness stand, a rotten egg flew towards He Chilhong, landing at her feet. Who do you think you are? What gives you the right to decide our life and death? Who the hell do you think you are? The law enforcement officers hurriedly intervened to stop the disturbance. The enraged man, seemingly using an ability, threw another rotten egg out of thin air, and this time, he was fortunate enough to hit He Chilhong's face. A gray green, foul smelling liquid oozed down, creating a nauseating odor. Please have the witness temporarily leave the stand, Tian Wenli raised her hand, signaling the officers to escort the man out. She then turned to the public and explained, the witness lost his parents in a ferocious beast tide, and his emotions are quite intense. Please understand. Song Ku rested her chin on her hand, her lips slightly curled. She initially thought the chief judge, Tian Wenli, was impartial, but she could see clearly that Tian Wenli had noticed the witness reaching for the rotten egg, yet deliberately waited two seconds before intervening. He Chilhong, you discriminate against ordinary people with an unequal perspective, causing a significant negative impact on the peace and stability of the northern base. The court has received additional information that former S-4 level awakener Lei Zhao left for Tokushima with resentment due to your unreasonable arrangement for his family. The effect of truth reconstruction was still in place, and upon hearing Lei Zhao's name, He Chilhong's pupils contracted slightly, uncontrollably recalling the past. Lei Zhao grew up in the orphanage of the low-level district. His family consisted of disabled individuals. Because Lei Zhao was allowed to enter District B, He Chilhong, following regulations, assigned him a residence without considering whether it was appropriate. The community was full of awakeners, and a culture of comparison thrived. Lei Zhao's family suffered severe bullying, and he, busy with commissions, neglected them until incidents of self-harm forced him to wake up. Eventually, he left District B-10. Another S-level weapon-type awakener, the chief designer of the Hell Firearms, also left the northern base for ideological differences. Before leaving, he expressed to his friend, the original intention of designing the Hell Firearms was to give ordinary people the ability to fight against zombies and ferocious beasts. If my weapons can only be provided to awakeners, I don't know what purpose they serve anymore. His friend asked, where did you get this information, and who talked to you? The chief designer sighed, shook his head with a bitter smile, unwilling to say more. A commotion spread through the spectator seats, with awakeners expressing their indignation. No wonder, all this time, the northern base had fewer top-level awakeners compared to other regions turns out it was because of He Chilhong, the troublemaker. Despite her lofty speeches about the importance of awakeners, in reality, she hadn't accomplished anything substantial. Ultimately, it was all about maintaining her own rule and power. He Chilhong's governing philosophy contradicted the entire northern base, and it's no wonder that talented individuals found it difficult to stay. V587 members in their seats couldn't help but smirk. He Chilhong had offended more than just these S-level awakeners they had three more in their team. If it weren't for Yi Zhang's strong retention efforts, they might have left in a fit of anger, just like Lei Zhao. Chapter 224. 
S7 attended the trial with two family members. The trial continued, and He Chiu Hong's crimes were exposed one by one. When the charge of intentional murder was pronounced, Tian Wenli activated her ability again. The scene of Chen Shuero's death emerged, revealing He Chiu Hong not only ignoring her life and death but also displaying jealousy and malice towards Chen Shuero in the reconstructed psychological activities, intense to the point of pitch black. Chen Commissioner Chen even some senior officials from the Awakener Department couldn't sit still this time, tears streaming down their faces. Chen Shuero, once the widely anticipated successor to Yi Zheng. The clamor echoed from all directions, and the condemnation against He Chiuhong escalated. Tian Wenli pounded the gavel, order, please maintain order. Criminal He Chiuhong, do you have anything to refute? He Chiuhong's gaze was numb, but she persisted, I do not admit guilt. After a moment of contemplation, Tian Wenli, mindful of her ability's three uses per day limit, decided to use her last opportunity. Disordered images alternated, revealing He Chiu Hong's dark life like a fast forwarded movie, displayed in front of everyone. Unfortunately, there were no additional discoveries. In the spectator seats, Zhuang Qin Yen caught a fleeting shadow among the chaotic images, subtly furrowing his brow. He turned his head, and Lu Xiaoyu happened to look at him. They locked eyes for a second, and Lu Xiaoyu leaned closer to Song Ku, passing the terminal to Zhuang Qinyan. In the adjacent northern base legal daily, the reporter, sneakingly perusing crooked anecdotes of awakeners, was caught off guard by this scene. Quickly averting his gaze, he whispered to himself, Oh my, this S7 is not ordinary, not ordinary at all. Harmony in both main and side rooms, quite impressive. The court proceedings prohibited recording, but Lu Xiaoyu, using special means, saved all the records of the truth reconstruction, including a startling conversation between He Chiu Hong and a central court official. Zhuang Qingyan's raven-like eyelashes drooped, concealing the cold brilliance in his eyes. Park Jae Wu Because it wasn't crucial evidence, this part didn't attract much attention. Zhuang Qingyan played it frame by frame, deciphering the conversation based on their lip movements. From the timing, this call occurred shortly after Song Ku announced the news of S7. Park J. Wu, representing the Central Court, called the Northern Base, seemingly interested in Song Ku's background. He Chiu Hong casually explained that Song Ku came from the low-level district and joined voluntarily in response to her recruitment order. Park J. Wu repeated with a meaningful tone, Oh! The low-level district. That's quite rare. Then, he smoothly shifted the topic, exchanged a few pleasantries with He Chiu Hong, and terminated the communication. If Park J. Wu didn't know Song Ku, had never seen V587, everything would seem reasonable. However, the reality was quite the opposite. They had clashed violently during the Mu City incident. In front of Park J. Wu, Song Ku killed the magistrate Nai Kong and S-level dual system awakener punk, and if it weren't for Zhuang Qingyan's efforts, the situation at that time would have been irreparable. Given this context, Park J. Wu's phone call became intriguing. He didn't disclose anything about his past with Song Ku, nor did he attempt to expel or recruit V587. It seemed like he only wanted to confirm their presence in the northern base. What exactly was he up to? Zhuang Qinyan subtly glanced at the adjacent Song Ku. The majestic S7, seemingly attentive to the legal proceedings, had her chin resting on Lin Yuyu's shoulder. However, in reality, her right hand subtly moved as she discreetly stuffed a piece of preserved fruit into her mouth, squinting her eyes contentedly. Zhuang Qingyan's eyes carried a smile, but his grip on the terminal gradually tightened. No matter what Park Jae Wu intended to do with Song Ku, as long as he was around, his plans wouldn't succeed. After nearly two hours of a lengthy trial, Tian Wenli solemnly stood up, Now, I declare that the defendant, He Chiu Hong, is found guilty of the thirteen charges brought against her. She is sentenced to life imprisonment, with the deprivation of citizenship and the revocation of ability usage rights. She will be confined and monitored at a maximum security facility. As a first-degree offender, He Chiu Hong was required to undergo compulsory rehabilitation with a minimum of 100 hours of labor per week. Coincidentally, the northern base was expanding by one-third, intending to accommodate more residents from the Qianzhan city, 
and he Chilhon would undoubtedly be assigned to perform laborious tasks. Upon hearing that it wasn't a death penalty, there was a murmur of private conversations among the audience, expressing some dissatisfaction. Only Zhuang Qinyan understood and smiled knowingly, this Judge Tian is very wise and insightful. How so? Lin Yuyu and the others in the front row turned curiously. Based on my superficial understanding of her, death penalty wouldn't be a punishment for He Chiohong instead, it would be a kind of disguised relief. Her twisted thoughts would make her believe that she was not wrong it was the others who didn't understand her. She died for the northern base. After Zhuang Qinyan explained, the others shivered, realizing that, with He Chiohong's distorted personality, she might indeed think this way. So, the most severe punishment is not the death penalty, but the day-to-day -day despair, making her aware that she's an awakener but can only lower her arrogant head. Surviving like the ordinary people she once looked down upon, using the rest of her life for redemption. Indeed, after hearing the verdict, He Chiohong's calm expression shattered. She struggled frantically, and the sound of the ability shackles echoed. I don't admit guilt. I want to see my teacher. I demand to see General Yi. Rejected, Tian Wenli decisively announced. The trial concluded. When Song Ku left, she coincidentally encountered Zhao Yuching outside. The indifferent water type awakener lit a cigarette and took a long time before inhaling a puff. Hey, isn't that Zhao Yuching? I've never heard that she smokes. Someone nearby nudged their companion's shoulder, silently indicating with their lips Lei Zhao. They used to be in the same team before, probably that kind of relationship. What kind? Seriously? Don't stare. Let's go. Suddenly, Song Ku remembered the beach mission where Yin Xiao asked for her help, and Zhao Yuqing mentioned that Lei Zhao was her partner. A slender figure stopped in front of her. Zhao Yuqing looked up and saw Song Ku. Smoking is harmful to health, Song Ku advised with sincerity, taking out a lollipop with a happy pistachio flavor from her spatial storage. All right, I won't smoke. Zhao Yuqing obediently extinguished the cigarette. You seem upset. Is it because of Lei Zhao? Yes, but we don't have that kind of relationship, Zhao Yuqing replied calmly, apparently aware of the recent discussions. She smiled faintly, who says men and women must have emotional entanglements? I just feel guilty. As his captain, if I had paid more attention to him at that time, he wouldn't have ended up like this. Betraying the northern base, assassinating the district B magistrate, and then betraying Takushima, Lei Zhao was ultimately sentenced to 20 years in prison. Fortunately, due to his voluntary confession, his family was safely escorted back and settled in the central antique street, where ordinary people lived. Currently, their lives were good. Don't be sad the sun will come out again. Song Ku earnestly comforted Zhao Yuqing. Turning around, she took Zhuang Qinyan to visit Lei Zhao. With his keen insight into people, if Lei Zhao wasn't as bad as he seemed, there might be a chance for him to redeem himself and seek a reduced sentence. Yeah, the sandstorm has ended, and everything will pass. I believe I can find a way. Zhao Yuqing tore open the lollipop wrapper, put it in her mouth, and, along with Song Ku, looked up at the sky. The massive three-dimensional city was bustling as usual, with various flying terminals shuttling back and forth, and the bright sunlight was blinding. Summer was in full swing. Two days later, Utopia issued a global announcement that they would officially host the first Awakener Challenge in a year. Based on this, they would distribute passes and select new residents for the floating cities. The news caused a sensation in the New Asia Alliance, the Karyo Empire, and the Luce Federation. As Zhuang Qinyan expected, people on the ground erupted with great enthusiasm and eagerness. They geared up for the challenge, and conflicts between various regions even decreased. As days passed, peace gradually settled in, and time seemed to fast forward. V587 continued to focus on accumulating points, striving to become the top of the alliance leaderboard. The notable difference was that one person was absent from their actions Zhuang Qinyan no longer went on field missions. He immersed himself entirely in the genetic project with Ning Rong, working tirelessly. With abundant funds, sufficient data, and the support of a team of nearly a hundred people, the organ regeneration project made significant progress. 
Yixing actively volunteered to be their first clinical trial subject. In the midst of a dense zombie wave, Song could danced with dual blades, swiftly beheading third-level zombies, while Fang Zhishu followed closely behind, skillfully extracting crystals. The surrounding team sighed in resignation, helpless against the norm. Everywhere V587 went, it was as if a bandit had passed through no grass grew, or rather, no zombies remained. Blood splattered on Song Ku's cheek as she lowered her head to glance at the terminal, and her point skyrocketed significantly. You guys clean up I'll head back first. Song Ku remember to take a shower, or Princess Shuang will throw a tantrum again, Lin Yuyu called out with a teasing tone. Song Ku paused, sniffed herself, and said grudgingly, understood. As the night fell, Zhuang Qinyan had just stepped out of the laboratory when he saw Song Ku sitting cross-legged on a floating supercar, holding a large bottle of honey and scooping it up with a spoon. The deadly amount of sweetness, which would be lethal for ordinary people, seemed to satisfy her. Addicted to sweets as if it were her life, a lingering side effect of the brown bear gene. Zhuang Qinyan shook his head inwardly, stopped in front of her, and saw Song Ku looking up at him, with golden remnants on the corner of her mouth. A faint, almost imperceptible laughter echoed as Zhuang Qingyan's slender fingertips wiped it away. After a few strokes in his palm, even though he hadn't tasted it, the sweet nectar seemed to soak into his heart. Why is it just you? What about the others? I'm here to pick you up, Song Ku replied confidently. Is that so? Then, let's go home quickly. Zhuang Qinyan smiled teasingly, joking with her, this car is quite expensive the owner might ask you to compensate when they come. Upon hearing the mention of compensation, Song Ku's eyes widened. Like a feline creature, she lightly pushed him from behind. Run! Zhuang Qinyan laughed heartily, and the long-lost tranquility gradually filled his chest. Suddenly, he felt that this ordinary and warm life was quite good. Song Ku was responsible for slaying monsters and supporting the family, while he went to work as an ordinary researcher. Every evening, as the sun set, they would return home hand in hand, discussing what to eat for dinner. It was a life that Zhuang Qinyan had never imagined, but surprisingly, he didn't feel any rejection towards it. Chapter 225 I Will Restart Operation Key New Asia Alliance District A1, Central Court as the political center of the entire alliance and the most important city, the central court's main function is administrative management. There are no residential areas within its jurisdiction, and entry and exit are only permitted with authorization. After Utopia ascended, most officials successfully transferred, but there were still some inexperienced individuals who stayed behind to handle ground affairs, working diligently and hoping to one day obtain a ticket to join Utopia. The fully automated streets were clean and orderly, with modern skyscrapers standing in a grid. Two inspectors hurriedly disembarked from a starship, changed to a floating car, and flew to the majestic parliament building in the city center. The glass elevator ascended smoothly and stopped at the entrance of a conference room spacious enough to accommodate a hundred people. Artificial intelligence guided the guests to their seats. At this moment, an important meeting was taking place in the room. The two inspectors bowed their heads and walked around the edges, not daring to make any noise. Both sides of the long table were filled with influential figures from various countries, including both awakeners and ordinary people. Each face was a regular feature in news reports, but they were all lifelike holographic projections. These people had long since reached Utopia, and at the moment, in the vast conference room, there were no living beings except the two inspectors. The influential figures were discussing the development plan for Utopia in the next three years. Every policy announced was explosive news. The only two living individuals present sat nervously, wiping their foreheads with handkerchiefs under the immense pressure, feeling uneasy and anxious. About forty minutes later, most of the projections in the room disappeared, leaving less than twenty people, including the leaders of the Karyo Empire and Loose Federation. A solemn and deep voice sounded from the head of the long table. The speaker sat in the shadows, and only a vague silhouette could be seen, the reason you were asked to stay is that a few days ago, I happened to come across this photograph. The name tag displayed that he was one of the three titans of Utopia, once the leader of the New Asia Alliance. 
A clear photo appeared, showing two researchers, dressed in lab attire, leaving the laboratory side by side. The older one had a cheerful smile at the corner of his mouth. Whispers erupted from all sides, and everyone was puzzled. What was unusual about this photo? Please let the official in charge of this matter provide specific details, said the figure from the head of the table. The sweating inspector stood up nervously and said, I I provided the photo. The person on the left is Ning Rong, a core member of the Eternal Life Project who left the project team a year ago. I was ordered to track his movements. The person on the right is named Shuang Qinyan. As far as I know, the two of them are secretly conducting research on cell division, and the specific purpose is unknown. Cell division. A holographic projection slammed the table and exclaimed angrily, are they trying to achieve human body self-repair? This is part of the Eternal Life Project, and Ning Rong has indeed stolen confidential information. Another older official murmured to himself, Zhuang Qinyan. The name sounds familiar. The shadow raised a hand, and another photo appeared on the screen. This photo looked a bit dated, with the same two individuals as the main characters. A young Ning Rong was flushed, engaged in a heated argument with another person. The researcher facing him had a handsome appearance, with a calm expression that seemed to completely ignore Ning Rong's protests. He furrowed his eyebrows slightly when he saw the camera, leaving behind a graceful side profile. I'm sure this person's name is well known to everyone present. He is the most famous bioscientist since the new era, the pioneer of genetic engineering, and the leader of the Eternal Life Project Vincent Chuang. As if dropping a nuclear bomb on flat ground, most people didn't react immediately, but a few had their faces change abruptly, almost standing up in shock. The Eternal Life Project, once the aspiration of countless people in the Alliance, was now the most fervent pursuit of utopia. For security and confidentiality reasons, although Vincent's name was widely known, what he actually looked like was rarely circulated. Looking at the two photos again, the faces that appeared identical under different lighting conditions made even the slowest person realize something was amiss. Vincent Vincent's original name, isn't it Zhuang Qinyan? exclaimed the older official, finally recalling where the familiarity came from. The shadow gazed at the silhouette of the young man and shook his head slowly, he is not Zhuang Qinyan. His real name is Xie Zhuo. The air fell silent for a moment. Xie Zhuo, the name behind this revelation, held a meaning that everyone in the room understood all too well. Vincent had already passed away, and it was said that he was in a semi-demented state before his death. No one knew what he had experienced in the final stages of his life. All that was known was that after Vincent's death, all research findings were sealed into a storage hub through a special means. Strangely, that hub had never been opened again, or more accurately, it could never be opened again whether it was Vincent himself or the biological information of his close relatives extracted from the genetic database. In the end, the Alliance had to resort to some covert methods and learned from the residual memories of Vincent that the only condition for unlocking the hub was the key. What was the key? A physical key? A virtual identity card? Or a secretive access code? No one knew. The only remaining clues back then pointed to Vincent's lone son, Siegeois. In the last few years of Vincent's scientific career, he rarely stepped out of the laboratory and Xie Zhuo had been by his side, handling all matters for him. After Vincent's death, Xie Zhuo mysteriously disappeared, and the whereabouts of the key became unknown. This also became an unspoken fact among the Alliance's high-ranking officials, the key to retrieving the key lay with Xie Zhuo. The shadow silently observed the confident young man in the photo. Over the years, he had been following the news of the Eternal Life Project, expending significant human, material, and financial resources for a thorough search. However, Siegewa seemed to have evaporated from the human world. There was no trace of him even on the star network. Gradually, everyone assumed he was dead. Unexpectedly, he had resurfaced, changing his identity to Zhuang Qinyan and openly walking in the sunlight. If it weren't for the accidental capture of the photo during the surveillance of Ning Rong, the secret agent's careful consideration in organizing and archiving it and subsequently bringing it up, perhaps the existence of Zhuang Qinyan would never have been discovered. The Fire Seed project back then must have buried important results. 
After the Loke incident, Vincent publicly declared the failure of the Fire Seed project, but in the following year, he initiated version 2. Zero, naming it the Eternal Life Project. He wanted to continue the research of the Fire Seed, and during this time, he must have discovered something. Unfortunately, a few years later, Vincent passed away, and the research progress of the original Eternal Life Project was indefinitely shelved. Later on, due to disagreements in understanding, some scientists voluntarily withdrew from the project, including Ning Rong, while another group shifted focus to hybrid experiments, attempting to break through from a different direction. All the answers are in that hub. They had tried countless methods to crack it, but the hub left by Vincent seemed like a formatted blank computer, devoid of any data. Only the key can activate the hub. The shadow sighed deeply, and his authoritative voice echoed through the room, I will restart Operation Key. Does anyone here object? No one raised their hand or spoke. The influential figures present had complex expressions, exchanging covert glances. None of them wanted to be the one to step forward. After a pause, a hoarse voice spoke up, no objections. I fully support it. The projection on the opposite side couldn't help but sneer, Xie Ping, do you have the final say? Can you represent the Xie family of Beijun? Xie Lan was the true master of Beijun, and she was no ordinary woman. She had even refused the pass to Utopia. Moreover, Xie Lan still controlled the Azure Phoenix Army, a force that sent chills down people's spines worldwide. Xie Ping, the magistrate of Beijun, was not invited to the secret meeting today. Xie Ping retorted coldly, I can indeed only represent myself, but I can risk my life, can you? The person who tried to counter fell silent. Everyone knew that Xie Ping was already in the throes of a terminal illness and had been waiting for a breakthrough in the Eternal Life Project. The mindset of a dying person could be terrifying, capable of anything. Lu Chiosua, what about you? Everyone turned to look at another special holographic projection, a large-scale AI. This individual was also a remarkable figure, the dignified head of the Lu clan, Lu Chiosuo. He had abandoned his physical body, merging his consciousness into a supercomputer, achieving eternity in another way. A line of text slowly appeared, the Lu clan advocates neutrality and will not participate. In the blink of an eye, Lu Chiosuo's statement paused, as if glitching. The original text disappeared and was replaced with the key wouldn't disappear from the star network without a reason. Someone is covering his tracks. The Lu clan will participate in the operation. With these two taking the lead, others hesitated for a moment before nodding in agreement. The shadow, still shrouded in darkness, slowly spoke, how is the intelligence on the key? Yes, yes, another nervous inspector reported, this uh, the key, comes from the lower district and is currently settled in the northern base, District B-10. The affiliated team is V-587, led by an S-7 level attack type awakener. All team members are A-level, and they have quite a close relationship with the local magistrate. Yi Zhang's territory. The recent high-profile assassination attempt in B district had naturally reached Utopia. After this incident, the northern base became impregnable, with both military and civilians reaching peak cohesion. Whether it was infiltrating agents or launching a direct assault, it became a challenging task. In the somber meeting room, a smooth voice suddenly emanated from the corner, and the name tag identified the speaker as someone from the Alliance Regional Affairs General Bureau. Holding the position of Deputy Director, regarding V-587 and Song Ku, I have some rough understanding. The composed face of Park J. Wu slowly appeared. As a politically astute figure, he had promptly confirmed and concealed Song Ku's whereabouts when he discovered it. Park J. Wu, of course, wasn't motivated by kindness. It was simply that revealing Song Ku's origins at that time held no benefits for him, and he had a hunch that Song Ku's existence could be a trump card, capable of securing greater advantages for him. And indeed, he made the right bet. Humph, if it's just a rough understanding, then there's no need to speak, right? Sneered Simon, Park J. Wu's arch nemesis, a middle aged man with a hooked nose. Oh no, Director Simon, I believe you'd be interested. Let me think this song could once single handedly killed an S7 level dual type awakener, someone called the Bloody Killer, Punk. 
Park Jae-woo nonchalantly adjusted his suit, his expression seemingly oblivious, as if he truly didn't know that Punk had once been the most loyal lackey of the man opposite him. Simon's eyes dangerously narrowed. Garden Apartments V587, who had finished a day of hard work, was enjoying a rare leisure moment. Even though the Awakener department had assigned a suite to each of them, all the team members preferred to squeeze into Song Ka's luxurious penthouse. Fong Jishu, wearing an apron, was at the cooking counter preparing barbecue. Although the ingredients were all artificially cultivated, the freshness made up for it. Su Xing stood on tiptoes, peering into the pot, pointing and complaining, I don't want broccoli, and I don't want carrots. Do you know why you're not growing tall? Because you're a picky eater, Fang Jishu, with a lollipop in his mouth, said unclearly, keep complaining, and I'll spank you again. You're the one who's not tall. Su Xing exploded in anger, jumping up to create chaos, and the two of them began a lively squabble. In the living room, Zhuang Qinyan clicked on the screen, quickly browsing, while Song Ku grabbed his other hand and placed it in front. The background music of a palace intrigue drama played, with the beauties in distress crying, forming a tangled mess. Song Ku laid his head on Zhuang Qinyan's sturdy thigh, sleeping soundly, his mouth shining with drool, unconsciously wiping it with Zhuang Qinyan's hand. Zhuang Qinyan hesitated for a moment, then turned his head to look at her, curling his fingertips, but ultimately didn't pull it back. On the balcony, Lu Xiaoyu rested with closed eyes. His metal arm connected to the small B terminal, emitting a dazzling gloss. Recently, the consciousness link with the District B terminal seemed to have deepened. To be safe, his anti-intrusion check was changed from three times a week to once a day. Another terminal next to him suddenly made two beep-beep sounds, coming from an ancient device in the lower district. Lu Xiaoyu didn't open his eyes his metal arm added an interface, and a massive amount of data flashed before his eyes. Two pieces of information were particularly eye-catching. I hope your anger has never extinguished. Because I have embarked on a journey. A melodious humming came from the bathroom. Pink bubbles scattered everywhere as Lin Yuyu opened her terminal to check the news. The group chat for the District B10 high-level awakener matching conference was exceptionally lively. People were discussing a newly released A-level mission. Despite the staggering reward, so far, no team had accepted it. Huang Yuan. Isn't that place heavily contaminated with nuclear radiation? Who would be willing to go there? Moreover, there are not many people in District E to begin with. The zombie king is just a zombie king it doesn't come out and doesn't bother anyone. The points are indeed high, but it's not worth it if you have to exchange it with your life. Anyway, our team can't handle the zombie king. Lin Yuyu was about to switch to the system platform to take a look at the mission they were talking about when, accidentally, bubbles blocked her vision. She slipped and fell with a cry, a high-pitched sound echoing as the pain in the tail vertebrae pierced her. Outside the door, Su Cha heard the scream. He quickly rushed in and, upon seeing the alluring scene in front of him, stood stunned on the spot. He pursed his lips, turned his head, closed his eyes in one breath, and covered Lin Yuyu with a bathrobe. He lifted Lin Yuyu princess style with his arms held straight, with no physical contact between them. The distance between them could even accommodate a 120-pound Lin Xiu. Lin Yuyu stared at Su Cha's reddened earlobes and couldn't help but laugh with anger, no, is she some kind of snake or scorpion? To be avoided like this. Supporting her waist, Lin Yuyu limped to the living room. Two seconds later, Su Cha followed, looking a bit lost. Song Kur, wake up, take a look at this mission. Lin Yuyu poked Song Ku's cheek. How many points? Song Ku grumpily turned over. Enough to propel us to the top of the entire alliance. Song Ku instantly perked up, rubbed her sleepy eyes, and jumped off the sofa. So many. Let me see. Two hours ago, the platform released a territory-wide mission, A-level mission, suspected appearance of Zombie King in Huangyuan District E-172, all Awakeners from various districts are requested to kill it. Only fourth-level zombies with advanced intelligence could be called Zombie Kings, like the one they killed in Hymen. Therefore, Zombie Kings are extremely rare. Unexpectedly, 
In just a few months, another zombie king appeared in the lower district. This mission was quite suitable for V587. Song Ku wasn't afraid of low-level radiation, Lu Xiaoyu could pilot the starship to save travel time, and Su Cha was familiar with the environment in District E. With so many points, it was enough for them to climb to the top of the leaderboard. Song Ku decisively clicked to accept the mission, then looked up to remind Zhuang Qinyan. Starting tomorrow, you can get off work by yourself, okay? Chapter 226 Hi, familiar face. Song Kur, let's go, Lin Yuyu urged, leaning against the apartment door with her hands crossed. Her attire today was the same as when they first met, sporting a refreshing sports outfit. Her chestnut-colored voluminous curls were tied into a ponytail, exquisite makeup adorned her face, with plump red lips giving off a hint of her former sweet idol style. Behind her, Su Cha was carrying two tactical bags with a single hand, he wore black t-shirt and long pants, wrapping around his well-defined and smooth muscles. Military boots landed silently, resembling a poised cheetah ready to pounce. Su Xing, with a little yellow duck backpack on his back, fully equipped with sunglasses and a sun hat, was dressed head to toe in designer brands, happily bouncing out the door. Fang Jishu shook his head with a tut-tut sound, and the braid at the back of his head swayed back and forth, luxurious stuff, roll in the zombie pile, and it all has to be thrown away. You're jealous I've got money. Su Xing snorted. Can money make you taller? When Tian Tian was eight years old, she was already taller than you Fang Jishu muttered. Are you really that great? Only one. Seven meters. After spending a long time together, Su Xing had long abandoned the innocent and naive image, exposing the true face of a young lion, teasing Fang Jishu and Song Ku occasionally. Fang Jishu blushed, his neck stiff as he argued, I'm one. Seventy-five. Six meters, rounded up to one. Eight meters. With a swoosh, the two. Five meters tall Lu Xiaoyu's mechanical arm swung by, passing by the arguing duo. Fang Jishu and Su Xing both went silent, this man has such an inexplicable desire to win. After checking her equipment, Song Ku pulled up the zipper of her jacket and turned to look. Zhuang Qinyan leaned against the bar, shirt tucked into his pants, two extraordinary long legs casually crossed, silently watching her. Song Ku was momentarily stunned, suddenly realizing that since she found Zhuang Qinyan in Hua City, this was the first time they were separating for an operation. Yu the melancholic mood had just started to rise, and Zhuang Qinyan unexpectedly broke it. He held his chest in a dramatic manner, tearfully said, As long as you don't cheat outside, I can also endure being alone in an empty room. Song Ku remained expressionless, casually donning a hood with an air of indifference. Let's go. If everything went smoothly, the round trip would only take three or four days. Why make it so awkward? Even her goosebumps were rising. The brilliant sunlight pierced through the clouds as a special starship was setting sail. On the outer surface of the cabin, the words V587 were spray-painted in red and blue, each stroke exuding extravagance. Various types of weapons were graffitied alongside, intertwining in a display of boldness. On a massive billboard, the hotline for ordering Song Clan spiritual weapons played in a continuous loop. Look! It's the exclusive starship of V-587. Are they going on a mission? I heard V-587 took on the commission from the Huangyuan Zombie King. They truly live up to the reputation of our B-10 district. By the way, have you guys bought spiritual weapons? This thing is still on limited edition. I've been squatting in the black market for a week and haven't managed to grab one. Cough, cough, actually, I ordered a plum blossom hairpin, planning to propose to my girlfriend. Damn, when did you get a girlfriend? Amidst the gazes of numerous awakeners, a silver light flashed in the sky, and V-587 departed from the northern base. At the residence of the magistrate, an unmanned floating car slowly came to a stop. As Zhuang Qinyan just arrived at the villa entrance, he heard Yi Zimei's roar. Captain Song, the starship is public property. How could you how could you casually spray paint and modify it, and even put S on it? No, it's not about the division of profits. I can't accept a 3-7 to seven split. 
It's about the bad influence there has never been such a precedent. Whatever was said on the other end, Yi Zime weakly massaged her temples. You want to save money to buy rhenium? To restore fine, fine, if it can be restored, it's fine. No need for your compensation. Zhuang Qingyan's lips curled slightly. Knowing Song Ku as he did, at this moment, she must be tightly holding onto her purse, defending herself with a guilty face. Yearning began to sprout in his heart, but reason forcefully suppressed it once again. Zhuang Qingyan exchanged greetings with the exhausted Yi Zimei. With his information already saved in the access control system, he smoothly entered the front hall. Bai Qi, with both arms covered in numerous steel nails, was engaged in rehabilitation training alone in the courtyard. How's it going? Zhuang Qinyan stopped beside him, his expression indifferent, as if casually inquiring. Not bad, Bai Qi nodded. From the worldly perspective, Bai Qi's fall from S5 to S2 was lamentable, but he had never regretted it. There was no trace of sympathy or pity in Zhuang Qinyan's eyes. Bai Qi seldom spoke, expressing his gratitude to Yi Zheng for adopting him as a war orphan. Due to his personality, he wasn't articulate, only silently appreciating Yi Zheng's kindness. After awakening the S level ability determined resolve during the apocalypse, his first thought was, I want to stand in front of General Yi, be his sword and shield. As for the levels that ordinary people cared about, he had already made psychological preparations and didn't value them so much. In the assassination incident, Bai Qi dropped three levels consecutively, delaying time to ensure Yi Zheng's safety. He genuinely felt that it was not bad. Zhuang Qinyan patted his shoulder. Old Fang is an orthopedic specialist. If you have any problems, you can always find him. Thank you, Bai Qi nodded solemnly. Yi Zheng was practicing calligraphy in the study. Although the aging process couldn't be reversed, his complexion was noticeably healthier, and his spirits were good. In the first phase of Ning Rong's clinical experiment, Yi Zheng's crucial heart underwent short frequency radiation stimulation. Although it didn't reach the level of regeneration yet, cell division promoted self repair, and the surrounding organs were functioning normally. Combined with Yi Zheng's well adapted S level physique, there were currently no adverse reactions. Ning Rong predicted that if the development continued successfully in the subsequent experiments, Yi Zheng could live at least another ten years. Has Xiao Song and the others already set off? Yi Zheng asked without looking up. Yes, they left in the morning, Zhuang Qinyan replied. I asked you to stay there's no resentment in your heart, right? General, your words are too heavy. Originally, Zhuang Qinyan intended to go to the Huangyuan with V587, but it was Yi Zheng who spoke up, requesting him to stay at the northern base. As Yi Zheng dropped his wrist to the pen, the strength penetrated the paper, and he seamlessly wrote two characters with a brushed Tsang Fong hidden blade. Don't misunderstand. I don't mean to separate or coerce you. I just want you to help me with something, Yi Zheng explained. Please speak, General. Zhuang Qingyan's gaze swept over the two characters, his expression impeccable. Yi Zheng put down the pen and looked at the young man in front of him. This person, intelligent enough and rational enough, had a heart too cold, distancing himself from the world, not wanting to get involved in anything. Without a bit of attachment, he might easily drift towards another extreme. A month ago, I asked about your impression of the northern base, Yi Zheng began slowly. At that time, it seemed quite unfavorable. Has your opinion changed now? Both you and District B-10 are very admirable, Zhuang Qinyan replied affirmatively. Yi Zheng circled out from behind the desk, his step steady without the aid of a cane. People like Xiao Song, awakeners with ideals and pursuits, can't be stopped from going out to explore. But when they're tired or in trouble, there must be a place they can return to with peace of mind. Don't you agree? Do you think the northern base can become a home? Yi Zheng asked. Zhuang Qinyan remained silent for a moment, not directly answering. Song Ku really likes it here. Yi Jing smiled. With the recovery of his strength, the dignity he once held over the world was gradually returning. If you stay at the northern base and help the old man with some tasks, rest assured, as long as I'm alive, no one can harm you. 
The eyes behind Zhuang Qingyan's lenses flickered subtly, sensing that Yi Zheng might have guessed something. Yi Zheng tapped a few times on the terminal and pulled up several thick files. These days, I've had the Ling siblings follow you first to talk about official matters. I've been researching the things left by our ancestors, trying to extract some essence to use in practical combat. Zhuang Qinyan glanced at it and immediately recognized ancient civilization military strategies. Oh. You're familiar with it too. Yi Jing expressed surprise. A little, just a little, Zhuang Qinyan modestly replied. Yi Zheng's lips curled with a smile, beckoning him to come closer. Chapter 227 Hi, familiar face. No matter how knowledgeable Zhuang Qinyan was, he was not omnipotent. With Yi Zheng's experience and wisdom, he was willing to impart some knowledge, making it a valuable treasure for anyone. Unconsciously, the two talked extensively throughout the morning, and Zhuang Qinyan gained a lot. After taking a sip of tea, Yi Zheng casually said, Later, go to the city defense department for me and supervise the progress of the reconstruction project. Zhuang Qinyan hesitated to decline, General, it may not be appropriate. What's inappropriate about it? You did it last time, didn't you? Yi Zheng dismissed the concern. Last time, it was because you were injured, and I temporarily took over. It could only be considered a special circumstance. But today, you are perfectly fine Zhuang Qinyan didn't let himself be drawn into it, calmly pointing out the logical flaw. Before Zhuang Qinyan could finish, Yi Zheng suddenly sighed and bent his waist, I'm getting old. Can't withstand any excitement. I've been talking for a whole morning, and my legs can't stand straight. The city defense department is buzzing with machines, oh my heart, I don't know if it can take it. Zhuang Qinyan was speechless. He experienced for the first time what it meant to make one's own hands soft. Helplessly, he responded, understood, General. Yi Zheng instantly straightened his back, his waist no longer sore, and his legs no longer aching. He seemed poised to eat two more bowls of rice for lunch. Zhuang Qinyan. He had no choice but to make a detour to the city defense department. The staff there had long recognized Zhuang Qinyan. When they saw him enter, they quickly stood up and greeted, Good day, Chief Zhuang. On the day of the Crow Tide, he had managed the control panel, displaying dazzling and seamlessly coordinated operations, leaving everyone astonished. Zhuang Qingyan's expression remained cold, I'm not a chief. Just call me Xiao Zhuang. How can that be? The employees, being old-timers, loved to observe expressions and guess intentions. Not everyone was qualified to enter the city defense department. For example, He Chilhong had been the second in command for so many years, and she still couldn't make it. She had worked in the city defense department since graduation. Besides Chen Shuero, who managed for a while, he was the second person in charge. The current young man was the second person, and the employees secretly glanced at Zhuang Qinyan, murmuring to themselves. It seemed that Yi Zheng had already chosen a successor. The employee ingratiatingly approached, Chief Zhuang, I am oldly responsible for the entry and exit registration. Li Pinggang, Zhuang Qinyan accurately called out his name, with a chilly look in his eyes, I personally dislike the title chief. Chief. The meaning behind these two words always reminded him of some detestable faces in the upper echelons of the alliance. Old Li shot himself in the foot and awkwardly said, Then can I call you Mr. Zhuang? After coming out, Zhuang Qinyan politely declined the warmly offered assistance from the staff and boarded an unmanned bus alone. When he approached Ning Rong's laboratory, he suddenly paused. As an S-level awakener, he was exceptionally sensitive to fluctuations in awakened energy. Zhuang Qinyan felt the gaze of two pairs of eyes on him, scrutinizing and assessing. The Ling siblings wouldn't be in position so early, so these two people should have been lying in ambush here. It wasn't directed at him evidently, they didn't know he was an awakener. Relying on their higher A-level status, they audaciously observed him. Pretending not to know, Zhuang Qinyan continued walking forward as if nothing had happened. District E-172, Huang Yuan District E was mostly an ecological landscape area, and Huang Yuan was once a dense primitive jungle with complex terrain and rich biodiversity. 
The footage transmitted by the drone showed that the land in Huangyuan was now scorched, with everything withered. Giant mutated plants were everywhere, and countless faint red figures wandered and howled among the trees. Even inside the starship, one could feel the harsh environment. Members of V-587, including Song Ku, had all changed into protective suits and isolation masks. Although low-level radiation had almost no effect on her, Zhuang Qinyan insisted that she be cautious until the unknown genes were understood. The starship descended slowly, and the emitted airflow bent large patches of vegetation. Due to radiation, various indicators on the control panel kept fluctuating. Look there! Fang Jishu exclaimed. Under their feet, hundreds of zombies were attracted by the intense movement and came rushing towards them. The group took a sharp breath, staring in awe at the scene before them. It wasn't fear, as V-587 was accustomed to storms and challenges it was just that the appearance of the Huangyuan zombies was beyond their expectations. Without exception, this batch of approaching zombies all had elongated limbs, entirely blood-red. They were naked, with almost fused facial features, and thin skin revealed clear veins and organ tissues underneath, resembling the blood zombies in biochemical movies. Song Ko estimated that most of these zombies were at level 2 and 3, with particularly strong attacking desires, and no obvious signs of mutant zombies for the moment. She drew the dual knives from behind and succinctly said, clear the area. The others jumped down one after another. Song Ko swiftly maneuvered through the treetops, leaping over the zombies' heads with the agility of a monkey. With a swift motion, she swung her knife, and blood splattered everywhere. There were no cameras here, and no other awakeners. There was no need to be cautious they could kill freely. Even Lu Xiaoyu no longer hid his strength. His six improved mechanical arms danced wildly like snakes, and the integrated spiritual weapons at their ends swiftly harvested the zombies. Lin Yuyu glanced at him, puzzled, why haven't I seen you use your awakened abilities? Hackers with awakened abilities had offensive capabilities. For example, they had encountered Lu Xinglan, a hacker whose code could materialize entities with various dazzling and versatile moves. Even Lu Xiaoyu occasionally used his abilities in the lower districts. However, in District B, he seemed to have become completely ordinary, never using his abilities and focusing solely on being a professional driver. Lu Xiaoyu snorted arrogantly as he dispatched the approaching zombies, is it necessary? Lin Yuyu was left speechless and rolled her eyes at him, truly a good brother, acting just like Princess Zhuang when showing off. These two seemed like they were sealed by a mysterious force. One couldn't show their face, and the other couldn't use their awakened abilities. Song Ku had a thought. She remembered Zhuang Qinyan mentioning that Lu Xiaoyu's awakened ability ultimately revolved around manipulating data. But any data could be traced back, especially in District B where the terminals were connected to the resident's shallow consciousness. Elite hackers like Lu Xiaoyu were highly guarded against this. Fang Jishu skillfully dissected a zombie's head and suddenly exclaimed, Captain, these zombies don't have crystal cores. V587 looked surprised. The pace of killing monsters slowed, and they checked several bodies, indeed finding no crystal cores. At that moment, a distant and eerie howl echoed through the woods. The zombies, as if summoned, abandoned their attacks and quickly retreated. Song Ku's heart sank the only one capable of commanding the zombie horde was the level 4 zombie king. Judging from the situation, it had given the order to retreat. Suddenly, a few figures dashed out from among the trees and, unnoticed by V-587, dragged the corpses away. If V-587 was surprised just now, now there's a bit of horror. Group consciousness is not a feature ordinary zombies should have. This is this also the order of the zombie king. Lin Yuyu muttered. Song Ku furrowed her brows. Zombies without crystal cores, a zombie king that doesn't show itself what initially seemed like a simple monster-killing mission now appeared more and more mysterious. Ah! A heart-wrenching scream echoed from the front in the jungle. V-587 exchanged glances with the team, all a bit surprised. The previous scream clearly came from a human, implying there was another team aside from them. This kind of challenging and high-risk mission is rarely accepted by teams in District B because of its high permissions and selectivity. 
they would rather take on tasks with higher returns. However, lower-level awakeners from the lower districts, due to the harsh environment, have a stronger desire for points and sometimes risk their lives to come here. Surrounding the district E172, C and D districts are prevalent. If nearby awakeners are not familiar with the zombie king and think it's just a slightly more powerful level 3 zombie, they might underestimate the task. I'll go take a look, Su Cha signaled and blended into the shadows of the trees with his all-black figure. A moment later, he returned safely, his expression becoming grave there are awakeners ahead, around 20 people, with an average level of C. They collided with the retreating zombie horde and got surrounded. Song Ku raised the back of her knife, tilting her head in thought for a second. Let's go check it out. If there's no conflict, they don't mind lending a hand. V587 quickly approached the scene, hiding in the jungle to observe the battle. Various awakened abilities were chaotically released, strong winds howled, dust flew, and fierce thorns shot through the air. Several awakeners stumbled out, their isolation masks showing faint cracks. Song Ku focused her gaze at the center and saw a familiar face. Chapter, 228 Are you sneaking a snack outside? This was a lower-lying canyon, with waterfalls roaring on both sides and water splashing. A group of low-level awakeners were trapped in the middle by zombies, frantically dealing with the situation. Bang, bang! Gunshots echoed around, not only failing to deter the monsters but also infuriating them as they retreated. Ferociously, they turned around to attack, and in an instant, three people were knocked down. Among the more than twenty people, only four didn't look so chaotic. A man in a blue robe manipulated a dozen thorny vines to control the battlefield. Three agile teammates cooperated seamlessly, slashing and killing. Though it wasn't effortless, at least they could protect themselves. Hidden in the jungle, Song Ko also recognized them. They were their old acquaintance from the throne race competition three grandsons and one grandpa. The figure in blue was Captain Duan Muki, and the three members were Xiao Qin, Fan Peng, and Xiong Mingcheng. V587 had dealt with them a few times, and Zhuang Qingyan's original words were, the whole team is more pragmatic, but Duan Muki is relatively upright. Song Ku's impression of three grandsons and one grandpa was not bad, and in the end, they were the ones who attracted these zombies. After a moment of contemplation, she signaled her teammates to assist. Don't try to trap me with love let me be trapped in the bone-chilling swamp. Lin Yuyu's singing voice began, echoing ethereally in the forest. The ground in the canyon collapsed suddenly, and the zombies involuntarily fell in. No need for verbal communication, Su Xing's blizzard followed closely. Under the dual control of two A-levels, the movements of the monster group were forced to slow down. Their blood-red appearance was wrapped in glistening frost, like a bunch of twisted candied haws. Song Ku and Su Cha jumped into the battlefield, dual blades striking down. Luxuriant giant vegetation collapsed with a roar, carving deep gullies between the swamp and the flat ground. Run behind me! She shouted. The trapped individuals awakened like from a dream, crawling and scrambling out of the immobile zombie group. Su Cha swiftly cut through the mess, chopping off the tangled roots and branches, piling up numerous obstacles in the gullies. When the swamp and frost lost their effectiveness, seeing the prey had escaped, the zombies lost interest and quickly disappeared into the depths of the jungle. Song Kuk crouched on the huge treetop, watching the backs of the zombies, lost in thought. Long and slender limbs, agile movements, completely devoid of the stiffness of ordinary zombies, but more like humans. She puffed her cheeks, the harder she thought, the more confused she became. No, she was about to grow a brain. If Xuang Qin Yen were here, it would be great. He was so smart he would definitely analyze everything immediately. Song Ku lightly jumped down, and as she turned around, Duan Muki stared at her intently. It's you. Thanks for helping. You're welcome. Song Kook crossed her hands and sheathed her blades with a casual and graceful move. Time passed, things changed, and people changed. Duan Muki's mood was particularly complex. A year ago, they were evenly matched competitors. Later, V587 won the championship and went to District B. 
unexpectedly, when they met again, everything was different. Like an insurmountable barrier, he and his teammates were trapped, but Song could effortlessly force the zombies back. Even though he knew it was wishful thinking, Duan Miyuki couldn't help but sigh, if they had been the ones who won back then. The rescued Awakeners gathered around, expressing their gratitude with lingering fear. Heroes, thank you. Hey. You guys look familiar. Uncle, we're V587. Have you heard of us? Su Xing replied with a smiling squint. V587. Holy shit, the one who assassinated the Mu City Magistrate. I know, the champion of the Ferrara Throne Race competition. I have a friend in District B who said V587 is famous, able to kill even level 6 ferocious beasts. Big brother, are you really not looking at the zombie guide and just making things up? Ferocious beasts are at most level 5. The person who was exposed blushed, I made a mistake, I made a mistake. With Xuan Qinyan absent, Fang Jishu, who looked kind, took the initiative to assume diplomatic responsibilities. He took out several new isolation masks and handed them to the injured. Why are you here in the Huangyuan? He asked. To take on that A-level commission. Maybe we'll get lucky and kill the zombie king. We're not after the zombie king, just hoping to get some loot. The group spoke in a lively manner. Fang Jishu sighed, took the opportunity to enlighten them about the risks of the mission. The survivors, who had just experienced an attack, were already hesitant. After his introduction about the zombie king and showing past videos, their faces turned pale. They unanimously declared that the A-level commission wasn't suitable for them, and their lives were more important. Fortunately, their location was on the outskirts of the jungle, and they could still leave in time. After a while, the crowd dispersed, leaving only Duan Muki and the other three. Aren't you guys leaving? Song Ko asked, showing a hint of surprise. Duan Muki shook his head, not leaving, still a few points short. Song Ko asked, how many points do you need? Duan Muki replied, a little over 40,000. Lu Xiaoyu added quietly, 40,000 points, equivalent to 1200 level 2 zombies or 200 level 3 zombies. Calculating based on regular monster killing tasks, reaching 40,000 points seemed distant. It could only be achieved quickly through task rewards. So, despite knowing the immense danger, three grandsons and one grandpa did not hesitate to come to the Huang Yuan after receiving the All Area Commission. Ever since Song Ku arrived at Ferrara, this team had been tirelessly climbing the rankings day and night. After a year, their conviction remained unwavering. Even though gaining points in the lower level districts was more challenging, Duan Muki and his team were just a step away from the 500,000 threshold to District B. After careful consideration, Song Ku extended an invitation, when you have enough points, why don't you come to the northern base? Fan Peng, with a round face and a simple appearance, couldn't help but say, as long as you're an awakener, who wouldn't want to go to the northern base. But B10 is the most competitive among the popular districts. Our strength isn't outstanding, and Aki said the chances of getting selected are slim. Xiao Chen, with a determined face, patted Fan Peng on the shoulder to console him, Aki is considering Miao Ying or Baishan, and they're not bad choices. Duan Muki nodded, these two areas have relaxed their B-level audits until autumn. We must accumulate enough points by then. All members of three grandsons and one grandpa were at B-level, with Duan Muki being the highest at B8, and the others ranging from B5 to B7. In the northern base, their capabilities might not stand out, especially considering the overcrowded situation in Xinjiang City. Even if they were selected, they would have to wait in line for a long time. Song Ku turned to exchange glances with her teammates. Everyone more or less guessed what Captain Song wanted to do and nodded silently to show their agreement. To join the northern base, there was another way a kind of internal recommendation. The success rate would be significantly higher, just like when Yin Xiao invited V587. However, the recommending person had to guarantee the recommended person for five years. Unless the relationship was extremely close or the person had an impeccable character, obtaining a recommendation letter was as difficult as reaching the sky. If you really want to come, I'll write a recommendation letter for you, Song Ku assured them, patting her chest. 
The throne race competition had intense clashes, yet three grandsons and one grandpa never attacked V587. Even Zhuang Qinyan praised Duan Muki for having a decent character. The three others also acted with camaraderie Xiao Chen was steady, Fan Peng was simple, and Xiong Mingcheng, the youngest, had a cheerful personality. Writing a recommendation letter for them wasn't a big deal, but she was sure she wouldn't do a good job. She decided to ask Zhuang Qinyan to do it later. Really? Fan Peng exclaimed, his eyes gleaming with excitement. It looks like you guys are doing well. Average, just average, Song Ke waved modestly, then added proudly, except for being the top on the northern base rankings. Duan Muki and his three companions. With this newfound friendship, the two teams quickly formed an alliance and proceeded together. You guys are too bold, just four people daring to take on an A-level commission. Lin Yu Yu casually mentioned on the way. Of course not, we're not stupid. We're not here to throw our lives away. Aki has a backup plan. Xiong Mingqing's political savvy wasn't that deep. He considered them as close friends, and he inadvertently spilled the secret, realizing afterward, sorry Aki, can I say this? Duan Muki sighed. You've already said everything. If the other side had malicious intentions, they could easily kill them, and they wouldn't stand a chance. However Duan Muki glanced at Song Ku's group. Besides curiosity, there was no greedy expression on their faces. He didn't hide anything and took out a device similar to a camping kerosene lamp. This is called a random anchor device. I exchanged it from an A6 level anchor type awakener. After using it, it can randomly teleport up to four people to a specific location, within a range of 10 kilometers. Random teleportation within 10 kilometers was an excellent escape tool. No wonder three grandsons and one grandpa dared to come to the Huangyuan. Good stuff. Any usage restrictions? Song Ku was quite interested. No, but each activation requires adding fuel, Duan Muki pointed to a small groove on top of the lamp, one level 4 crystal per use. Wow! Using a level 4 crystal every time, that's quite extravagant. Song Ku's face showed a hint of pain. Even if someone gave her this, she wouldn't be willing to use it. Xiao Chen looked serious, we only have two level 4 crystals and plan to use it only once. Their original plan was to use the random anchor device to escape if they encountered danger, and having a second crystal was just a precaution. Lu Xiaoyu, on the other hand, showed great curiosity about the random anchor device and asked Duan Muki to borrow it for studying for a while. Chapter 229 are you sneaking a snack outside? The desolate jungle of Huang Yuan was almost silent, with no birds, no beasts, and even the chirping of insects was sparse. Only the lush mutated plants covered the sky, and after a whole day of searching, Song Ku and the others found nothing. Not to mention the zombie king, even the previously bloodred zombies seemed to have collectively disappeared. Xiong Mingcheng couldn't help muttering, Damn, where did all the zombies go? Duan Muqi thought of something, it's very similar to the Mirror Lake incident. He was referring to the first round of the throne race, finding the flag, where the situation was also like this, with no sign of zombies anywhere. But I'm sure this time it's definitely not the city lord's doing, Chiong Mingqing joked. Ilya? Song Ku casually asked, realizing he hadn't heard any news about the super AI for some time. Yeah, it seems like he went on a long journey, and now Ferrara is governed by other AIs taking turns. On a journey? Song Ku suddenly remembered the time when Ilya insisted on going to Tongwan with them. It seems that this super AI, after acquiring a physical form, has become more and more independent in its actions. Lu Xiaoyu's wheelchair passed by the talking group smoothly, his tea-colored eyes blinking lightly, his expression unchanged. It was almost seven o'clock, the narrow sky getting darker. Song Ku and the others gained nothing, and their points did not increase at all. In the end, they found an open space to camp and decided to make do for the night. Sister, there are tents over there. Su Xing ran down the hill to report. Song Ku went over to take a look and indeed found many messy tents on the dried riverbed covered with mud and moss. Roughly counting, there were about a hundred tents, resembling a medium-sized team. 
Everyone looked at each other in surprise. Has someone else been to this radiation-prone area? Su Cha jumped down to inspect and returned after a moment, saying in a deep voice, no signs of fire, the tents were not set up temporarily, it's been a while. He picked up a piece of wood stake with numerous claw marks, from the construction method, it doesn't look like normal humans. If it were humans with wilderness survival experience, they would set up tents in a flat and open windward place. They wouldn't choose a dried riverbed with the risk of rolling stones in nearby canyons. Moreover, the openings faced in all directions without a scientific layout, seemingly just to satisfy the habit of living in groups. Not like normal humans. Huh, it can't possibly be zombies, right? Xiong Mingqing scratched his head and made a dark joke. Unfortunately, no one laughed. Oh my god. It can't be, right? Xiong Mingqing stared in astonishment. Did zombies really set up these tents? That night, a blazing campfire lit up the center of the camp, illuminating the camouflage tents. Ghostly shadows lurked in the distant dark woods, and the wind whispered. Everyone was solemn, taking turns on night watch. In the end, the night passed without any incidents. Oh, there was something the sound of knocking and banging coming from Lu Xiaoyu's tent for most of the night. It finally quieted down in the early morning. The pale-faced young man emerged and slipped into Song Ku's tent next door. They stayed there for several hours, only appearing together at dawn. When Lu Xiaoyu entered, it was Fan Peng and Duan Muqi on night watch. Fan Peng, an honest person, didn't gossip behind their backs despite witnessing the whole thing. He just had a sudden realization about their relationship. Then, he asked in confusion, Aki, I remember there were two people in wheelchairs among them. Tuan Mu Chi nodded uncertainly, they didn't mention them. Maybe they sacrificed. In the apocalypse, farewells were often commonplace, and Fan Peng made a few remarks without dwelling on it. Early the next day, Song Ku gathered everyone and issued new instructions, continue moving forward. If you encounter zombies, don't attack. Notify Lu Xiaoyu first. Today, their luck seemed better than yesterday. By noon, both Su Cha and Xiao Chen had found wandering zombies. Lu Xiaoyu spread open his palms, and two mechanical mosquitoes slowly took off, approaching the targets under his control. A faint mechanical sound arose as the lifelike mosquitoes extended their thin proboscises, biting into the translucent skin of the unfortunate zombies. The two unlucky ones paused for a second, looked around in confusion, finding nothing unusual, and lowered their heads again. After wandering around the area, they disappeared again before nightfall. What are they doing? Tuan Mu Chi asked. Locators, with chips inside, Song Ku said mysteriously. It was an invention they had come up with during a sleepless night, with Lu Xiaoyu handling the practical aspects while she proposed the mosquito-shaped design. Not long after, the moving positions of the two zombies appeared on Lu Xiaoyu's screen. We suspect that these zombies have a tendency to gather, Song Ku explained seriously. Various signs, such as dragging away the bodies of their kind after death or building tents, indicated that Huan Yu and zombies had a clear sense of communal living. And, they are consciously avoiding humans. After Song Ku finished speaking, she paused for a moment. She hadn't deliberately connected the clues, but when these features were put together why did it feel a bit familiar? It wasn't until nightfall that the two moving zombies finally stopped, surprisingly ending up in the same location. The two teams stealthily navigated through the silent jungle, eventually discovering that the location was a vast, open valley. Surrounding them was pitch darkness with no light at all, and the group put on night vision goggles. What they saw was an intense green, faces of zombies with indistinct features, countless thin limbs gathered together, forming an endless sea of corpses. Looking from a distance, it seemed like moving ghostly shadows, and the number was impossible to count. In the center of the zombie sea, there was a distinctively different zombie. Its size was considerably larger than its surrounding counterparts, and although its facial features were uneven, there were clear contours. Judging from its body curves, it appeared to be a female in its past life. When the other zombies returned, each one would approach it closely, affectionately nuzzling against it before running away in different directions. 
It was as if the returning children couldn't wait to be back in their mother's embrace. What was even more shocking was that there were many small zombies in the valley, some even shorter than Su Xing. They were protected by adult zombies, and behind them were tents similar to those seen on the dried riverbed. Song Ku silently stared at the leading female zombie, gradually understanding. It seemed like this was the zombie king of Huang Yuan. Are these really zombies? Fan Peng's voice trembled. The stereotypical image of zombies in the human mind is fierce, grim, constantly craving flesh and blood, irrational monsters. However, the peaceful coexistence of the zombie group before them, an unprecedented scene of tranquility, completely overturned their preconceptions. If this news got out, it would undoubtedly shock the world. Song Ku sighed silently, a certain intuition gradually becoming a reality, they are not zombies they are the fallen. It wasn't simply zombies without crystals. Due to radiation effects, the humans here didn't mutate into zombies for some unknown reason. Instead, they became a third species, rejected by both humans and zombies the fallen. Similar to the braided head and dirty chin that V587 had encountered before, but that time there were only a few scattered individuals, unlike now. The entire Huang Yuan was the headquarters of the fallen. Due to the shock, Fan Peng became distracted for a moment, breaking a dry branch underfoot, which rolled down the valley. It was a very faint sound, and considering the hundred meter distance, it shouldn't have been noticed. However, the zombie king in the valley suddenly lifted its head, and its crimson eyes stared straight towards the high ground, emitting a sharp, long howl. Oh no! Song Ku thought to herself. Tens of thousands of agile fallen rushed over, swarming like an endless army of the living dead. In a matter of moments, they surrounded Song Ku and the others, turning them into an isolated island in the sea of zombies. Northern Base Zhuang Qinyan didn't see Ning Rong until the next day. He had locked himself in the radiation laboratory for a whole day and night. Despite looking extremely tired, his eyes were bright. As soon as he saw Zhuang Qinyan, he couldn't wait to take off the entire set of isolation suits, I was just looking for you about the second phase of the clinical plan. Zhuang Qinyan raised his hand to stop him, Dr. Ning, how did you withdraw from the Eternal Life Project? Ning Rong was taken aback, just a normal resignation. And all permissions were revoked. Otherwise, my research wouldn't be so difficult. But I didn't sign any contracts to sell myself. You know, when old Zhuang invited me to join, it was still early, and there was no such thing. If I wanted to leave, they had no reason to stop me. Zhuang Qinyan took off his gold-rimmed glasses, rubbed his forehead, so, you voluntarily resigned, and it wasn't He Chiohong who recruited you? Of course not. I signed a confidentiality agreement, the kind drafted by the Awakener Department. She didn't know the details of my research. Ning Rong honestly confessed, after regaining my freedom, due to financial constraints, I looked for a new place for almost half a year. Originally, I was thinking of going to Baishan. Before applying for an independent laboratory, I happened to see the recruitment notice from the northern base. I thought, experimenting where they pay so generously, what's the difference, right? I contacted He Chiohong's secretary at that time, what was her name Yi something May. Zhuang Qinyan tapped his fingertips on the desktop, his eyes sinking into contemplation. Is there a problem? Ning Rong asked in confusion. Zhuang Qinyan sighed softly, Dr. Ning, you're quite old, why are you still so naive? Ning Rong, you also know I'm quite old, and now I'm being educated by this younger generation. Although He Chiohong's personality was not great, she had always been cautious in her actions, with the necessary sense of vigilance. In the later stages of the Eternal Life Project, the entire project team split into several factions, and the research progress came to a standstill. Many senior scientists were poached by various regions. Zhuang Qinyan originally thought that Ning Rong was also in this situation. If He Chilhong had invited him on behalf of the northern base, she would surely have cleared any hidden dangers behind Ning Rong. As a result, Ning Rong turned out to be a freelance scholar who actively offered himself, even idling for half a year. So there was a significant possibility that He Chilhong did not realize Ning Rong's importance. She was probably unaware that he was once a core member of the Eternal Life Project. 
she likely considered him just a renowned biologist. Hence, He Chilhong arranged awakener guards for the laboratory to ensure Ning Rong's safety but didn't assign anyone to track him. This led to several meetings between him and Ning Rong without any apparent anomalies. You've been monitored, Shuang Qinyan stood straight, speaking in a cold tone. Let's not meet again in the future, Zhuang Qingyan's demeanor was icy. Don't drag me down. His assistant, munching on a piece of bread, walked past, holding a transparent screen, and dropped everything upon hearing Zhuang Qingyan's scumbag remarks. Zhuang Qingyan added, stay in the laboratory. If there's anything, contact me online. Muttering, Ning Rong said, I didn't plan to go out. It's you who insisted on calling me. Zhuang Qingyan's eyes flickered as he quickly recalled their few meetings. The first time was in this laboratory, amidst chaos, exchanging a few words in haste. Later, they communicated through terminals. The second time was in Qinzhan City, where Ning Rong came and left alone. The third time. Ding Ding. The temporary terminal, with only communication functions enabled, made a beeping sound, interrupting Zhuang Qingyan's thoughts. He glanced down at the incoming call, a gentle smile appearing in his eyes. Song Kiki, has the mission been completed? Are you coming back tomorrow? Uh, about that song Ku's voice sounded a bit uneasy. It's just it might take a little longer. Zhuang Qingyan furrowed his brow. How much longer? Isn't it three days as agreed? How long will it take? Song Ku seemed to be consulting someone nearby. Two or three unfamiliar male voices followed, discussing, District C-26, Fennec quite far. If everything goes smoothly, it'll take around ten days round trip. Ten days, Song Ku felt a bit flustered. I promise, as soon as possible. Zhuang Qingyan's sharp eyebrows slowly lifted, and he casually asked, Who is talking? Are you sneaking a snack outside? Song Ku. Song Ku was shocked. No, no. Chapter, 230. Kill or Relocate. The sound of the broken dry branches being stepped on was extremely subtle, but the zombie king's senses seemed unusually sharp, instantly locking onto Fan Peng's hiding place. The piercing howl tore through the night sky, and through night vision goggles, countless living dead rushed towards them. The hills were filled with ghostly green shadows, and the terrifying number was enough to engulf Song Ku and the others in a matter of seconds. Lu Xiaoyu reacted the fastest. Six mechanical arms rotated and extended, sweeping away the first wave. Go! Song Ku took the lead, Su Cha guarded the rear, and the others swiftly retreated. However, as they turned to run, their footsteps suddenly stopped. The movements of these zombies were incredibly fast, and they had already surrounded them from behind. No way to retreat. Duanmu raised both hands, and dozens of thick thorns emerged from the ground, not attacking the horde of zombies from all directions, but instead enveloping the group, forming a huge cocoon, temporarily isolating them from external attacks. The slender hands and feet of the zombies kept hitting, angrily tearing and pulling. After a while, dents appeared on the surface of the cocoon. No, there are too many, Aki cannot hold them alone. Xiao Chen roared. Just as he spoke, bang! A bloody hand reached in, wildly grabbing left and right, quickly digging out a bowl-sized hole. Song Ku looked through the faint crack and locked eyes with the zombie king on high ground. Hey! Can we sit down and talk? Song Ku's gaze flickered. Based on past experience, fallen ones had a clear consciousness and could communicate with humans. We mean no harm. Lin Yuyu also shouted, please, give us a chance. The zombie king stared at Song Ku, standing straight at nearly three meters tall, thin and narrow, like a lonely street lamp. Its eyes were full of vigilance and hostility, completely ignoring their negotiation requests, emitting a few short and sharp screams, making the zombie horde even more restless, desperately destroying the thorns. No, there's no way to communicate. Song Ku sighed, it seemed that the grudge between this zombie king and humans was deep. Bang! Duanmu Kikun bare the pressure, and the cocoon shattered into pieces. The group was exposed under the night sky. Song Ku reluctantly drew his sword. Prepare for battle. 
Su Xing used his ability while moving around, rolling in the mud several times. His famous brand sunglasses and sun hat were long gone. Seeing Fang Zhishu's leg being grabbed by a zombie and falling to the ground, he rarely didn't laugh at him, bravely rushing over and using an ice wall to block the fatal blow. The obstructed zombie's facial features twisted together, the expression blurry, emitting hoarse howls from its throat. Ah! Su Xing was stunned for a moment, as if guided by some inexplicable force, he inexplicably imitated the zombie's appearance, making some strange sounds from his throat. Due to the application of his awakened energy, his clear voice echoed in the dim valley for a long time. Song Ku sensed that something was wrong and quickly turned her head, Xiao Xing, what are you? She wanted to say, didn't you cure your fear of zombies a long time ago? Why are you making such weird noises? And why use awakened energy? Isn't that more stimulating to the zombies? But the next moment, the scene in front of her left her completely speechless. As if a spell of stillness had fallen, all the zombies, as if by agreement, stopped attacking, showing a hint of confusion in their movements. Su Xing, with a dirty face, persistently continued to shout at the zombies, Ah ow! Song Ku! The horde of zombies suddenly woke up, and once again approached. Several small creatures hid behind, showing their teeth, not fierce, but rather cute. Su Xing scratched his head and muttered with lack of confidence, did I get it wrong? He changed his way of shouting, Ah! Ah ah! Song Ku was baffled. Lin Yu Yu and the others also looked at each other. After a moment of realization, they suddenly understood. Could this be the language of the fallen? After all, Su Xing had mastered the strange communication technique with zombies. The spacious valley fell into complete silence. The zombie king propped itself up with both hands, lightly jumping onto a rock. The strange horde respectfully made way for it, and it landed silently. Slowly approaching Su Xing, its slender figure cast a long shadow, completely covering the petite Su Xing. Duan Mu Qi and the other three's expressions changed dramatically, just about to defend themselves, but Song Ku stopped them. She gripped her twin blades, her gaze fixed on the zombie king, wanting to see what it was going to do. The zombie king circled Su Xing, suddenly leaned its head close, and the uneven facial features pressed against him. It gently sniffed, shook its head, lifted its foot to observe for a second round, looking somewhat uncertain. Su Xing pressed his hands against the seams of his pants, nervously frozen, and everyone held their breath. After a few seconds, Su Xing gathered courage and tentatively repeated, Ah ah. The zombie king's hesitant movements abruptly stopped, and then a tearing sound rang out, Who are you? Damn! The zombie can talk. The expressions on everyone's faces were diverse, revealing their individual thoughts. Su Xing struggled to recall and awkwardly called two more times. This was what Braided Head taught him before they parted in High Men. It roughly meant friend. Have you seen our kind? The zombie king's every utterance was difficult, with lips barely visible, sounding more like it came from the abdomen. Su Xing shook his head first, then hesitated and nodded. Did braided head count as one of their kind? But braided head looked much better than the zombie in front of him, more human in appearance. However, since they could understand what braided head taught him, they should count. Explaining the past with braided head would be too complicated for Su Xing, who was just starting to learn zombie language. So, he could only switch to human language and enthusiastically recounted the story, using gestures to praise braided head and her brother's handsome appearance, particularly the dirty chin. V587 remained calm, as if this situation was nothing unusual. Three grandsons and one grandpa was in shock, and Duan Mu Qi's eyelids twitched. He had almost thought he was on the brink of death just now. He could never have imagined that things would take such a turn, with this kid chatting with zombies. Who would believe it if word got out? After Su Xing finished speaking, he looked expectantly at the zombie king. Leave don't appear again. The zombie king fell silent for a moment, issuing a vague warning. It turned around, uttered a few indistinct sounds, and the surrounding zombie horde shifted, creating a narrow passage. Including Song Ku, everyone displayed surprise. The zombie king wasn't planning to attack. Just letting them go like this. 
Under numerous watchful eyes, the group cautiously left the valley. It wasn't until they had walked a considerable distance, confirmed that the zombie horde didn't follow, that Fang Jishu rubbed Su Xing's furry head with a lingering fear, stinky kid, not bad, mastering a foreign language. This time, thanks to you, Xiao Xing. Song Ku also didn't hesitate to praise. Hee <laughs> hee. Su Xing proudly straightened his chest. The group found another open space, set up a campfire, and rested. Song Ku looked at everyone and took the initiative to speak. As for whether to continue the commission, let's vote by raising our hands. Su Xing spoke first, I object. Ada is not a bad guy. Lin Yu Yu puzzledly exclaimed, Who is Ada? Ada is the zombie king, Su Xing said matter of factly. You're really casual, giving people nicknames. Lin Yu Yu felt speechless. I also vote against it because of Lin Xiu. I now unconditionally accept the diversity of intelligent species. I can't treat the fallen ones as just zombies. Su Cha glanced at her and succinctly said, I'm with you. Lu Xiaoyu shrugged indifferently, abstain. Fang Jishu, having treated his wounds, lowered his pants, I'm with Xiao Xing. V587 had a unanimous opinion. It was just an A-level commission, even if they couldn't complete it, there were other ways to climb the rankings. When it came to three grandsons and one grandpa, conflicting opinions arose. Xiao Chen's tone was low, I support continuing the commission. Sorry, but the points are too important to us. Fan Peng and Xiong Mingqing expressed, we'll listen to Aki. Duan Mu Qi looked at Song Ku, even if I vote in favor, it won't change the final result, right? Currently, the votes were tied at 4 to 4. Lu Xiaoyu made a disapproving sound, succumbing to his old habit of disliking losing, change my vote, I'm voting against. 4 to 5, this time they won, right? Chapter 231 Kill or Relocate However, Duan Mu Qi knew that the actual vote count didn't matter. The real decision maker was Song Ku because their team didn't have the ability to kill the zombie king. Yes, Song Ku nodded solemnly, I've decided to abandon the commission. When it gets light, we'll leave. This A-level commission was completely different from what she had originally expected. They could kill the zombie king, but the one they just encountered was clearly the leader of the fallen from Huang Yuan, likely without crystal in its brain, not really considered a zombie. Moreover, they were let go. Understood, Duan Mu Qi sighed, I didn't have much hope to begin with. So, let's give up. Aki Xiao Chen looked at him with concern. Duan Mu Qi held Xiao Chen's shoulder, his gaze firm, believe me, we'll think of another way. We'll definitely earn enough points. The atmosphere fell silent. Suddenly, Song Ku spoke, I have a question. Why is the mission description about the zombie king? She pulled out the commission description, which clearly stated, a suspected appearance of a zombie king in Huang Yuan. Can the system make a mistake? She asked. No, Lu Xiaoyu said confidently. The commission system was jointly managed by the artificial intelligence group in District B. Humans might make mistakes, and a single computer might have a chance of error, but dozens or hundreds of super AIs working together would not make such a basic mistake. Um, could there be another zombie king in the Huang Yuan? Fan Peng asked whimsically. Not very likely, Duan Mu Qi shook his head slowly. From the layout of the valley, these zombies live in tribal form, keeping to themselves. If there really is another zombie king, there would be a deadly battle between them until one survives. Duan Mu Qi paused at this point. Actually, I've been wanting to ask since earlier what do you mean by fallen that you mentioned? Song Ko was startled and suddenly remembered that the Alliance had not publicly acknowledged the existence of the Fallen. Their information came from Zhuang Qinyan, an extraordinary bug. So, the platform's definition of a suspected zombie king seemed somewhat understandable. The articulate Lin Yuyu explained the difference between the Fallen and zombies to Duan Mu Qi and the others. Song Ko listened quietly, still feeling strange inside. Why not use special zombie or mutant zombie? Why insist on calling it a zombie king? This artificially raised the threshold and excluded many qualified teams, didn't it? 
The Awakeners in District B all found the mission a thankless task, but V-587, strong and experienced, was willing to take on this challenging task. She was just about to ask her companions when she turned her head and saw Lu Xiaoyu focused on the screen. What are you looking at? Song Ku leaned over to Lu Xiaoyu. When Su Xing was negotiating, I installed a few mobile cameras, Lu Xiaoyu replied. On the screen, several zombies huddled together, trembling incessantly. Their skin was as thin as paper, and their grotesque internal organs were exposed. Even without sound, one could hear the painful wails. In just a few minutes, as if a balloon had been popped, the bodies of these zombies turned into a pool of pus and blood before everyone's eyes. The fallen leader called Ada, along with other zombies, sat together, silently watching the death of their kind. How could this happen? Lin Yuyu exclaimed. Probably because the radiation in Huang Yuan is too high, Fang Jishu, with a medical background, pointed to his isolation mask. Even though the fallen can endure stronger radiation than humans, there's a limit. If it exceeds that limit and the exposure time is too long, it will inevitably cause catastrophic damage to their bodies. Why don't they leave then? Fan Peng asked in confusion. Xiong Mingqing muttered to himself, it's not that easy. Leaving would only make it worse, right? At least here in Huang Yuan, no one usually comes in, but outside, the attitude towards zombies is merciless. Indeed, for the fallen, the most suitable living environment was in remote areas away from human activity. Even though the radiation in Huang Yuan was intense, outside was the territory of humans, with no place for them to belong. So, they chose to stay here quietly, waiting for death. Song Ku looked through the screen at the leader, its slender arms embracing a few small peers, a fleeting expression of sadness on its profile. When the sky was faintly bright, Cheong Mingqing's exclamation shattered the tranquility. Aki, Captain Song, quickly look, the commission has been updated. Song Ku, inside the tent, sat up and quickly opened the terminal to confirm. Indeed, the content of that A-level commission had changed. A-level commission, please kill or relocate the special zombies in Huangyuan District E-172. Remaining total, 13,299. Depending on different choices, different branches appeared below. Song Ko clicked on the relocation option, alternative location, Fennec District C-26. She thought for a moment, not fully understanding the intricacies, and decisively lifted the tent flap, did you all receive the message? Members of V-587 nodded, having encountered commission changes before, such as the side mission in the elderly people's nation or the city defense mission when the northern base upgraded from B to A. So, they were not too surprised. Only Lu Xiaoyu seemed thoughtful, isn't it a coincidence? Captain just decided to leave, and the commission changes? Not a coincidence, it was me, Duan Mu Chi admitted candidly. I organized the information last night, uploaded it to the system, hoping to see if there's any turning point. The platform could issue private commissions, and it could also collect information provided by the commission recipients, automatically making analysis and adjustments. Lu Xiaoyu glanced at Duan Mu Chi, non-committal, still frowning and staring at the platform page, tapping his fingertips incessantly. Now that the commission has changed, will you still do it? Duan Mu Chi took a deep breath, looking hopefully at Song Ku. The change from killing to relocating offered two different completion methods. The latter seemed simpler, but Fennec's location was near the eastern coast. Leading tens of thousands of fallen, resembling zombies, through almost half of the Alliance territory wasn't that too exaggerated? Song Ku hesitated. That's how it is, Song Ku's explanation came through the terminal, short of breath. Zhuang Qinyan slightly lowered his eyes, silent. You're not speaking, do you object? Song Ku asked cautiously. No, Zhuang Qinyan paused, I'm thinking about Fennec. Why was Fennec specifically chosen as the alternative location? Compared to its original name, it had another prominent title in the alliance. Lozen District B-25 and Fennec District C-26 were collectively known as the Lok region. It was once prosperous, but 15 years ago, a severe nuclear explosion occurred, forcing the area to be abandoned due to persistent radiation. It became an ignored ghost district. 
transferring the fallen from Huanyuan to Fennec seemed reasonable. The radiation in Fennec had diluted over fifteen years, still unsuitable for human habitation but within the fallen's tolerance range. Compared to Huangyuan, it was practically paradise. But for Zhuang Qinyan, Fennec held special significance. It was where the Fire Seed Project's laboratory was located, where Ming Ji escaped with LAK-0017, and more importantly it should be a secret forever buried. Zhuang Qinyan regained his composure inside helplessly, Song Ku, how do you plan to move tens of thousands of zombies? Will you use a starship with V-587's name printed on it to lead the way and then use a loudspeaker to announce, zombies passing through, bystanders please disperse. Little ancestor, do you want to make a spectacle throughout the entire alliance? Song Ku completely missed the sarcasm in his words and sincerely agreed, great idea. With V-587 leading the way, wouldn't that avoid conflicts? Zhuang Qinyan was truly impressive he quickly resolved the issue that had been bothering her. Zhuang Qinyan choked for a moment. He was defeated by Song Ku's thought process. He loosened his collar with one hand to catch his breath, have you asked them? Are they willing to go with you? What Song Ku wanted to do couldn't be described as anything less than mind-blowing. If someone with a weaker ability, like an owl or something, tried it, they wouldn't be able to handle it. Not yet. I'll negotiate with them later, Song Ku replied. Forget it. Regardless of whether the negotiations succeed or not, wait for me in the same spot. You're coming. Song Ku's eyes sparkled. Yeah, Chuan Qin Yen smiled, if I don't, you might pierce through the sky. Where did you get that idea? I'm consulting everyone's opinions, it's very fair, okay anyway, I can handle it with my ability. Yes, yes, you can handle it with your ability. It's my fault for being useless. I missed you, Zhuang Qinyan interrupted her, the depth of his peach blossom eyes curved with longing. Song Ku, I missed you. I'm coming to find you. The chirping sparrows suddenly fell silent. After a while, Song Ku stammered, looking around and changing the subject, Oh, um, I'll go negotiate with Ada. Click. The terminal was hung up. Song Ku stood still for two seconds, slowly raised her hands, and covered her cheeks. So hot. Chapter, 232. History's Strongest Zombie Tide is Coming. Before setting off for Huang Yuan, Zhuang Qinyan paid a visit to the official residence of the magistrate and had a closed-door conversation with Yi Zheng for a long time. No one knew what they talked about, but in the end, Yi Zheng nodded and granted a few days off to this new appointee who was the subject of many rumors. A silver-white starship zoomed by, with the dark night outside the porthole. In the cabin, under the bright yellow reading light, Zhuang Qinyan's profile looked like a meticulously crafted perfect work of art. He was focused, fingers moving non-stop, and in his hands was a small precision instrument connected to a light screen, with the top bearing the logo of Qinlan, resembling a white egg. This was retrieved from Wu Yuru's spatial necklace, a basic model, not connected to the internet, with average functionality, but excellent confidentiality that could only be unlocked with Qinglan's internal special methods. Ling Yen sat across from him, staring at him for a long time, and took the initiative to speak, are you sure you just need to deliver it to Huang Yuan? Ling Yu, after checking the autopilot route, sat down next to his twin brother and tossed him a bottle of special drink. Then, she glanced at Zhuang Qinyan, we don't have any missions recently. For safety reasons, we can continue to protect you. Although they were not clear about the abilities of the man in front of them, allowing two S6, level top-tier personal guards showed that it was Yi Zheng's direct order, so they had to be extremely attentive in carrying it out. No need, Zhuang Qinyan didn't look up, his thin lips curved slightly, the safest place in the world is by Song Ku's side. The Ling siblings, caught off guard by this unexpected statement, exchanged glances. Ling Yu, feeling uncomfortable, touched the chicken skin bumps on her arm. She was straightforward and said what was on her mind, handsome guy, with your, um, relationship with Song Ku, can you say a few good words for us? Anyway, that kidnapping was just following orders. My brother and I don't want to be on bad terms with her. As the crisis at the northern base came to an end, the reputation of V-587 soared. 
Now, the Ling siblings' visits to the Awakener department were particularly awkward, but they were not affiliated with He Chiohong. They had merely naturalized and wanted to integrate quickly, following the leadership's task assignments and executing them step by step. It's possible, but the decision is up to her, Zhuang Qinyan said indifferently. Ling Yu, with her mixed-race appearance, smiled and whispered to her brother, How about that? I told you the anecdotes was true, right? Zhuang Qinyan turned off the light screen, giving a final glance at the small central unit that stored research data on organ regeneration in some fire seed projects. Of course, the experimental subjects were excluded, and he set permissions so that only Ning Rong could activate it. Give this to Dr. Ning. Zhuang Qinyan looked quietly out the porthole, with six hours remaining until they reached Huang Yuan, expected to arrive before midnight. These past two days, whether at the northern base or on the eve of departure, he no longer felt the scrutiny. The two prying gazes outside the laboratory, perhaps intended for Ning Rong, had coincidentally implicated him. Navigation alert, they were passing through a dark cloud with lightning, thunder, howling winds, and countless hailstones pounding down, causing the starship to sway slightly. In the flash of lightning, Zhuang Qingyan's expression became obscure and unclear. The future was uncertain. Six hours later, a strong airflow rushed past Song Ku's ears, blowing her shoulder-length hair into the air. The resilient isolation suit clung to her body. With one hand, Song Ku held onto the shaking face mask, looking up at the starship hovering down. The cabin door opened, and a tall and straight figure appeared against the backlight. He, too, was wearing an isolation suit and face mask. Instead of choosing a stylish free fall, he descended steadily down the soft ladder. Song Ku, with a faint dimple, unconsciously wore a bright smile and thought to herself, Princess Zhuang is truly something, even descending needs a ladder. Zhuang Qinyan, with swift steps, had eyes only for Song Ku. Unable to restrain himself, he opened his arms and walked towards her with long strides, ready to embrace the slender figure he had missed for days. Just as he was about to hug her, someone in the crowd exclaimed. Oh, here he comes. Lu Xiaoyu raised a mechanical arm and naturally shook Zhuang Qingyan's left hand, swinging it up and down. Su Cha glanced at his open arms, a hint of confusion flashing across his face. He was not used to Zhuang Qingyan's sudden warmth, but he still pursed his lips and gave his right hand a high five. Pfft! Ha ha ha! Lin Yuyu, who witnessed the entire scene, had her mouth twisted, laughing heartily until she couldn't straighten her waist. Zhuang Qinyan, who wants to shake hands and exchange pleasantries with you guys? Can't you have a bit of situational awareness? He stiffened for a moment, then quickly composed himself, as if nothing had happened, and stood in front of Song Ku. His fingertips itched, and considering the occasion, Zhuang Qinyan refrained from any overly affectionate gestures. Instead, he simply helped Song Ku brush away the dried leaves from her hair. How did the negotiations go? He asked. Song Ku's cheerful little face instantly wrinkled into a frown. Not well at all. Complete failure. The upgraded A-level mission seemed very simple on the surface, with only three steps to complete, first, persuade the fallen ones led by Ada to leave second, escort the fallen to migrate to Fennec and third, submit the task. Song Ku never expected to get stuck on the first step. The first negotiation was attempted by Song Ku alone. Choosing the wrong moment, losing members of her kind made Ada in a bad mood. As soon as Song Ku reached the valley and hadn't said a word, Ada discovered her, angrily roared, and then a horde of zombies rushed over to beat her up. It was a genuine beating. They didn't intend to kill her, just drove her away with balls made of mud and plant leaves. Song Ku, feeling embarrassed, ran away with a dirty face. In the second attempt, having learned her lesson, she sneakily hid in the treetops, opened a loudspeaker, and earnestly advised. Ada, how about changing your place of residence? Have you heard of Fennec? It has less radiation, no people, especially safe. Come with me. There, you won't encounter, uh, won't encounter zombies, so you won't have to feel sad anymore. Ada. Feeling tired of talking, Song Ku picked up a row of drinks, took a sip, crossed her legs, and assumed a posture for a serious discussion. 
rustling sounds came from all directions, and Song Ku suddenly turned her head. Amidst the vast canopy, numerous pairs of bright red eyes stared viciously at her, emitting low, hoarse roars from their throats. Oh dear! These zombies can climb trees. Song Ku slipped on the ground, nearly falling, and after a series of leaps, she clumsily escaped by grabbing vines. The zombies left behind in the area curiously picked up the drink bottles and took a sip. Excitedly, they communicated with their fellow zombies. On the third attempt, Song Ku, with the help of translator Su Xing, finally explained their intentions. Ada stared at them without speaking, and Song Ku keenly sensed that she seemed hesitant. There might be hope. However, before the excitement could fade, Ada let out a low growl, and dozens of small blood zombies swarmed over similar to wild monkeys in Rainbow Cloud City. They pinned Su Xing to the ground, grabbing everything, leaving only a pitiful pair of yellow duck shorts. Experienced in escape, Song Ku slipped away quickly. Ten minutes later, when she returned, she faced Su Xing's reproachful and resentful gaze. Sister, why did you run away by yourself? Song Ku stuttered, I'll go back and buy you new clothes, again. Su Xing, teary-eyed, felt that Song Ku had changed. She must have been influenced by that person surnamed Shuang. In the past, her sister would have definitely saved him. On the fourth attempt, both teams mobilized, taking turns to persuade, yet they returned without success. Ada looked at them warily and shook her head. Humans don't trust. After hearing her pitiful recounting, Zhuang Qinyan calmly rolled up his sleeves and chuckled, understood, leave it to me next. His deep gaze swept over the four people from Duan Muqi, recognizing them as the food thieves. Showing no outward reaction, he nodded reservedly. However, Duan Muqi did not recognize him. The Zhuang Qinyan they had encountered before was weak, pale, and entirely dependent on a wheelchair. He had no presence within V587. But the man before them was tall, upright, full of vitality, wearing a pair of gold-rimmed glasses, speaking with a cold and arrogant tone. They heard that he was a foreign aide from the northern base. The moment he appeared, he brought immense pressure, making it impossible for them to underestimate him. After understanding the current situation, Zhuang Qinyan made a decisive decision, I will discuss a plan with Song Ku. We'll set out at six in the morning after dawn. Go where? Duan Mu Qi was momentarily confused but he saw V587 on the opposite side looking perfectly natural, and even Song Ku nodded in satisfaction. Sorry, I didn't make it clear. I forgot you might not keep up with the train of thought, Zhuang Qinyan said with the aroma of tea filling the air. We're heading to Fennec. Duan Mu Qi was speechless. Were people from District B always so infuriating when they spoke? Chapter 233 History's strongest zombie tide is coming. Zhuang Qinyan briskly walked toward Song Ku's tent, but before entering, he thought of something and lifted his chin towards Lu Xiaoyu. Hey, come in by yourself. Do we have to wait for you? Lu Xiaoyu snorted lightly and followed him in. Lin Yuyu extended her finger, waving it in front of Fan Peng's eyes. What are you looking at? The honest Fan Peng's face instantly turned red. Nothing nothing. He quickly got up, turned around, and almost bumped into Duan Muqi. Lin Yuyu followed his gaze and happened to see two men and a woman entering the same tent. She shook her head with a wry smile, well, the gossip in our team is getting more and more absurd. Inside the tent, Zhuang Qinyan took out a brand new light screen and threw it to Lu Xiaoyu. With a serious tone, he said, currently, it seems that the fallen leader is very distrustful of humans. So, when your focus is on taking them away, the plan is difficult to execute. Song Ku tilted her head, thinking. It did seem that way. Every time she mentioned taking them away, Ada would become hostile. So, what should we do? She asked. We don't need to intervene directly. We'll present the advantages and disadvantages, let her take the initiative, Zhuang Qinyan replied. Song Ku's puzzled expression finally earned Zhuang Qinyan's long-awaited chance. He lightly poked her cheek, you said she has a strong sense of kinship and high intelligence. I believe she can make the best choice for her group. 
In the quiet valley, the melancholic atmosphere lingered. On this night, eight more zombies exploded due to excessive radiation, adding to the somberness. Countless burying their own kind gathered together, some with numb expressions, not yet understanding what death meant, while others wailed and roared in frustration. Their lives were like flowing sand in an hourglass, visible to the end at a glance. When the countdown ended, no one could resist the arrival of fate. In the slight commotion, a drone wobbled its way closer to the sky. Snap! The flickering light screen landed on the ground, and the zombies roared in vigilance, circling around the unidentified object, occasionally reaching out their claws to scratch it. Ada gave two low calls, and one of the zombies picked up the light screen and brought it to her. After observing for a moment, Ada carefully opened it. Suddenly, the sound came from the light screen, causing the surrounding zombies to retreat in fear. A holographic projection lit up, and the Alliance map slowly unfolded before their eyes. A deep and pleasant male voice, reminiscent of a news broadcaster, clearly explained, currently, the radiation in Huangyuan exceeds 21%, and it is rapidly increasing at a rate of 2% per year. In a year, it will reach 23%, at which point all life will cease to exist. Without warning, a grim scene appeared, countless animals and plants lying on the ground turned into ashes. The small zombies cowered in fear. Huangyuan has lush vegetation and a flat terrain, but District B is overcrowded. According to the latest information, the Alliance is considering a large-scale cleanup operation and plans to deploy a weather simulation system here in the future as the new homeland for survivors. In isolation suits, the exploration team, accompanied by heavy excavators, brutishly entered the jungle, destroying the ecosystem. The zombies howled angrily. In comparison, District C-26, Fennec, has been abandoned for 15 years due to its harsh environment, located in the remote east, with no attention for years. The radiation value is expected to stabilize around 17% in the next five years. Representations of Fennec slowly appeared, with vast gray expanses everywhere, dust-filled air, and an absence of birds and beasts. The zombies stared blankly at the deserted area, and their fused facial features made it hard to discern their expressions. After daybreak, we will leave for Fennec. The pleasant male voice spoke with determination. The last image was a clear route map and a massive countdown, with red flashing dots representing the current location of the light screen. Ada extended her fingertip, swiped the light screen, and the program automatically played in a loop. When it reached the end, the route map and countdown appeared again. She pressed the light screen face down on the ground, finally shielding herself from the distressing images. However, it seemed that there was still an illusion in front of her. The small red dot on the map blinked, connecting to a place called Hope. At exactly five o'clock, the sun gradually rose. The morning mist retreated from the forest, the first rays of golden dawn spilled down, illuminating the overshadowed Huangyuan. A brightly painted starship was slowly ascending. Will they really be able to keep up? Fan Peng asked anxiously. I don't know. Lin Yuyu lazily yawned and leaned against Su Cha's back to catch some sleep. Aren't you worried at all? Duan Mu Chi glanced at her. Of course, I'm not worried. Lin Yuyu's red lips curved slightly, and she pointed casually with her eyes closed. See, in our team, we have a top-tier intellect, a top-tier warrior, and, well, myself, a top-tier beauty. Even if this plan fails, we can think of something else. Tuan Mu Chi fell silent without words. Here they come, said Lu Xiaoyu, who was at the helm. Tuan Mu Chi's group stood up and crowded by the porthole to look. Behind the starship, at a distant and endless distance, a blood-red tide rolled towards them. The radiance behind them even surpassed the rising sun on the horizon. With slender limbs, entirely blood-red, hideously ugly monsters, Adult agile zombies carrying small ones on their backs, vigorously chased the starship. The leader running at the front occasionally took out a light screen to confirm, and the red dot on it kept moving towards the destination. They really are coming, Duan Mu Chi felt a mix of emotions, and for some reason, tears welled up in his eyes. This awe-inspiring scene far exceeded the significance brought by the points, and he might not forget it for the rest of his life. Song Ku clapped her hands proudly, Get ready. 
Clear the way. Remember our slogan. V587. Safeguarding your travels. The team members, giving a face, answered in unison. In the open wilderness, a dozen or so awakeners were driving away zombies. Overhead, a starship flew by, and a nimble figure flipped to the top, raising a large megaphone and pressing the pre-recorded dissuasion message Lin Yu Yu had prepared. Dot. Attention, people on the ground. Fallen ones are passing through. Please do not attack, drop your weapons, be cautious, our friends from afar are very friendly, please do not be afraid. If you have any questions, feedback to our V587. We are here to coordinate. What's going on? Someone shouted in confusion. Following that, the ground rumbled, and the group of awakeners changed their expressions drastically, panicking as they ran to the top of the hill. Then they watched helplessly as thousands of blood-red creatures passed by, completely submerging the zombies they hadn't had time to kill. After a moment, the dust settled, and the monsters disappeared, leaving behind several zombie corpses. The blaring megaphone faded into the distance, our friends from afar say they're sending you a little gift as a gesture of goodwill. The awakeners on the hill were bewildered. What the heck is that? V587. What? Oh, I said, it's written on the starship, V587. Within a day, the news of V587 leading a legion of monsters spread throughout the lower level districts, and various sensational reports emerged. Dot. History's strongest zombie tide is coming, human shelters may be destroyed at any moment. Traitors. V587 leads thieves in, betraying all of humanity. Entering the study of zombies, exploring the possibility of humans commanding zombies using V587 as an example. Two or three things that must be said about V587 and the Fallen Ones. Most cities were in confusion and chaos, unable to come up with effective countermeasures. Fortunately, Song Ku had evacuated and was commanding in real time, preventing any malicious incidents. Ada, with her kind, focused solely on the journey, remained indifferent to the external rumors. By the second day, the public opinion shifted, and there were fewer denunciations against V587. People turned their attention to the peculiar red zombies and wondered about their origins. The migration route happened to pass through Haimen. Lu Xiaoyu contacted the municipal hall in advance, explained the situation, and the magistrate, Yen Biao, who had a good relationship with V587, immediately issued a city lockdown order, forbidding residents from wandering outside. However, the fierce people of Haimen couldn't sit still. If they weren't allowed to go out, they brought out stools, guarding the first line of defense, cracking sunflower seeds and gossiping, heard today there's some fallen people passing through. They're called the fallen. Don't know, what's that? Won't they come in? Don't worry, we've strengthened all three defense lines. This bunch of clueless guys, if they dare to come in, see how I handle them. Wang Hu, holding a beer bottle, his big gold chain shining brightly, waved his hand with great spirit. They had long moved into a large 500 square meter apartment, and each of them had a spiritual weapon, with a formidable aura that no one dared to provoke. They're coming, they're coming. With the exclamation of the guards, residents of Haimen stretched their necks to look. Overhead, a cool starship swiftly passed, and the massive fallen ones crossed the plains, congesting the Cross River Bridge. Astonishingly, they didn't even glance at the city gate and disappeared in the dust in an instant. Oh my god, is this shooting a movie muttered someone from another area. The people of Haimen suddenly realized the situation. They threw sunflower seeds away, took out their terminals, crazily filmed the scene, and uploaded it to the Star Network, making a good profit from the traffic. The human species is inherently diverse. Along the way, there were people from Haimen who joined just for the excitement, and others with malicious intentions hoping to take advantage. Ignoring the warnings from the megaphone, they secretly followed behind the fallen ones, intending to kill a few stragglers for some points. Unexpectedly, as soon as the attackers released their abilities, the group of monsters didn't scatter like ordinary zombies. At the front, Ada suddenly turned around, emitting a piercing scream. Thousands of fierce blood zombies swiftly changed direction, cooperating seamlessly, and instantly devoured the attackers mercilessly. 
Song Ku hung on the cabin door with one hand. Before she could jump down to assist, the crisis had already been resolved. She curved her eyes, shouting loudly, Ada. Ada seemed to know that Song Ku was calling her. Running cautiously, she looked up with vigilance. Song Ku gave her a bright smile and a thumbs up. Ada didn't respond, but her closed nostrils moved slightly. So, Song Ku saw a clear expression of snorting on her uneven face. What does that mean? Was she being mocked by Ada? Five days later, District C-26, Fennec, was just around the corner. Chapter, 234 Never Bully Dogs On the vast wilderness, the vast and mighty blood-red fallen howled and swept across, stirring up rolling dust. Duan Mu Chi and his three companions each drove off-road vehicles, maintaining order in the rear of the strange group, preventing any fallen from falling behind midway. Song Ku, with a coat cushioning her bottom, sat at the cabin door scolding, sounding like she was quarreling with someone. Occasionally, when her voice rose, she unconsciously straightened her posture, even curling her toes. Zhuang Qin Yen sat not far behind, a few strands of loose bangs on his forehead blown messy by the wind. The thick eyelashes covered a pair of smiling eyes as he quietly watched Song Ku's back, watching her inflate like a pufferfish due to her own anger. Alone in the northern base for a few days, Zhuang Qin Yen appeared outwardly composed but harbored growing darkness within. He seemed to have returned to the state before the apocalypse, living aimlessly without purpose, walking without a soul, maintaining perfect social interactions with false enthusiasm. However, he couldn't experience the emotions of the people around him. He displayed a strong maladaptation to normal social life and interpersonal relationships, like an out-of-control car bumping along the edge of steep cliffs, ready to derail at any moment. When Zhuang Qinyan stood at the highest point of the city defense department and looked down at the multitude, the control center was within arm's reach. For a moment, a pathological personality floated in the air, cold and disdainful, looking down at the countless figures below, constantly questioning him, why should you save them? What connection do you have with these people? You are not him, you cannot be a savior. Now, just input a simple command, and let this city be destroyed in your hands. His fingertips unconsciously typed out a letter. Fortunately, his rationality returned in the next second. He decisively pressed the delete key and turned around to leave. Psychopath, Xuan Qinyan silently uttered a word. This was the diagnosis he received during his youth. He had suppressed it well since awakening his ability. However, after a sudden and unexpected upheaval, he buried all emotions in his heart, always wearing a smile on his face that no one could see through. Over the years, his behavior and actions were no different from those of normal people, but unexpectedly, in just a few days, they deteriorated abruptly. Zhuang Qinyan calmly explained to Yi Zheng that his current condition was very bad and he couldn't continue with the work. He needed to go in search of the calming agent. Yi Zheng stared at him for a long time, perhaps having heard something from Xia Lan, ultimately agreed. The moment he saw Song Ku, the destructive desire and weariness in Zhuang Qinyan's heart were miraculously smoothed out. Sacred hymns echoed in his ears, and his soul felt fulfilled, calming down after a long time. In his eyes, the sun high in the sky was not the true one it was the backlit Song Ku. He opened a bottle of water and handed it to Song Ku's lips, speaking gently and tenderly, Are you tired? Do you want to take a rest? Song Ku took a couple of sips following his hand, shook her head, and lifted the horn with deep meaning, Ada, even as a fallen, one should be grateful. Ada, running swiftly, was irritated. Amidst her busyness, she raised her head angrily, baring her teeth, ah. A light tapping sound came from the cabin wall. Zhuang Qinyan turned around, and Lu Xiaoyu gestured at him. Understanding that he had something to discuss privately, Zhuang Qinyan nodded silently. The two of them walked to the front cabin one after another. Lu Xiaoyu opened the little B terminal of Song Ku, skillfully infiltrating the commission platform. In the vast sea of data, Trojan programs were quietly operating, attempting to bypass the supervision of District B's artificial intelligence and steal backend information. Although it took some time, Lu Xiaoyu, being a top-notch hacker, did it perfectly and covertly. I've checked. 
The second time is a targeted release, Lu Xiaoyu pointed to the top-level A-level commission and affirmed. Zhuang Qinyan contemplated with narrowed eyes. Changing from a whole territory commission to a targeted distribution near Huang Yuan for awakeners. This way, not only were there multiple completion methods to choose from, but the connected regions were also restricted, eliminating 99% of the awakeners in the process. What about traces? He wanted to know if there had been any tampering. None, Lu Xiaoyu said. Zhuang Qinyan chuckled, is it that you didn't find anything, or there really are no traces? Lu Xiaoyu expressionlessly replied, of course, there are no traces. Do you think I'm you? Even repairing the T-014 takes 14 days. Zhuang Qinyan, is it interesting to say it over and over again? After that idiot specifically referring to Duan Muqi uploaded the data, the system adjusted the task content. Both the analysis process and processing paths align with the thinking pattern of artificial intelligence, with no abnormal data whatsoever, Lu Xiaoyu's tone remained steady. But Zhuang Qinyan knew him too well, your expression seems to suggest otherwise. A slight snort escaped from Lu Xiaoyu's nostrils, even if the idiot didn't act on his own, this commission will eventually point to District C-26. How so? Because even if all the data is normal, there's still a possibility. Suppose the artificial intelligence handling the commission has no thinking process at all, but is directly given commands. Zhuang Qinyan suddenly raised his eyes. Lu Xiaoyu spoke each word distinctly, I think she is involved. Zhuang Qinyan neither agreed nor disagreed, do you have evidence? None, just intuition, Lu Xiaoyu's response was firm. Zhuang Qinyan rhythmically tapped his fingers, not responding with his usual retorts, where does your intuition come from? From Huang Yuan to Fennec, the number of commissions along the way decreased by two-thirds, including the most common private commissions, Lu Xiaoyu's expression was unusually serious, it's like someone deliberately clearing obstacles. The entire task, from the beginning of the release, the zombie king, the fallen, killing or relocating it all connects. Each step is a carefully designed trap. Only by stepping into it can you understand the true purpose of the other party. Zhuang Qingyan's fingertips moved slightly, and he wrote down a series of words in the air. Lu Xiaoyu quickly recognized it as mother. Coming after you. Didn't hide your tail well, got discovered. During the time when Song Ku was kidnapped by He Chiohong, Lu Xiaoyu connected to District B's terminal using S-level ability for data tracking. Although he immediately hid and erased all information in the consciousness of the super AI, the fact that he was fully exposed still inevitably got confirmed. Hiding like this all the time isn't a solution. Why not find some time to go back to Urjia and get rid of her? Zhuang Qingyan's demeanor was casual, as if he was talking about something inconsequential. Difficult the first time, easy the second. You can't miss this time, can you? Lu Xiaoyu glanced at him. It was rare to hear such ruthless words from Zhuang Qingyan's mouth, but upon second thought, this was his true nature. He vaguely said, soon. In the only failure of his life, he paid a painful price, rendering him unable to walk independently. He was willing to lie in wait, only seeking a single, lethal strike. Just now, those were just my speculations. If the other party comes for me, I am confident I can handle it, but in case the target is you. A true friend is a true friend. The friendly atmosphere lasted less than five minutes. Turning around, they began bantering with each other. Lu Xiaoyu asked lightly, can you handle it? Zhuang Qingyan's lips tightened into a straight line. For some reason, those two agents who were following Ning Rong left a faint haze in his heart. You have six legs, right? If they come for me, you should be the first one to run. Lu Xiaoyu looked surprised. No way, did you really get discovered? Did you learn nothing from your elective courses? Zhuang Qinyan shook his head slowly. Not sure. After so many days, everything around him remained calm. If the target was him, wouldn't it be better to strike when he was alone at the northern base or even on the way, rather than allowing him to return to Song Ku's side? Lu Xiaoyu understood and said knowingly, so you were scared and hid behind the captain, begging her to protect you, a notorious wanted criminal. Zhuang Qinyan glanced at him faintly. Song Ku still doesn't know. 
To explain his identity, he couldn't avoid the past of the Fire Sea project. Song Ku had already forgotten those painful memories, living carefree until now. Zhuang Qinyan never made up his mind on whether to tell her the cruel truth because Song Ku was his son, and he didn't want to take away her innocence and happiness. Or maybe, let it go for now, he sighed in his heart, adding casually, don't talk nonsense in front of her. Lu Xiaoyu paused, and a suspicious dissociation flashed in his eyes. You're hiding something from me, Zhuang Qinyan narrowed his eyes. This unusual behavior from him wasn't a rare occurrence. No, dear friend, Lu Xiaoyu said with an unchanged expression. Is your trust in me so fragile? I don't have that kind of trust in you. Mental ability can also extract memories. Do you want to be the first to try? My firewall tells me it doesn't want to. Cold awakened energy surged forth, colliding head-on with the silver code wall. Two formidable S-level forces clashed in the air. Bang! The cabin door was forcefully pulled open, and Lin Yuyu, with a charming face, led three people behind her, all with angry expressions. Argue if you want, make noise if you must, but don't joke about awakened energy. I'm telling you guys, be considerate to us A-levels. It's a headache. That's right. It's so uncomfortable. Su Xing huffed. Fight, go ahead and fight. I refuse to treat any injuries caused by internal disputes, Fang Zhishu mocked. Continue fighting when we get back. We've reached Fennec. Even Su Cha showed disapproval. Song Ko put away the horn, clapped her knees, stood up, and turned to see her team members gathered together, staring at each other. Concerned, she asked, what's going on? Are you fighting again? Zhuang Qinyan gave a deep look at Lu Xiaoyu, pointed at him with his finger, silently threatening, you wait for me. Lu Xiaoyu, unperturbed like a dead pig and not fearing boiling water, shrugged his shoulders in a proud manner. Chapter, 235 Never Bully Dogs Ten minutes later, the starship was the first to enter the Fennec City area, and a navigation prompt appeared. You have entered the radiation-affected area. Please be cautious, do not stay for an extended period. The sky was filled with thick gray fog, murky dust particles penetrated into the respiratory tract. The visibility around was very low, abandoned buildings loomed indistinctly. Lu Xiaoyu switched to manual control, slowing down the starship in the city to avoid accidentally colliding with skyscrapers. My awakened energy is more abundant now. Lin Yuyu clenched her fist, sensing changes in the magnetic field within her body. Low-level radiation could stimulate abilities to some extent. For Awakeners A-level and above, Fennec's current concentration was just right. However, they were still not suitable for prolonged exposure to the air. The starship landed on the rooftop, V-587 changed into isolation suits and masks, jumping onto the main road, patiently waiting. Duan Mu Qi and his group parked the off-road vehicle on the side of the road. After a while, Ada led her kind to arrive. Separated by a hundred meters, the blood-red horde stopped abruptly, filling the streets and alleys, establishing a clear boundary between them and Song Ku's group. Ada growled softly, and two small zombies ran toward Song Ku, like cheerful little monkeys. Su Xing's eyes widened. These two zombies, one wearing a small yellow duck sun hat and the other in a brand name t-shirt, not to mention being quite well fitted, were both taken from him. The memory of that night when he almost ended up naked was vivid in Su Xing's mind. Thud. The light screen was thrown back in front of Song Ku. Ah ah. The little zombies squealed and gestured wildly, then turned back to stand beside Ada. No need to return it, consider it a gift, Song Ku generously tossed it back. A screen was something she could afford Ada was too polite. Ada's bright red eyes glanced around, and she did not accept Song Ku's kindness. With a snap, she raised her hand and threw it back. Song Ku wasn't prepared to catch it, so the screen, having experienced a tumultuous journey, flew backward and landed on the ground with a crack. The screen displayed a spiderweb of cracks. Song Ku picked it up with a heartache and scolded, Ada, this is expensive. Ada's uneven facial features moved, vividly rolling her eyes. Zhuang Qinyan cleared his throat, Song Ku, 
there's a locator in the screen. Song Ko was puzzled, huh? Immediately, she was rendered speechless, I forgot. Ada, worthy of being the leader with intelligence comparable to the zombie king, was indeed very smart. Keeping this screen would expose their group's location to humans. Therefore, after reaching their destination, she decisively returned it to Song Ku. Ada looked up into the distance. There were no towering jungles here, no giant mutated plants. The vast expanse was filled with the ruins of the city, and the air quality was poor. However, her kind seemed fascinated and excited. The constant tingling sensation in their skin, present due to prolonged radiation exposure, diminished. Even the zombies, who were afflicted with radiation sickness and on the verge of death, stood up, marveling at their own veins and limbs. Undoubtedly, Fennec's environment was suitable for the fallen to survive, and humans didn't deceive them. It was a new home, a source of hope. Ada gracefully leaped to the top of an abandoned building, emitting a distant and long howl. All the zombies looked up at her. Then, as if understanding her command, they dispersed in all directions, blending like droplets into the ocean, disappearing into the depths of the grey mist in an instant. Treacherous and cunning humans and zombies without intelligence were not their companions. The remaining journey could only be walked by the fallen themselves. The thank you Ada looked deeply at Song Ku and the others, then hoarsely said. Then, with a leap, her slender figure melted into the thick fog. Goodbye, Ada. Song Ku waved sadly, feeling a sense of loss. The red dot on the screen stayed in place, and Song Ku lost track of Ada's location. However, she believed that Ada could lead her kind to survive. After the last zombie disappeared from their field of vision, Song Ko clicked to complete the mission. This A-level mission was almost entirely taken care of by V587, and the rewards were astonishing. Their ranking instantly surged to the first place in the entire alliance. Three grandsons and one grandpa also had some soup and earned 110,000 points, far exceeding the threshold of 500,000, securing their place in District B with ease. We're first. Song Ku happily bounced around, hugging each team member one by one. Finally, she jumped into the arms of Zhuang Qinyan, who held her tightly. The terminals of Lin Yuyu and others started beeping, there were changes in the top ten rankings. An announcement would be made on the mission platform. Now, proudly hanging at the top of the new Asia Alliance leaderboard was V587, with a substantial lead in points. In the Northern Base's mission group, there was a lively discussion. Yin Xiao was the first to speak up. Please call me S. Xiao, Song Ku, the best in the world. Congratulations, Captain Song. Does anyone have plum blossom hairpins in stock? We'll pay a high price, Yu Yu App trainee, you're amazing. Zhao Yuqing, congratulations, congratulations, bringing glory to the northern base. Moon. Lin, congratulations, from me and my brother. Thank you all. While Song Ku was replying to each message, Duan Mu Qi stepped in front of her. Xiao Chen, Fan Peng, and Xiong Mingcheng also followed, expressing their sincere thanks. If it weren't for Song Ku leading them on missions and a bit of luck, they might not have reached the required points before the arrival of autumn. Song Ku remembered something, by the way, the recommendation letters. Someone is here, Su Cha frowned slightly. Dozens of strong-figured awakeners emerged from the corner, surrounding them. The leading man, in his thirties, with a piercing at the corner of his eye, looked fierce. After glancing around, he whistled provocatively at Duan Mu Qi. Brother, just finished a mission, right? We're here too, part of the achievement. How about sharing some points with us? Points could be circulated in two ways, signing a transfer agreement witnessed by the platform, with the system extracting a certain intermediary fee, or converting them into rewards through private missions. However, the latter couldn't specify the beneficiary and relied on completing tasks to obtain points. After V587 had been pushing for the leaderboard for so long, it was the first time they encountered someone directly trying to snatch points from them. Who are you guys? Song Ku blinked, bewildered and speechless. The group opposite had varying strengths, from A to D levels. They all seemed to be from the lower level districts, displaying an unfounded confidence as they brazenly attempted a robbery. 
They are bounty hunters, Duan Mu Chi said solemnly. Bounty hunters sounded glamorous, but in reality, it wasn't a favorable term. This label specifically referred to a group of bandits who took risks for points or alliance coins after the apocalypse. They were ruthless, disregarding any means, and their sole driving factor in all actions was profit. There was an information gap between B and C districts, and these bounty hunters clearly didn't recognize B587, who had just risen to prominence. Instead, they arrogantly shouted at Duan Mu Chi because he had casually mentioned the words 500,000 points earlier. The leading bounty hunter greedily sniffed the air, his expression intoxicated, I smell the scent of gold. Lin Yuyu shook her head and chuckled, have you guys not been keeping up with the news lately? Even as bandits, you should stay informed about current events. Sorry to have made you laugh. We'll take care of this, Duan Mu Chi said. As soon as he spoke, thick thorns snaked towards the group, instantly trapping more than ten people, including the boastful leader. Xiao Xing, lend a hand. We're in a hurry, Zhuang Qinyan urged softly. A one-level Su Xing was quite formidable against this group of novices. He lifted his right hand, and a hailstorm descended. The bounty hunters' limbs turned icy, and their movements gradually slowed down. Some were pierced by the fierce thorns, while others were swiftly dealt with by Xiao Chen and others, targeting their throats. In less than ten minutes, dozens of bodies lay on the ground, none left alive. Feng Zixu searched around but couldn't find even a valuable third-level crystal. He sighed in disappointment, taking off his gloves. As he was about to say something, he saw everyone's expressions change dramatically, prompting a quick retreat. Feng Zixu looked puzzled, what are you guys hiding from? The next moment, he suddenly turned around, and the bodies on the ground were rapidly expanding, bursting into a fountain of blood in an instant. Bang! Bang! Fragments of flesh and organs sprayed out like a fountain, and the strong smell of blood hit them. Song Kuk pinched her nose and approached, handing Fang Zixu a towel because he had unknown intestines hanging on his head. You guys are heartless Fang Zixu stared at her for a while before reluctantly taking it. Just as Song Kuk offered a comforting smile, her expression suddenly froze. She turned back, staring in a certain direction with a serious look. Thump, thump, the clear sound of footsteps came from the depths of the grey mist, echoing in everyone's ears. Who could it be this time? Another new bounty hunter. Amidst the attention of the crowd, on the rooftop of a building across, a middle-aged man with a suit, mixed-race features, and a hooked nose slowly appeared. His eyelids were drooping, and he looked proud as he gazed down on everyone, speaking, are you Song Ku? The S7 level strong attack type awakener. Song Ku replied politely, Yes, that's me. And you are. Half a year ago, you killed my favorite dog, the man said. The man's shiny leather shoes stepped over the blood pool, leaving half a clear footprint. I've been looking for you for a long time. Zhuan Qinyan and Lu Xiaoyu exchanged hidden glances, both frowning. He came for Song Ku. Could it be that all their speculations were wrong? Song Ku looked innocent, how is that possible? I never bully dogs. Chapter, 236 Long time no see, uncle. Ten days ago. District Day 1, Central Court. In the spacious conference room, empty and void of any person, several holographic projections sat or stood on both sides of a long table, engaged in hushed conversations. S7 level is rare, but not unique. As far as I know, besides the publicly known Song Ku and former Special Operations Unit member Punk, both Azure Phoenix and Vulture have two internally known figures each, right? Xie Lan, the leader of Azure Phoenix, was not invited to today's secret meeting. Everyone turned their gaze towards the end of the table, where the highest ranking officer of the 6th Division of Führersch. He didn't activate his holographic projection and spoke with a hoarse voice, it's a tradition in Vulture that only death can reveal the code names. In other words, he wouldn't disclose any information as long as those two S7 levels were alive. Others exchanged glances, tacitly understanding, and no longer pursued the matter. Unlike Azure Phoenix, a regular military force, the 6th Division of Fewer Vulture Unit specialized in intelligence and assassinations. 
Offending these rats in the sewer could lead to a grim fate, and one might not even be aware if their throat was silently slit one day. There are indeed many S7 levels, but as for S-level dual attribute, so far, only one has appeared in the entire alliance, and that is the bloody hunter, Punk. Park Jae-woo gazed towards the main seat, a fleeting desire for supreme power flickering in his eyes, Mr. Gu, after Punk was expelled from the special operations team. He sought refuge under Commander Simon and has been a loyal dog under his command serving diligently and wholeheartedly. This is the recording of Punk's death, and the one who killed him is Song Ku. The participants sat up straight, their attention fully focused on the screen. The video provided by Park Jae Woo came from the miniature camera inside Punk's confinement collar, cutting off any irrelevant parts and leaving only the final scene. As the image lit up, it was filled with the impact and shock of a first person perspective. Song Ku, wielding the Overlord spear, aggressively advanced with a deathly expression. The two clashed with powerful abilities, and Punk, unable to withstand, retreated. Song Ku first pierced his intact right eye, then severed his hands and feet, ultimately forcing Punk to self destruct. The brutal combat prowess left everyone in a bone chilling silence, sinking into a prolonged contemplation. For this person, is there a possibility of surrender? Mr. Gu, the head of the meeting, asked calmly. A profound silence followed, and no one dared to answer. After a while, a certain official nervously said, This S7 level comes from a low level district, and I'm afraid it may be challenging to control. Punk's death might not be of great significance, but it proved one thing Song Ku's strength far surpassed everyone's imagination. Intelligence indicated that she came from the impoverished digital area, shrouded in mystery, with unknown parents, and had never received any favors from the Alliance. Yet, she was inseparable from the key, making it challenging to persuade her. Song Ko was like a ticking time bomb, ready to become the greatest obstacle to the reboot plan at any moment. Mr. Gu sighed deeply, what a pity. The attendees fell silent and bowed their heads. This former leader had already made a decision, and unfortunately, the alliance was about to lose an S7. The only one who can kill a dual ability is another dual ability. Simon, with a hooked nose, stood up with a gloomy expression. He noticed that Song Ku's right arm had been blown off before but quickly regained combat capability. Simon coldly glanced at the smug Park Jae Woo, a despicable and shameless person who deliberately brought up the only S level dual ability in the Alliance. He had long sensed something was amiss and dared to hide such important footage until now, building his own ladder to success. Simon chuckled inwardly. Let it come let's see who will be the ultimate winner. He respectfully bowed to the main seat, Mr. Gu, no one understands S-level dual ability better than me. I am willing to personally confirm the opponent's second ability. Fennec City Simon, dressed sharply in a suit, stopped walking forward and couldn't appreciate Song Ku's cold humor. He aimed at the bounty hunter's body and, without warning, it exploded several times. Deep red blood sprayed into the air like a fountain and showered down. Do you remember now? Simon kindly reminded. In Song Ku's pupils, the fireworks like blood light reflected, and the familiar scene gradually made her realize. Blood explosion, Punk's ability. Oh, it's really a dog. She killed a dog, and the owner came for revenge. Simon's gaze swept over Zhuang Qinyan and then returned to Song Ku. You've caused me a lot of trouble. After Punk's sudden death, Simon lost his executioner, and with no one to handle the dirty work, he was tied up and oppressed everywhere. His political rival, Park Jae Woo, took advantage of the situation and rose steadily. Is it you who led us here? Song Ku frowned and asked, The fallen of Huang Yuan, did you release the bait? Simon smirked sinisterly but didn't answer. Swoosh, swoosh slight sounds of breaking air. Su Cha reacted quickly, pushed Lin Yu Yu aside, and swiftly rushed forward like a whirlwind. He turned around and delivered a fierce side kick, and with a clatter, the chain with high voltage electricity was kicked away. Damn, have some shame, launching a sneak attack. Lin Yu Yu cursed loudly. Since he was discovered, Simon gave up the pretense. He raised his hand, and more than ten figures jumped down from the rooftops on all sides, three of them S level and the rest A-level. 
The entire street was covered with the bright light of abilities, and mixed awakened energies, under the influence of radiation, collided and roamed recklessly. The V587, all SA level, managed to endure, but the three grandsons and one grandpa were on the verge of collapsing, their vision darkening, cold sweat flowing. The four of them resisted the overwhelming pressure with all their might. Step back, Song Ku helped them block and said, this has nothing to do with you will handle it. She slowly drew the twin blades from her back, the cold blades pointing forward, aiming at those three S-level individuals. At first glance, Simon had the numerical advantage, but V587 showed no fear. Lin Yuyu took the initiative, and an ethereal singing voice resounded. The chaotic mist of the blade descended, thickening the surrounding fog. Both sides lost sight, unable to see each other. Indeed, the opponents lost track of Song Ku and the others, but V587 could see them clearly because they had an S-level mental awakener in their ranks with exceptionally keen senses. While Zhuang Qinyan directed, Su Xing laid down ice rings, and Su Cha released poison. Despite the assailants being quite cautious, under Zhuang Qinyan's calculations, they still stumbled like headless flies, willingly walking into traps. Legs frozen and unable to move, they then convulsed and fell to the ground, pierced by sharp ice blades. Rumble, rumble. Continuous gunfire erupted, prompting Fang Zhishu to sprint desperately. Tall office buildings collapsed around him anyone a fraction of a second slower would be crushed into pulp. An awakener carrying a mortar cannon maneuvered for support. Lu Xiaoyu, who had disappeared since the start of the battle, suddenly peeked his head out from the thick fog. His six mechanical arms, like claws, swiftly dismantled the core components, rendering the cannon silent in an instant. The agile Lu Xiaoyu spun around, waved his sleeve, and took away crucial parts from the enemy. Su Cha appeared mysteriously, constantly reaping lives. Once injured, he vanished into the mist of blades, only to reappear with wounds already healed, thanks to Fang Zhishu's treatment. Under Zhuang Qingyan's directing gaze, the infiltrator's every move was exposed, and V587 collaborated seamlessly, effortlessly dealing with the A-level opponents. With the odds against them, it was a crushing victory. V587, the team ranking first on the alliance scoreboard, lived up to its reputation. The three S-level individuals gained no advantage. Even when working together, they couldn't withstand Song Ku. Amid the chaotic intervals of abilities, Song Ku resisted their attacks and, with a kick, toppled the first person. She then kicked the opponent's chest, causing it to collapse. The twin blades crossed, and the second person's head was chopped into a gory mess. Flames erupted, burning Song Ku's shoulder, but she seemed impervious to pain, silently grabbing the last person by the neck and snapping it with a crunch. A piercing roar echoed, and Song Ku abruptly turned around. The awakener with the concave chest staggered to his feet, blood vessels bulging all over, veins popping. He charged towards the fog where Zhuang Qinyan and others were located. Song Ku realized he intended to self-destruct and hurriedly rushed to stop him. Simon closely watched the actions of the two, his eyes bursting with a dazzling light. In the nick of time, the dying S-level twisted his body, the rapidly swelling blood sphere abruptly shrinking, changing direction eerily. Song Ku's pupils contracted. This person wasn't going to self-destruct. It was too late for any reaction she could only dodge to the extreme. The ball of light grazed her abdomen, splashing blood. Song Ku thrust a knife through the back of the opponent. The person's mouth curled into a cold smile as he slowly and hoarsely said, for the future of Utopia. For your ghostly future, Song Ku coldly interrupted, beheading him with a backhand swing. She touched the wound on her abdomen, blood flowing incessantly, staining her hands crimson. All of Simon's men brought in had fallen, but he remained unfazed. His gaze remained fixed on Song Ku. Your life will end today. I will sing a dirge for you in advance, he declared. So much nonsense. Song Ku raised her hand and threw a blue blade, piercing Simon's heart. However, the expected scene of flesh and blood flying did not happen. Simon's figure swayed as if shattered glass, disappearing on the spot. Song Ku was momentarily stunned, then realized that because of the fog's concealment, she hadn't noticed. 
this person wasn't a physical entity he only appeared through illusion ability. No wonder he didn't dare to approach for fear of revealing himself. But wasn't he seeking revenge for the dog? Did he just run away like that? Song Cook pursed her lips. Even the favorite dog was just saying nice words. Zhuang Qinyan hurried over and knocked on her forehead. Thump. With a stern expression, he pulled out a bandage to stop the bleeding. Despite the cut on her abdomen, Song Ku acted as if nothing happened. However, when her head was knocked, she complained with a hint of grievance, that really hurts. Zhuang Qinyan carefully wiped away the blood splatter on her cheek. Go back and whine. Let's leave this place first. As Fang Jixiu swiftly cleaned up the battlefield, Lu Xiaoyu had already activated the starship. After a moment of thought, Song Ku turned to Duan Mu Qi and the others, originally, I wanted to give you a ride, but now, it's better to go your separate ways. She wasn't sure if the crisis was over, and she didn't want to involve Duan Mu Qi and the others. See you at the northern base, Song Ku nodded at them before leaving. After the two teams hastily departed, the bodies of over ten awakeners, like the bounty hunters, suddenly burst into blood fireworks. Faint fluctuations of awakened ability dissipated in the air. Inside the starship, the injured Song Ku was firmly pressed onto her seat to receive treatment. She spread her hands and feet, revealing her injured abdomen. While petting Su Xing's furry head, she drank water from Zhuang Qinyan's hand. She even rested her lower legs on Lin Yuyu's knees, enjoying a massage from the beautiful older sister. She waved her hand casually, I'm really fine, not hurting much. Don't move around. Fang Jixiu pressed down her eager head, swiftly cleaning the wound. A clear, white ability flowed in, but it seemed to be sucked into a bottomless pit, having no effect. It was the first time he encountered a situation where his healing ability was ineffective, and his brows furrowed tighter and tighter, why isn't it working? Fang Jixiu brought another injured person, Su Cha, and treated him effortlessly, even healing the minor scratches on the back of his hand. He muttered to himself, this works pretty well, doesn't it? Perplexed, he looked at Song Ku. The gruesome wound inflicted by the S-level was like a stagnant pool of water, resisting any external treatment. I've seen this kind of injury before, Su Cha unexpectedly spoke, the last time was during a mission in the rainforest. Special bullets were used, causing non-stop bleeding from the wounds, and they couldn't heal no matter what. During that mission, everyone except him died. Su Cha clenched his fists tightly, his spine slightly trembling. Lin Yuyu held the back of his neck, stroking it in a comforting manner, and Su Cha gradually loosened his clenched fists, returning to calmness. The ability that wounded the captain is probably similar to those special bullets, making all healing ineffective. The heart is dark enough, Fang Jixiu spat. If Song Ku were an ordinary awakener, there would be no solution to this situation she could only bleed to death. Fortunately, Song Ku's second ability kicked in just in time. The originally deeply visible wound slowly healed, and it was estimated that it would scar over in a few hours. Zhuang Qinyan lowered his eyes, pinching Song Ku's finger bones, lost in thought. Chapter, 237 Long time no see, uncle. Suddenly, from the cockpit, Lu Xiaoyu clicked his tongue, we've got trouble. Everyone looked up and was surprised to find that, through the thin fog, they had unexpectedly returned to the location where they had just fought. Navigation malfunctioned. Zhuang Qinyan frowned. No, Lu Xiaoyu quickly checked, the device is working fine. He thought for a moment, then turned off the automatic mode. I'll drive manually, you guide. Zhuang Qinyan had seen the map before his memory was almost photographic. Upon hearing this, he sat in the passenger seat, acting as the manual navigator. An hour later, V587 returned to the starting point. Could it be a ghost wall? Lin Yuyu exclaimed. It's an awakened ability, Zhuang Qinyan said in a deep voice. He opened the hatch, and bodies lay scattered on the ground. In the distance, the abandoned city's horizon stood oddly, like a mirage in the desert. The skyscrapers on the edge were half normal, while the other half were pieced together with elevated walkways. S-level territorial ability, blood-red building blocks. The wielder can control the blocks within the territory, 
stitching different scenes together by changing their positions. However, activating the ability requires life force as a sacrifice, Zhuang Qinyan explained slowly. Do you still remember those bounty hunter bodies? They should be the driving medium the more people die, the larger the range of the building blocks. I have a question, Lin Yuyu turned around and glanced. Song Ko had expended some awakened energy due to injuries and was now sleeping soundly with closed eyes and slightly open mouth. She lowered her voice, the person just now, did he really come for Song Ku? The more Lin Yuyu thought about it, the more strange it seemed. Even if he didn't know that Song Ku had already advanced, trying to kill an S7 with those people is just a joke, right? What's the point of trapping us here? Zhuang Qinyan looked at her without saying anything. Lin Yuyu looked embarrassed and scratched her cheek. We heard your conversation with Lu Xiaoyu. Actually, we all heard it. Zhuang Qinyan was not surprised. And trusting trust was a difficult thing for him. As teammates, they didn't deliberately avoid Lin Yuyu and the others when talking, but there were many things he didn't plan to disclose proactively. If there's danger, you guys can run first. Zhuang Qinyan smiled as if bathing in a spring breeze. No one will blame you. Anyway it's not the first time. It took Lin Yuyu a while to react. Hey, you. Always touching the sore spots, poking knives into people's hearts, the betrayal at Mirror Lake was like a thorn stuck in Lin Yuyu's heart. Even if no one mentioned it, it didn't mean she didn't care. Fenix Outskirts Xiong Mingcheng, with his arm around Wan Muqi, envisioned the future, his eyes filled with longing, what do you guys think District B will be like? I heard it's similar to before the apocalypse, no zombies, no fierce beasts, and no need to live in fear every day. Fan Peng squeezed in between the two, when we get rooms, Aki and I will share one. Go away, Chiong Mingcheng pushed away Fan Peng's head, you go live with Brother Chen, Aki is mine. The four of them grew up in the same neighborhood, attended the same school, worked in the same company, even awakened their abilities around the same time. Although they often bickered, their friendship was deep, and they were all willing to listen to Duan Muqi. Xiao Chen, the calmest among them, said calmly, there's no need to discuss this I'll live with Aki. Fan Peng and Xiong Mingqing instantly changed their expressions, rolling up their sleeves ready to fight him. Duan Muqi helplessly rubbed his forehead, the matter hasn't even been settled, and you're already celebrating halfway. Xiong Mingqing grinned, why hasn't it been settled? Didn't Song Ku say she would write a recommendation letter for us? They were moving forward at a not-so-slow pace, just a few hundred meters away from leaving Fennec. Fan Peng even took off his isolation mask ahead of time. Due to the weakening radiation, occasionally, fierce beasts would dart across the road, and busy ability users followed behind to capture them. Duan Mu Qi sighed lightly, they helped us even though we're not close, we can't just accept it without giving anything in return, right? We need to think about what gift to send. Xiong Mingqing added, but I don't see them lacking anything. As Duan Mu Qi was about to speak, the sky darkened suddenly as ominous clouds covered it. He raised his head, sensing something. A massive spatial tunnel cracked open, and a fully armed fleet jumped in. These starships were pitch black, different from any style they had seen before. The turbulent air scared away zombies and fierce beasts. Everyone stopped in their tracks, looking up in astonishment. A group of figures in black uniforms descended from the sky. We have eyewitnesses on the scene. Roger, eliminate them all. Like a grim reaper wielding a scythe, before anyone could react, the passing awakeners had already fallen. Their legs went weak, minds blank, utterly unable to resist. A terrifying pressure overwhelmed them, and in their moments of death, the despair in their pupils reflected the pattern on the ruthless vulture emblem on their assailants' uniforms. It was the emblem of a merciless vulture. Duan Mu Qi felt a chill in his heart, his face filled with horror. These people, astonishingly, were all S rank. The black clad woman in the crowd noticed them. She slightly raised her right hand, and an invisible kite string flew out, cutting off the heads of awakeners along the way. Due to inertia, the headless bodies stumbled forward a few steps until they collapsed with a resounding crash, and blood slowly gushed out. 
Next, the kite string flew towards Fan Pine and Xiao Chen. Get out of the way! Xiao Chen roared. The two rolled on the ground, and Xiao Chen managed to avoid it with some difficulty. However, Fan Peng wasn't as lucky. He happened to be in the same straight line as the person in front of him. As a B-level, he felt powerless against the S-level ability. Although he avoided a fatal blow, his entire arm was still severed. Ah! A scream rang out, and Xiao Chen and Xiao Mingqing quickly helped Fan Peng up. People around them fell one after another. Duan Mu Qi cursed under his breath, no longer hesitating. He took out a camping lamp, inserted a bright red crystal, then pulled his companions. The four shadows flickered and disappeared in an instant. After the leading man slaughtered the awakeners on the scene, he looked towards a certain direction. Blood bat, you made a mistake four of them escaped. The other party has a spatial teleportation device, the black-clad woman said. The domain has already been activated they can't escape. Wolf Spider, as instructed from above, there can be no witnesses this time. The man with the code name Wolf Spider nodded. Understood. He turned around, his tone cold and emotionless. Find them, and kill them. At an abandoned school. Duan Mu Qi and his three companions appeared out of nowhere, the glow of the level 4 crystal faded, turning into an ordinary stone. Fan Peng lost an arm, his breath was like gossamer, and his face was as pale as gold leaf. Xiao Qin gritted his teeth, bandaging him. Fan Peng, listen carefully. You're not allowed to sleep no matter how tired you are. Fan Peng, covered in cold sweat, managed to force a smile. I won't sleep. Aki is right. How can we celebrate halfway opening champagne? Who are those people? Xiong Mingqing's eyes were bloodshot. Why do they casually kill people? Duan Mu Qi's face turned pale, forcing himself to calm down. I'll contact Song Ku immediately they have healing type awakener. He took out his terminal, but his actions suddenly froze. No signal. The random teleportation range was only 10 kilometers. Waiting in the same place was equivalent to waiting to die the enemy would catch up soon. First, figure out how to get out. Xiao Qin carried Fan Peng on his back, and the four helped each other leave. Duan Mu Qi tightly gripped the last level for Crystal in his hand. Three hours had passed since V587 left the trap street. Zhuang Qingyan's original words were, Take Tao Tao, for example. Territorial abilities are not flawless. As long as you continuously attack the weak points, you can determine the location of the initiator. So, relying on careful calculations, he finally found the approximate location of the territorial awakener. Only by killing the owner of blood-red building blocks could they leave. Zhuang Qinyan drew a cross on the map, eliminating incorrect options. It's a 50 to 50 chance. Song Ku, come and draw lots. Song Ku, wearing spiritual weapon knuckles on the top of the starship, took a deep breath and threw a punch towards the distorted boundary. Boom! The earth shook, rocks shattered, and the heavy iron fist ruthlessly smashed the weak point of the territory, forcefully disrupting the stability of the magnetic field. The scene changed, blood-red building blocks reassembled, and V587 was teleported back to the previous checkpoint. Zhuang Qinyan sighed helplessly. Even with a 50-50 chance, we can still be wrong. Song Ku, wasn't it you who asked me to choose? However, thanks to Song Ku's relentless attacks, the Territorial Awakener was probably spitting blood at the moment, experiencing fluctuations in his awakened energy. Zhuang Qinyan drew another cross on the map. Although they wasted some time due to bad luck, they were getting closer to the target. In the outskirts of Fennec, in the desolate radiation pit, V587 found the owner of blood-red building blocks. The opponent was not alone a row of pure black star ships was parked in the distance, and over a hundred awakeners were staring intently, as if waiting for a long time. Song Ku noticed that besides the middle-aged man leading the group, there was also a thin and weak young man with a pale face and bloodstains around the collar, staring fiercely at them. It seemed to be the unfortunate territorial awakener. Long time no see. The sickly middle-aged man took the initiative to speak. He carefully examined Wang Qingyan's face, 
from facial features to every detail, couldn't help but sigh, so alike, really alike. No wonder for so many years, no one could find you. Lin Yuyu and Fang Zhishu had puzzled expressions on their faces. What was the old man muttering about? Zhuang Qingyan's face remained cold, silently looking at him. The man coughed twice, his face waxen. What? Your appearance has changed, and the etiquette you have had since elementary school has been lost. I came all the way from Utopia, and you're not even willing to call me uncle. Song Ku slightly widened her eyes. This person claimed to be from Utopia, the floating city that countless people admired. Zhuang Qingyan's lips curled up, casually speaking, long time no see, uncle. Is he really a relative? Lin Yuyu thought inwardly, but judging by the situation, it didn't seem like a reunion between relatives. Since you still acknowledge me as your uncle, then do what you should do. The man breathed heavily, as if he might not catch his breath in the next second. He struggled to lift his hand. One of the starship's rear compartments opened, revealing a giant apparatus with the logo of Qinglan on it. This thing has been sealed for thirteen years. If you unlock it, I'll let you go. What is that? Song Ku secretly asked the mechanical expert, Lu Xiaoyu. Lu Xiaoyu answered, obviously, it's a storage hub. Song Ku exclaimed in surprise, so big? Zhuang Qinyan looked at the familiar hub, and his smile gradually disappeared, his eyes deepening. Seeing that Zhuang Qinyan was still not making a move, the man looked up at the sky. Anxious and excited, his voice trembled as he urged, hurry up, unlock the hub before they arrive. Uncle, don't bother, Zhuang Qinyan mocked with a smirk. You're so afraid of death, but aren't you living quite well? I remember you like philosophy, right? Life is just an illusion death is the only truth. Don't believe those rumors. Dying early or dying late, you'll still die. Why not retire peacefully in Utopia and stay away from these matters? The man couldn't contain his anger and shouted his name in utter frustration, Siejua. Siejua. These two words were like a spell, casting a momentary silence over the entire scene. Zhuang Qingyan's heart skipped a beat, and he reflexively looked at Song Ku. But soon, he froze. Song Ku was surprisingly the calmest among everyone. There was no hint of surprise on her face, as if she hadn't heard those two forbidden words. She waved the blade threateningly at the territorial awakener. Xia Ping trembled all over, his face turning purple. He was on the verge of fainting, and his assistant quickly handed over a respirator. Do you do you after thirteen years, have you never felt any guilt? He exclaimed. The Eternal Life Project has stagnated because of you. The entire Beijun has remained secluded because of you. Are you so selfish and indifferent, disregarding your father's wishes, insisting on going your own way, and watching humanity march towards destruction? Uncle, please step aside. Song Ku spoke softly, and a burst of blue light flashed in her palm. The blade flew out of her hand, the thread of piercing through the heart of the initiator of blood-red building blocks. At the critical moment, another awakener used his body to block the attack. Song Ku smiled innocently, her dimples showing. Hurry up, go home. Chapter, 238 500 Years of Imprisonment Xia Ping's fingers trembled as he pressed down on the face mask, taking a deep breath. The exhaled hot breath blurred the sight, and Song Ku's figure alternated between clarity and fuzziness. In both appearance and temperament, she didn't seem like a powerful S7 level. Song Ku had slender shoulders, a small face, and large, round eyes with a standard almond shape. Her smooth chin was tucked into the collar, and her jet black shoulder length hair was casually scattered, with a few mischievous strands sticking up. She looked like an innocent girl who was unfamiliar with the ways of the world, rather than a ruthless killer who could snap an enemy's neck with a single move. However, she was indeed the biggest obstacle, standing in front of Zhuang Qinyan. The fingertips that had just thrown a deadly knife still emitted a chilling murderous intent. Xia Ping took a deep breath, his tone somewhat nostalgic, you and your father both know how to cozy up to powerful figures. Zhuang Qinyan's graceful thin lips curved slightly, as if he couldn't hear the sarcasm, thanks for the compliment, uncle has a discerning eye. 
he never felt ashamed of clinging to Song Ku's thighs instead, he considered it an honor. Xie Ping slowly shook his head, his sickly eyes staring at the familiar face in front of him, it's a pity that even if you cozy up to powerful figures, the result is still the same. Your father, until death no, even after death, can't find peace. Zhuang Qinyan stopped smiling, and his cold eyes were as calm as a deep pool. What time is it? Xie Ping didn't look at him again, turning his head to ask softly. 1758, it's almost dark, the attendant answered considerately. Xie Ping breathed heavily, lifting his eyelids to glance at the sky. Nightfall was imminent, and the radiation concentration continued to increase. Accustomed to the fresh air of Utopia, the pollution and dust in Fennec were too heavy for him. I waited here to persuade you in advance, but now it seems unnecessary. Xie Ping let out a sigh and turned back to the starship, take action. Dozens of agile figures rushed towards V587 like tigers descending a mountain, their sharp eyebrows lowered. They pulled out triage military daggers from their back waist and charged forward with Song Ku. In the melee, Song Ku noticed that the giant central hub was still in place, unable to be retracted into the rear compartment in time. She stared at it directly, contemplating for a moment. The goal of this group of people seemed to be getting Zhuang Qinyan to use his authority to open the central hub. Even at the cost of a significant price, they brought this massive machine from afar. If they didn't want them to succeed, there was actually a simple solution, like what if the central hub accidentally got damaged? Song Ku tightened her waist and abdomen, her back muscles taut. Suddenly, she stepped on the head of a pursuer, leaped high, and the long knife in her palm was about to slash down towards the central hub. Xie Inchi, who had long since hidden in the starship and was the user of blood-red building blocks, made eye contact with Song Ku through the porthole, his mouth quirking strangely. Song Ku's eyelids twitched slightly, and she abruptly turned around. She had rushed too fast and had distanced herself from Zhuang Qinyan and the others, but turning back would only take three or four seconds. However, at this moment, there was a drastic upheaval in the surrounding scene, like disassembled scattered building blocks swiftly moving and reassembling. In the next second, the central hub disappeared, Xie Ping and the others disappeared, Zhuang Qinyan also disappeared. It was as if different layers of a Rubik's Cube were turning, and everyone was moved to the front, leaving her alone at the back. Xie Ping's final words, take action, were not meant to kill Zhuang Qinyan at all. It was an order to the blood-red building blocks. No wonder the Awakeners who blocked the knife just now was willing to sacrifice himself to protect Xie Inchi. In the vast desolate crater, only Song Ku remained, holding her knife and looking around with a bewildered heart. Xiao Xing. Old Fang. Yu Yu. Su Cha. She called out the names of her teammates one by one, but the surroundings were empty, and there was no response. Zhuang Qinyan. Song Ku looked to the left, where a tilted skyscraper hung in midair with dust falling. Looking to the right, a half-cut ship rushed up a rugged mountain top, and rocks rolled down. The scenes were surreal and disjointed. Song Ku took out the small B terminal, opened the group chat for V587, but there was no signal. Communication in C26 Fennec, and even B25 Lozen, the entire Lok region, was cut off. She closed her eyes, forcing herself to calm down. Suddenly, she thought of something and without hesitation, pulled down the zipper, dragging the jacket along with the shirt to her shoulders. On the inner side of her left arm, a lifelike mechanical ladybug embedded in the skin tissue, its protruding compound eyes turning slightly. It works, Song Ku sighed in relief. She then reached for the black collar around her neck and found the microphone, pressing it down. Lu Xiaoyu. Russell, Russell. After a chaotic wave of sound, a familiar voice came through, Captain. Where are you guys? Song Ku asked urgently. Lu Xiaoyu's response was intermittent, and his tone was not as casual as usual, instead filled with seriousness. I've located your position, 30 kilometers away from us. Zhuang Qinyan speculates that the cooling time for the blood-red building blocks is around 10 minutes. The longer it takes, the farther you might be teleported. Listen to my directions, try to meet up with us as soon as possible. Alright, you guys hold on, I'll be there soon. 
Song Ku was anxious, running in a certain direction. In just two seconds, in the midst of Lu Xiaoyu's series of reversed, reversed, she swiftly turned around. Taking a lesson from Yi Zheng's assassination, which couldn't be reported in time, Lu Xiaoyu had taken precautions and improved their communication devices. Each person had a modified tracking and positioning ladybug implanted in their bodies. This new device he tinkered with used an independent communication frequency, unaffected by terminals, ensuring that V587 could contact each other even in the absence of signals. The scene changed, and Zhuang Qingyan's group of six was teleported elsewhere. At the same time, a deep spatial crack was torn open in the surrounding building blocks, and hundreds of black star ships teleported in. What's that? Lin Yuyu's eyelids twitched incessantly, and the addressing system was temporarily confused, you, you, Xie Zhuang what kind of trouble did you cause? What, are you scared? Zhuang Qingyan chuckled. Lin Yuyu choked in her throat, not really, it's not like I haven't seen the world. Zhuang Qingyan's expression was surprisingly calm, I told you that you could run anytime, but it's not safe now. Hold on until the captain arrives. The standard starships of the Alliance were uniformly silver-white, while the black starships were reassigned after the retrieval by EU, the exclusive symbol of S-level city like Utopia. Why do you always say such pessimistic words? Are you deliberately trying to provoke me? Lin Yuyu stomped her foot in annoyance. Not pessimistic words, Zhuang Qingyan's eyes gradually darkened. Be mentally prepared for the worst. The opponent won't come empty-handed. As soon as he finished speaking, nearly a hundred awakeners jumped down from the sky. Prepare for battle, Zhuang Qingyan said coldly. Due to the randomness of the blocks, Su Xing happened to be standing at the edge, facing a young man in a white sportswear with hands in his pockets. Su Xing didn't dare to be careless. His awakened energy formed into a blizzard, blocking the opponent's way. A cold-blooded assassin would naturally not show mercy to a child. Oh. Ice element. The young man glanced at Su Xing with interest and then swiftly made his move. Rocks shattered, hail the size of cannonballs poured like a torrential rain. Su Xing condensed an ice shield to withstand the damage, maneuvering and dodging amidst the loud cracking sounds. This young man turned out to be an ice element awakener too, and an S level one at that. Su Xing treated him as a formidable enemy, his lips turning pale from the pressure. Su Cha was blocked by a group of all A-level Awakeners. Their faces were unfamiliar, but their aura was very familiar the cruelty of mercenaries. The leading middle-aged woman glanced at the black snake tattoo on Su Cha's neck and snorted coldly, Are you a deserter? The rainforest is ashamed of you. I'm not, Su Cha said, his spine straight, each word enunciated. People who legally leave the rainforest will have their tattoos erased. Do you have the face to say you're not? Another person looked at him disdainfully. Doesn't matter. Consider it cleaning up a traitor. Our mission this time is to kill you. Veins bulged on Su Cha's hand as he swiftly swung his knife. Nice to see you again. A familiar young man surrounded by the ability prism greeted them. Lu Xiaoyu's gaze fell on his special operations uniform, and after a moment of thought, he suddenly realized, I don't remember. Who are you? Roy, who had clashed with V587 in Mu City before, fell into silence. Then, he spoke in a deep voice, I've checked you, Lu Xiaoyu. The genius rarely seen in a century, from the Urjia's Lu family, the first successful modification of the initial genetic selection plan. The last test record was six years ago when you were S5 level. What about now? Been in prison for too long, forgot, why don't you take a guess? Lu Xiaoyu replied nonchalantly. His jet black hair receded like a tide, revealing a defiant silver glow. His tea colored eyes turned into inorganic ice blue pupils, as if a dormant withered tree had awakened. Behind Lu Xiaoyu, a towering network of data branches, with a code flood of 101,010, emerged. Roy, a mere S3 level awakener, was utterly powerless to resist. The prism shattered with a thunderous noise, and he fell to the ground, spitting out blood. Korta, Zhuang Qingyan looked at the approaching awakener and calmly spoke. 
V587 members moved their palms simultaneously, showing a well-coordinated action. Each of them pulled out a large-sized loudspeaker that resembled a sound system, standing apart from each other. The six of them acted in unison, first quickly inserting something into their own ears, then pressing the play button. The mysterious chordal wave was triggered. The six loudspeakers played simultaneously, making it difficult even for an S-level awakener to resist. Their consciousness gradually dispersed into nothingness, and their steps became stiff, resembling the walking dead. The one in the front clutched their head in pain and stumbled down in an instant. The six surrounded individuals finally had a moment to catch their breath. Squeak clang. The ear-piercing noise abruptly stopped. Smoke rose from the six loudspeakers, and the playback program was completely destroyed. A person walked slowly from the distant landing starship, or rather, it shouldn't be called a person because he was just a clear holographic projection. A man with silver hair, ice-blue eyes, wearing frameless glasses, appearing to be around forty years old. He exuded an elegant temperament, but at this moment, his brow was furrowed, and his face was filled with anger. You evildoer, why don't you come back with me and confess your sins? Lu Xiaoyu's movements halted, and he sneered mockingly, lifting the corner of his mouth, Hey, Mr. Patriarch. The person who arrived was none other than the magistrate of District B8 Urjia, Lu Chiosuo. Lu Chiosuo no longer had a physical body. He could manifest as a solid projection here, and there was only one possibility. Lu Xiaoyu thought of this and looked up at the starship he came out of. There was a chilling gaze through Lu Chiosuo's eyes, accurately locking onto him. I see you. A sigh seemed to resonate from the depths of the soul. Clearly gentle, yet it made Lu Xiaoyu's hair stand on end. Chapter, 239 500 Years of Imprisonment Su Xing rolled backward, trying to evade, but he didn't manage to completely dodge it. A sharp pain surged like an electric shock to his ankle. With a thud, he fell awkwardly to the ground. His entire lower leg was frozen in place, and due to the freezing effect, he didn't feel anything at first. Until a clear crack sound came, Su Xing knew that his lower leg was broken. Like a young lion resisting stubbornly despite numerous wounds, Su Xing struggled to climb up. Without shouting or crying, his big eyes held tears. He knew it wasn't the time to cry now, enduring the urge to drop golden beans. He just stared fiercely at the white-clad youth. Not bad, stronger than I was at your age. Give you another ten years, maybe you can reach S level. Unfortunately, not all children are fortunate enough to grow up, the white-clad youth squatted in front of him, gripping Su Xing's chin. His words were venomous, like snake hisses. You can only live until today. Sharp ice blades condensed into a massive pair of scissors, aiming at Su Xing's tender neck. It was about to fall when. Thinking of you, every day is sunny casting warmth into my heart. At a critical moment, an ethereal voice rang out, and a golden sun rose in the area where the two were, growing increasingly hot. In an instant, it melted the scissor made of ice and snow. The scene of a sun rising in the dark night was already incredibly strange. With the glaring light becoming more and more dazzling, the white-clad youth sweated profusely and instinctively raised his hand to shield his eyes. It was then that Fang Jishu rushed over, scooped up Su Xing, and ran away with him in his arms. Su Xing hugged his shoulders, unable to hold back his sobs. I can't beat him I'm so useless. Fang Jishu awkwardly patted Su Xing's head, and when he touched his dislocated leg, he quickly fixed it with a click. Sieswa Sieswa I'm here I'm here. Someone was calling his name. Across the distant space, Zhuang Qinyan met the gaze of a brown-haired, green-eyed woman holding a slowly swinging clock in her hand. In that instant of eye contact, ripples appeared in Zhuang Qinyan's pupils, and his gaze couldn't move away. Gentle mental power, like a tiny brush, resonated in his mind. The other party should be an S-level awakener of the mental ability. Ability, Hypnosis. Zhuan Qingyan's eyes were clear, and he smiled at her. The corner of his mouth was cold. In the next moment, the cold and merciless mental power entered her mind, crushing everything ruthlessly. No one noticed that two mental awakeners were engaged in a life-and-death battle. 
The brown-haired woman on the starship had her pupils shrink, gradually turning into a straight line, and she fell backward stiffly. The clock in her hand hit the ground, stopping its ticking. Zhuang Qingyan's blood surged, suppressing the bloody air in his throat. Mr. Gu. Sophia is dead. The scene was transmitted back to a seemingly inconspicuous starship in the fleet. The shadow silently waved his hand, and the guards took away the body of the deceased hypnotist. The communication interface sounded, the key has participated in the genetic optimization plan. The registration information at that time was unsuccessful. Now, it seems that he should be an early awakener. Mental awakeners lack effective attack methods. They only gain the ability to deliver a fatal blow when condensing their abilities to a certain degree. Sophia, the deceased hypnotist, was an S5 level awakener in Utopia. The fact that the key was an awakener had already surprised them, but no one expected his level to be above S5. Mr. Gu, do you need me to take action? The shadow interrupted the person on the other end of the communication, no, extracting memories from him will result in loss. I need complete information. I want to clearly understand what the core secrets of the fire seed were back then. Yes. What about the storage hub of the Xie family? Arrival in 2 minutes and 15 seconds. Every time the blood red building block was activated, it required a 10 minute cooldown. After the next recombination, Xie Inji would teleport the hub. Two minutes later, the space twisted again, and more than a dozen starships appeared in the sky. Another secret communication connected. Mr. Gu, Xie Ping has made some moves behind the scenes. He wants to contact the key privately. Mr. Gu's voice was calm, let him be. Xie Ping doesn't understand his nephew, and even less so his niece. Even if they have blood ties, the other party won't surrender peacefully. Another recombination occurred, and five S-level awakeners descended from the sky, rushing towards Shuang Qinyan. Their hair and eyes varied, but without exception, they were powerful attack-type awakeners, with levels ranging from S5 to S6. In the dim light, half of Zhuang Qinyan's face was shrouded in shadow, and a handsome smile appeared at the corner of his mouth. Are you all international mercenaries? Let me guess, you received a commission from Utopia. Why are you meddling in the internal affairs of the New Asia Alliance? This mission is tough and unrewarding. Be careful, there might be no return, and the reward might be your life. Think about it carefully. If it were really easy, why wouldn't the Alliance take it, and instead it falls to you? His words seemed to carry an inexplicable fascination. Those who heard them felt their minds confused, their thoughts swaying as if there was a twisted logic. Zhuang Qinyan observed the surrounding environment intently, preparing to find an opening to escape when his pupils suddenly contracted. A metal cable pierced through the air, moving at an extremely fast speed with no escape possible. At the critical moment, Lin Yuyu applied a speed boost buff, and Zhuang Qinyan rolled in a distressed manner, his shirt stained with blood and stains. The fierce iron chain brushed past his ear, turning sharply and stabbing straight at him. Golden-rimmed glasses fell to the ground, shattered in the chaos, and Su Cha emerged from the shadows, blocking with a sword. His six-foot-tall figure flew out like a cannonball, rolling dozens of meters away and crashing heavily to the ground. The iron chain gradually condensed into a human shape, and a teenager airing a vulture uniform appeared before everyone. Don't be fooled he's just a smooth talker, a voice warned. The teenager's eyes showed no emotion, his skin pale, and the emblem on his chest so dark it seemed to have absorbed much blood. Zhuang Qinyan frowned deeply he couldn't sense the teenager's awakened energy, and a chill climbed up his spine. This is an S7. Fang Jishu helped up the fallen Su Cha and quickly treated him. Kill the healer, the teenager said coldly. Surrounding awakeners woke up like from a dream, launching attacks without hesitation. The short Su Xing suddenly rushed over, desperately creating an ice wall to block the attacks. However, being only A1 level, even if he exerted all his strength, how could he withstand a group of S-level individuals? The ice wall shattered into debris in less than a second, and both Su Xing and Fang Jishu were sent flying. The S-level ice element awakener's eyes erupted with cruel light. Little brat, die. Swish. 
A dark blue spear descended from above, piercing through the heart of the white-clad youth, pinning him in midair. The fierce force dragged him for over ten meters, finally deeply embedding him into the soil. The man looked in shock at his chest, gasping in pain. Before he could catch his breath, his breathing was cut off. Dead. The whole scene was shocking. A slender figure appeared at the edge of the building blocks, with two huge spiritual weapons originally crossed on her back, one now missing. She had already taken off her coat, drenched in sweat, her jet black hair sticking to her fair neck, showing signs of exhaustion from a long journey. It was Song Ku. The building blocks had a sequence of movement, and Xie Inquan couldn't assemble all the blocks to the desired positions at once. He had exhausted all his efforts to minimize the time, but Song Ku's pursuit speed far exceeded his imagination. Awakeners on the scene stared at the panting S7 level in disbelief, involuntarily taking a step back. Song Ku helped up Su Cha, Fang Jishu, and Su Xing, then turned her head and gave Zhuang Qinyan a seemingly indifferent glance. Zhuang Qinyan, you know. Song Ku raised her hand to interrupt him, who who I know. Zhuang Qinyan paused, shook his head with a smile, when did you know? Uh, Song Ku tilted her head, well, that someone, Lu Xiaoyu, told me. Lu Xiaoyu, who finally arrived and saw the captain. The air seemed to freeze as Song Cook casually walked to the side of the Ice Element Awakener's corpse, slowly pulling out the dark blue spear. One, two, three she even earnestly counted a circle, creating a more imposing scene than when she fought against Yi Zhang's assassins. The blood-red building block's refresh time arrived, and another scene was pieced together, with a dozen or so Awakeners jumping down. Real Simon sat in one of the starships, eagerly watching Song Ku. Because she wasn't wearing a coat, the wound on her abdomen was clearly visible, with only a gruesome scar and no bleeding. Strange lights flickered in Simon's eyes as he muttered to himself, I know, I know what her second ability is. Simon had conducted a thorough study on dual ability awakeners, including his subordinate Punk, and the diviner Veronica. Dual abilities, one manifest and one hidden, would not be of the same type due to magnetic field relationships. If the manifest ability is an attacking type, then the hidden ability could only be support, control, or body enhancement. Based on existing evidence, Song Ku couldn't have awakened two powerful attack abilities. It was deduced that her hidden ability was the body enhancement ability body healing. This meant that their originally planned conventional methods couldn't kill her. However, Punk had almost killed Song Ku before, and Simon's fingers spasmed with excitement. The other person present at that time was Azure Phoenix. With strict military discipline, Azure Phoenix hadn't disclosed the secret, meaning he was the only one here who knew how to kill Song Ku. Simon's hooked nose twitched rapidly, his legs shaking on the seat. Commander, do you want to contact Mr. Gu for communication? The secretary beside him asked softly. No, wait for a while, Simon subconsciously stopped her, wait for the best opportunity. Approaching quarter past six, the sky had turned completely dark, and a resonant synthesized voice echoed through the loudspeakers for everyone to hear. As per the approval of the Supreme Prosecutor's Office of the New Asia Alliance, the first level wanted criminal Siejua, male. 28 years old, biological ID, NOC 1100520, native of Beijing, born on September 15, new calendar year 19, is now under arrest. Siejua, 13 years ago, illicitly fled with classified information. With conclusive evidence, based on legal standards, you are charged with crimes against humanity, antisocial crimes, illegally exploiting state secrets for personal gain, with extremely heinous circumstances never seen before. You will be arrested and sentenced to 500 years of imprisonment. The sky was filled with black starships, and below was the abandoned city of Lok. This place was far from the mainland, remote and desolate, devoid of any signs of life. Seven figures stood within the encirclement, destined for a confrontation with a vast difference in strength. Song Ku regained her composure, wiped the blood off the long spear, and chuckled softly, 500 years, that's a bit much. She turned her head, clear eyes looking at Zhuang Qinyan, with a small dimple forming on her cheek. There's something I lied about. Sorry. 
Zhuan Qinyan raised his gaze to meet hers, his handsome features deep and profound. His voice was husky, and facing Song Ku, he found it difficult to speak, what is it? Song Ku didn't answer immediately she turned her head to stretch her shoulders, muttering continuously, blame you, I rarely lie, but because of you, I've been corrupted. A year ago, that night they returned from the U Lab laboratory. The two who hadn't yet become close sat side by side at the end of the apartment bed, looking at the hazy night outside. Chuang Qinyan asked her. If one day, the entire alliance is after me, everyone wants me dead, what would you do? Would you save me? Hmm. Would you? At that time, Song Ku looked into his eyes and shook her head firmly. No. A year later, Song Ku slowly removed her isolation mask. The slight radiation stimulation caused her blood vessels to burn, and her awakened energy kept surging. The environment here faintly brought back a familiar feeling. Her eyes glowed with a blue light. Song Ku no longer restrained herself. The terrifying pressure erupted like an explosion, magnificent and vast. The world changed its colors, the instruments inside hundreds of star ships went haywire, lights flickered, and the awakeners paled. This is S8. For a while, terrified shouts echoed through the sky. Chapter, 240 I can activate the central hub. As night fell, with dim moonlight, District C-26 Fennec fell into a silent stillness. Three grandsons and one grandpa dashed along the border but always inexplicably shifted, unable to leave for a long time. Fan Peng was alternately carried on the back by Xiao Chen and Xiong Mingchen, and the straight back of Duan Mu Qi appeared intermittently in front of them. Although he had lost his right arm, Fan Peng could still feel the phantom limbs piercing pain. Fan Peng sweated profusely and smiled reassuringly at his companions, I remember when the apocalypse just arrived, you guys carried me like this. At the beginning of the apocalypse, Fan Peng lay in bed with a high fever. His mother went out to find medicine and never came back. Outside the bedroom were zombies banging on the door. When he was desperate and ready to die, his childhood friend Duan Mu Qi, with Xiao Chen and Xiong Mingcheng, smashed the anti-theft window and broke in. The three of them were also feverish, but without saying a word, they picked him up and escaped. Xiao Chen's legs were shaking when he carried him, and Xiong Mingcheng even held a rolling pin. Fan Peng lived in a densely populated old city area, and looking down from the window was full of zombies. They supported each other and fought their way out. After finally finding a shelter, the four of them collapsed on the ground, each more miserable than the other. The roar of zombies echoed in their ears, and Fan Peng, who still had a persistent fever, thought in a daze, this damn life is too bitter. If I can survive this, I'll definitely find a quiet place to sleep. However, the world is tough, and even such a simple wish is hard to fulfill. Even though they awakened supernatural abilities, they were not omnipotent. The refuge they found soon fell victim to the zombie tide, forcing Fan Peng to wander, but fortunately, the four of them always stayed together. Xiong Mingcheng clenched his teeth, patted Fan Peng's back, and said hoarsely, Pengzi, you are not allowed to sleep. They had been on the run for more than half an hour, experiencing three scene changes. Because he didn't receive any treatment, Fan Peng's breath became weaker and weaker. Fan Peng mumbled, Brother Chen, let's discuss something. When we get to District B, let me share a room with Aki. Xiao Chen suddenly lowered his head, his voice choked, Okay, I'll let you. Fan Peng's consciousness was already hazy. District B, ah, uh, after a year of struggle, they finally accumulated enough points to go to District B. In a vague hallucination, Fan Peng saw the bonfire burning on that night in Huang Yuan, and heard Song Ku vividly narrating. She said that people could sunbathe in the sunshine at the northern base, the garden apartments were given for free, big and beautiful, the three-dimensional subway was easy to get dizzy on, it's best to sit in the back row for the first time. What else was there? Oh, remembered there's also an underground entertainment space specifically for activities of Awakeners, but you have to follow the rules, or else an organization called the Awakener Department will take you away and lock you up. Fan Ping silently grinned, he was sure to follow the rules. In the three grandsons and one grandpa, he was the most rule-abiding. Approaching the Fennec border once again, triggered by an unknown factor, 
the surrounding scenes rearranged like building blocks, and the four were transported to an unfamiliar place. Oh, damn it. Duan Muchi abruptly stopped, cursing with red eyes because in front of them, there were pursuers dressed in vulture uniforms. The black-clad woman with the codename Blood Bat squinted her slender eyes, without a word, an invisible kite string slipped from her hand. Remember go to District B for me. No one expected that Fan Peng would suddenly slide down from Cheong Mingqing's back and forcefully push the three of them, saying, go quickly. His awakened energy erupted, bravely rushing towards the opponent. Blood Bat raised her wrist, pulled inwards, the kite string tightened, instantly cutting through the skin, severing veins, embedding deeply into flesh and blood. Fan Peng's robust body was dismembered inch by inch, and the pieces of flesh fell like flower petals. Those kite strings were finally dyed a blood-like crimson, the attack trajectory revealing no escape. Fan Peng used death to exchange a glimmer of hope for his companions. Xiao Chen and Xiong Mingqing dodged with difficulty, their eyes almost tearing apart, Pengzi. Duan Mu Qi's heart was twisted like a knife, but he still gritted his teeth and took out the last crystal quickly, swiftly inserting it into the groove. A flash of light, the camping lamp came into play, and the three were about to escape. The wolf spider's gaze turned cold, lips moving, a phantom of a patterned spider shrouded the camping lamp, spitting out a strong corrosive secretion from its silk sack. Tiny cracks appeared on the surface of the level 4 crystal, and spatial ability faintly fluctuated. Xiong Mingqing's pupils contracted, swinging his knife to shatter the patterned spider. The phantom screamed in agony, and its pincers pierced through his fingernails. Random teleportation took effect, and the three disappeared on the spot. The wolf spider reported hoarsely, two left, continue the pursuit. He nonchalantly considered Xiong Mingqing as good as dead, having been affected by the corrosive toxin of the patterned spider, that guy wouldn't survive. Blood Bat retracted her ability, her expression indifferent. The activation condition for that device is a level 4 crystal. They won't escape many times. Just an ordinary B-level team, how many precious level 4 crystals could they possibly have? They were destined to die sooner or later. Gazing coldly at Fan Peng's mutilated corpse, Gustav, who was observing from the sidelines, couldn't help but frown. The special task force was also mobilized to participate in this siege, and he wasn't clear about the full details of the mission. However, he felt sincere disgust at working alongside the vultures. These people were cold-blooded and selfish, resorting to any means necessary. Compared to the highly esteemed Azure Phoenix, they were like rats in a gutter, always criticized and despised. In the three grandsons and one grandpa, they fell into an abandoned radiation sinkhole, quickly getting back on their feet. No more crystals, Duan Mu Qi said with a solemn expression. Don't head towards the border. There's a domain type awakener here, we must figure out a way to break through first. Xiao Chen wiped his face and saw Qiong Mingqing on the opposite side, seemingly lost in thought. Mingqing, what's wrong? Ah. Uh, nothing, Qiong Mingqing replied, clenching his fist behind his back. After investigating separately, Xiao Chen and Duan Mu Qi reunited. Aki, there are signs of a battle nearby, like those left by V587. Duan Mu Qi thought for a moment. The land should be randomly shifting. Let's try to stay at the edge maybe we'll run into them. Xiao Chen nodded. No time to waste, let's go. Just as the two were about to find Qiong Mingqin, someone softly called their names from behind, Aki, Brother Chen. Xiong Mingqing half of his body melted into the shadows, unmoving, his face unusually pale. Mingqing, come over quickly let's leave this place, Duan Mu Qi urged. Xiong Mingqing grinned, looking worse than crying. I might, like Pengzi, not be able to go to District B either. Duan Mu Qi and Xiao Chen's expressions froze. What nonsense are you talking about? Xiong Mingqing took a step forward, revealing his entire figure, and in a short time, half of his body had turned into corpse water. What was initially just a minor wound from piercing his fingernail, the intense corrosion had taken away his life. Xiong Mingqing, with tears in his eyes, looked at his dear friends with a smile. It's better now. No need to argue. The two of you can share a room. You must, you must strive to survive. 
The corrosion speed increased rapidly, and the two helplessly watched as Cheong Mingcheng turned into a puddle of corpse water before their eyes. No. With companions dying one after another, the instantaneous despair overwhelmed Duan Machi. He screamed, and thorns uncontrollably slammed into the ground. Xiao Chen's chest heaved, tightly holding onto Duan Mu Qi's shoulders. Aki, don't let them down. Duan Mu Qi clutched the camping lamp, his fingertips trembling. After a long silence, he said, let's go. Song Ku stood in front of Zhuang Qinyan, facing the siege of 5S5 to S6 Awakeners alone. She carried two enormous weapons on her back, standing still like a trapped beast. However, her expression remained calm, and although the trapped beast trembled, the Awakeners were shocked and speechless. S8 S8, the powerful attack type Awakener. This would be an unprecedented fierce battle. They were all foreign mercenaries, well aware that, not only the New Asia Alliance but the person in front of them probably represented the world's highest combat power. No one dared to take it lightly. The five simultaneously launched their strongest attack abilities, deadly attacks aimed at Song Ku and Zhuang Qinyan. The overlapping brilliance of their abilities made it impossible to open their eyes, instantly engulfing Song Ku's slender figure. Five super attacks, a surging tide of energy, enough to level everything, even the strongest defense type awakener would likely be crushed into pieces. Boom boom. The collision of multiple attacks produced an earth shattering explosion and dense black smoke rose into the night sky. It had worked. The Awakeners rejoiced, blurting out. The world's first S8 level, killed so easily by them. But in the next second, a faint blue light streaked through the rolling thick smoke. A massive shield appeared out of thin air, rotating rapidly, absorbing all the damage in an instant. The violent explosion subsided abruptly, and the remaining awakened energy crackled. Then, a fair and beautiful hand extended from the edge, snapped its fingers, and the shield split into numerous arrow feathers, sweeping forward. The five awakeners retreated in a panic, looking at her in disbelief, exclaiming in shock, how is this possible, no medium transformation. Metal manipulation was universally recognized as a powerful attack type ability. They had seen awakeners who could transform objects into weapons, but without exception, they required a medium. However, Song Ku was different. It was as if she had transcended this limitation, exhibiting a mesmerizing control over awakened energy. Even without direct contact with objects, the surrounding radiation could be utilized by her to condense into any weapon according to her will. The smoke cleared, and Song Ku stood in place. She casually patted Zhuang Qingyan's dusty shirt. It's going to get messy stay back a bit. Zhuang Qinyan rubbed Song Ku's burned back with his fingertips, his eyes darkened. Still, he obediently responded, I'll listen to you. Be careful. Song Ku moved forward slowly, adjusting her neck and wrists as she walked. It's my turn now. As soon as she spoke, she effortlessly pulled out a long spear with one hand. Like a cheetah, she swiftly pounced forward. With extreme speed and strength, the opponent had no time to react. The sharp spear had already pierced through the enemy's throat, blood splattering. First one, Song Ku counted. A yellow earth ring rose from under her feet, firmly imprisoning her arms, making her unable to move. Song Ku's foot tapped lightly, quickly stepping forward, and with the explosive power of her waist and abdomen, she bent her knee. Kicked the opponent's chin. Cracked the crisp sound of bones breaking echoed, and broken teeth mixed with half of the tongue fell. The lower half of the person's face instantly became a bloody mess. Although Song Ku's arms were bound, it did not affect her movements. She pivoted on her foot, performing a quick turnaround like a swallow. She leaped into the air and executed a spinning kick. The third person was kicked away, and the sole of her foot suddenly revealed a shiny wolf tooth knife. She fiercely chopped down. The opponent was cut off from bottom to top, the spine severed, blood and internal organs spurted into the air, dripping down in a mist of blood. In the blood mist, Song Ku's expression was icy, her face like a fierce demon. Second one, she continued to count. Her feet never stopped, and her hands were not idle either. 
She held a blue blade between her fingertips, cutting back and forth, skillfully carving out a small opening with her powerful ability. Then, she freed up her hand, drew a cold and elegant jagged blade, and with a swift motion, the blade glittered with cold light. Overwhelming with absolute force, the sturdy earth ring crumbled. The earth element awakener spat out blood from his mouth, and Song Ku, with a swift motion, cut off his head. Third one. The desperate mercenary turned the surroundings into mud. Song Ku lifted her leg to sweep away the mud, covering everyone's vision. She hooked the dropped long spear with her toes, kicked it up, and grabbed the collar of one person with her hand. Head down, she pressed it into the muddy ground. The spear tip pierced through his chest. Fourth one. The awakener with the mangled chin tried to turn and run, but suddenly his mind went blank. Zhuang Qinyan remained calm, and with one stroke, he stabbed into his head. Blood soaked through the light-colored shirt, and the handsome face revealed a hint of cold ruthlessness. Fifth one. Zhuang Qinyan followed Song Ku in counting. Shaking off the mud, Song Ku looked at Zhuang Qinyan with a playful smile, as if to say, you're dirty too. With bodies strewn about and blood forming a river, the five top-level awakeners died on the spot. Who was the hunter? Who was the prey? Just as a slight smile appeared on Song Ku's lips, her expression froze in an instant. A deadly iron chain swooped down, its chilling murderous intent almost tangible. Song Ku shifted her body to dodge, and the chain quickly turned back, heading towards Shuang Qinyan. Hindered by the heavy mud, Song Ku jumped out without hesitation, throwing herself to protect Shuang Qinyan. The spikes on the chain grazed her left shoulder, tearing off a layer of flesh. The S7 teenager from Vulture appeared in place, his emotionless gaze fixed on Song Ku. In standard alliance language, he said, you have weaknesses, and those with weaknesses are destined to lose. The blood from her shoulder dripped onto Zhuang Qinyan's jade-like face. Song Ku smiled at him and used her sleeve to wipe away the blood. She rolled over and stood up. I won't lose. In the high-altitude starship fleet, an impromptu command meeting was underway. At the moment, it seems that Song Ku's desire to protect the key is too strong. It's challenging to interrogate her by bypassing this. She registered as an S7 not long ago. How could she rise so quickly? Could there be a breakthrough in Ning Rong's research? Someone murmured. The promotion of S-level awakeners not only relied on accumulated strength but also on opportunities. The average time for each level from S1 to S5 required 3 to 5 years. S6 and above levels were even more unpredictable. Song Ku, not being an early awakener, started at S7. Yet, who could easily ascend from S7 to S8 within just a year? The shadowy figure, Mr. Gu, gazed at the ever-changing spiritual weapons in Song Ku's hands through the screen. We can't let her freely transform. Iron chain will be used to restrain her first. Is flame on its way? It's on the way and expected to arrive in 17 minutes and 31 seconds. 17 minutes and 31 seconds, roughly the gap between two activations of blood red building blocks. Chapter 241 I can activate the central hub. Bang, bang. The bodies on the ground constantly exploded with blood blossoms, and the sharp edges of the surrounding scenes diminished, becoming more rounded. Zhuang Qingyan's expression became solemn. As long as the blood red building blocks existed, everything happening here would remain unknown, and they had to find a way to decipher it. The teenager, Iron Chain, stared darkly at Song Ku, and a strange smile curled on his lips. Is that so? But your teammates have already lost. Song Ku abruptly turned her head. The situation of Lin Yuyu and others was indeed not very good. It turned out that Fang Zhishu and Su Xing were like little white rabbits in a pack of wolves, huddling together trembling. A group of fierce awakeners rushed over. Lu Xiaoyu wielded the mechanical arm, while Zhuang Qinyan attacked with mental power to both attack and rescue. Iron Chain spoke and transformed into a weapon again, entangling her like a shadow. She could only defend while saving others. Song Ku rushed in front of Su Xing like lightning using a horizontal slash to force the enemy back. 
However, in a moment of distraction, the dark tip pierced through her right forearm. Ignoring the injury, she swung the cold and jagged blade steadily, cutting through the chains with a deafening roar, and both of them retreated. Song Ku looked down, and Su Xing's fair arms were covered in scars, dripping with blood. Does it hurt? She asked softly. No, it doesn't hurt. Su Xing replied resolutely. Can you still walk on your legs? Su Xing's lower leg had just been dislocated by the ice ability, even though Fang Zixiu helped to set it back, he couldn't use it forcefully for a while. It hurt when he tried to stand. Sister, I'm fine. Su Xing shouted loudly. He knew the situation was critical, so he comforted Song Ku in return. Song Ku patted his fluffy head, looked up at Fang Zixiu. His face was somewhat pale due to excessive use of abilities. You're injured, let me treat you, Fang Zixiu said hastily. No need, save some energy, Song Ku pressed down his hand. The small wounds on her back had already healed. She placed the two of them next to Zhuang Qinyan and Lu Xiaoyu, turned around to support Lin Yuyu. At this moment, Lin Yuyu was too busy to take care of herself. Her face was full of shock and anger. There was actually a sound type awakener specifically countering her. Her ability relied on lyrics, but as soon as she sang a few words, the opponent wailed like ghosts and howled like wolves. Lin Yuyu's lips were forcibly sealed, and she struggled to speak. Without support, Su Cha struggled alone against A-level and S-level opponents, covered in wounds. Fang Zixiu couldn't treat him in time. Song Ku descended from the sky, kicking away the strongest S-level with one foot. As soon as she landed, she pressed the face of the middle-aged woman targeting Su Cha into the ground, snapped her neck. And then with a quick turn of her hand, thousands of plum blossom darts condensed out of thin air, piercing through the opponents instantly. 1215, 675, 988, 771, 1008, 321. In the earpiece, Zhuang Qinyan suddenly reported two coordinates. These were the calculated coordinates of the blood red building block's linked core. Once one set of coordinates moved, the other set would be next. If they wanted to escape, they just needed to wait for the blocks to move and seize the opportunity to step into another edge, immediately teleporting away. Song Ku turned her head to meet his gaze. Apart from the two coordinates, Zhuang Qinyan didn't say anything else. Lin Yuyu and others looked confused, but Song Ku instantly understood his intention. Perhaps during this trip, Zhuang Qinyan had already sensed something, which was why he repeatedly reminded his teammates, if there's danger, you can escape. Even in dire situations, he would find a way to create opportunities. At a distance neither too far nor too near, Song Ku nodded firmly at him. Zhuang Qinyan's eyes softened, and he smiled beautifully. Crash! The ruins underfoot collapsed. Song Ku blocked a fatal blow for Su Cha, but her thigh was grazed by an iron chain, tearing off a large piece of flesh. Captain! Song Ku! Song Ku! Three different exclamations sounded simultaneously. Clatter, the blood red building blocks reconfigured. Following the sound, Song Ku looked toward the third voice and coincidentally locked eyes with the dazed Duan Mu Qi and Xiao Chen. In an instant, she understood their situation. Duan Mu Qi suddenly realized that the mission target of these people was V587, which is why they were treated as witnesses and eliminated. Song Ku also understood. Once a domain type ability descended, it would form an independent space. Three grandsons and one grandpa failed to escape in time and were implicated by them. Suddenly, she thought of something and looked at Duan Mu Qi again. Duan Mu Qi tightly held the camping lantern in his arms, covered in cutting wounds all over his body, with pursuers vaguely visible behind him. Originally, he was silently screaming, save save but upon seeing the scene before him, he suddenly fell silent his eyes revealing despair. V587 situation was not much better, no, even worse. In less than a fraction of a second, Song Ku made a decision. She raised her hand, conjuring a giant fan. With a heavy sweep, dust and smoke filled the air, further blurring the already chaotic vision. Song Ku gripped Lin Yuyu's hand and quickly said, next teleportation, 
go to the coordinates and leave. Song Kur. Why are you like this too? Lin Yuyu's cheeks flushed. No, I won't go. What is this? This is betrayal. With Su Cha's talent for hiding, blending into the environment was not a problem. He could keep Lin Yuyu safe for a while, and as soon as the user of the Blood Red building blocks died, they could escape. Song Ku looked at her calmly, shaking her head earnestly. The Mirror Lake matter has been settled you don't owe me. We are teammates. Lin Yuyu's tears blurred instantly. Song Ku knew, even after so long, there had always been a knot in her heart. I can't protect everyone. Listen to the captain and leave first. Song Ku smiled at Lin Yuyu, like the adorable appearance she had when they first met. Find a way to send a message. Su Cha wanted to say something, but Song Ku slapped him on the forehead and pushed him to Lin Yuyu's side. Wait for me outside. Watching the two run towards the coordinates, Song Ku turned to find Lu Xiaoyu. Lu. I'm not going, Lu Xiaoyu spoke first. I have something I must do. Don't stop me. His gaze was incredibly calm, faintly revealing an extreme madness. As the dust settled, endless attacks continued to approach. Song Ku no longer insisted, pressing down on Fang Zhishu and Su Xing's wrists. In their moment of distraction, she lifted one with each hand. Pass. Two people were thrown into Duan Mu Qi and Xiao Chen's arms, subconsciously catching them. Blood Bat and Wolf Spider chased after them. Without a second thought, Song Ku's upper arm muscles surged, and the cold and jagged blade flew into the air, sweeping through the enemy. Faced with absolutely domineering awakened ability, the kite string and corrosive spider were nothing, all shattered to pieces. Reaching into the space, Song Ku pulled out a tightly sealed hemp bag, tossing it to Duan Mu Qi. Take them and leave. The crimson light almost pierced through the surface, shocking Duan Mu Qi into a daze. It was clearly at least 200 or more level 4 crystals. As they proudly displayed the life-saving treasure, Song Ku wrinkled her small face, tightly clutching her own purse, and grumbled, too expensive. I won't use even one of them. The penny-pinching captain, without hesitation, emptied all of her resources to ensure the escape of her teammates. Run first I will take care of the domain-type awakener, Song Ku said to Duan Mu Qi with a serious expression. Duan Mu Qi choked up and nodded, all right. Su Xing realized what was happening, flailing his limbs, tears and snot smearing his face. No. I won't go. I want to be with my sister. Xiao Xing, be good, Song Ku smiled. Sister is strong. Go outside and wait for me, okay? No I don't want to the child refused to listen, struggling incessantly and being tightly held by Xiao Qin. Duan Mu Qi inserted crystals into a groove, activating random teleportation. The four of them disappeared on the spot. Click, the blood-red building blocks moved again. Zhuang Qingyan's calculations were correct Su Cha and Lin Yuyu, standing on the edge, were smoothly teleported away. Two unfamiliar star ships appeared, and the doors opened. S-levels, extending endlessly into the distance, stared menacingly below. The previous attack was indeed just a probe. With the final puzzle piece in place, the entire pursuing team revealed themselves. Zhuang Qingyan's heart sank gradually. This quantity did they transport all the S-levels from Utopia here. On the starship hovering in the sky, cold commands were issued one after another. Prepare for a total assault, prioritize killing the S-8. Six people are escaping Vulture team, clear them immediately, no witnesses. Mr. Gu, Flame, is here. The chaotic scene now only had three people left, one S8 and two S6. Song Ku's skin was covered with dreadful lacerations, crisscrossing all over. Only her left leg remained intact. Having spent too much awakened energy in the recent rescue, Song Ku reached into her pocket, pinched something inside, and looked ahead. The second S7. A stunning woman sat at the door of the starship, around twenty years old, wearing vulture uniform, with a flame totem on her forehead. Her gaze firmly locked onto Song Ku. She was the highest-ranking awakener among the opponents, codenamed Flame. 
The Awakener codenamed Flame lightly opened her crimson lips, chanting a requiem for the departed souls. Before this operation, they carefully studied the report of the assassination attempt on Yi Zheng. Even when Song Ku was still as seven, she could single-handedly take on hundreds of opponents. Surrounding her with a crowd tactic would not work unless her ability was severed. But maintaining the severance of the ability of an S8 continuously was far beyond her ability. With the chant of flame, a continuous stream of crimson crystals was delivered into her hands, providing her with a source of energy. Song Ku raised the cold and jagged blade to the level of her eyebrows, confronting the opponent head-on. Flame's ability was very simple, just flame. She didn't even have an offensive means, only serving as a support. However, with the most basic fire ability, she reached the level of S7, making her strength something that no one could underestimate. A towering flame engulfed Song Ku. Jennifer's intense fire was nowhere near comparable. This was a fire attached deep within the soul, capable of burning away the source of all evils in the magnetic field. When it blazed, it could incinerate everything. Blisters formed on Song Ku's hands, and she quickly realized that she couldn't condense the spiritual weapon into shape. Worse still, after the surrounding air burned away, it formed a vacuum-like area, isolating radiation. For a moment, Song Ku couldn't even sense her own awakened energy. Fire overcomes metal. When an ability is refined to the extreme, even facing an S8, it can temporarily suppress it. In terms of strength, Flame was not Song Ku's match, but her role was only to restrain and prevent Song Ku's ability from taking effect. Losing the formidable spiritual weapon and the domineering awakened energy, Song Ku was just an ordinary person with bare hands. Song Ku's pause was only a moment, but it was enough. Hundreds of S-levels rushed over like wolves. She shattered the abdomen of the opponent in front of her with a punch, cleanly killing a dozen people. However, without weapons, she gradually fell into a disadvantage. Iron chain pierced through the wheelchair of Lu Xiaoyu, the dense code wall disappeared, and Lu Xiaoyu fell to the ground in a sorry state. The frail young man, who had lost his legs, couldn't stand on his own and could only crawl on all fours. Like a slow-motion scene from a movie, Song Ku rolled on the ground, the clear sounds of every rib breaking in her body echoing distinctly. A foot stepped on her head, applying force downward. The sharp iron chain pierced through her shoulder blades. It was iron chain. His shape-shifting ability could transform any part of his body. The youth coldly said, you've lost. As the iron chain was about to pierce through Song Ku, a bony and slender hand gripped the middle section, preventing it from taking the next step. Blood flowed down the chain, hot liquid dripping onto Song Ku's eyelashes, turning her vision crimson. It was Zhuang Qinyan. He knelt in front of Song Ku, holding the wound that pierced through her, and said heavily, Stop. Zhuang Qinyan looked towards the sky, his voice light and steady, I can activate the central hub, but the condition is, release her first. As this statement was uttered, countless people in the starship instantly sat up straight. Iron Chain received the order and reluctantly retracted the chain. The central hub with the Qinlan logo quickly appeared and smoothly stopped in front. Zhuang Qinyan took out a new wheelchair from the space and helped Lu Xiaoyu sit back. Then he returned to the battered Song Ku, gently holding her and whispering by her ear like a lover, Song Ku, at three o'clock direction, the third ship from the right, the user of the blood-red building blocks is there. I'll control flame. You have thirty seconds to kill him. Song Ku nodded silently. Zhuang Qinyan lifted her face, lightly kissed her forehead, and then stood up, striding towards the central hub. My father, the father of the Alliance's genetic engineering, the founder of the Qinlan Research Institute, Vincent Zhuang, sealed all his life's efforts and research results in this central hub. The core of the eternal life plan that you want, Zhuang Qinyan lightly tapped the shell with his fingertip. And the small sound echoed in the entire open space, along with permanent life, powerful abilities, and clear consciousness, everything you desire. It's all inside here. Zhuang Qinyan actually disclosed the secrets of the central hub. The Awakener's expressions on the scene changed in an instant. Many of them were not clear about the true purpose of this operation. Now that the mystery was revealed, greedy eyes stared closely at his every move. 
Meanwhile, Song Ku and Lu Xiaoyu in the back row were being ignored. Zhuang Qinyan calmly scanned his iris, fingerprint, and entered the authorization password. The giant central hub that had been silent for 13 years, under his operation, successfully rebooted. Two lines of text appeared successively. Recognition successful. Root. Soft white light illuminated, and after the startup music, the central hub entered the main page. Someone couldn't restrain themselves and stood up, that was the secret about eternal life. The Awakeners, each harboring their own intentions, were restless, eager to take advantage and sneak a peek. Xia Ping's voice trembled, quick, quickly connect, copy everything. Even Mr. Gu was no longer calm, synchronized the main page immediately. The artificial intelligence operated rapidly, extracting relevant data. At the same time, Song Ku took something out of her pocket, bit open a vial, and injected herself with a sealing agent into her neck. This was a miraculous potion developed by an A5-level healing awakener, capable of revitalizing the combat capabilities of disabled individuals. After the loading of the page was complete, the entire area was filled with endless silence. How how is this possible? Xia Ping's hoarse exclamation cut through the night sky. In Vincent's preserved central hub, there were no files whatsoever. An empty space. Was it deleted? It can be restored, it must be restorable. Amidst the chaotic background noise, Flame suddenly experienced a splitting headache, and her feet slipped, falling into midair. At the same time, an agile figure leaped high. Song Ku pounced towards the third starship on the right, a huge hammer appearing in her hand, and with terrifying strength, she shattered the porthole. Boom! Xie Inchi met a pair of cold eyes. Chapter 242 Omniscient and Omnipotent Do you believe it? At certain moments, people could accurately foresee their own deaths. Xie Inquan faced such a moment of supersensory perception. His terrified face elongated inch by inch, as if a frozen slow-motion replay. He saw with incredible clarity as Song Ku swung a thunderous blow, hitting the hull of the starship. The so-called Utopia's most robust composite material collapsed, and debris scattered in the air. Blood-drenched fingers wedged into the porthole, and a powerful and domineering awakened energy swept in. Song Ku's arm-to-shoulder muscles tightened to the extreme, pulling both hands forcefully to the sides. Under the destructive force of several hundred tons, the cabin groaned, and a crack tore open. Ears filled with chaotic screams, torn shouts Xie Inquan couldn't hear anything, only seeing Song Ku descending from the sky like a devil from the depths of hell. If flames were the key to restraining Song Ku's abilities, then blood-red building blocks were the core of the entire siege. Inside the blood-red building blocks, hundreds of starships, an orderly armed fleet, and various high-level awakeners were all played with at will by Xie Inquan. He was the master of the field and the high-end hunter, secretly manipulating everything in the field. Tonight's massacre here would remain unknown. When the sun rose tomorrow, the alliance would still be calm and peaceful. Unfortunately, everything ended at this moment. Stop her. Don't let her come over. Quick, protect the family head, protect Lord Xie In Quan. High-level awakeners around disregarded everything to rush forward and block. In the limited space, various attacks collided, and wounds on Song Ku's body increased. Her back was pierced, her waist burned, and her abdomen formed a gruesome bloody hole, yet she seemed to feel no pain. She advanced relentlessly, with only one goal in her eyes, the owner of the blood-red building blocks. At the last moment when consciousness departed, Xie Yin Quan met Song Ku's eyes and understood the unspoken verdict. You're dead. Then, the cold blade pierced his heart, and the next second, the azure tiger claws exploded his face, and his head and body went separate ways. Thud. Thud. The head was hammered into a mess, like damaged building blocks, never to be reassembled. Song Ku's momentum remained unabated as she slid to the heavily protected Xie Ping in the swaying starships. Fresh blood dripped down the fingertips, quickly forming a small pool of blood at the feet. The icy tiger claws stopped in front of Xie Ping, his breath stopped abruptly, his face pale. On the connected heart rate monitor, 
all indicators instantly surpassed the threshold, emitting a piercing alarm. I won't kill you. Song Ku glanced at the blank screen transmitted from the central hub, casually waved her hand, you're about to die. Killing Xie Ping now would be too easy for him. Song Ku realized he wouldn't live much longer. Since the central hub didn't have what he wanted, Xie Ping would despairingly witness his life come to an end in the countdown to death. Song Ku stood up. In the unbelieving eyes of everyone, all the wounds on her body healed at a visible speed. Blood vessels connected, muscles renewed, scars faded, and even the concave abdominal cavity slowly rebounded. She transformed from a near-death state to a normal person. With the second ability plus powerful sealing agent, her body's recovery speed was far beyond the understanding of an ordinary person. Song Ku stepped back, opened her hands like a light feather, and her entire body fell out of the cabin. Just as she was about to leave, she kicked fiercely with her toe. The entire starship lost control and plummeted. With a loud crash, smoke rose. With the user dead, the blood-red building blocks collapsed. The scene spun before their eyes. The starship formation in the sky was disrupted, with some even moving elsewhere. The fragmented scene restored, and the real scene emerged. They were right at the junction of Lozen and Fennec, not far behind was the sea connecting the north and south of the Alliance. Song Ku landed rapidly, stumbled back a couple of steps, and a pair of slender hands steadied her back. She turned around, met Zhuang Qingyan's deep eyes, and smiled with curved eyelashes, it's empty. Yeah, empty. Zhuang Qingyan nodded. Where did you hide the thing? Song Ku asked curiously. Nowhere. Zhuang Qingyan held her hand and slowly placed it on his slightly cool forehead, from the beginning to the end, it has always been here. Song Ku was stunned. For some reason, this answer gave her a somewhat uneasy feeling. The wheelchair glided across the ground, and Lu Xiaoyu's hoarse voice said, One bad news, the domain is broken, but the signal hasn't been restored. Those isolated from communication were not only Xie Ying Quan. Lu Xiaoyu looked towards Lu Qiusua, his icy pupils faintly flickering. After all, there was still a puppet controlled by super-artificial intelligence on the scene. Within the group of star ships, the command channel fell into complete silence. The central hub left behind by Vincent was empty, rendering the existence of the key meaningless. All the Alliance's efforts over the years seemed to be in vain. Could it be that all the achievements had truly been buried in history? No, it was impossible. Vincent's obsession with the eternal life plan was too deep. How could he destroy his own hard work? After a moment, the people came back to their senses, and discussions ensued. There must be backup copies of the data. How else was the research on Ning Rong's organ regeneration conducted? Yes, Vincent left something behind. That kid must know. Find a way to open the key. Maybe the central hub has been transferred. It's difficult. He's a mental type awakener, and even Sophia failed. Key Central Hub Mental Type Awakener The mixed clues gradually connected, and a scholar from Laponi frowned in contemplation. Suddenly, he raised his head and exclaimed. I know. Without the Central Hub, from start to finish, Vincent has been using illusions to conceal the truth. The key is the Central Hub. What do you mean? The scholar's chest rose and fell. He had to take a deep breath to calm his excited emotions. The Qi Xie Zhuo was once a famous young genius from Laponi. In less than a year after enrolling, he finished reading all the books in the library. Laponi was the cultural center of the Alliance, housing countless physical and electronic ancient books and publications. Most people, even if they didn't eat or sleep, wouldn't be able to finish reading everything in a lifetime. However, Xie Zhuo browsed through all the books in just ten months, effortlessly answering questions about any book or page selected. The youth with a tear-shaped mole at the corner of his eye, who graduated early with unparalleled memory skills, had dazzled the entire district A4. The scholar muttered to himself, after Xie Zhuo dropped out, he followed his father into the Qinglan Research Institute. Vincent must have been well aware of his son's abilities. Why bother putting the data into the machine when he could use his son? 
the key is not just a key it's the real central hub. No, it can't be someone hesitated and raised doubts. The vast research data, highly classified reports any mistake in a decimal point or a seemingly insignificant letter could lead to immeasurable losses. Even the storage capacity of the central hub had its limits how could the human brain be stronger than a computer? The scholar refuted vehemently, why not? Don't forget, Siajua participated in the genetic selection program. If he concealed his identity as an awakened individual and possessed abilities back then? But what is his ability? There was no information in the Alliance database regarding Siajua's awakening. Whether it was the level, category, or specific type, everyone remained ignorant of his capabilities. They had only recently confirmed that he was an S6, level mental type awakener. If mental attacks were not his ability but merely an expression of his highly condensed awakened energy, what was his true ability? Photographic memory. A possible answer emerged. No, it's omniscient and omnipotent, Mr. Gu, who had remained silent, suddenly spoke in a low voice. The attendees displayed a look of astonishment. Photographic memory is not frightening, but Xiezhua is too special. Born into the Xia family in Beijing, he enjoyed the top resources and privileges. Due to his extraordinary intelligence and mastery of multiple disciplines, he could assimilate and apply any knowledge he acquired at will, even knowledge related to the eternal life plan that he had never encountered before. He could restart it from any point. Mr. Gu sighed deeply, swallowing the latter part of his sentence. Xie Zhuo was the fire seed left by Vincent, and he held the fate of all humanity. I want to talk to him alone. After breaking the domain of the blood-red building blocks, the mysterious attacks from the opposite side strangely ceased. The Awakener surrounding Song Ku and the others retreated, creating an open space. A drone descended from the sky, hovering in front of Zhuang Qinyan, carrying an encrypted communicator. He received it with an unchanged expression. Xie Zhuo. A deep and authoritative voice came through. Song Ku keenly noticed that Zhuang Qingyan's eyes turned extremely cold upon hearing the voice. Gu Hongyi. So it's you. Should I address you as Director Gu? Oh, I forgot, you've stepped down from that position, haven't you? Zhuang Qingyan's tone sounded indifferent, but his words carried a hidden edge. Gu Hongyi, the former head of the Central Court Council, was once one of the most influential figures in the New Asia Alliance. He had been a strong advocate for restarting the Eternal Life Plan. Due to his advanced age, he voluntarily stepped down from his position and became a citizen of the elderly people's nation. In Zhuang Qingyan's impression, Gu Hongyi was only a few years younger than Yi Zheng. Unlike General Yi, who suffered from old injuries due to years of war and was plagued by illness, Gu Hongyi enjoyed a life of luxury and good health during his tenure. Gu Hongyi seemed indifferent to Zhuang Qingyan's sarcasm and calmly stated, Vincent's data is in your head. Zhuang Qingyan remained silent. With the revelation of the central hub's secrets, it was only a matter of time before it was discovered. He was mentally prepared for it. I can let you go, unexpectedly, Gu Hongyi changed his tone and casually extended an olive branch, I won't hold you or your friends accountable. Song Ku and Lu Xiaoyu exchanged a glance pointing at their heads in silence, signaling that this person must be crazy. One moment he attacks them, and the next moment he wants to let them go. Lu Xiaoyu nodded in agreement with a deep understanding. Zhuang Qingyan chuckled, Oh! What are your conditions? Negotiating with smart people was convenient, and Gu Hongyi didn't beat around the bush. He directly stated his purpose, the eternal life plan has faced bottlenecks for many years. Even with those data, success is impossible in a short time. You retired many years ago, yet you still care so much about the project, Zhuang Qinyan sarcastically remarked. I only want one thing. Gu Hongyi remained unmoved. LAC 0017 Zhuang Qinyan's pupils slightly contracted. I know that before the Eternal Life Plan, Vincent already had a perfect experimental subject, LAK 0017. I want its entire genetic sequence, detailed logs of the fusion process, and also. Gu Hongyi's voice became hoarse, and a subtle greed emerged in his tone, its current whereabouts. Zhuang Qinyan replied nonchalantly, 13 years ago, during the Lok incident, 
all experimental subjects of the Fire Seed Project were destroyed. This is publicly known information. If your memory fails you due to old age, I can kindly remind you. Gu Hongyi shook his head with a wry smile, young man, you can't deceive me. A successfully created fire seed won't die. As you said, with eternal life, powerful abilities, and clear consciousness, how could it be destroyed by a mere nuclear explosion? Zhuang Qinyan raised his eyes to the sky, your target has always been LAK-0017 from the beginning. Do your followers behind you know? Gu Hongyi pressed on, whether they know or not is not important. What matters is, do you know where it is? No, I don't know, Zhuang Qinyan answered decisively. Gu Hongyi fell into a moment of silence, then spoke, aren't you curious where I got the information? Your father was a great scientist, highly respected and admired. Making him speak voluntarily, whether from a legal or moral perspective, would be difficult. But fortunately, he died. Dealing with the dead has fewer burdens. After Vincent's brain death, his consciousness remained remarkably active. I had Aaron use knowledge deprivation 13 times to get what I wanted. Zhuang Qinyan, usually smiling and calm, displayed an unusual expression a complete lack of emotion. His hands veins bulged, trembling uncontrollably. Song Ku's heart felt a sudden jolt, and she tightly held his fingers. Next to Gu Hongyi stood a mystic awakener, Aaron, an S3-level awakener with a unique ability, knowledge deprivation. Aaron could forcibly extract the knowledge from living or deceased individuals. The deprived individual would experience confusion and intense pain, becoming almost like an imbecile after multiple extractions. Vincent was the greatest scientist in the Alliance, dedicating his life to his work. After his death, enduring such humiliation was unbearable, especially for Zhuang Qinyan. Gu Hongyi's threat was almost imperceptible, if you disagree, I'll have no choice but to kill you. As an S-level awakener, I can obtain more information than your father, but this is the worst-case scenario. If you follow in your father's footsteps, it will cause significant losses to the alliance. Zhuang Qinyan raised an eyebrow, Gu Hongyi, you're near death, right? There was silence on the other end of the communicator. Even Xia Ping managed to stand in front of me after enduring, and yet you can only resort to voice threats. It seems that you have a harder time surviving than him. Don't worry, after you die, I'll set off a few more strings of firecrackers in celebration. As for LAK-0017, forget about it. You will never get it. Xia Zhua. Gu Hongyi roared in anger. Zhuang Qinyan crushed the communicator. Inside the starship, Gu Hongyi, furious beyond measure, coldly issued an order. Kill the key. Give his body to Aaron. No, even the remains will do. We will get what we want. Um, what about Song Ku? Someone stammered. They had witnessed Xia Inchi's scene before his death through the screen. Healing from such severe injuries and being virtually impervious to harm, it rendered their numbers useless. They couldn't do anything against this seemingly invincible figure. While Gu Hongyi was pondering, the command channel suddenly lit up. Mr. Gu, Lord Simon requests access to communication. He says he has a way to kill the S-8. Zhuang Qinyan lowered his eyes to look at Song Ku, his gaze shadowed. Sorry, this is one of my few failed negotiations. It's okay, Song Ku nodded understandingly, embracing him proactively. With me around, whatever 007, you don't need to tell them. Zhuang Qinyan lowered his head, gazing at her, slowly returning the embrace. Hmm, I'll listen to you, won't tell them. Lu Xiaoyu's mechanical arm extended between the two, coldly interrupting their intimate atmosphere. Wake up, look ahead. In front of them, the armed fleet raised its densely packed barrels, and the pursuers who had retreated regrouped. Zhuang Qinyan glanced to the side, hey, waste, at this point, don't tell me you haven't prepared any backup plans. Lu Xiaoyu rolled his eyes in disdain, how is that possible? Just care more about yourself. Chapter 243 Friends, Teammates The barrier is broken. Su Cha lay low in the darkness, carefully observing the surrounding environment, a solemn shadow falling on his slightly pursed lips. There was a faint movement above his head. 
His gaze sharp, he grabbed Lin Yuyu's wrist and swiftly entered an abandoned house. A dark, heavily armed fleet flew past, heading in the same direction. Su Cha opened the terminal, attempting to communicate with the outside world, but the signal remained blocked. His heart sank, and he realized that the person behind him had been silent all along. Su Cha turned around, Lin Yuyu's eyes lowered, her expression unclear. What's wrong? I was thinking, actually, I don't have many friends. Su Cha looked at her quietly. When Lin Yuyu spoke, he was always a good listener. I sing well, considered successful as a celebrity, and many fans claim to love me, but they are too far away from me. Lin Yuyu murmured softly. After Lin Xiu's incident, I became selfish, always considering myself first. I know, I have a bad personality, so for a long time, I thought I wouldn't have friends, lovers, or family, wouldn't establish stable intimate relationships. The confident and radiant big celebrity now looked incredibly lost. Su Cha opened his mouth, unsure of what comforting words to say. He hated his own clumsiness for the first time. Lin Yu Yu was silent for a moment, then took out a clear white crystal, which was only level 1. No one would take a second look at it in today's V587. However, Su Cha instantly realized that this was likely the one they snatched from Song Ku during the throne race. After all this time, Lin Yu Yu had been carrying it with her. Song Ku said we are teammates. But teammates, clearly, are even more intimate than friends. It's a relationship worth entrusting your back to, a bond of trust. Lin Yu Yu slowly clenched the crystal in her palm. During the Mirror Lake incident, I could find excuses for myself because I had to save Lin Xiu. But now. If I run away now, I will never forgive myself for the rest of my life. Lin Yu Yu sniffled, her voice choked. She lied to me. She can't come out. Zhuang Qinyan is Xie Zhua, the Xie Zhua the entire alliance is looking for. They can't escape. Tears uncontrollably fell, and Lin Yu Yu cried without making a sound, but it caused a painful twist in the hearts of those who witnessed it. Subtle emotions kept assaulting Su Cha. He slowly raised his hand, the rough fingertips clumsily wiping away her tears. The moist sensation penetrated through the black fingerless gloves, reaching deep into the skin, creating an entangled and unresolved feeling. Let's go back, Su Cha sighed. Lin Yu Yu looked up, revealing a damp face, her throat feeling sour and difficult to articulate. Su Cha focused on her, his young face resolute and calm. I'll accompany you back. You don't have to accompany me. Do you know what we'll face if we go back now? Lin Yu Yu held his broad hand, lingering on her cheek. There are probably hundreds of S levels there, and going back might mean giving away our lives. So, you don't have to be so obedient. It's not like you've sold your life to me. You can have your own thoughts. Lin Yu Yu's tearful eyes shook, and she shook her head with a smile. How long has it been since I paid you a salary, silly dog? Su Cha's shoulders were broad, his back straight. His black shirt was soaked with dark-colored blood, his gaze clear and determined. The captain has already paid the salary. I want to go back. After joining V587, Su Cha's pocket money was indeed always stuffed by Song Ku, but they tacitly understood that their return was not for the money. Do you not regret it? Lin Yu Yu confirmed. I don't regret it, Su Cha nodded. Lin Yu Yu traced the tattoo on Su Cha's nape, applying a slight pressure. She had to tiptoe to reach his cold forehead. All right. Years ago, during a heavy rain, she had found a soaked puppy. Now, that little dog had grown into a loyal knight. Lin Yu Yu wiped away her tears, found a quiet place, clapped her face with both hands. A female celebrity's facial expression management was unparalleled. In a blink, she put on a radiant smile and carefully took out a light screen. A holographic projection appeared, and Lin Xiu lazily lounged on the sofa. Lin Yu Yu, your wings have gotten stronger, huh? You haven't said hello to me for several days. Lin Yu Yu smiled, Lin Xiu, I'm going on a long journey. We might not see each other for a while. Entertain yourself. Lin Xiu instantly sat up, where are you going? 
can't you take me with you? What kind of place doesn't even allow the use of a light screen? She suddenly approached, wait a minute, something's not right. Did you cry? Who bullied you? This light screen is the latest model, and I've granted you all the permissions, Lin Yu Yu said casually, watch some shows, play some games during your free time. Don't get bored, quickly catch up with the pace of the times, don't be like an outdated little old lady. You brat, you better explain clearly to your sister. Where are you going? Lin Xiu stomped her foot, feeling inexplicably anxious. Sis, I love you so much, Lin Yu Yu leaned in and kissed her on the cheek in the void. Then she made a tough decision, cut off the projection, switched to low power mode, bundled the light screen and locator together, wrapped it in isolation clothing. Dug a deep hole, buried everything underground, silently thinking, Lin Xiu, if I can come back, I'll dig you out and apologize, okay? Lin Yu Yu stood up, looked at Su Cha, her eyes, washed by tears, shining and beautiful. Let's go. The deafening roar of artillery echoed. Simon wore a command headset, his eyes cold and excited. Gu Hongyi handed over the command of the aerial bombardment to him, and he didn't hesitate to choose the magnetic burst bomb. This type of projectile was specifically designed for individuals with awakened abilities. Once it hit the target, it not only shattered the body but also forcibly blocked the magnetic field within the body, making it an excellent weapon against Song Ku's second ability. Open maximum firepower, blast her to pieces. The scorching air currents brushed against Song Ku's hair. She narrowly avoided it, weaving through the intermittent explosions. Facing hundreds of S ranks alone, she remained calm, with metal fragments flying and blades shooting out, knocking down opposing awakeners. Various spiritual weapons spun around her. Song Ku stood alone at the front, like a tower constantly battered by waves. Those who collided with her met only a fate of being crushed into pieces. She raised her hand and wielded the scythe of death, penetrating the bodies of the enemies instantly. Simon, frustrated, shouted, aim and shoot, hit her heart, hit her limbs. No matter how powerful an S8 was or how incredible their self-healing abilities, once their body turned into debris, there was only one way to go death. Zhuang Qinyan ran while restraining flame. Suddenly, a pitch-black iron chain approached him. His eyes narrowed, swiftly evading it. Ding! A shockwave resonated in his consciousness. Zhuang Qinyan raised his head abruptly, looking toward a seemingly inconspicuous starship in the sky. Aaron had used knowledge deprivation on him. Zhuang Qinyan's expression turned icy. He separated his mental ability to counterattack. The fierce mental force pierced back, and Aaron hastily evaded, reluctantly stopping. His gaze showed a hint of regret. Breaking through the mental barrier of an S6 was too difficult unless he could make the opponent's mind chaotic. However, during this pause, Iron Chain seized the opportunity, piercing through his right shin mercilessly. Blood sprayed like a fountain, and he staggered to the ground. Simultaneously, numerous magnetic burst bombs targeted him, raising a dense cloud of smoke over a dozen meters high. In this critical moment, Song Ku flew over, rolled, and caught him in a waist embrace. A dark blue giant umbrella appeared in the nick of time, shielding both of them from the exploding shells. She then reversed her hand to cut the chain. Iron Chain shrieked in pain, struggling violently. The tip withdrew from between Zhuang Qingyan's legs. Song Ku pressed down on his wound, about to counterattack. However, the moment she stood up, she suddenly swayed. The next second, a two-inch thick, ferocious chain pierced through her shoulder blades. Song Ku blinked slowly, realizing belatedly that the sealing agent's time limit had passed. Snap! The wheelchair shattered into pieces, and Lu Xiaoyu once again rolled onto the ground. The 101010 branches and twigs dispersed, Lu Chiosua strode forward. The solidified phantom reached out and grabbed his silver hair, forcing him to lift his head, his expression twisted yet pleased, I've been looking for you for a long time. Vast amounts of data condensed into a long spear, thrusting into the connection point of Lu Xiaoyu's external arm. Crack. The first, the second, the third connection broke. You are my most beloved child. 
even if you commit heinous crimes, I've given you opportunities. You should have obeyed, stayed in the death prison and never come out. Lu Xiaoyu's eyes revealed undisguised mockery, just a bunch of basic level codes, thinking of being my mother. Ugh. The fourth mechanical arm was broken, and he writhed in pain, curling into a ball. Lu Chiosua's movements paused for a moment, a hint of struggling pain flashed across his expression, Xiaoyu. Get lost. Lu Xiaoyu's face turned pale. He tapped the code with his fingertips, and a data wall rose out of nowhere, forcefully pushing Lu Chiosua away. Using the remaining two mechanical arms to support himself, he stood up. Due to the physical mutilation, the position of his legs was empty. He staggered back two steps and collided with Song Ku, both falling to the ground. Within the encirclement, the three members of V587 were isolated and helpless, covered in wounds. In the midst of the rubble and wreckage, thick smoke billowed into the sky, and the long night seemed endless. At this moment, a pair of gentle hands grasped Song Ku's shoulders, slowly helping her up. Song Ku turned around vigilantly, unexpectedly seeing Lin Yu Yu and Su Cha. Didn't you guys run away? We came back, Su Cha replied quietly. Song Ku was a bit angry, why come back? Didn't I tell you to leave? Lin Yu Yu playfully tapped her forehead, throwing a tantrum now. We're still teammates, Song Ku, do you know what teammates are? Teammates are meant to fight side by side until the last moment. You invited us to join V587 back then, and now, don't even think about chasing us away. Song Ku was anxious, I. Lin Yu Yu interrupted her, it was you who said welcome to join V587. We will forever be part of the team. I won't betray you again. Before heading to District B, Song Ku extended her hand with a radiant smile, welcome to join V587. From that moment on, the destinies of the seven of them were tightly bound together. Lin Yu Yu's attitude remained firm, and Song Ku, feeling helpless and bitter, sniffed lightly and muttered, fool. But she didn't insist on asking them to leave. Zhuang Qinyan staggered to his feet. After a year, he limped again, the same leg, an unfortunate twist of fate. All right, we can catch up on old times later. For now, listen to my command. He gazed deeply at a certain direction, kill flame first. A needle sealed the blood vessels, and both Song Ku and Su Cha rushed forward. Chapter, 244 Friends, teammates. Flame, who could erase their abilities, began to burn fiercely again. It was about to pounce on Song Ku when a cage made of woven data suddenly dropped, forming an immense density of code that the flames couldn't instantly burn through. Lu Xiaoyu seized the opportunity, established a deep-level connection through the terminal, and invaded the consciousness of flame. With a perfect coordination, Song Ku closed in instantly. In the vast world of data, flame sweated profusely, unable to move. In a crucial moment, the firewall swiftly counterattacked, keeping Lu Xiaoyu's Trojan horse outside. The super-artificial intelligence forcibly awakened her. Unfortunately, it was too late. Su Cha's tri-edged military dagger pierced the flame's forehead, twisted it around, the blood vessel soaked with blood. Almost simultaneously, Song Ku severed flame's head. Violent attacks rained down on the two, and the magnetic burst bombs illuminated the entire area with a white light, making it impossible to open their eyes. Under the overwhelming firepower, they couldn't last more than five seconds. Lin Yu Yu took a step forward. Her lips were still restricted, unable to sing any lyrics. But she took a deep breath and sang a wordless ethereal song. Even she didn't know what would happen. Iron Chain ahead looked up. Whoosh whoosh. A deep roar echoed from the distant sea, and colossal waves surged into the sky. It was as if a boiling oil pot had exploded, turning the entire area of Lok into chaos. The surging sea water turned into scattered water splashes, and a massive tsunami with a tremendous momentum suddenly struck. The imminent magnetic bomb explosions were silenced, and there was a vague sight of some gigantic creature flying high above. The land shook incessantly, and eerie auroras flashed amid the intense radiation turmoil. Splash! Splash! 
Countless people were lifted into the air by the waves, then fell back into the water. Even the starships hovering at low altitudes were engulfed, and the backflowing seawater submerged the entire area. What the heck is this? Isn't she an air anchor? Kill her quickly. Awakeners changed direction and rushed towards Lin Yuyu. Song Ku took the lead, blocking all attacks with sheer strength. A black iron chain broke through the waves, precisely finding Lin Yuyu, and rapidly thrusting towards her. Lin Yuyu's pupils contracted as she was paralyzed by the terrifying pressure, unable to move her feet. In the nick of time, Su Cha suddenly appeared and pulled her into his arms, shielding her completely. In the confrontation between S7 and A8, there was no chance of victory from the beginning. The icy tip of the chain pierced Su Cha and penetrated Lin Yuyu unstoppably. When it was about to go further, a sharp pain suddenly came, and Zhuang Qinyan firmly stepped on the end with his left foot. Su Cha's blood flowed profusely as he tightly gripped the chain, letting the blood soak into the deadly weapon. Lin Yuyu's eyes teared up as she took a spiritual weapon plum blossom hairpin from her hair and fiercely stabbed the iron chain. A howl echoed as the young man transformed back to human form in a miserable state. You all deserve to die. His horse thread abruptly stopped. The young man suddenly lowered his head, his expression becoming extremely ugly. From head to toe, a dark green color emerged a sign of poisoning. Yu Yu did it on purpose poison before finishing his words, the neurotoxin invaded his brain, and he collapsed. The top assassin of the vulture, S7 codenamed Iron Chain, unexpectedly died at the hands of the relatively unknown A8. At the moment of the overwhelming tsunami, Lin Yu Yu smiled at Su Cha, are we going to die? Su Cha pressed down on the bleeding wound in front of her, silent. Lin Yu Yu held his hand, signaling him not to waste his efforts before we die, can you say something nice, just to make me happy? As life rapidly slipped away, Lin Yuyu's consciousness became somewhat hazy, but she couldn't help teasing the solemn figure in front of her. Be honest, do you like this sister? Boom! The seawater rushed into their nostrils, and the two were separated by the waves. Lin Yuyu's limbs were cold and powerless, drowning in the suffocating sensation of water. A pair of strong arms securely held her, and Su Cha embraced the most precious person in the world, gesturing slowly. I like you you gave me a second chance at life. I love you. Lin Yu Yu genuinely smiled, and Su Cha lowered his head to her lips, resuscitating her. The two sank together in the midst of their intimate moment. Lu Xiaoyu was left with only a damaged silver mechanical arm. Lu Chiosua stepped on his face, and in his identical ice-blue eyes, a faint trace of pity flashed. A useless waste who can't even stand. Still want revenge? Lu Xiaoyu lowered his head in silence. The last mechanical arm was located at the back, and in order to pull it out, Lu Chiosua had to bend down and reach behind him. At this moment, a certain old terminal lit up. Lu Xiaoyu's eyelashes flickered slightly, ha. Huh? With a faint sound of skin being pierced, the silver white robotic arm suddenly extended, piercing into Lu Chiosua's back. Lu Chiosua's movements froze, not because the program was damaged, but because he lost connection with the super-artificial intelligence. For a split second, there was a disturbance in all District B terminals, the system commissioning platform, and electronic devices of the Alliance. It was brief and went unnoticed by anyone. In the distant District B-8, Bergia. A young man with ice-blue eyes, hands in his pockets, gazed up at the highly virtual city in front of him. So, this is the paradise of artificial intelligence. A playful smile appeared on his lips. The direct descendants of the Lu family had already ascended to Utopia, leaving only distant branches and maintenance personnel here. With fewer people, the environment was quiet and withering. The young man brushed past a passerby. The person suddenly turned around, stared at his face for a few seconds, and exclaimed, Xinglan. How come you're back? Lu Xinglan smiled at him, exuding elegance in every gesture. Feeling a bit confused, wanted to see mother. The passerby didn't doubt him, after all, the Lu family's knowledge came from the super-artificial intelligence, and all members regularly underwent mind connections. Still, he joked, you've been out for quite a while, remember the password? 
Of course, Lu Xinglan smiled faintly, eternal and unforgettable. Seven firewalls, seven different passwords. Lu Xinglan strolled leisurely, smoothly entering the greenhouse without hindrance. Then he stopped, looking at the withered tree in the center, his handsome profile expressionless. The withered tree flickered, showing signs of intense emotion, apparently caught up in some kind of turmoil, unaware of his arrival. Lu Xinglan gazed silently for a moment, seeming a bit puzzled. For artificial intelligence, exposing the true self is a taboo, but you, you've never had this trouble. Let me think, you're the first AI born with autonomous consciousness. What do they call you? The respected mother, such grandeur. But I don't understand one thing. If you're so powerful, why seek a replacement? Too bad, I can't kill you alone. Lu Xinglan shook his head, fingertips gracefully writing down fluent code. But please witness the moment I become the next messiah. He smiled and gently called out, Mean mutter my mother. A red Trojan horse poured out from within him, flowing towards the withered branches of the tree in front of him. A moment later, a sharp alarm echoed through the entire greenhouse, and a phantom figure emitted agonizing screams. The world went offline for a second. The image of Luciosua flickered like snowflakes, dissipating in front of him. The signal in the Lok region was restored. Lu Xiaoyu retracted the rhenium arm, revealing a calm smile. He had never smiled so happily before. But then, his expression changed drastically, Captain. Boom! Song Ko was hit by the magnetic burst bomb, and her entire body flew backward. Bones and muscles cracked, and her left leg disintegrated into fragments in the dazzling light. Good, direct hit. Simon exclaimed excitedly. Song Ku. Zhuan Qingyan's pupils contracted. He jumped into the sea to hold her, his fingertips trembling. A continuous flow of fresh blood spread out, shockingly dyeing a large area of the sea red. The magnetic field at the severed limb was blocked, Song Ku's awakened energy was blocked, making it difficult for her to concentrate for a moment. Zhuang Qingyan's chest heaved, randomly touching her cheek, from ribs to cavity, abdomen to spleen, all shattered by the bombardment. He buried his face in the nape of Song Ku's neck, and in that instant, pain flowed from limbs to heart. I'm sorry. Zhuang Qingyan cried. It's okay, it can grow back. With one hand, Song Ku comforted him, smiling and pointing to her severed leg. I'm very, very powerful. Zhuang Qingyan's voice choked, do you blame me? Blame me for not saying what they wanted. In fact, LAK0017. Don't say it. Song Ku interrupted, patting his cheek. It didn't hurt at all. She looked at him with clear and determined eyes. Zhuang Qingyan didn't say it, and Xie Zhua also can't say it. Here, the Zhuang Qingyan she was referring to was Vincent. Zhuang Qingyan opened his mouth to say something, but those words were too difficult, and they choked in his throat before being spoken. She understood, understood everything. I seem to have heard Xiao Xing's voice. Song Ku raised her head in confusion and looked into the distance. Zhuang Qingyan focused his mind and listened for a while. It's not an illusion I heard it too. The first ray of dawn appeared on the horizon, and the magnificent silver-white starship was rapidly approaching. Sister sister. A familiar shout echoed faintly. The powerful gravity ability descended, the tsunami gradually receded, and Song Ku struggled to recognize the person, it seems like General Yi. Zhuang Qinyan, as if sensing something, raised his eyes. Apart from Yi Zheng, he also met another gaze. The figure was backlit and the face couldn't be clearly seen, but the military uniform was discernible. The clear voice echoed in the high sky. I am Xielan, as the supreme commander of the Azure Phoenix Army, and the acting chairman of Amira District A2, I order all personnel on site to cease all military operations. Violators will be executed. Chapter, 245 You are free end of key arc. Half an hour ago. Fennec border. Duan Mu Qi held Su Xing, and Xiao Chen and Fang Zixiu closely followed. The four moved constantly in the wilderness. After the blood-red building blocks disappeared, they were no longer trapped in one place, 
but due to the randomness of teleportation, they had to reconfirm their direction each time they landed. No, it's reversed. Xiao Chen lowered his head to check the navigation and quickly reminded them. They had just crossed the border, and unexpectedly, they were teleported back. Duan Mu Qi's fingers moved mechanically, faintly beginning to cramp, but he dared not stop, urgently activating the camping lamp second by second. Swish. Random teleportation took effect. In the frozen moment of the scene, Duan Mu Qi's heart stopped suddenly. This time, the teleportation had brought them right in front of the enemy. Blood Bat and Wolf Spider looked unexpectedly at them, less than 10 meters away. They didn't expect the prey to deliver itself automatically. For a moment, they were caught off guard. Duan Mu Qi's breathing became rapid. He quickly reached for another crystal, but Gusta's reaction was faster. His S-level ability biological electric current was activated, and Duan Mu Qi trembled all over as the bag filled with crystals suddenly slipped from his hand. A silver arc of light cut through, an invisible kite string severed the woven rope, and the bright red crystals scattered on the ground. No. Duan Mu Qi's scream stuck in his throat. Thick thorns burst from the ground, futilely trying to retrieve the scattered crystals. Su Xing's pupils contracted, the surrounding temperature dropped suddenly, and ice needles shot out towards the opposite side. Blood Bat hastily evaded. Meanwhile, Fang Jishu, relying on his proficient technique of picking up crystals for a long time, quickly grabbed one. Just as he was about to put it into the camping lamp, a group of corrosive spiders appeared out of thin air. They were about to bite his wrist. The kite string of impending death cut through the throat, and Duan Mu Qi closed his eyes in despair. In the end was there no way to escape? A ah! A piercing scream tore through the air, but it did not come from their side. Duan Mu Qi suddenly opened his eyes and saw a piece of flesh and blood flying off the back of the wolf spider, and blood splattered out. Around them, countless fallen of Huang Yuan, their long and ghostly figures bathed in blood red, emerged all over the mountains and plains. Duan Mu Qi, in disbelief, widened his eyes. No, they were not zombies. In the distance, on a tall tower, a figure stood, letting out a distant and prolonged howl. Blood Bat and Wolf Spider were already heavily injured by Song Ku, their strength dropping to almost A level. These blood zombies, like locusts, incessantly emerged, attacking them. Even with their abilities, they couldn't kill them all. Limbs and heads were bitten off alive, and the gruesome scene of blood and flesh was horrifying to the point of nausea. Not long after, the pursuers turned into blood mud on the ground. Su Xing's eyes were swollen like peaches, crying so hard that she couldn't catch her breath. A Ada. Ada didn't approach. Across the distant space, she growled a few times. The remaining blood corpses retreated like a tide, disappearing from view. Duan Mu Qi was filled with tears, choked with grief. This A-level mission had completely changed his fate. He successfully obtained qualifications for District B but lost two close friends. He could never have imagined that one day he would be saved by zombies. With the crisis averted, the four were exhausted, dragging their heavy bodies to pick up crystals scattered on the ground. The whistling of engines came from above, and a familiar voice sounded, descend in altitude, survivors found ahead. Yi Zime squinted to identify and then exclaimed, Su Xing. Dr. Fong. It's V587. Come quickly to save them. Ada's blurred features glanced at them deeply. Against the sunlight, she turned and disappeared on the horizon. The silver-white starship countered Utopia's black fleet. In District A2, Amira, the military center of the new Asia alliance, was of importance second only to the Central Court, yet it was not directly under its jurisdiction. Amira had its independent garrison. Once a war broke out or an emergency occurred, it could mobilize the armed forces of the entire alliance. After Utopia ascended, following a power struggle, the original president was forced to step down. The new ruler rotated among the magistrates in District B, with Xie Lan assuming the first rotating presidency. Xie Lan brought not only the Azure Phoenix Army but also top-level awakeners from places like Kongsang District B7, Asker District B9, Northern Base District B10, and Minlin District B16. 
If Gu Hongyi had mobilized half of Utopia's S-Class, then Xie Lan led the assembly of the strongest ground armed forces, causing the awakened energy concentration in the entire Lok region to reach a frightening threshold. The tense atmosphere was on the verge of eruption. Xie Lan's orders were concise and to the point, and her tone could even be considered calm. However, under the powerful force of intimidation, no one dared to act rashly. Yi Zheng used gravity to make the tide recede, and the battered trio of Song Ku stumbled to stand firm. Countless familiar awakeners jumped down from the silver white starship, Ling's siblings, Bai Qi, Zhao Yuqing, Yin Xiao, and members of the Tustin team. Held by Fang Zhishu, Su Xing was anxious. Finally reaching Song Ku, he saw her broken leg, and tears streamed down uncontrollably. He cried loudly, as if he had grown up overnight, feeling his own powerlessness. But Song Ku had no time to comfort him. Anxiously, she shouted to everyone, Go find Yu Yu. And Su Cha. Lin Yu Yu's singing triggered a tsunami, but she couldn't swim at all, and the two never surfaced after falling into the sea. Jennifer's eyes were red, I'm going right away. Zhao Yuqing stood up, I'll go with you. She was a water-type awakener, making it easier to find people in the sea. Yin Zhao's face had no previous carefree expression. His lips were tightly pursed, and he looked unusually serious, your injuries cannot be delayed. The three were lifted onto stretchers and connected to medical pods for treatment. Feng Jishu, with depleted awakener abilities, helped them bandage their wounds. Zhuang Qinyan quietly raised his eyes, looking towards a high place. After many years, he and Xie Lan, his mother, met again. Xie Lan looked at his unfamiliar yet familiar face, her gaze complicated. Zhuang Qinyan didn't know what expression to make. He stared at the other person for a moment, smiled slowly, and lowered his gaze. A tall young man in azure phoenix uniform crossed the battlefield and crouched down in front of Song Ku. Sensing someone approaching, Song Ku instinctively looked up, then exclaimed in surprise, An Chiwen. An Chiwen's eyebrows and eyes relaxed as he nodded calmly, long time no see, Song Ku. His face showed the joy of meeting an old friend, but also an enduring sorrow. Take good care of your injuries, leave the rest to us. And Chiwen patted her shoulder and then looked towards the sky where Simon was, a dark fire burning in his eyes. According to intelligence, this was the owner of the Bloody Hunter, the man behind sending Punk to Ferrara, Team Eleven, all members, follow my orders. Perhaps due to excessive blood loss, Song Ku's thoughts were a bit hazy. Through and Chiwen's back, she vaguely saw another person. In the tense atmosphere, the two confronting sides entered a stalemate. With tubes all over her body, Song Ku leaned closer to Zhuang Qingyan's ear and whispered, Is that your mom? She had seen images of Xie Zhuo when he was a teenager, although it was a fleeting glimpse, the memory was deep. They looked too similar, same black hair and dark eyes, distinctive facial features, unforgettable at a glance, even the teardrop mole at the corner of their eyes was identical. Zhuang Qingyan nodded silently, Yes. Your mom is really beautiful, Song Ku sincerely praised. Zhuang Qingyan sighed silently. The little girl seemed to have learned the habit of admiring beauty from someone, it was deeply ingrained. In the center of the battlefield, a sudden change occurred. Several resentful Utopia Awakeners, taking advantage of the opponent's distraction, launched a sudden attack. I said, violators will be exterminated. Xie Lan's eyes and brows chilled. With the prohibition of Azure Phoenix's command, those offenders were instantly blasted into debris by awakener abilities. Song Ku shrank her head, feeling a chill on her neck, um, she's a bit fierce. The scene froze again, a deathly silence. At that moment, the authoritative voice of Gu Hongyi echoed through the speakers, the two generals arrived very quickly. His words had an underlying meaning. The signal block in Lok had just been lifted, and they arrived on the scene. Surely, they didn't just receive the message it was highly likely that they had been hovering nearby for a while, hindered only by the blood-red building blocks from entering. Xie Lan's gaze swept over the disheveled and breathless Xie Ping in the corner, her eyes filled with coldness. Gu Hongyi noticed her glance and spoke slowly, General Xie, no need to be angry. This person underneath also comes from your Xie family. His name is Xie Zhuo, 
the key to the eternal life plan. Carefully speaking, you should be the person most aware of his identity. Siajua is a first-level wanted criminal in the Alliance, and I have the right to arrest him. Xia Lan's expression turned icy, may I ask, former leader, what crime has he committed? Gu Hongyi needled subtly, anti-human crimes. You cannot arrest him. An elderly voice spoke up, and Yi Zheng casually dropped a bombshell, he is the next magistrate of the northern base. The charges you mentioned do not hold. Gu Hongyi was momentarily stunned, never expecting that Yi Zheng would use this method to protect Xie Zhuo. He felt absurd, shook his head, and smiled bitterly, Yi Zheng, the northern base is said to be humanity's last hope, but the person you chose would rather witness humanity's demise with open eyes. Yi Zheng, accustomed to verbal sparring, was unfazed by his mockery, a few days ago, Xie Zhuo voluntarily approached me and submitted Dr. Zhuang Qingyan's research results before his death, including parts related to the eternal life plan. Under the guidance of Dr. Ning Rong, the northern base, in collaboration with 12 other district BS, is conducting in-death research on organ regeneration. So, Xie Zhuo is innocent. As soon as these words fell, the listeners erupted in uproar. Utopia's command channel was in chaos, what? Yi Jing already has the data. What right does their district B have to conduct independent research beyond Utopia? No, this can't be private. Make them hand it over. Yi Zheng's words brought back reason that had been swallowed by desire. The awakeners on the scene collectively stopped their actions, their expressions hesitant and uncertain. Gu Hongyi was too taken aback. He looked at Zhuang Qinyan in silence for a long time. He never expected that he would be one step ahead and hand the materials to Yi Zheng. Is this your way out? Lu Xiaoyu, leaning wearily against the medical pod, tugged at the corner of his mouth. Kind of. After careful consideration, Zhuang Qinyan decided to let some of the information see the light of day. He organized the content on the way here, had the Ling siblings deliver it to Dr. Ning Rong, and confessed to Yi Zheng that the journey was fraught with danger. If he lost contact for more than a day, something had happened. While speaking, Song Kuk tugged at Fang Zhishu's sleeve, with a shy face extending her hand, Old Fang, get me another sealing agent. Fang Zhishu shook his head solemnly, stop injecting, it's useless. Fang Zhishu had given two sealing agents to each person of V587, not because he was stingy, but because the third dose was ineffective. This type of potion relied on short-term stimulation, not to mention the severe side effects. If injected frequently, it would develop resistance, rendering subsequent doses nearly ineffective. Song Ku pursed her lips, showing disappointment. Her awakened energy was in turmoil, unable to find an outlet. She couldn't use her awakened abilities, and her fingers were difficult to control, sometimes twitching involuntarily. The confrontation continued Utopia demanded data sharing, but Yi Zheng only said, relevant research will be conducted on the ground. The other side immediately erupted in anger, Yi Zheng, what do you mean by this? Yi Zheng remained calm, and the S-level pressure filled the entire room, Utopia does not represent the Alliance, nor does it represent District B. Before Gu Hongyi could respond, the more impulsive Minlin magistrate already cursed loudly, so, the meaning is, I've had enough. Go to hell, central court. From now on, the sky belongs to you, the ground belongs to us, and no one should interfere with each other. The vulgar declaration plunged the scene into silence. However, the other District B magistrates remained calm, apparently having reached a consensus. Is this your determination? Gu Hongyi surveyed the surroundings, asking in a deep voice. Mr. Gu, something bad bad happened. District B has declared independence, a high-ranking official muttered. A few hours ago, an explosive news appeared on the Star Network. Thirteen District BS, including Bei Jun and Kong Sang, issued a joint statement declaring their separation from the former Central Court, now under the jurisdiction of Utopia. They declared autonomy as an independent coalition. Whispers came to a sudden halt, and the air fell into an eerie silence. After a while, Gu Hongyi seemed to smile faintly. A holographic projection descended, revealing the appearance of this former figure of the Alliance. He was well-dressed, spirited, 
and he gazed at the battlefield full of devastation. He looked at more than ten magistrates on the opposite side, and finally, his scrutinizing gaze landed on Zhuang Qinyan. After a moment of silence, he spoke, thirteen years ago, in the laboratory of the Fire Seed Project on this land beneath my feet, a perfect living being was born LAK-0017. It possessed eternal life, powerful awakened abilities, clear consciousness. It was the best gift that technology bestowed upon humanity and a major reason for Vincent to restart the eternal life plan. Gu Hongyi was an outstanding orator, capturing the attention of all listeners with just a few words, causing them to change expression one after another. Xia Lan's eyes flickered, suddenly looking up at Zhuang Qinyan, only to find him also gazing back, his expression surprisingly calm. As long as we fully analyze the genetic map of LAK-0017, replicate the DNA sequence one-to-one, -one, humanity can achieve true immortality. No longer plagued by aging, diseases, and death, we can enter the next era of great development. As you can see, what I want to achieve is the goal of benefiting all humanity. We, this generation, could have had eternal life. Are these key data in the information given to you? Of course not. Zhuang Qingyan's face remained calm, and a stormy gloom filled his pupils. Those who played with power had a black heart. Gu Hongyi chose this moment to publicly reveal the existence of LAK-0017, and his despicable intentions were evident. He used the most cunning provocation, causing even the magistrates of District B to discuss it incessantly, questioning Yi Zheng if what Gu Hongyi said was true. And inside the venue, Zhuang Qinyan undoubtedly became the target of criticism. Chapter 246 You are free end of key arc. Zhuang Qinyan had a pair of beautiful peach blossom eyes, which should have given him a gentle and affectionate appearance. However, his eyebrows were long, his nose bridge straight, and his jawline sharply defined. When not smiling, his light-colored pupils always exuded a cold and indifferent sense of world weariness, making it difficult for people to approach. Benevolence for all humanity. Do you think you can hide your dirty nature with some flowery words? Zhuang Qinyan exposed the truth with a single sentence, you just want to control the switch of immortality in your own hands, artificially manipulating the survival of the fittest. In your eyes, do ordinary people need immortality? No. Do violators need immortality? No. Not to mention the entire alliance, I'm afraid that half of the people here can't enjoy your so-called benevolence. The other half can only crawl at your feet like dogs, begging for your favor, and hoping for immortality that is impossible to achieve. Zhuang Qingyan's mouth was indeed too sharp, hitting people right where it hurt with every word. The opposing awakeners, enraged and ashamed, sent a flurry of black blades towards him. Zhuang Qinyan evaded in a distressed manner, blood streaming down from his mouth. Song Ku sat up abruptly, the tubes swaying on both sides, her eyes unwaveringly fixed on his figure. Zhuang Qinyan maintained a calm tone, a cool smile hanging on his lips, do you know why the eternal life plan failed? Because LAK-0017 cannot be replicated. What? Everyone, including Gu Hongyi, was shocked. Zhuang Qinyan sneered, one-to-one -one replication. LAK-0017 has dozens of extinct replicative genes in its body. Do you have the original samples? Replicative genes had disappeared from the Alliance for over 20 years, and they were even more untraceable after the outbreak of the apocalypse. The so-called immortality is just a bubble. Zhuang Qinyan cruelly revealed the truth. The venue fell silent for a second, followed by an explosion of condemnation and questioning. Angry awakeners overwhelmed Zhuang Qinyan's lonely figure. Lies. You're talking nonsense. Who gave you the right to deny immortality? I don't believe it. If it's meaningless, why did Vincent insist on researching? Gu Hongyi shook his head slowly, Xie Zhua, do you think you can just make up some words, and everything will be fine? Let me tell you, it won't pass. As long as I live, as long as Utopia exists, I will tirelessly dig out the secrets from your mind. You will face endless pursuit, hiding in the dark, unseen, becoming Utopia's eternal enemy. Siejua, you can't escape. The political situation in the Alliance was complex. 
Although Gu Hongyi had stepped down, the power structure he left behind remained intact, exerting a dominating influence. The new leadership was practically marginalized, having no real say in utopia. Song Ku slowly clenched her fist, gazing at Zhuang Qinyan's enigmatic profile, his deep eyes concealed by his eyelashes. She looked for a long time, then averted her gaze and nudged Lu Xiaoyu, projection relies on consciousness, right? Lu Xiaoyu suddenly realized, yes, using terminals for deep-level connections. The old man seems to be in poor health and can only manifest himself using this method. If the projection dies, I can cut off his consciousness, preventing him from returning. He gestured with his damaged bionic arm, indicating his capability. The balance between the two sides was precarious due to Zhuang Qingyan's revelation. Breaking the equilibrium, Xie Lan issued the command, attack. A deafening roar, rolling smoke, and Song Ku gently called out, Zhuang Qingyan. Zhuang Qingyan turned around, limping over to her. I think, Song Ku gestured for him to crouch down, and she touched his eye corner, the original tear mole was charming. She murmured softly, bring it back when you have the chance. Okay, Zhuang Qingyan replied hoarsely. Despite his heavy heart, he smiled and agreed with Song Ku, I'll listen to you. After looking at him for a few seconds, Song Ku suddenly leaned in, pressing her lips against his. Both of them had blood on their faces, and the kiss carried a hint of the metallic taste. Zhuang Qinyan was somewhat surprised and reached back to hold her wrist, Song Ku. Song Ku affectionately rubbed her cheek against his and then turned around, pressing him onto the medical bed. She swiftly removed the tubes with one hand and stood up. They bullied you. It's okay. It's not okay, Song Ku said seriously, if you don't fight back, they will keep bullying you. I don't want that. She turned around, and her formidable awakened energy cut through the booming artillery, her voice echoing clearly in everyone's ears. Hey, what you said doesn't count. Both sides in the fight looked at her in astonishment. Song Ko stood upright, looking up at the projection of Gu Hongyi, if you die, utopia is gone, and what you just said doesn't count. From adolescence to adulthood, half of Zhuang Qinyan's life was spent as a fugitive, constantly hiding, never having a moment to possess his true name, never experiencing a peaceful sleep. He carried the secret of all humanity, like a suffocating mountain pressing down on him. But why? When this mountain fell, did anyone ask for his opinion? Song Ku took a step forward, pulled a crystal from the space. It radiated dazzling golden light, with abundant energy flowing within. This was a level 5 crystal produced by the armored sea turtle, the only one in the world. She had it tested in Grace's lab in Shenzhen City, and it triggered a red alert due to its dangerous radiation, equivalent to a medium-sized nuclear bomb. It was strictly prohibited for use. First time taking DRGS, I'm a bit nervous. Despite missing a leg, Song Ko stood firm. She decisively crushed the crystal. A brilliant golden light soared into the sky, causing violent turbulence in the upper atmosphere, tumultuous waves in the sea, and a trembling ground beneath. Song Ko's whole body shone with dazzling brilliance, like flowing gold, and even the morning glow paled in comparison. Her frail body couldn't absorb such a colossal amount of energy. Her veins and blood vessels swelled, and the magnetic field, which had been sealed, forcibly expanded several times. If there were an R-type tester here, the alarm would undoubtedly be blaring. People would be astonished to find that Song Ku's level had skyrocketed from S8 to S9, then surpassed the detectable limit. Beyond S-level awakener. Song Ku's pupils turned a pure gold, and she soared into the sky towards the starship where Gu Hongyi was located. No one expected her to be so reckless, assassinating the former leader in broad daylight. Everyone rushed to intercept, but Xie Lan made a decisive decision, protect her. Azure Phoenix soldiers and District B Awakeners joined the battlefield. Hurry, all artillery aim, stop her. Simon was restless, couldn't help but extend his body to observe the situation. Suddenly, a gap tore open in mid-air, purple lightning flashed, a tall figure fell with thunder, illuminating his alarmed pupils. Simon kept retreating, horrified, now protect me. Boom. Boom. Magnetic storm bombs engulfed Song Ku's figure. 
The world became bright, all sounds disappeared, quiet and desolate. Song Ku Zhuang Qinyan limped into the battlefield, various awakened abilities raining down on him. Disregarding them, he plunged forward headlong, no different from walking into death. Yin Xiao currently in combat furrowed his brows as he saw projectiles descending. Swiftly, he grabbed Zhuang Qinyan, who was unresponsive, and in that moment, Zhuang Qinyan's right leg gave way, kneeling down on a single knee. His thoughts were rarely blank a powerful palpitation pierced through him. Aaron, who had been watching him closely, brightened his eyes, and knowledge deprivation was activated. A second later, Aaron was elated beyond measure he had succeeded. As the artillery fire scattered, Song Ku's figure still hung in midair. The illusionary golden armor inch by inch shattered, her entire body damaged and incomplete. Her left arm was only half remaining. However, from within her, a torrential awakened energy rushed in all directions, a hurricane suddenly arose. The frontmost S-level awakeners emitted fearful screams, torn apart by the terrifying energy, organs and brain matter splattered everywhere, sweeping backward. The elites of Utopia dispersed like a bursting dam, evaporating instantly. As if a humanoid nuclear weapon, wherever she passed, there were bloody fireworks. Stepping on shattered limbs and bones, amidst a sea of blood and corpses, Song Ku condensed a golden spear, five meters long, in her incomplete palm. Intense radiation surged towards all limbs and hundreds of bones. At the unseen nape of her neck, a string of cold code slowly appeared, LAK-0017. LAK-0017. Aaron was pushed back by telekinesis, retreating like a drowning person, sweating profusely. But he acquired a portion of Zhuang Qingyan's knowledge and looked unbelievably at Song Ku, LLA. Mr. Gu, she is the experimental subject. Gu Hongyi suddenly looked up, what did you say? Fragmented information flashed in his mind, S8 level awakener, dual ability, body healing, no known parentage, mysterious origins. Burning with a terrifying light in his eyes, Gu Hongyi grabbed the communicator, about to speak when the cabin suddenly shook. The all-annihilating golden spear penetrated the starship with a force like thunder, irresistibly piercing through Aaron and Gu Hongyi's projections. Song Ku locked her pupils on the two, threw a punch, a vast energy enough to obliterate souls. The terminal carrying Gu Hongyi's consciousness disintegrated, the sturdy starship cracked into two, completely out of control, rapidly rotating and crashing to the ground. Smoke and flames catalyzed into a mushroom cloud. In the S-level Sky City Utopia, a technologically advanced skyscraper, heavy security guarded the office. Suddenly, a sharp alarm sounded, and people rushed into the room. The old man inside slowly fell, life indicators completely silent, brain activity completely ceased. Song Ku, with bloodshot eyes, wildly swung the long spear, piercing through the hearts of awakeners, twisting off their heads. Hundreds of black starships were simultaneously annihilated, S-level members of Utopia dying almost to the last. The radiation within her body also accumulated to its peak, uncontrollable chaotic energy. A high-frequency sonic blast erupted, rendering everyone instantly deaf. A silence enveloped the surroundings, filled with the piercing noise. With a loud clang, the golden spear dissipated, leaving Song Ku dizzy and her vision blurred. Her organs were corroded, and her final thought was that she couldn't explode. If she did, no one else would survive. With strong willpower, the rampaging energy was inexplicably suppressed, careening wildly within the magnetic field. Puff. A slight sound, like a punctured balloon. Song Ku realized something, lowering her head to see her awakened energy leaking uncontrollably from within her. Her body shattered bit by bit into ashes. Song Ku blinked slowly, the side effects more severe than she had imagined. Grace was right level 5 crystals should not be used recklessly. She lifted her gaze satisfied luckily, the goal was achieved. Song Ku landed weakly, steadying herself with a stagger. She touched the black collar with trembling fingertips and pressed the microphone. Zhuang Qingyan's shirt was soaked in blood, his head throbbing, and his vision hard to focus. He spat out a dry blood foam. In the earpiece, Song Ku's cheerful voice rang out, Zhuang Qingyan, there is no need to hide from now on. 
Zhuang Qingyan's face turned pale, crawling forward with bloodstains, and, relying on his senses, grabbed Song Ku's hand. Song Kiki, you don't be like this. Didn't we agree? Don't save me, don't care about me. No, I care about you. A smile appeared in Song Ku's eyes, the dimples on her cheeks forming a small curve. She stubbornly called his name, Zhuang Qingyan, thank you. You are free now. Intense energy suddenly erupted, flowing elegantly like auroras. Sparse electromagnetic waves lingered around Song Ku. It was a breathtaking sight that couldn't be described in words. Her body quickly disintegrated, eroded by radiation. With a gust of wind, the ashes scattered over the sea. No Zhuang Qingyan murmured, panting, Come back, Song Ku Song Ku. An unbearable pain pierced his mind, and he fell to the ground with a thunderous crash. In the last lingering moment of consciousness, a clear and melodious bird's cry echoed through the sky over Lok. Resonant and delightful, like jade breaking in Kunchen. Because it was too ethereal, amid the incessant piercing noise, it seemed as elusive as an illusion. In a laboratory filled with instruments, Zhuang Qinyan stared at the screen with dark circles under his eyes, muttering to himself, not good sounding. What's wrong with the name Fire Seed? The flowers that bloom in the ashes, like the phoenix in ancient civilization myths, have great commemorative significance. Yeah, a unique limited edition worldwide, using the phoenix gene that cost my mom a whopping 50 million alliance coins, and you failed to integrate it. The young man with a teardrop mole at the corner of his eye flipped through the light screen in his hand, casually pouring cold water on his father, not only did you fail, even the experimental subject is scrapped. Indeed, it has great commemorative significance. You. Get out, just get out. The side effects of knowledge deprivation took effect, and Zhuang Qingyan's entire world suddenly collapsed. As the sunset approached, the sky suddenly started pouring rain. The sea surged, and the dim vision couldn't see five meters ahead. New Asia Alliance, an isolated island in the east. In early autumn, it shouldn't have been rainy, but a week ago, a storm inexplicably swept across the sea, and it hadn't dissipated until today. A stiff little zombie buried its head in the sand, digging for shells. After a while, it suddenly ran out, stumbling, and hugged another figure sitting on the beach, shouting, Ah, 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 aha, ah. The figure with a headscarf slowly stood up, pulled by the little zombie, and walked towards the treasure it had found. On the beach lay a pile of something. This something could only be described as an unidentified object, resembling fresh red meat, or a lump of soft and squishy seafood, twitching and wriggling. The sea breeze blew off the headscarf, unexpectedly revealing its face, with a bluish-gray complexion, cloudy pupils, and grim undead markings covering the cheeks to the neck. Clearly, this was a fallen, who had forgotten their name but vaguely remembered that when they were still human, people used to call them Aunt Ching. Aunt Ching's eyes stared blankly, with the excited little zombie beside her, drooling. Aunt Ching bent down, picked up a broken fishing net, wrapped the soft flesh in it, and hung it around the little zombie's neck. Two shaky figures walked through the dense crowd of zombies, disappearing into the depths of the lonely island. Chapter, 247 Vincent X. Xie Lan Parents Love In the seventeenth year of the new calendar, early spring. District B9, Asker A high-definition advertising screen scrolled and played a passionate speech, Genetic engineering will effectively repair embryonic and human defects, resist the invasion of genetic viruses. It is a milestone development in DNA editing technology and the gospel of human evolution in the post-radiation era. High above the starship harbor, a slender figure stood quietly. Xie Lan, dressed in regular clothes, with her jet-black long hair tied into a low ponytail behind her head. Her appearance was beautiful and charming at first glance, but if you lingered for a moment, you could feel a cold and sharp aura. Even standing still, there was a hidden but palpable sense of pressure. On the screen, academician Bob, being interviewed, continued to speak expansively, unfortunately, the success rate of this technology is currently unstable, hovering around 30%. Some subjects experience severe adverse reactions. My team and I are working hard to overcome these challenges. 
Colonel, a total of 380 people, everyone is present. The adjutant approached from behind and reported in a low voice. Sia Lan nodded slightly. The purpose of her trip was to bring a group of physically fit soldiers selected from Beijing for genetic enhancement experiments. In the past two years, there had been continuous border conflicts in Beijing, and the Karyo Empire, with its evolvers, had repeatedly provoked them. They had suffered quite a bit in the shadows. If this mission succeeded, the Xie family could truly have super soldiers. The 380 people sent to Asker all volunteered for the experiment and wrote their wills in advance. With a success rate of 30%, the prospects were too uncertain. No one knew whether they would achieve evolution or become sacrificed martyrs. Let's go. Xie Lan withdrew her gaze and put on an isolation mask. The post-war environment was deteriorating day by day, the air was polluted, and the ubiquitous nuclear remnants made it difficult for her to breathe. She had to wear a mask when traveling. Research Center The receptionist respectfully led Xie Lan to the office, saying, Colonel Xie, Academician Bob is currently in Loponi for academic exchange, so Dr. Zhuang, his student, will be leading the genetic enhancement experiment. Xie Lan halted her steps, a storm brewing in her eyes. I haven't received any information about a personnel change. Beijun had invested a significant amount of money and manpower for this venture, and at this crucial juncture, Bob dared to change personnel on the spot, seriously crossing her bottom line. Xie Lan didn't mind personally going to District A4 to invite him back. The receptionist was sweating profusely the intimidation brought by Xie Lan was too strong. Fearful, he didn't dare to lie, but certain things couldn't be explained too explicitly. He could only offer a vague explanation, actually, whether academician Bob is here or not is not important. Dr. Zhuang is the core. Please rest assured everything will be fine. Xie Lan furrowed her brow, speculating on the unspoken meaning in his words. She had heard about some unwritten rules in academic circles, but who held the title was not important to her. What mattered to Xie Lan was how many people she could bring back. The automatic door opened slowly, revealing an empty room with scattered papers, and instruments quietly humming with occasional beep sounds. The receptionist, accustomed to this sight, looked around and called out softly, Dr. Zhuang. Before his call was answered, an angry figure pulled open a side door with a loud bang. The light screen fell heavily on the table. Zhuang Qinyan. Are you using my authority? You even wrote comments for the interns I brought, don't be too arrogant. The documents on the floor shifted, and suddenly, a head emerged from the pile of papers. A man sat up, rubbing his forehead, his voice slightly hoarse. I casually flipped through last night, and there are 25 logical flaws in your group's model. It's really unbearable to look at. 25 flaws. Is that true? A person named Ning Rong doubted, muttering. He casually flipped through the paper, and the comments inside were infuriating. Fortunately, only you and I have read this paper. This section is well written but needs to be entirely deleted. Who taught you to use formulas like this? Please do not create, no, transport academic garbage. Towards the end, the comments became sharper. Is your brain 99% water? My silence is deafening. Ning Rong. Despite those interns idolizing him, did they know he had such a sharp tongue? The man yawned, folded up his bed, casually put on a white coat. Tall and handsome, despite the tiredness showing in his dark under-eye circles and stubble. Your research project can't proceed. Don't waste your time abandon it early. Why can't it proceed? Ning Rong refused to accept it. No money, no personnel, the man said lazily. Ning Rong was momentarily speechless. He was right once it entered the practical stage, the funds were like pouring into a bottomless pit, and investors expected returns. Young scholars like them, unknown and unproven, found it challenging to get 100% support. But Ning Rong still held on to his fantasies. Maybe one day, an investor will appear, recognize my talent, and be willing to climb the research peak with me. The man chuckled softly, rummaged through a drawer, found the instant coffee empty, and helplessly closed it. Are you sure you're talking about investors? Ning Rong blushed. 
What do you, a lonely researcher, understand? I curse you to be forever single. The man raised an eyebrow. I don't need such unnecessary things. Research is my partner, and I'm willing to dedicate my life to it. He said it with conviction, leaving Ning Rong speechless. I'll take a nap you watch over things. Seeming quite tired, the man yawned again, swayed towards the side door. Dr. Zhuang, please wait a moment. The receptionist stepped forward to explain the situation. After listening with bowed head, he glanced at the unexpected visitor at the door. The receptionist warmly introduced, this is Dr. Vincent Zhuang. Dr. Zhuang, this is Colonel Xie from Beijing. Vincent's slender fingers flipped through the appointment records. Genetic Enhancement Experiment 380 People Xie Lan, behind her mask, stared at him. I hope to complete it as soon as possible. Cost is not an issue. Vincent straightforwardly refused, can't be done. Xie Lan frowned. What? The receptionist hadn't expected him to offend someone with his first words, and his face turned pale. Vincent and Xie Lan locked eyes for two seconds. Patiently, he repeated, I said it can't be done. Please leave. Without a second thought, Xie Lan drew her gun, pressing the cold mechanical device against his mouth. When I paid the deposit, the answer I heard was not this. Behind her, the tall figure raised their weapons, aiming at Vincent's head, creating an instantly tense atmosphere. Ning Rong was terrified, holding on to Vincent's arm, shouting, No, 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 don't be impulsive, let's talk. Vincent calmly glanced down at the gun at his mouth. The genetic enhancement plan you received is the version approved by the Alliance, but it's not my best plan. If you insist on experimenting, perhaps you can only take away 100 people. Even so, do you still insist? Xie Lan's eyelashes flickered slightly. What is your best plan? Vincent, surprised by her keen focus, replied, the best plan because of lack of funds, it's not ready yet. So you're playing games with me? Xie Lan showed a hint of displeasure, and her fingertips on the trigger moved slightly. Ning Rong, panicking, exclaimed, no no no. Vincent spoke before she could act. One week. One week, and I can provide you with the best plan you want. The condition is, um, you pay for it. The receptionist gasped, weakly asking, Dr. Zhuang, is this too risky? What if it fails? They would be in big trouble with Colonel Xie. He had a premonition they would definitely be. Vincent stood his ground confidently. Failure is inevitable. I've experienced at least 10,000 failures, but as long as I succeed once, it's worth it. The receptionist felt a headache and toothache and his entire body ached. These research geniuses were all oddballs. Speaking arrogantly about failure as if it were a matter of course, wasting a week with Colonel Xie, who would undoubtedly let him off easily. Xie Lan carefully observed the man in front of her. There was a lingering chemical smell on his white coat, not pleasant. His hair was messy, his appearance untidy, giving off an aura of unreliability. Only his face seemed somewhat presentable. What's the success rate? Xie Lan slowly raised the gun, pressing it against his Adam's apple. 45%. Vincent replied instantly, as if he had deduced it countless times. Xie Lan's mind raced it was close to half. What if the subjects are military personnel? Allow me to correct you without data to support it, physical fitness and genetic strength are directly related. Vincent's deep brows stretched as he smiled, radiating a handsome glow. How do you prove yourself? Xie Lan cast a light glance at him. Those soldiers were her subordinates, her personal guard she had to be responsible for them. Their eyes met again, and a hidden wave surged between them. Vincent quietly gazed at her and suddenly smiled, how about this? Give me another week, maybe I can increase the success rate to 65%. Ning Rong exclaimed, hey, don't go crazy. Vincent remained composed. Give it a try. Xie Lan, without changing her expression, stared at the man in front of her. He had attractive almond-shaped eyes, shallow like they couldn't contain anything. However, her intuition told her that when he mentioned 65%, he wasn't joking. 
I'll give you half a month. During this half month, I will investigate your background thoroughly. From your birth, growth, education, to this moment standing here, I will have a clear understanding of your past. I'll review every detail of the plan you propose, and any changes must have my approval. Vincent nodded calmly. You pay, you decide. The adjutant, with a worried expression, whispered, Colonel. At the border of Hada Island in Beijun, conflicts were escalating, and war was imminent. Half a month was too risky for them. If any issues arise, I'll take responsibility, Xia Lan asserted with her characteristic decisive demeanor, but. A chew. A sneeze disrupted her authority. Vincent glanced at her and turned around, rummaging through a cabinet full of potions. He pulled out a small green bottle. Anti-allergic spray, an adjunct product of one of my projects. The packaging was rudimentary, with a handwritten signature on the bottle, depicting a majestic character, vaguely resembling the character Yen. The adjutant's expression turned serious. What is this? Do you have approval from the drug administration for this? Xia Lan, with her background, wouldn't use such a dubious concoction. Xia Lan holstered her gun, pondered for a moment, and reached out to take it. The soft fingertips and Vincent's slightly cool palm met briefly and then parted. As she left, faint, fragmented sounds could be heard in the room, young Miss Delicate. Ning Rong sneakily glanced at Xia Lan and pulled on his sleeve desperately. Could you say a few words less? She's carrying a gun. In the following half month, Vincent, except for eating and sleeping, rooted himself in the laboratory. Xia Lan set up a simple office in the outer area, staying close to supervise him. Finally, she understood what the receptionist meant by Dr. Zhuang is the core. The results of the experiment were unexpected. Out of the 380 people Xia Lan brought, astonishingly, 288 successfully underwent enhancement, showing early awakening symptoms the success rate exceeded 75%. Once this news spread in the Alliance, it caused a massive stir. Without a doubt, Vincent had made history. News in various districts enthusiastically reported on the achievements of Bob's team, with Vincent's name only mentioned once in a corner. However, when he saw the news, he just yawned, his handsome face showing signs of fatigue with dark circles under his eyes. He cared little about the fleeting fame. On the day of the return journey, Vincent's gaze fell on Xia Lan's face. She wasn't wearing a face mask, and the teardrop mole at the corner of her eye added a touch of charm. Used it? Mm. Their abrupt conversation left onlookers confused. Vincent's eyes revealed a faint smile, and he looked at her a bit longer before saying nothing. She used the anti-allergic spray he gave her, and it worked. She believed in the optimal plan he adjusted, and it succeeded. Xia Lan returned to Beijun with the 288 awakened individuals. Chapter 248 Vincent X Xia Lan Parents Love Six months later Beijun Xia Lan had just come out of her father's study when she encountered her half-brother, Xia Ping, in the corner of the staircase. I heard you're planning to form an army composed of awakeners. Ambitious, aren't you? Xia Ping's expression was peculiar, with a touch of both mockery and seriousness. This sister of his surpassed everyone by far. With extraordinary abilities, she had long been selected as the next master of Beijun. Xia Ping had tried to vie for her position, but Xia Lan was strict in her selection of soldiers and governed with discipline. Her troops not only had fierce combat capabilities but also unwavering determination. Moreover, they only followed Xia Lan's orders. Half a year ago, she brought back nearly 300 awakened individuals from Asker and decisively won the border ownership in Hada Island. Now, her position was secure, and no one could shake it. Xia Lan casually replied, heard the private doctor came yesterday. Big brother, take care of yourself. Xia Ping's expression changed abruptly. Back at the military headquarters, the terminal beeped, and her mother's projection appeared, her tone as lamenting as ever when are you getting married? Accompanying the communication were numerous profiles of potential marriage partners. Xia Lan only glanced at them briefly and quickly closed it. Did you have another argument with someone? Yes, yes, yes. 
I'm all alone in this no one helps me when I argue. Her mother, with delicate makeup, sighed while covering her chest. You can choose the person, but you must get married. I've been wanting to hold a grandchild for a long time. Sialan looked helpless. The internal relationships of the Xia family were complex. Her mother was the fourth wife of her father, but Sialan knew her mother's combat capabilities well. She could scold ten people by herself without fear. It seemed like she just felt lonely. Born into the Xia family, Xia Lan had a detached view of marriage. Since her mother wished for it, she agreed to get married. She opened the folder, sifting through the potential suitors one by one. The more she looked, the more discerning she became, this one wouldn't do, too chubby that one wouldn't do. Too short this one had a vacant gaze, clearly untrustworthy and this one a bit too simple she did have certain expectations for intelligence. Her thoughts drifted away, and a pair of light-colored eyes flashed by. When she tried to recall them, the memories seemed a bit blurry. Sialan began frequenting blind dates, but unfortunately, she didn't find any of the men in the folder appealing. In the last blind date, she met the young master of the Su family, said to be pursuing a PhD maybe Sialan's aura was too strong the young master seemed a bit awkward, wearing glasses, shy and timid. Surprisingly, Xia Lan didn't get up and leave she even made a joke, do all you researchers have such dark circles under your eyes? The young master appeared bewildered, not quite understanding whom she referred to as you researchers. Nevertheless, he honestly replied, no, it's because I've been working on my thesis recently, pulling several all-nighters. I'm not a genius, so writing is quite painful for me. Xia Lan was curious, how do you define a genius in your academic field? Talking about a familiar topic, the young master's words flowed, we do have geniuses in our field. Vincent Chuang, around my age, but he earned two PhD degrees in biology and genetics before turning 20. He made a name for himself in the field of genetic engineering. Do you know Professor Bob? Xia Lan nodded, I've heard of him. She didn't have a favorable impression of this particular professor. The young master's face lit up with admiration, Professor Bob leads the Genetic Enhancement Project, now called the Genetic Selection Project. Vincent is also part of it, and it's really amazing. Over the past six months, the concept of genetic selection had gained immense popularity, maintaining a success rate of 65%. Families in District B had started experiments, but due to the high cost, only a very small number of people could enjoy the benefits of awakening. Xia Lan listened absentmindedly, her mind gradually focusing on the clear and handsome face. After chatting for a while and realizing there was no spark between them, they parted amicably. Before leaving, Xia Lan jokingly said, I don't know if your thesis will pass, but I'm sure the dark circles of a genius are heavier than yours. The young master was momentarily stunned, only to belatedly realize that, ignoring Xia Lan's strong aura, her beauty was also top-notch. That night, Xia Lan huddled on the sofa, opened the projection, and meticulously read Vincent's information, from his complex and profound papers to his image. She didn't understand a single word of his lengthy and intricate articles. When she reached his image, she lingered for a long time. On a rainy day, Xia Lan returned to District B9. It coincided with the graduation season at the Asker First Military Academy, and she had to personally select non-commissioned officers. For some reason, the weather wasn't favorable both times she visited last time, dust filled the air, and this time, it was a drizzly day. Xia Lan arrived alone at the research center, peering inside through the transparent glass. Vincent, wearing experimental goggles, was focused on the instruments, head bowed attentively observing the data while jotting down notes with a stylus. Only half of his profile was visible, his complexion pale, features handsome. He had shaved this time, but his thin lips were pressed into a straight line, giving him a somewhat stern appearance. At the spacious rooftop, the same receptionist from half a year ago sighed beside Xia Lan, Dr. Zhuang's application for an independent project got rejected. He hasn't been in good spirits lately. On the empty rooftop, Vincent took off his white coat, leaving only a black shirt, unbuttoning it to let the air circulate. The misty raindrops tapped on his shoulders as he gazed into the distance with a somewhat absent-minded expression. A cup of warm jade estate coffee was handed to him, 
and when he turned his head, he recognized the person, Colonel Xia. Xia Lan, holding a black umbrella to shield them securely, asked, What is the direction of your research? Vincent's expression twitched slightly. He hadn't expected this beautiful and authoritative senior military officer to be interested in a small scientific project. However, his research hadn't reached a classified level, so he truthfully replied, Gene Fusion. Following that, Vincent explained the specific content using detailed professional terms. Xia Lan remained silent for a long time, her eyes revealing a hint of emptiness. It was too professional. Honestly, despite reading the papers in advance, she still didn't understand. Vincent noticed her confusion and, for some reason, felt a bit relieved. In simple terms, it's about using gene fusion to resist diseases like cancer, extending the average human lifespan. Oh, Xie Lan sneezed again, Ah Chu. Vincent's lips moved, and he sighed almost inaudibly, delicate. Xie Lan stared at him expressionlessly. Vincent paused for a moment, then casually spoke, your allergies seem quite severe. Xie Lan nodded, I'm sensitive to nuclear residue. Although nuclear warfare had ended, the lingering pain remained, needing time to heal. As cities prospered, the environment deteriorated, and extreme weather became more frequent. The spray I had is finished. If you need it, I can give you the formula. No need. It's not very convenient for me, Xia Lan replied. Being a military officer, she couldn't exactly ask the enemy to wait a moment during a battle while she retrieved her spray. Vincent glanced at her frosty profile and took a sip of his coffee, actually, there's a better solution. What solution? Xia Lan raised her gaze. Do you know about air conditioning? It's an outdated relic from the old civilization, but its principles are quite fascinating. I can install a large-scale air conditioner in the sky, automatically adjusting the climate through artificial intelligence calculations. By then, extreme weather will be under control. You won't need to wear a mask and can move freely anywhere, Vincent explained, his eyes sparkling with countless stars. As long as there's sufficient funding in a team, give me five years, no, three years, and I can make it happen. However, as he finished speaking, he thought of his recent failed project, and a sense of melancholy crept into his expression. His lowered eyelashes concealed all emotions. Xia Lan felt a subtle shift inside her, a mysterious thought surfacing. Having encountered numerous prospective spouses, she had never experienced such a feeling. An inexplicable impulse made her speak, come back to Beijun with me. Vincent stared at her in surprise. It was an impulsive statement without much thought, but after saying it, the feeling of destiny settled. Xia Lan spoke again, her tone firm, you, come back with me to Beijun. Turning around, she stood on the steps, her gaze meeting Vincent's at eye level. Come with me. The laboratory, personnel, money whatever you want, I'll handle it. You choose the research topic, and you'll be in charge. The autumn rain dampened the corners of their clothes, and the gentle wind intertwined their breaths. Under the umbrella, in this small space, the atmosphere was unusually romantic. Vincent kept one hand in his pocket, tightening the grip on the coffee cup with the other. Are you going to be my investor? Why? He recalled Ning Rong's frequent mention of Sugar Daddy with a soft laugh. Or benefactor. Are you going to raise me? Xia Lan remained silent, unexpectedly grabbing the collar of his shirt without a word and yanking it down. A few drops of scalding coffee splattered, landing on her fingertips and leaving faint red marks. With calloused fingertips, Xia Lan boldly traced along his Adam's apple, caressing the smooth chin, and then firmly held his jaw. She tilted her head up, repeatedly and gently biting those thin lips. This was a moment, flavored with the rich taste of coffee. When they parted, both of their breaths were in disarray. Vincent's Adam's apple slid as he sensed his own rapidly beating pulse. Xia Lan slightly lifted her chin, her eyes carrying an unmistakable dominance. I'm not an investor, and I'm not a sponsor. I'm a marriage partner. They had known each other for half a year, strictly speaking, having met only twice, and exchanged only a few words. Yet, some emotions came fiercely, unreasonably, and some people, you just knew from the first moment you laid eyes on them this was the one. 
In the seventeenth year of the new calendar, Xialan assembled a force of Awakeners, and the formidable Azure Phoenix Army, which would later shake the Alliance, made its debut. In the same year, in Beijun, the relatively unknown Qinglan Research Institute was established. Facts proved that Vincent never spoke empty words. In less than three years, he resolved the issue of nuclear hypersensitivity for Xialan. In the twentieth year of the new calendar, the independently developed weather simulation system by Qinglan amazed the world. T-001 successfully operated in District A-5 of the Elderly People's Nation, officially ushering the alliance into the era of artificial climate. Vincent Zhuang's name became widely known. Dr. Zhuang, who once aspired to dedicate himself to research, now faced a new worry his son, Xie Zhuo. Bringing a baby into the laboratory was undoubtedly the biggest mistake he had ever made in his life. Vincent looked at the mess on the floor, the instruments beeping alarms, and the young master Xie sitting among the scattered papers, chin raised in arrogance. It gave him a splitting headache. Who could tell him why an infant less than a year old possessed such destructive power? An assistant stifled a laugh, Dr. Zhuang, maybe young Master Xie can earn a couple of doctorates too. No, from now on, don't let him near any devices, Vincent said with a cold expression, sealing his son's path to a career in research with his own words. Chapter, 249 Xie Zhuo There is no Xie Zhuo in this world anymore. In the era of the old civilization, there was a saying, all roads lead to Rome. But for Xie Zhuo, this saying needed a modification this young master was born in Rome. Young Master Xie has been the center of attention since childhood. He was born during the glorious 30 years 06-36 of the Alliance's golden development, in the peak period new calendar year 19. His father was a rising genius scientist, and his mother was the formidable leader of the Azure Phoenix Army. As for himself, inheriting the superior genes of his parents, he possessed top-tier beauty resembling Xie Lan at a young age silky black hair, captivating brows and eyes, and a disdainful gaze when he lifted his chin, mirroring his father. Being good-looking was one thing, but what was infuriating was that he also inherited Vincent's extraordinary intelligence. Before turning one, he could tamper with and destroy sophisticated instruments things ordinary people couldn't even turn on, using a baby bottle to dampen crucial data manuscripts, causing his biological father to stay up for nights. As he grew older, Siege was talents manifested in various aspects. In the complex family relationships of Beijun, whom to approach and whom to distance himself from, he handled with ease. The cryptic and intricate city defense codes became familiar to him after going through them with Xie Lan, rightfully earning him the title of the child from another family. Everyone praised him, but Xie Lan faintly sensed that something was amiss. Xie Zhuo was too intelligent, to the point where he easily lost interest in everything, making it hard to figure out what he liked or disliked. Whenever asked about his thoughts, young Master Xie casually propped up his chin and lifted his eyelid slightly, saying, boring, not interesting. This speculation became a reality when Xie Zhuo was ten years old. Xie Lan's father, Xie Zhuo's grandfather, died due to a sudden heart attack, and the rescue efforts were in vain. The members of the Xie family, upon receiving the news, rushed to the scene, filling the spacious room. Regardless of genuine or fake emotions, they all wailed and expressed their grief. Feeling something amiss, Xie Lan turned his head to look into the distance. Young Master Xie, well dressed, stood by the floor to ceiling window. His backlit face appeared unusually indifferent. There were no emotions such as fear, worry, or tension in his pupils. They were deep, like the unfathomable depths of the sea, and he even lazily yawned. He silently gazed at death, even too lazy to pick up the first aid kit that rolled to his feet amid the chaos. An angelic face with a devilish heart. Xie Lan took a quick step forward, using her body to shield him, and picked up the back of his collar and casually tossed him to her adjutant, saying, take him back. If he stayed a few more seconds, young Master Xie would probably have coldly commented in front of everyone, boring, not interesting. Back at home, Xie Lan asked him, why didn't you cry just now? The younger members of the Xie family were frightened his overly calm demeanor seemed out of place. Xie Zhua, not lying to his mother, calmly spoke the truth, isn't he dead at just the right time? 
If he were alive, he would continue causing trouble for you. The Azure Phoenix is growing stronger, and he can't control the situation in Beijun. Several times, he secretly conspired with Uncle, wanting to reclaim your military authority. Xie Lan. Listen, can a ten-year-old say such things? At that time, Colonel Xie Lan, having already been promoted, took a deep breath, pulled out the tactical whip from her waist and placed the cold firearm on the table. She gazed frostily at the third person in the room, Dr. Zhuang, what should we do with your son? Vincent cleared his throat a couple of times, quickly signaling to his son, and then took a step forward. Daringly, he pushed aside the whip and the gun barrel, bending down to embrace Xie Lan's waist, Major General Xie, don't be angry. I'll handle this. Young Master Xie silently rolled his eyes and, seeing that neither of them paid any attention to him, sensibly left. Though he was cold-hearted, he had a good relationship with his parents. Conversely, because of the support from Xie Lan and Vincent, he lived freely and recklessly. Early the next morning, the arrogant young Master Xie was taken by his old man for a genetic test. The results were not surprising Xie Zhuo was diagnosed with a cold-blooded mental condition. His amygdala was one-third smaller than that of a normal person. The amygdala is responsible for generating, recognizing, and regulating emotions. As a result, Xie Zhuo severely lacked empathy, making it difficult for him to empathize with others. He was adept at concealing himself, habitual in lying, and had no moral or shame feelings. Without proper guidance, he would engage in high intelligence crimes in an extremely calm and composed state in adulthood. After discussions between Vincent and Xie Lan, they decided to have him undergo genetic optimization. The exact words were, he can choose not to accept intervention, but he must learn to restrain himself. In the new calendar year 29, the genetic optimization technology controlled by the Alliance had already been widely spread in District B. Despite the enormous cost, the success rate remained stable at around 70%. It not only corrected some genetic defects but also had a chance to awaken extraordinary abilities. The awakening level varied from person to person, with some strategically stopping at sea level, while others astonishingly reached A level. Young Master Xie's protests were in vain, and the next day, he was escorted by his mother to the Qinglan Research Institute, where his father personally conducted the experiment. After awakening, Xie Zhua initially showed no abnormalities, appearing nothing like a person with extraordinary abilities. Did it fail? The adjutant asked, rubbing his chin. Xie Zhua casually propped his legs on Xie Lan's office desk, playing with her terminal, randomly inputting city defense codes. If any member of the Xie family saw this, they would undoubtedly be terrified. If this boy pressed the wrong key, the entire Beijun might explode. Impossible, Xie Lan, without any mercy, confiscated his toy and replied firmly. With a 70% success rate, there was a possibility of failure, but if it involved Vincent, the chances of failure would approach zero. He said he would handle it, and she believed him. The verdict on whether Xie was awakening was successful came quickly. Vincent discovered that his mental power and brain activity showed extraordinary growth, making him a monster in reasoning, memory, understanding, and strategy. However, existing instruments couldn't determine his level. Vincent had a premonition, and soon after, the R-Type Awakened Ability Measurement Device was introduced. Xie Zhuo's initial awakening level was conclusively determined, S4, Level Mental Ability, Omniscient and Omnipotent. Whether young Master Xie's condition was cured was unknown, but he definitely achieved restraint, as others couldn't see through it. He became more and more elegant and charming, as if the demon who coldly observed the death of loved ones was just a fleeting illusion. Later, Xie Lan officially took control of Beijun, while Vincent remained busy with projects. With Xie Zhu's agreement, they decided to send him to study at Laponi. At the age of 15, Vincent finally relented and agreed to let him intern at Qinglan after graduation. Young Master Xie, who scorned everyone equally in his lifetime except his parents, found rare interest in Vincent's research field. Unfortunately, since the incident of destroying the lab as a baby, Vincent never allowed him to touch any equipment again. At that time, the Fire Seed project was in full swing, and young Master Xie abandoned his studies, falsely claiming to have graduated early, and arrived in Loke. 
It was here that he first encountered LAK-0017. With Vincent having the highest authority at Qinglan, Xie Zhuo often took liberties and easily took over his terminal, freely roaming the laboratory. Finding a quiet place to study, he had just settled down when a sudden loud noise interrupted him, bam. 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 Being interrupted while reading was extremely unpleasant, especially with Vincent's demanding tasks. If he slackened even a bit, he wouldn't be able to complete them. Xie Zhuo made a light clicking sound, his attractive brows slightly furrowing. Just as the quiet resumed for a moment, the annoying noise reappeared, bam. 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 Xie Zhuo, impatient, stood up, and with a sweep of the terminal, the wall turned transparent. The spacious, temperature-controlled room was filled with capsule containers. He quickly located the source of the noise within the sea of white. With a gentle touch of his slender fingertips on the control panel, a sealed capsule slowly slid out and stopped in front of him, separated by glass. A pile of flesh, soft and pressed against the capsule wall, undulated on the smooth surface, its rough features somewhat resembling a lizard-like creature. Xie Zhuo glanced at it and disdainfully averted his gaze. Too ugly, it was practically an eyesore. Bam! Bam! The little creature persistently hammered the wall. Quite spirited, Xie Zhuo raised an eyebrow, lowering his gaze to glance at the label, LAK-0017. Be quiet. He casually pressed a few buttons on the control panel, and dozens of colorful nutrient ampoules dropped within the capsule. The complex composition of these nutrients made them expensive and could only be procured through special channels. Researchers had to be frugal with each use. But who was Xie Zhuo? Young Master Xie spent money like water, never feeling the pinch. After all, his biological father's terminal balance was practically limitless. Xie Lan spent every military expense wisely, but oddly enough, she never hesitated to support Vincent's research. She could be considered the most extravagant and generous patron. Xie Zhuo smiled and switched the projection recording vital signs to a cartoon and changed it to playback mode. The little creature finally quieted down, slipping to the ground quietly amid hypnotic makabaka sounds, eagerly sucking up the nutrient ampoules. Xie Zhuo spent a quiet afternoon. He stretched his arms, resting them on the edge of the control panel, lightly tapping the air rhythmically. The graceful lines from his shoulders to his jaw were so exquisite that even the most renowned painters would find it challenging to depict. The teardrop-shaped beauty mark at the corner of his eye outlined a faint sense of detachment. The creature's body moved, mimicking his actions, trying to extend forward. Separated by glass, their fingertips touched. He revisited this serene reading spot several times later, always encountering LAK-0017. Sometimes it aggressively pounded the wall, while other times it remained motionless, displaying various bizarre shapes due to continuous genetic fusion, which were never pleasing to the eye. However, Xie Zhuo got used to it. He skillfully fed it nutrients, opened an animated cartoon, treating it like a mascot for his studying. One day, he heard a soft tapping on the glass. Xie Zhuo looked up and saw the little creature sitting among empty shells, wagging its tail obsequiously. Oh, finished your drink, huh? Did you finally learn to ask for it yourself? Although the Fire Seed Project was dedicated to human cancer research, it did not involve human experimentation. The primitive cells of these experimental subjects were cloned or synthesized human-like embryos to circumvent ethical risks. Strictly speaking, they could only be considered artificial lifeforms with rudimentary consciousness but lacking rationality. Xie Zhuo interestingly stared at LAK-0017 for a couple of seconds. The little creature's round head bumped against the empty nutrient pouch, making its desire clear. Do you want more? Too bad, none left, Xie Zhuo mischievously said. The little creature couldn't understand, looking dull. After a while, it disappointedly drooped its head, and the empty pouch plinked onto the ground. Xie Zhuo's mood suddenly improved and he generously clicked the control panel, dropping another pitifully lonely ampoule. This time, the little creature learned to cherish it. Listening to the makabaka sounds, it sipped the nutrient ampoule with small sips. The liquid-like body slowly repaired itself, emitting a faint glow from the inside out. 
A month later, when Siejua returned to the capsule storage, he found that the little creature was gone. Upon checking with his permissions, the system informed him that LAK-0017 had been transferred to the third stage laboratory. The time for reading and companionship felt unusually quiet that day. After completing his tasks, Siejua inexplicably went to the new residence of the little creature. To his surprise, he wasn't the only one visiting there was also a man dressed as a researcher, secretly wiping tears while facing the capsule. Siejua observed coldly. Gene fusion failures were common, and Loke's experimental subjects went through multiple phases. Making it to the third stage was rare, so he took a look around, found a familiar number, and showed a hint of surprise. LAK-0017's third stage experiment had actually succeeded. Even though it succeeded, the little creature's condition was not good. It curled up on the brink of death, with a deformed body that now had two heads, five hands, and three legs, looking even uglier than when he first saw it. Siejua glanced at the sobbing man, thinking he might be crying over the experimental subject. Humans were so weak and sentimental. What's your name? Siejua asked coldly. Ming. I'm a breeder from Group G, the young man with a delicate face replied honestly. Young Master Xie was also a celebrity in the laboratory. Ming didn't know why he came here or what he intended to do. Feeling intimidated by his aura, he mustered the courage to say, it's very well behaved. Siejua couldn't help but sneer. Well behaved? Who was the one making loud noises by banging on the wall in the first place? Who shamelessly asked him for nutrient ampoules? If it were well behaved, then all the experimental subjects would be well behaved little garden babies. However, at this moment, the little creature looked a bit pitiful with its drooping appearance. Even if you cry bitterly, it won't improve its condition, Siejua casually mocked. Save your tears. He skillfully brought up the control panel, hesitated for a moment, and then fed fifty ampoules. Ming glanced at him in surprise, hesitated, and then said, Um, comrade Xie, each nutrient ampoule has a stock. It must be taken according to the standard. Your excessive use is against the rules. Who gives dozens of nutrient ampoules to an experimental subject? Even raising a child isn't this indulgent. Young Master Xia arrogantly lifted his chin. Just nutrient ampoules. I can give them if I want to. I can afford it. He effortlessly manipulated the panel and added another fifty, completely burying the little creature under the fancy packaging bags. LAK-0017 slowly wriggled, with a clear goal as it burrowed into the small mountain and rolled around. Siejua chuckled lightly. Ming was dumbfounded. You're a breeder. These hundred will be charged to my account, young master Xie said confidently as he walked away. Ming crouched in front of LAK-0017, watching it seemingly regain some vitality, and muttered to himself near the glass, hang in there, survive. Perhaps his blessing came true. LAK-0017, as one of the earliest human-like embryos, after nearly a thousand fusion experiments, surprisingly did not die. It became the longest surviving experimental subject. At the same time, it possessed almost perfect immunity, a stable composite gene chain, effectively bypassing genetic diseases such as metabolism, asthma, cancer, and showed excellent immune response to superbacteria. During this period, the Fire Seed team achieved numerous scientific breakthroughs, including preliminary gene immunity for various hereditary diseases, various mental illnesses, and cancer. The significance of these achievements was immense, with Vincent making outstanding contributions to the advancement of human evolution. He was hailed as the greatest scientist of the new era. Simultaneously, the Fire Seed project entered its fourth and crucial phase, the replication of gene fusion. Among all replicated genes, the most precious was the phoenix gene, also known as the firebird, believed to possess the power of immortality. There was only one publicly known original sample in the world. The Alliance had acquired it from the Tiani organization for 50 million Alliance credits, and it had been stored in the gene bank until Cielon purchased it. The experiments in the fourth phase unexpectedly progressed smoothly, and the dawn of victory was within reach until a glitch occurred during the fusion of the phoenix gene. Fusion failures were common, but this time, 
the experiment led to the death of LAK-0017. LAK-0017 was the only experimental subject to reach the fourth phase, and its death meant, dot. At the current stage, the fire seed project had failed. Chapter, 250. Siejwa There is no Siejwa in this world anymore. Before it was destroyed, Siejwa took a look. Ming, the breeder, was also there, his face pale and his eyes swollen. The little creature inside the capsule had closed its eyes tightly, resembling an embryo curled up in amniotic fluid, emitting a faint white light due to light reflection. Siejwa gazed at the lifeless vital signs on the projection, remaining silent. The red light locked onto the target, and he manipulated the mechanical arm to turn it over, but there was no response. Hundreds of nutrient ampoules poured down from above, flooding the tiny body, yet there was still no reaction. It's, it's useless. The primitive cells have already died. A choked voice sounded from behind Ming was on the verge of tears. Siejwa stared at LAK-007 for a long time, then chuckled belatedly. Spent over fifty million on you, who allowed you to die? Young Master Xie had no feelings of pity, only some regret. He enjoyed witnessing death but disliked the feeling of losing control. Calculating the value of the nutrient ampoules he had fed the creature over the past six months, it had long exceeded the worth of the phoenix gene. The little creature owed him so much, and this was how it repaid him. For some reason, Xie Zhuo was getting angrier. A fiery rage flickered in his heart, and the repressed violent tendencies surged through his veins. What should be done with the discarded experimental subject? Centralized destruction, Ming answered hesitantly. Oh, then destroy it, Xie Zhuo nodded. Awaiting confirmation from Vincent for the destruction, Xie Zhuo took out his terminal and coldly lowered his gaze. Do you confirm the destruction program? Confirmed. Thursday, November 7th. 33rd year of the new calendar, the fixed date for the centralized destruction of LAK-0017 arrived. However, due to Xie Lan's birthday, Vincent and Xie Zhuo returned to Beijing one day earlier. Perhaps fate allowed them to avoid a disaster, as the next day, a shocking nuclear leak occurred in the Lok lab, reducing the entire facility to rubble. Upon hearing this tragic news, the entire scientific community sighed in regret, lamenting the years of effort Vincent had poured into the project, only to see it go to waste, postponing human evolution for decades. Unbeknownst to anyone, Xie Zhuo had already recorded all the data using his omniscient and omnipotent ability, and the Fire Seed project could be continued at any time. However, Vincent did not immediately restart the research. A month after the accident, he seemed heavy-hearted, appearing silent and defeated. It wasn't until one day that Vincent received a timed experiment log. Despite the damage to the machinery, this monthly summary report still made its way to him. In this report, Vincent discovered a startling fact. LAK-0017 had actually shown signs of recovery six hours before the nuclear incident. The gloom of the past month dissipated, and Vincent finally slept soundly. He began to review the relevant data. Had the central data been lost? No problem, Siejwa had a backup in his head. He requested the restoration of all records related to LAK-0017, exposing the clandestine nutrient feeding sessions conducted by young Master Sia. How many nutrient ampoules did you feed in total? Vincent stared sternly at his son. 521. Siejwa handed over a table, detailing when and how much nutrient solution was given, providing a clear account. Even Vincent, accustomed to the costs of scientific research, was taken aback. Not because of the money, as research always consumed funds, but because he had forgotten how Siejwa, even before turning one year old, could disrupt his experiments. The boy was used to doing as he pleased, capable of anything. However, why did LAK-0017, having absorbed an excessive amount of nutrients, show no abnormalities. No, there was an abnormality how did it manage to persist until the fourth phase? Vincent considered a possibility, a terrifying one, it awakened. What? Siejwa was taken aback. Vincent carefully examined the changes in the vital signs of LAK-0017. From the time points, every fusion experiment after feeding, its state returned to its peak. 
It probably awakened the ability to self-heal long ago, but it needed nutrient solution to activate it. Siege was unintentional actions had inadvertently served a purpose. If he hadn't given it so many nutrient ampoules, perhaps LAK-0017 would have died in one of the fusion experiments. It was precisely because of its self-healing ability and sufficient nutritional support that LAK-0017 survived thousands of fusion experiments and reached the fourth phase. It doesn't matter anymore. Siejua fell into silence for a moment, his eyelashes casting shadows. Indeed, Vincent sighed. It was impossible to determine whether LAK-0017 possessed the self-healing ability. Even if it had truly awakened, the program had been destroyed long ago, erased by the nuclear explosion in Lok, leaving no traces behind. Siejua fiddled with the feeding chart, lost in thought. Vincent patted his shoulder, this matter, aside from you and me, don't tell anyone, including your mother. The awakening of abilities in the experimental subjects of the Fire Seed Project, especially a unique self-healing type like LAK-0017, even though it had died, was like Pandora's box. Once revealed, it would bring catastrophe. The Alliance would be thrown into chaos, and those in the know would find no peace. Siejua felt a heavy mood and nodded slowly, I understand. The failure of the Fire Seed Project became a lingering burden on Vincent. A year later, he decided to restart the project, facing strong opposition from Cielan. Exhausted from the prolonged effort, Vincent's health was in jeopardy. While the Fire Seed was closely watching his research progress, Cielan cared more about his well-being, going so far as to forcibly halt funding. They erupted in their first and only Cold War, with the relationship between Azure Phoenix and Qinglan reaching an icy point. However, everything couldn't come to a halt. The Alliance's high command suddenly intervened, and Gu Hongye, then head of the Central Court Council, became the new financier. The Fire Seed Project was renamed the Eternal Life Plan, and the new research facility was built in Baishan. Gu Hongye stated that he would fully support Vincent's research. Internally, Qinglan divided into different factions. The idealistic faction, led by Vincent and Ning Rong, aimed to continue the Fire Seed's cancer research. In contrast, the radical faction, turning to human experimentation, pursued immortality more fanatically. In the end, Sialon conceded. Vincent was a stubborn person. Without her, he would undoubtedly follow through with a lifetime devoted to research. Sialon was attracted to him because he had a soft heart and couldn't bring himself to sever his ideals. She assigned the best doctors and her most trusted guards to accompany Vincent. It served both as protection and a deterrent. She also stopped bringing Siejua back to Beijing. Despite her busy military duties, she dedicated time every month to be with Vincent in Baishan. Vincent immersed himself day and night in the laboratory, becoming increasingly elusive. No matter how many times he replayed it, success with LAK-0017 always eluded him by a small margin the experimental process, the gene fusion sequence, and the quantity of nutrients at each stage were all exactly the same. What was the missing piece? Though he had been absent for a long time, the daily operations of Qinglan continued. Vincent was the greatest genius and also the purest madman. He made an astonishing decision, to merge his own genes with Siejua's, temporarily overlaying Siejua's biological information, and replacing the root super-administrator authority within Qinglan. All right, you're me now, Vincent breathed a sigh of relief after completing everything. I won't be Vincent, Xie Zhua examined himself in the mirror. After the gene fusion, the color of his pupils had noticeably lightened. If you have to call me something, it should be Zhuang Qinyan. As you wish, Vincent smiled, the dark circles under his eyes deepening. Xie Zhua pressed his lips tightly, turning to gaze at him. Is it worth it? You've sacrificed so much for them, and the people outside won't appreciate you. Vincent calmly shook his head. I'm not doing it for them, and I don't need anyone's gratitude. Siejua could never fully comprehend Vincent's dedication, but it didn't stop him from respecting his father. At the age of 16, Siejua had the highest authority in Qinglan. He monitored laboratories across the region for Vincent, handling all daily tasks. This was a talent he was born with, and Siejua could even remember the name of each researcher, 
matching it to every face. On his last visit to Baishan, it was already late at night, and the lights in Vincent's office were still on. Take a break, Xie Zhuo walked in without an invitation, a hint of the same firmness as Xie Lan in his eyebrows and eyes. All right, Vincent looked up at him, momentarily dazed, before slowly responding. Xie Zhuo made two cups of jade estate coffee. It was Xie Lan's favorite flavor, but Vincent was not picky about coffee, having previously consumed the cheapest instant coffee. The father and son, rarely meeting, sat down. Their similar high intelligence made their conversation equal and smooth. How is it going? Only two variables are missing, LAK0017's original cells and the final fusion experiment with the Phoenix gene. But both of these cannot be replicated. Yeah, Vincent sighed wearily, rubbing his temples. LAK0017 was already dead, Tiani organization remained hidden, and the whereabouts of the Phoenix's original sample were unknown. His research progress was at a standstill. I had a dream last night, a dream where LAK0017 didn't die, Vincent spoke with a faint smile. The laboratory was at the center of the explosion, Siege were ruthlessly pointed out. You were daydreaming, weren't you? Besides Siege were paused, then spoke with difficulty, the destruction program, I confirmed it using your authority. Vincent stared at him curiously, you feel guilty. Do you understand the emotion of guilt? Siejua remained expressionless, truly his son. Don't mind it. The destruction requires a secondary confirmation, and the final decision was made by me. Vincent took a sip of coffee, feeling a bit better. I've been thinking lately, what would be the expression of the phoenix's gene? Does the broad concept of fusion failure apply to it? Siejua was taken aback, and the father and son shared a glance. A glint of light flashed in their similar light-colored eyes. Just as Xie Zhuo was about to speak, he sensed an awakener's presence and abruptly turned his head. Someone was eavesdropping. He gestured to Vincent to stay silent, quietly opened the door, and signaled the elite soldiers of the Azure Phoenix Army outside. Well-trained soldiers with awakened abilities stealthily moved, quickly capturing the startled eavesdropper at the end of the corridor. Xie Zhuo slowly walked up, towering over the person whose tag read, Pan Tu, Intermediate Researcher. Pan Tu's tears and snot were smeared together. I'm sorry, I, I just awakened my ability, couldn't control it. I didn't mean to. Kill him, Xie Zhuo's eyes were emotionless. However, he couldn't execute Pan Tu because Gu Hongyi's people arrived in time, taking Pan Tu away on the pretext of interrogation. The coffee smoke curled up, and Vincent's expression remained indifferent. Siege was eyes narrowed slightly. He had sensed Pan Tu activating his ability just now. Although he couldn't hear anything, the person from Gu Hongi's side, before leaving, gave him a deep look, seeming to be puzzled by Siege was decision to kill the Awakener. The next day, Vincent grandly brought in a giant storage hub, announcing that he would place his research results inside for future study. Inside, the members of Azure Phoenix were curious, some even displaying greedy expressions. Only Siejua knew that it was empty. On the day Vincent passed away, the weather was overcast. He collapsed suddenly due to heart failure, and despite the doctor's efforts, they couldn't save him. Siejua calmly informed Sialan about Vincent's death. As soon as he put down the terminal, the laboratory was surrounded, and Gu Hongyi's people forcefully entered. Vincent was dead, and they were bound to rush to the central hub. After some thought, Xie Zhuo decided to hide. However, he didn't expect that Gu Hongyi brought along Aaron, an S-level awakener with mental ability, to perform knowledge deprivation on Vincent's body. The strong awakened energy caused the ground to tremble slightly. Gu Hongyi's voice was urgent and excited, quickly opened the central hub. The key? What about his son, Xie Zhuo? He must know the whereabouts of the key. Then, after Aaron said something to him, Gu Hongyi's expression became particularly strange. Seemingly puzzled, seemingly suddenly enlightened, he muttered two words in disbelief, fire seed? Xie Zhuo stared at the monitoring screen, his nails digging into his palms, the dripping blood forming a small pool. His eyes were filled with bloodshot veins and gloom. The human heart is always ugly, 
and he was not surprised by this revelation. Aaron used knowledge deprivation three times, and Siejwa experienced the pain of having his heart cut out three times. For the first time, he could not look at death indifferently. It wasn't until Xia Lan arrived with her people that a fierce armed conflict erupted between the two sides. The laboratory personnel were slaughtered, and Aaron escaped with Gu Hongyi through a spatial rift. Xia Lan searched for Xia Zhua in vain and took Vincent away. Xia Zhua remained silent, like a statue. Then he turned around and entered the underground laboratory. He forever changed his biological information, enabling the fusion gene to take effect within him. His glamorous face transformed into another familiar and handsome visage. Wearing a mask and a cap, Xie Zhuo left Baishan amidst the chaos. From today onward, there was no more Xie Zhuo in this world, only Zhuang Qinyan carrying the key. He would never open the Pandora's box again. In the autumn of year 46 of the new calendar, the apocalypse arrived. In District D-99, Hua City, the quaint sign of Qingsong Biotech was washed by heavy rain. A handsome young man gently knocked on the door. Excuse me, is Pan Tu here? Is Mr. Pan here? Who are you? The person in uniform looked up in confusion. Zhuang Qinyan smiled faintly, brushed off the rainwater and the tainted blood from the zombies on his body, and spoke leisurely, I'd like to find him to settle some personal grievances. The former eavesdropper, who suddenly struck it rich, changed his name and came to the low-level district, opening a biomedicine company. But where did he get the money? Two men and a woman came out from inside, all wearing white coats. Zhuan Qin Yan looked up and was surprised to see Pan Tu, an A7 level awakener, and his two students, Wu Yuru and Yang Bo. Mr. Pan, this person is looking for you, the person who just asked said, pointing casually. Pan Tu's pupils slightly widened, and his whole body trembled with fear, Zhuang Zhuang, Dr. Zhuang. Yes, it's me. Zhuang Qinyan smiled gently. Without the star network, it's indeed challenging to find you. The icy mental attack pierced through the top of Pan Tu's head, and the overwhelming pressure descended with a deafening roar. Pan Tu resisted stubbornly, but today, no one could save him. In less than five seconds, he was bleeding from all seven orifices and slowly fell down. The chilling awakened energy spread outward. In a factory not far from Qingsong Biotech, a girl suddenly raised her head. After all, Pan Tu was an A-level awakener. Although Zhuang Qinyan could condense his mental ability, he was not a combat-type awakener. He suffered some losses, but fortunately, using the price of his right leg, he killed Pan Tu. Wu Yuru and Yang Bo had heard of the key, but they were half in the dark about it. They questioned him forcefully, where is the thing? I advise you to hand it over quickly. They were just two sea level awakeners. What qualifications did they have to act arrogantly with him? Zhuang Qinyan smiled sarcastically, sitting in the blood pool, just about to take action. Suddenly, his keen mental ability detected a strange and powerful awakener. He calmly withdrew his hand. Who's there? Wu Yuru turned around alertly. A girl with almond eyes peeked out from behind the window, showing half of her head. Locking eyes with Zhuang Qinyan, she obviously froze for a moment. LAK0017 and young Master Xia, strangers to each other, inadvertently changed each other's destinies. As for Song Ku and Zhuang Qinyan, their fates intertwined due to the torrential rain in Hua City. It was both a first meeting and a reunion.